Welcome to my channel. Have fun. The Overlord of Blood and Iron. Chapter 1. The Crisis of the Absolute. 2030 A.D. The great continent of Bengia was never peaceful due to Ragnarok, the war for supremacy over the continent. Ragnarok that started three years after the great summoning stretched to over seven years. Rather, it intensified as time passed. It was the result of the similarities in strength between the Grand Sovereigns. Ragnarok had resulted in the creation of three large powers. King Chal In, one of the Grand Sovereigns and two other Grand Sovereigns participated in the creation of the Ishtar Coalition, which was centered around the use of armed forces. The second was the Galveg Union, which based its foundation in strong economic power and productivity. The final was the Baldur Alliance which was evaluated to be the weakest of the three alliances despite the presence of five Grand Sovereigns. These three power groups, depending on the situation, aligned or were at feud with one another, competing and checking each other like the ancient China's three kingdoms. Sigh, at this rate, we will not accomplish anything. Mumbled a man, sitting on a throne made of pure gold inside the skull of a golden dragon as he looked down at the current state of Ragnarok and the chessboard with marked borderlines. This man was Kang Chao In, the strongest in force amongst the Ten Grand Sovereigns, and the owner of the great and vast land of Valhalla. I want to crush them all at once. But we are disadvantaged in a war of attrition. How nice would it be if I can destroy them at their foundation? Kang Chao In's gaze lingered at the Galveg Union that was marked with a white pawn on the chessboard. Yes. In Kang Chol In's quest to take over the entire Pangaea continent, the Galveg Union was the largest setback. Galveg compensated its weaker military force with great economic power and productivity, placing itself in a favorable place in Ragnarok. At this rate, there was a high probability that as Ragnarok progressed, the Galveg Union would gain control of Pangaea. To tip the balance on the power struggle among the three powers, it was important to disrupt Galveg's economic power. In a war of attrition with the Galveg Union, the one at loss would be only the Ishtar side. I would have set Galveg to flames if not for these cockroaches! exclaimed King Chal In, looking at the area marked to be the Baldur Alliance on the chessboard. The Baldur Alliance was weak, able to be destroyed at any time if he set his heart to it. Galveg, also, could destroy the Baldur Alliance at any time. However, the Baldur Alliance survived by maintaining neutral diplomacy and collecting material benefits while the Ishtar Coalition and Gulveg Union were at war. They were certainly detestable. In the eyes of Kang Chal In, Baldur, who meticulously bored between the two great powers and ate up the dropped pieces from the ground, without any contributions or losses, was the most indecent one of all. However, he couldn't just push off the Baldur Alliance out of anger. If Kang Chol In was to hit the Baldurs, these bats would just side with the Galvegs and wage a war of two against one. Of course, these progressions were not problematic to Kang Chol In alone. Both Galveg and Baldur camps were not free of these sorts of problems. In these sorts of wars, the outcome would be the same, the only difference being which pawn, which power would make the first move. The roles would be different based on this move, but the outcome alike. Whatever choice and move was made, the one who made the first move would be at a disadvantage. Rg. If I had brought Li Gong Myung under me, no, even guilt, things would not have been this twisted, growled Kang Chao In, sitting on his throne. Li Gong Myung. A Chinese immigrant from Pusan, he was not a sovereign nor a grand sovereign, but rather just an insignificant traveling worker and. However, his significant role in the Ragnarok created the current three-cornered battle. Li Gong Myung was an excellent strategist who served faithfully under Alex Rothschild, leader of the Baldur Alliance. He was so intelligent that travelers of the eastern part of Eurasia called him the rebirth of Xu Liang, Chinese strategist well known for his achievements and success in battle strategy, and praised him greatly. I should have killed him or had him serve under me then. Kang Chao In who regretted very little in his life, regretted losing Li Gong Myung. If he could return in time, if he had been wiser then, he could have gained Li Gong Myung and unified Pangaea, possibly becoming the greatest of the great powers.
Emperor of Bangia. No, not possibly. More like very likely. King Chao In, who was skilled in martial arts and a great leader, would have been able to defeat the Govegs and the Baldurs easily right after with the help of Li Gong Myung's strategies. If Kwa Kyung at least had been working under me, the situation would have been a lot different. It's a pity. You died because you served under such an incompetent leader. Kwa Kyung served under a different great power leader, but died of lung cancer in the early years of the war in 2040. He had died early at 38 years of age. If Kwa Kyung had been Kang Chol and subordinate, he would have cured the lung cancer, no matter what stage, and worked Kwa Kyung until he died from overwork. But there was nothing to do for one who had already passed. Everything has already passed and cannot be reversed. Regret that bears no fruit. Kang Chol and shook his head, swallowing his regrets. There was no point in wanting what he could not have. Of the two strategists that he desired, one belonged to and served faithfully to his rival, Alex Rothschild, and the other had died before he could even attempt to recruit him. Regretting now would not change anything. It was then. As he was thinking and regretting alone, Alfred, the vampire butler created by the NPC unit under Kang Chilin's reign, burst into the room and bowed down before him. Master. What is it, Alfred? Kang Chilin asked with a slight scowl. Alfred who had always maintained a gentle and calm characteristic of vampires, suddenly bursted in and stumbled before him with a flustered expression. Master. Something big has happened. Something big. It. It is. The scout who just returned to report. Speak calmly. I will not be surprised. It. It. Alfred, as if he was afraid of the words that were to be said took a large breath in and took a hand to rest on his chest. As if that was not enough, he clenched two fists, closed his eyes softly, and opened his mouth. What is wrong with him? King Chao In, seeing Alfred in such a state, was puzzled, wondering what could fluster him so. Had the sky fallen? Or was there impending danger in the great land of Valhalla? Current dot currently, 50 kilometers from the southwest. The Gulvags and Baldur's alliance troops are approaching. Dot, he had said he would not be surprised, but the report that Alfred brought was surprising indeed. The Gulvags and Baldur's have joined hands. It was really a matter of great account that he had not even dreamt of. Is that possible? Our Valhalla is in the innermost region of the Ishtar coalition. Betrayal. Who? King Chal In, instead of being surprised remained level-headed and worked to find the solution to the situation. In the Ishtar coalition, there were no outstanding strategists and he, Kang Chol and was the smartest of them all. With the problem already warning its impending doom, it was not very difficult to analyze where the leak had originated. Southwest. If they are approaching from the southwest. Aelister. It is that damned necromancer. The betrayer was undoubtedly the necromancer leader Aelister who was like King Chao In, part of the Ishtar coalition. Alistair's territory was located exactly southwest of Valhalla, and that abominable Alistair had probably opened the way for the Alliance troops, or joined them all together. Alfred. King Chao In, who had finished his thoughts called his butler. Yes, master. How large are the troops? It's that. An entire continent has come and the number of combined troops is huge. Continent? It's that despicable Rothschild's Siamatis, yes? Yes, master. The mobile fortress is Siamatis. We've been had. Siamatis, the home of Alex Rothschild, was a mobile fortress built on the back of a giant monster that resembled a tortoise. This meant, his rival's entire headquarters had come right to Valhalla. Movable fortresses. It was always a sore spot. Ideal for running like a rat as well. Valhalla, the home of Kang Chao In, was a little peculiar due to its location underground, but it was not as much as the mobile fortress of Alex Rothschild. It was a question of the ability to move headquarters or not. By nature, the mobile fortress would have varied and more numerous options in strategy compared to rooted ground. What about Hecate? Connect me to her. Hecate was a great power skilled in magic and part of the Ishtar coalition. 
for King Chao In, who had numerous enemies, she was one great power he could trust. It's... it's that... nothing? Yes, Master. In my invaluable opinion, they might have been attacked first. Stop. There is no need to hear this further. King Chao In stopped Alfred Mitt's sentence. And in his head, the scattered pieces fit together to explain this sudden catastrophe. The Galvag Union and Baldur Alliance. They joined hands first. They turned Alistair against us, and will fight half and half, after dividing me and Hecate amongst themselves. This would have been at a large disadvantage to the Baldurs. This strategy. Had this too been created by Li Gong Myung? Li Gong Myung, in addition to strategy and tactics, had great gifts in looking through personal relationships between the great powers. In this current event, Kang Chol and was sure that Li Gong Myung was in the center of it. The betrayal of friendly forces. And with no word from Hecate. The union of the enemy. I lost, it is a defeat. Kang Chol and bit his lower lip, and plainly accepted this dark and hopeless situation. No, he was left with no other choice. Even with his strength, and even with the military capabilities of Valhalla, there was no way out of this current situation. He did not want to accept it. But the great power Kang Chol and in the continent of Valhalla as of today looked as if it would need to leave Ragnarok. However, Kang Chol and did not despair. In place of anger and fear, he took time to think about the causes of this crisis and the mistakes he had made. In the impending doom of his headquarters, he struggles to analyze the situation. Because, he had a final card to play. A secret card. Chapter 2 the end of the absolute, but. Fine. Since it has already become like this, maybe it is a good thing. For what reason? Kang Chol and flashed a faint smile. I focused too heavily on military power. My neglect on economic strength was detrimental. My lack of trips to the library and closeness to books. I'm a grand sovereign. I did not have time to focus on foreign and diplomatic policies, as well as, military tactics and strategies alone. With the progress of war, slow and immobile, I neglected collecting intelligence and diplomacy. If I could not maintain good relations, I should have at least had good, solid information and intelligence. Then, I would not have been caught off guard like this. In the face of destruction, the mind of Kang Chol and was ruthlessly calm and quiet. If his enemies had known the current state of Kang Chol in, they would have thought he had given up, or that he had nothing left but regret. Like this, Kang Chol and was calm. Master. You need to give a countermeasure to go against the enemies. Alfred pleaded with Kang Chol in, as if frustrated by his state. It was understandable, considering the threat impending on the headquarters. Alfred. Yes, Master. Do not act rashly and do not tremble with fear. Maintain your dignity. We have not lost yet. Sir. The vampire butler Alfred was taken aback by Kang Jolin's calm composure, but worked to regather his nerves and composure soon after. As an NPC unit, Alfred could not know the internal workings of Kang Jolin. Call the five great generals in right away, and send all troops out of Valhalla to meet the enemy as soon as they return. Master. That, that cannot happen. Do you not think encouraging a siege would be better? A big bloodbath would put Valhalla at a great disadvantage. It was true. Numerically inferior. Even with a 1% chance of getting out of this situation, it would be better to encourage a siege. No. It would only drag on the battle longer, without changing the outcome. We will square off with our enemies instead of cowardly holding out of battle. Master. Do not worry. Dot. We will lose today, but not next time. It really did not make any sense. It was obvious that today's defeat would lead to obliteration and destruction, but Kang Chol and remained calm and composed. Lucy, Bella. When Kang Chol and called their names, two dark elf guards Lucy and Bellatrix, who had been hiding in the darkness behind the throne, shows themselves. Yes, Master. Did you call for us? Lucy and Bella who were the same NPC unit as Alfred were both guards who specialized in magic and martial arts. They were stronger than most mid-level sovereigns. My sword and armor. As soon as his word fell, 
Lucy and Bella brought forth the epic items Frag Rock, the Great Sword, and Volley's Burning Vengeance armor set in front of him. These items had made Kang Chol in the Grand Sovereign of War, the Hunter of Sovereigns, Alex Rothschild, and Lee Gong Myung. He calmed his thoughts thinking of his enemies while he dressed for war with the help of Bella and Lucy. He shuddered in anger as he thought of the two who had brought upon his destruction. He had been the most viable candidate for the unification of Pangaea. And it was his no longer. He had stepped on them countless of times, and they had come alive like cockroaches, repeatedly. It would have been more accurate to describe them as zombies and not grand sovereigns. He was regretful to have left them alone instead of killing them or subjugating them under him, but since things have come to this point, he would have them feel the full wrath of the Grand Sovereign Kang Chol and and Valhalla, in this great slalom. Boom! Boom! Siamatis, the giant tortoise, breathing fire and lava moved towards the Grand Sovereign Kang Chol's headquarters. There were almost 15,000 troops total when one combined the allied troops of Baldur and Gulveig as well as 2,000 troops tailing the headquarters. Master. Li Gong Myung, the pinnacle and mastermind behind Siamatis, turned towards his leader, Alex Rothschild. Are you really going to fight head-to-head -head with Kang Chalin? Alex Rothschild had already put on a full plate of armor, scattered with white and gold. Like a grand sovereign, all his items were also epic items. He will not just stand and watch, that's for sure. But my lord, Kang Chol in a strong. One on one, no, with even many, you know it is difficult to win against him. Kang Chol in is in reality, Pangea's strongest, your life may even be in danger. That's why I am going against him with others. A combined attack with other Grand Sovereigns, there is plenty of prospects for victory. We also have overwhelming numbers of troops. But. Debt. Li Gong Myung spoke no further as soon as Alex Rothschild uttered that word. It was understandable. Since the start of Ragnarok seven years ago, Alex Rothschild had always been entrapped in Kang Chol-in's plots, struggling to survive. He lost two subordinates he had treasured as if they were his brothers, and his headquarters Siamatis, was stomped to nothing, not once but four times. If Siamatis had not been a mobile fortress, Alex Roth's child would have been crushed at the hands of Kang Chol in long ago. I need to avenge their deaths, and I need to repay him for the humiliation that he gave me in the past. If not today, I will never be able to pay off this debt. Maybe if it was another day, I would have avoided this, but not today. He stated this so firmly, that it was obvious his mind was made. No matter what Li Gong Myung said, he would not be able to convince him otherwise. Therefore, Li Gong Myung did not question his liege further. It would have been nice if we could break him with Siamatis alone. It's too bad that it had to be this way. Alex Roth's child stated regretfully. It's an overused phrase, but the last one standing is the victor. Kang Chol In was too strong. He would not bend against the wind, even if it means he would break. His fatal flaw is that he was not rounded but rigid. True. If he had been more cautious, this day would have not come. Yes. And that is one of the reasons why I chose you, my liege, and not Kang Jolin. As the two conversed, Valhalla's troops slowly showed itself from afar. It cannot be. Li Gong Myung exclaimed, seeing what lay ahead of him. My liege. Look over there. It is a giant slalom. He has given up siege warfare and he has chosen a face-to-face -face confrontation. Kang Chol In's choice was a stupid one, but it did succeed in bringing an element of surprise. It cannot be. Alex Roth's child also could not hide his surprise. Gong Myung, is this maybe a trap? Even if Kang Chol In is reckless, a confrontation. He had suffered immensely due to Kang Chol In until now, it was natural for him to be taken aback in Kang Chol In's choice of confrontation in threats of complete obliteration. No, it is not. Li Gong Myung had different ideas. It is his pride. Pride? I am sure of it. Li Gong Myung was sure. According to the intel that just arrived, Hecate's headquarters has already been destroyed by the Gulveg Union. Alistair, who is part of the Ishtar Coalition, is over there. 
Lee Gong Myung's finger pointed at the Grand Sovereign Aelister, who was sitting atop the giant undead monster, Bone Dragon. He has already judged that there is no hope and he will go out with a bang. It is not King Chol in style to drag on a fight that will lead to nothing. Oh! To go out with a bang, instead of holding out. Isn't that just the embodiment of King Chol's personality? He means that he will not plead for his life, nor would he seek to save himself. This is who he is. It was Lee Gong Myung, indeed. He had seen through King Chol's intentions and he had assured the Grand Sovereign while sitting. It was obvious as to why Kang Cholin had regretted not having Li Gong Myung himself. My liege, order for attack in full force. As long as Kang Cholin has chosen a slalom, it is impossible to absorb Valhalla's military force. There is no other way than to completely destroy it. Is that right? Yes, my liege. I will do so. Alex Rothschild nodded at Li Gong Myung's counsel. The great slalom that was thought to end easily lasted for three long days and nights. To that extent, Valhalla had great military power, and King Cholin also displayed great skill, withstanding the combined efforts of the Grand Sovereigns on the Allied side. But the limit was three days. But he was outnumbered. In the face of overwhelming numbers, there was no victory. Ultimately, the five proud Grand Generals of Valhalla fell one by one, and King Cholin was pushed all the way to his throne inside Valhalla headquarters. As predicted by both sides, King Cholin had lost. Hey, you came? King Cholin, who sat alone in his throne, greeted the Grand Sovereigns on the Allied side. Dot, dot, taken aback, the Allied Grand Sovereigns were at a loss for words. In that moment, the roles had reversed, and it looked as if the defeated King Cholin was the victor and the victorious allied Grand Sovereigns had lost. Like this, King Cholin remained proud and held his head high. The face of King Cholin, sitting on his throne alone, was not that of a loser. Rather, the rice murk spread across his face looked as if he was looking down at the allied Grand Sovereigns. You cannot believe your defeat? Alex Rothschild, the rival of King Cholin, finally spoke. Because, I stepped on you after being stepped on countless of times? It seemed as if Alex Rothschild was overcome with resentment. Indeed, who knew he would deliver his enemy Kang Cholin to the clutches of death? It was a new feeling. Kang Cholin sneered. Dot, why, were you disappointed at my reaction? I guess. You would have been satisfied if I had cried and cowered like yourselves, you losers. In that moment. Alex Roth's child almost lunged at King Jolin. How could he push his buttons so? His cheeky mocking of the victors was enough to drive anyone crazy. You have really lost your mind. The Grand Sovereign Necromancer Aelister, who had remained quiet, spoke. He had raised the visor in his skull armor, exposing his screwed, vulgar face. You would have never guessed, huh? But what can you do? You lost. That is what you get for being a cocky and arrogant. Alistair smirked at King Jolin. And in response. Shut your mouth. Dot, it was a menacing statement, enough to send chills down the spine of even the icy, Grand Sovereign Alistair. Shut up before I break that skull of yours. I do not wish to speak to a little traitor like you. Dot, disgusted, King Jolin turned his head away from the necromancer Grand Sovereign, towards Alex Rothschild. Hey, Rothschild. He pointed at Alex Rothschild with the end of his chin. You work hard to act like you work for a just and great cause, to act nice and good. What are you saying? Alex Rothschild answered. What am I saying? Well, if you are going to play dumb, I'll kindly tell you. You want Pangea all for yourself, but to pretend you don't, doesn't that just keep you up at night? No way. I am different from you. Ha! Different. I can recognize my own kind. You're the same as me. Except you pretend to be were on the side of the angels, instead of being honest like me. You took everything you could and benefited all you could, and now you are pretending you did not? Evil only recognizes evil. Kang Chalin, you, are just that. Is that so? It seems like you are going to kill that traitor first as soon as I'm gone. And in that statement, the traitor Aylster shivered. 
coward. Kang Chol and sneered at Aelister, and continued. Well, whatever happens, all will be after I die anyways so it is business among yourselves. Now, end it. And Kang Chol and put down his frag rock and opened his arms wide. What are you scheming, Kang Chol and? Rothschild asked, his guard up. What scheme, you idiot? End it. You don't understand? Are you just going to die? Well then? I don't want to cry and run away like some man, e after a little attack on their headquarters, nor do I want to come back to life like a cockroach either. Not my style. It was a direct hit at Rothschild, and the veins in his temples bulged. The angry Rothschild's sword gave off a glint as it penetrated Kang Chol En's heart in an instant. It is my victory. Kang Chol En. Yes, enjoy it. Enjoy it all you want. Kang Chol En laughed. Today will be the first and last day that you will be victorious against. Shut up. Rothschild's sword gave off another glimmer. And Kang Chol En's head fell and rolled on the ground. Dead. The Kang Chol En had died. It is my victory. My victory, Kang Chol En. Alex Rothschild announced his victory with red, bloodshot ties. And that face, was to be feared. The face of the man, who had defeated the enemy he had despised and feared, was like the devil. However, the menacing face of the man soon disappeared, and was replaced with joy and accomplishment. You all worked hard. Rothschild spoke, looking around at the faces of the Grand Sovereigns as well as Aelister. And now, this head will be. As Rothschild was about to suggest hanging the head for all to see and celebrate their victory, he suddenly stopped. Crack. The ground began to shake. It did not seem like a good thing. The vibrations that they felt beneath their feet and the noise that grew louder and closer was ominous and strange. It was as if a big explosion was going to happen. No way. Rothschild yelled. Suicidal explosion. We need to get out of here right now. Kang Chao In, you despicable, crude jerk. And just when everyone had processed the situation, a fiery storm overcame them with a loud bang. It was, until the end, a despicable and crude tactic. Stupid, foolish, idiots. Kang Chao In smirked and mumbled. Chapter 3. Rare, 1. Kim Minutes Chul, the CEO of an entertainment company, was like any other day taking out his stress on his subordinate. He was a half-gangster evil boss, not a full gangster, but not just a normal citizen either. He often liked to call his co-workers and banter with them. He would curse at the young interns in their twenties, insulting them and harassing them. He even secretly sexually harassed female employees. People would question why there's still sexual harassment going on today since sexual harassment had been heavily criminalized. However, the year 2020 in South Korea had been host to skyrocketing levels of unemployment, due to a long-term recession. In the perspective of the victims, they had to endure harassment if they did not want to lose their job. And Kim Minich Chul was cunning and sly with his harassments, making it a bit too foggy for a formal accusation. It was fair to say that at this point, he had reached a professional level with his harassments. And Kim Minich Chul's target for the day was an intern who had been employed for 10 months. The poor intern, whose position in the company was still not guaranteed, had to endure Kim Minich Chul's quest to find fault in all he did. It was as if he gave up all hope and was just waiting for Kim Minich Chul's mood to improve. His choice was understandable. Since he had spent a year of his golden years being an intern in this company, and could not let it all go to waste. It was a common thing in these times, for young people to spend all their thirties, moving from internship to internship. This was a needed sacrifice for a paycheck in times where many companies paid little to none and worked young people to the bones. How can you be a permanent employee, working like that? What do you have, like one or two months left of your internship? You don't want to get the full-time offer? Kim Minutes Chul's specialty was to manipulate subordinates with their weak points. Those who were candidates for promotion were threatened with promotions, those who were retiring were threatened with unemployment benefits, and those who were interns were threatened with full-time offers. You are making it difficult if you are going to act like this. 
There are so many people who can work if I put up an internship spot right now, at least 50 applications will be submitted. You know that, right? Kim Minutes Chell flashed a nasty smile and threatened the poor intern, while the other employees pretended to be immersed in their work and fear that he might come for them next. One wrong move, and their day might just be hell. I chose you despite your poor test scores and mediocre education because I felt sorry for you. And before he could finish his sentence, Kim Minich Chell stopped, because an unimaginable thing came out of the intern's mouth. Stupid, foolish, idiots. Intern of 10 months, Kang Chell and smirked and mumbled. Dot, dot, a deafening silence filled the room. What did he just say? I misheard, right? A couple of female employees whispered amongst themselves. What, what? Hey, Kang Chell-en. What did you just say? Stupid and foolish. Do you want to lose your job? Kim Minutes Chell roared, blood rushing to his face and neck. Even a worm squirm's wind stepped on, and Kim Minutes Chell, who had been told off by a worm was overcome in anger. Oh? Kang Chell and seemed surprised to see Kim Minutes Chell, as if he just noticed the angry man standing there. Oh, oh? You idiot, what did you just? Shut up and be quiet. Dot, my head is killing me. And Kang Chol in with those words clenched his head in pain and left the office, not giving a second glance at Kim Minutes Chol who was roaring in anger. What, what the? What is that idiot? Kim Minutes Chol's voice rang in the office that Kang Chol in had left. The poor employees who had been left behind, looked to each other, worried. Kang Chol in who had left the office headed straight for the bathroom. Ouch. His head hurt badly. It was as if someone was hitting his head with an axe, and he felt as if he was going to vomit. He rushed to the sink and turned on the faucet. He needed to splash his face with cold water to ease his headache. Water, cold as ice, poured from the faucet. Kang Chul and shoved his face into the sink as soon as the water began to flow. Oh. He groaned. His face felt as if it would explode from the cold but he did not care. He would do anything for the headache to go away. His pain subsided after almost 10 minutes in the cold water. But that was not the end. Vomit from deep within threatened to explode out, overcoming him with nausea. Kang Chul and ran to the toilet, grabbed the sides, and everything exploded out. He vomited again and again. And when there was nothing to come up, he vomited stomach acid, and anything left after that. He struggled in the bathroom for about an hour, and was finally able to stand. Sigh. And when Kang Chulin let out a long sigh and looked in the mirror, there stood a pale-faced, 28-year-old man. It was the same face from 10 years ago. Kang Chulin flashed a wry smile, and the poor intern who until an hour ago, had received all sorts of harassment, was no more. And there remained only the King Slayer Grand Sovereign, Kang Chulin who had reigned over Pangaea and made his enemies cower in fear. The timing is right, too. Kang Chol-in's face flashed with satisfaction as he checked the date on his smartphone. It was the year 2020, November 6, two months before the Great Slalom. He had returned to the past. Well, technically, it wasn't that he had returned to the past. Soul Backup Soul Backup was a skill that upon death transferred his current memories to the past and was only available to a Grand Sovereign. And in this resurrection through soul backup, he avoided the time paradox while given a chance to change the future. I must be cautious from this point on. I have no more chances now, if I die, it's over. Kang Chol and repeated this warning to himself over and over again. Quite obviously, soul backup was a skill available only once. If it was available more than once, it would have been called a loop instead. Anyways, as long as he chose to use soul backup once, everything would be over if he died again. This unprecedented power would never be once more, and would disappear forever. However, Kang Chol and's face flashed with confidence. I mean, of course it would. He had already seen the future and Kang Chol and would be reborn as a stronger Grand Sovereign with his past experiences and mistakes behind him. All the trials and errors as well as threats of death would be no more. And a few of his fatal mistakes, 
such as his rashness and disregard for key individuals, as well as negligence of information and intellect, he would never make the same mistakes again. I will be a grand sovereign, complete and without error. As King Chol clenched his fists and assured himself. A fiery pain stabbed him in the middle of the heart. He grabbed his chest and clenched his jaw. Rothschild. You cockroach. The origin of the pain was a painful memory. His body was that of a young 28-year-old man, but his mind still remembered the pains of the past the humiliation of being defeated by an enemy he had stomped on over and over again. His neck burned also where his head had severed, and the memory had sent chills down his spine. I will crush you. Even more than before, until you beg for death. King Cholin's eyes burned with vengeance. It was said that the one who hit forgot, but the one who got hit, could never forget. King Cholin was like that. He was not a man who would forget his enemies, and he would only be satisfied by avenging tenfold, no, a hundred times worse than what was done to him. In his fiery thoughts of vengeance towards Roth's child, another face emerged in his thoughts, the strategist Li Gong Myung. Li Gong Myung. Would he choose Roth's child once again? If he could not have him? He would break him to pieces, until one could not even recognize what he once was. That was King Jelin's way. It was then, as he was overcome with the thoughts of his enemies that a thin, low voice called him. Um, Chalin? He turned his head and a female co-worker, Lee Chilin was poking her head in the door and looking at him. Are you okay? You look sick. Lee Chilin's face looked worried. It was obvious that she was sincerely worried about him. There was no other reason as to why she would come looking for him in the bathroom after he had been in there for an hour. No one had come out of fear of Kim Minutes Chul, the CEO. I am completely fine. King Chul in answered with a leisurely smile. First, I look crazy though. Sorry, give me a minute. He excused himself and took off his suit jacket that had some water and vomit residue, throwing it in the trash can. He took some water in his hands, washing around his mouth and slicking back his hair. He undid his tie, and threw it away as well. And he looked more presentable. Chalin. Yes? The CEO is very angry. He is threatening to fire you immediately. Let him do what he wants. But you persevered well for the last 10 months. If you begged the CEO to forgive. No. Kang Chol and stopped Lee Chai Lin met sentence. A man should never beg. But. A man should never beg to anyone aside from his parents. I also don't have any intention to cower under that scum. Chol Lin. I should pack my things and leave, actually. His eyes lingered at his smartphone. It's perfect timing since we are almost done for the day. Kang Chol and flashed his signature smirk and passed Lee Chai Lin out the bathroom. No. If you go in now. Why? The CEO is waiting with a golf club, threatening to kill you if you come back. Kim Minutes Chol, who ran with gangsters a bit a while back, had the habit of creating a fearful atmosphere with golf clubs when he was angry. Oh, is he really? King Chol and snickered. The fat pig with a beer belly that sexually harassed for a living, coming for him with a golf club, it was funny to even imagine. Well, at least I won't be bored. What? Chow In, what are you saying? You will really get hurt. You know how he is. Stop. Dot, I will take care of it. So, stop. King Chol and assured Lee Chai Lin with a gentle voice and he calmly passed her towards the office. Chapter 4. Return, 2. King Chol In's first task after returning to the past, was to organize his normal life before the great summoning. And to do so, he needed to quit this dirty, horrid job. I was nothing back then, wasting away in a company like this. Before the great summoning, King Chol In was a normal, gruff young man no different from anyone else. A life struggling to make ends meet, living day to day. He flashed a smile thinking of his past ten years ago, and walked into the office. And as soon as he showed himself, all eyes fell onto him. It was obvious that they were nervous, like a group of poor farmers in the face of the government. Hey, you punk! Kim Minutes Chul, who had been prowling the office with his golf club, 
roared as he laid eyes on him. What, you punk? Kang Jialin answered. Dot, dot, the office went cold. The male employees thought, Kang. Chow in, he has finally lost it from all the stress. He has lost it. Wow, he isn't even scared. Poor guy, he should just let it slide. These are tough times. And the female employees thought, oh my, what is he going to do? That CEO, he is a gangster. Is Chowlin going to be alright? Wait, what? What you punk? Yeah, you punk. Dot, Kim Minutes Chow felt like his blood was flowing backwards. Who would have guessed, the CEO being cursed by a newbie not even a year into the real world. You dot you. Little intern bug. Who do you think? What do you mean who? It's a newly rich, oily fat bastard. Or what, a gangster? Thug? That did it. Many who used to or currently use their fists for any gain, tended to react sensitively to the word thug, calling themselves gangsters, or a man with a chivalrous spirit. It was crap. In the eyes of Kang Chao In, anyone seeking to gain by using violence was the same thing, scum. Especially, gangs had evolved after the 90s to use the law to their advantage and hid behind enforcement and authority. Kim Minutes Chao was a perfect example of this. Well, I say it like it is. What else would I call a thug? Human trash? Kang Chul and sneered at the evil CEO, unfazed by Kim Minutes Chul's obvious anger. And in that, Kim Minutes Chul exploded. Hey, you fucking bitch. The golf club with a loud whoosh, fell on Kang Chul in. It had happened in the blink of an eye. But the club hit nothing but hair. Huh? Kim Minutes Chul looked around. False swing. Kang Chul and sneered at Kim Minutes Chul. He had avoided the club swung at full speed just by leaning slightly away. This son of a bitch. Kim Minutes Chul, red faced and overcome with anger, ran towards Kang Chul in. However, he could not even brush the corner of Kang Chul in's clothes. But was it surprising? Kang Chul in was recognized even by others of his physical strength and power, even in such form, he was still Kang Chul in. One needed to be at least a professional boxer to be a threat, and even that would have nothing against him in two months. Huff. Huff. You little rat. Kim Minutes Chell huffed and puffed, gritting his teeth. Aren't you the incompetent one, not being able to hit me? Kang Chell and smirked. More importantly. And his expression changed. His burning eyes seemed to pierce the heart. You play with the golf club one more time and it won't be fun anymore. It was a clear warning. However, Kim Minutes Chul, already overcome with anger and unable make proper judgments, ignored the warning and lunged forward. I mean, if he swung around golf clubs in his office because he was a little angry, it was obvious the man didn't have common sense nor courtesy. Die, you dog. Crack. Ah. Kim Minutes Chul fell, with one lone scream. The man on the ground could not even breathe normally. The fist had struck right in the gut. Black dot blitch. The blow was so strong that Kim Minutes Chell vomited all the fish stew that he had had for lunch that day. You don't take punches well. I thought you would hold at because you are fat. Kang Chell and looked to Kim Minutes Chell and delivered the final insult. Boss. Are you alright? An employee rushed to Kim Minutes Chell's side and assisted him. Oh. Our boss. Kang Chow In, you jerk. Get on your knees and apologize to the CEO now. His calculating move made Kang Chow In hopeful of his success in the workplace in the future. Even if he was just going to be here, rotting away. Kang Chow In did not respond to the male employee. He was not worth even acknowledging. Human groups. They were all the same. The pig that swung golf clubs out of anger and the calculating scum that sought favor from the pig. Of course, he had no intention of purely criticizing the male employee for being calculating. It was not bad to try and survive, one needed to do what one needed to do to live. But, to throw one's pride and everything else away for it, didn't seem too appetizing. And to reminisce at Kim Minutes Chell's previous actions. He could only flash a bitter smile. You dot you jerk. I. I will kill you. You bug. 
Kim Minutes Chul, being escorted by the male employee, spitefully glared at King Chul N. Call Manager Park. Tell him to crush him. Manager Park was a thug who worked for Kim Minutes Chul and oversaw a small gang. Oh, I'm so scared. King Chul N scoffed. Times have changed and he was still trying to use violence over a petty argument, and announcing it in front of people. Kang Chul and wondered if Kim Minutes Chul was just stupid or unable to see logic, overcome with anger. You jerk. If Manager Park arrives. Kim Minutes Chul brought up Manager Park repeatedly, threatening Kang Chul N. It seemed like he had no doubt Manager Park would be able to take down Kang Chul N. Ah uh ah. -uh. M. Manager Park. Looking behind Kang Chul N, the person he had sought for this whole time could be seen. Coincidentally, Manager Park had come into the office. CEO Kim? Manager Park seemed a little taken aback at the unexpected satiation, but he ordered his subordinates to assist Kim Minutes Chul. Oh. Dot Manager Park. That jerk hit me. He hit me. Kim Minutes Chul whined to Manager Park hanging on to him, leaving out the part where he had swung the club first. That jerk, because I lectured him a little because I told him to do his job right. He cursed at me and hit me. Boss. The whole story. Never mind the whole story. He hit me. Beat him right now. Kim Minutes Chell was stubborn. He caused a ruckus, waving his arms and legs like a whining toddler. You stupid idiot. What are you doing in front of all the employees? In that moment, Manager Park felt a headache coming but also could not ignore the complaints of his boss. Kim Minutes Chell was the fatal source of income for him and his family, which was nothing but a small gang. I'll need to clean it up briefly. Manager Park made up his mind and decided to clean up the office first. What are you all looking at? When Manager Park roared, all eyes fell back to their respective desks. Everyone, quiet, work quietly. Instead of needlessly gossiping. And team manager O. Manager Park pointed at the calculating male employee who had helped Kim Minutes Chul. Bring the CEO back to his office. Oh, yes. Let us. Let us go, boss. Team Manager Rose struggled to help Kim Minutes Chul who was fat and overweight. Ha ha. You are dead now, you jerk. Kim Minutes Chul, on his way to his office snickered at Kang Chul N. It was as if the image of Kang Chul N be it to death by Manager Park, was already ingrained in his head. Oh, really? Kang Chal In, who had been silently watching the situation unfold, had nothing else to say. He really did put on every kind of show. He wondered how he could have worked at such a company for nine months. Hey, Indern. As Kang Chal In was wondering, Manager Park called him. You should have known when to lower your pride. Just because he gave you an earful, you shouldn't come at him like that. You should have just agreed with him and left it at that. Manager Park, although he scolded Kang Chal In, didn't seem too convinced. He also knew well of CEO Kim Minutes Chal's wrongdoings, and he had received immense stress from him until that point. Although he worked for Kim Minutes Chal, he didn't understand this young intern's anger. I will scold him a little and let it go. Manager Park made up his mind. These were new times, and using fists to solve problems were no more. A wise thing for a gangster living in these times would be to roughly create a situation where Kim Minutes Chul would be satisfied. However, all of Manager Park's good intentions disappeared with the intern's smug tone. What adult? Kang Chul and asked. In your eyes, that pig looks like an adult? Well I guess for a gangster. The financer is the adult. The veins bulged in the slicked back forehead of Manager Park. Hey. Manager Park glared at Kang Chul N. Watch your mouth. Think of the situation, think of the person. That's how you live for a long time. Yeah? That rule only applies to thugs like you. The word thug triggered Manager Park, as it did Kim Minutes Chul, and he clenched his fists. You crazy dog. You want to die? It seemed as if Manager Park's two subordinates were more infuriated than the manager himself. You little dog, did you just call my boss a thug? Oh, you smile? You want me to ruin your face? And a threatening atmosphere formed.
as if punches were going to be thrown at any minute. Sigh. I was just going to let it go, but I need to fix your attitude today. Manager Park did not lose his cool and calmly let his anger simmer despite being insulted. You, follow me up to the roof. Manager Park pointed to the off store. No, not like that. Kang Jelin answered. You follow. And he exited the office door first. Dot what is that kid? Manager Park scoffed at this absurd situation. Chapter 5. You, work for me. Kang Chal In, Manager Park, and two gangsters faced off on the windy rooftop. I still have a little headache. I should rest for a couple days. Kang Chal In was busy thinking of other things even in front of three well-built gangsters. It was understandable. A lion would not be afraid or restless because of some flies on him, just bothered, and like so, Kang Chol and didn't have any interest. First, I'll rest for a couple days. Then what should I do first? I should first work out again. Oh. Quack Young. Quack Young first. And right then, he decided that he would need to find a strategist who would match up to Lee Gong Myung. From you all of Kang Chol and's tasks, finding Quack Young was top priority. It seemed logical because around this time, Lee Gong Myung would have been attending Harvard University in the United States with Alex Roth's child, building their friendship, making it difficult for him to approach anyway. In contrast, Kwak Yung might be easy to find. According to the word on the street, Kwak Yung was from Seoul, and although it was not solid information, it was enough to go on. I must find him. It is not too hard to find someone in South Korea. If you have a name, one could search for them on Facebook or Twitter, and if not those two, then Google. If these ways didn't work, one could hire a detective, it would cost some money, but to locate someone in a short amount of time, this would be the best way. I'll make some inquiries. It would be better to spend some money than to be stuck in a room with a computer, searching for Kwak Yung's whereabouts. I mean, he does have a reputation to maintain as the Grand Sovereign. If it is a private detective office or inquiry office, it was usually run by gangsters and thugs. The thought flashed through his mind, and that thought brought Kang Jolin's eyes to the gangster standing in front of him. Here are just the perfect ones at the perfect time. Kang Jolin's mouth flashed a large smile. What is this, this dog? Manager Park who met the eyes of Kang Jolin shivered, as chills spread all over his body. He felt uneasy as if he became prey, and he also bruised his ego. And a thought popped into his head, that he might be the one to get hurt instead of Kang Jolin. Hey, gangster boss. Kang Jolin called manager Park. Gang. Boss? Well, of course you are a gang boss, what else would you be, a civilian boss? You little. I'm not scared of you, so cut the bluffing. I want to make an appealing offer. Dot. The three gangsters, including Manager Park was speechless for a moment and Kang Chol and continued. You. Kang Chol and poked Manager Park's chest. Work for me. Manager Park was speechless and stared at Kang Chol in, baffled at this unimaginable situation. He could think nothing else than to beat some sense into this rude little bastard. The problem was the bastard who said this meant every word. You crazy bastard. Manager Park's subordinate who could not hold his anger any longer roared, and took a swing at Kang Jolin. What is this? Kang Jolin easily dodged the swing, and threw a knee kick. With a large ripping noise, the manager's subordinate fell like a rag doll. The gangster clutched his stomach, groaning. He got knee kicked as a counter after he stupidly used his fists, and the damage was not something that would be overcome that easily. Bo. Boss. The other gangster who was the youngest of the three called to manager Park. And he lunged at Kang Jolin. Hey, you bastard. The gangster tried to pin down Kang Jolin by using all his body, which seemed to easily weigh more than 100 kilograms. However, Kang Jolin had once been the strongest man on earth. Even without his skills, his power would be unmatched by a common human. Bam, bam. A one-two punch landed on his face crack. And a hook landed on the gangster's chin. Thud. The large gangster fell on the ground, 
making a sound so loud that it seemed as if a stone had split in half. And he was silent. He had knocked out. This bastard. Is he an athlete? Manager Park who had seen his two subordinates fall in a flash then realized that he had messed with the wrong man. What athlete? Kang Chol and answered, smirking. Anyways, why don't you give me an answer to my appealing offer? Work under me? This bastard. You will anyways. Shut your mouth. And with that, Manager Park lunged at Kang Chol in. And Kang Chol in noticed that Manager Park had used a ground fighting technique as he lurched at him like a bear. It seemed like he did have an athletic background. You have met your match today, you bastard. Manager Park roared. You could feel the determination in his voice to pin Kang Chol into the ground. But, unfortunately, Manager Park's determination was nothing but a delusion. Kang Chol in had been gifted in his strength and leadership at birth, but he was also an extremely hard-working man. In his past life, he had mastered and studied almost all contemporary martial arts on his own. And Manager Park, who was amateur at best, was no match. Wish wish. Kang Chol in turned his body and bore into the manager's sides. Huk. And the surprised shout was brief as Kang Chol and grabbed manager Kang's waist, and lifted him backwards, flipping him on his back. It was a modified suplex. Thud. Manager Park landed on his back on the roof. Oh dot ouch. Manager Park gripped his back and moaned. Stand up. It doesn't even hurt that bad. Kang Chol and said, heartlessly. To be honest, suplex is not a skill that inflicts too much damage but that is in the instance that the skill is performed on top of a mat. If it is performed on bare ground, it would not be an exaggeration to say that the damage could be fatal. You dot you bastard. I'll kill you. And Manager Park's initial thoughts to just scold Kang Chol in lightly and let it go, disappeared. You bastard. Manager Park stood up and lunged at Kang Chol in again. It seemed like he had quite a bit of pain tolerance and endurance being a gang boss and all. Not bad. But he needs to know his place. Kang Chol and recognized Manager Park's endurance, but decided that he will teach him a lesson. If you wanted to have someone work under you, you would need control. Thwack. Kang Chol and spun a low kick, hitting Manager Park's calf. Ah. Manager Park screamed. However, he wasn't faced and Manager Park came at Kang Chol in again closing the distance between them. It was Manager Park's pride that would not allow him to lose. Oh? How long are you going to hold out? Kang Chol in thought, as he hit the manager's left calf again with a low kick. He hit the same spot. Thwack. A tenacious, clear sound filled the rooftop. Ugh. It would not have been a surprise if Manager Park had broken his shin. Plop. Manager Park fell to his knees. His legs had gone limp. It probably didn't break? Kang Chol and looked at Manager Park as if he was a piece of art that he had painted and mumbled to himself. And for Manager Park listening in, Kang Chol and was adding fuel to fire. You evil bastard! Manager Park exclaimed, as if he was complaining of an unfair situation. Just beat me up. You hit the same place over and over again you bastard! As he was screaming tears were streaming down his face, and snot was running from his nose. On the rooftop of a building in Sokodong, a grown adult, whose job was a gang boss, was crying with snot running down his face. He still hasn't learned. And looking at this, Kang Chol in's face seemed unsatisfied. Hasn't learned yet? Manager Park flinched. Was this not over yet? I'll massage you for a little while longer. Kang Chol and flashed an evil smile and stepped towards Manager Park. Mo dot mom. Manager Park recognized that his endurance and pride as a gangster was breaking down as he called for his mother, who he had left behind in his hometown. And soon after, the sound of pig slaughter and blows landing filled the rooftop and rose to the sky. Hi. This is Novel Admire. Thanks for the visit. Chapter 6. I will give you a hundred thousand dollars. The rooftop of a building in Sokodong. On the windy rooftop, three gangsters including Manager Park was kneeling in front of a man, sniffling. 
Sob. Sob. It, it hurts so much. Mo. Mother. The gangsters who had received Kang Chalin's brutal mental training had thrown away all manly pride and dignity. To that extent, Kang Chalin's blows were scary and merciless. Stop crying. Kang Chalin, who was sitting dangerously on the rooftop edge, said, It dotted just hurts so bad. I think. We need to go to the hospital. The gangsters moaned and defended themselves. Do you guys need some more mental training? Kang Chol and asked with a disapproving look. No, no. It doesn't hurt. The gangsters all exclaimed together. MMM. Good. And Kang Chol and smiled and nodded approvingly. Hey, you gang boss. Yes, yes. Manager Park answered the call of Kang Chol and you, you need to run an errand for me. An errand? Find a person for me. Dot, an inquiry office or things like that, isn't that gangster's specialty? Ye. Yes. And like Kang Chol and said, Manager Park was running a personal inquiry office. It was a sort of side job. Write it down. Huh? Write it down. Yes. Manager Park quickly shuffled inside the pocket of his suit jacket and pulled out a cheap Monami pin along with a small notebook. The name is Kwakyung, age 28, area is Seoul. They say he is a heavy chain smoker and will go through a pack in a sitting, so keep note of that. Yes. Kwakyung. 28. Seoul. Chain smoker. Manager Park carefully wrote down all that Kang Chol and had said. How long would it take? Excuse me? How long does it take? That. Um. Well. Is this it? What is? So. Just a name, age, area, and him being a chain smoker. This can't be all the information you. That's it. Dot. Manager Park's mouth hung open at Kang Chol and's careless response. Um. I'm sorry to ask this. But don't you think there is too little information? Really? In that moment, Kang Chol and was taken aback. Thinking about it more, there was some truth in what Manager Park said. There was very little information. It would have been easier to at least know his alma mater, but all Kang Chol and knew about Kwak Young was what he said to Manager Park above. He too, had never met Kwak Young. Did I ask too much? No, no. Why would I make an inquiry if he was easy to find? And Kang Chol and who had developed a bit of a soft heart soon regained the cruel and wicked mind of an employer. Hey, gang boss. Yes, sir. If you are running an errand office, act like one. Dot excuse me? If I had a lot of information, there will be no point in me asking you, would there? But. But? Dot nothing. And manager Park had to accept Kang Chol and's inquiry with not much choice. Time? Well because we don't have much information. If it was fast, maybe two or three months, and if it was long, maybe a year? And if it takes years, then you would just have to say it would be impossible to find him. You get six months. Dot yes, sir. Price? Manager Park's eyes widened in surprise. You. You will pay money? If I made an inquiry, I should pay. I thought you told me to work under you. So. A subordinate does not get paid? It's not that. Speak clearly. It's just that. I lost to you, and you told me to work under you. So I thought you were going to take our gang. And in hearing that, Kang Chol and face crumpled. Did you say you were called Manager Park? Park Dusik. You can just call me Dusik, sir. Park Dusik. Yes. Park Dusik. Yes, sir. In your eyes. Doesn't look like I would just go and be a gang boss? No. No sir. And manager Park, no, Park Dusik who felt danger immediately answered with a loud voice. I. Kang Chol and began to speak with a low, authoritative voice. I hate gangsters. Using your fist and violence to con others, your kind is the one I hate the most. Strong against the weak, and weak against the strong, the worst of the worst. And in the criticisms of Kang Chao In, all three gangsters including Park Dusik could not say anything. First, what he said was true and in 30 minutes of mental training, 
they realized blows will land the minute they raised any opposition anyway. Well, I'm in no position to say these things to you as well but. You've heard of hating your own race. Honestly, Kang Chol In was in no place to lecture the gangsters. He too had used force and power to make countless sovereigns of Bangia bow down to him. He was the gangster of Bangia. However, there were a couple things different between Kang Chol In and the gangsters. One was that he would not bow down to anyone. If you want to act tough, be tough even when someone holds a knife to your neck, Kang Chol In said. Isn't it embarrassing to act all tough depending on who you are talking to? What is this about loyal gangsters and chivalry? You gangsters are nothing but hyenas following the smell of money. You are nothing but items that are thrown away after being used. And less than zero. One percent of gangsters become CEOs or bosses of anything when they get older, most just get stabbed and die early or go in and out of prison. I won't be like that, I will be successful. Throw those groundless hopes in the trash. Kang Chol In's words accurately pointed out the limitations of being a gangster, limitations and qualities that were a characteristic of gang members from thousands of years ago. And after the fifth act, being a gangster will not be too fun. Even if this country has gone to hell, the public still has a lot of power. You've never heard of the war against crime? As Kang Chol In spoke, the three gangsters just blinked and listened as if they were all mute. For them who were uneducated and stupid, it was difficult to understand all of what Kang Chol In was saying. Park Du Sik, who was the mob boss seemed to understand a little. Anyways. Kang Chol In tilted his head sideways, as if too annoyed and bothered to speak further and clarified him and Park Du Sik's relationship. You work for me, but I have no intention of being a mob boss. When I need an errand done, you need to get that done for me. Do you understand? Yes, boss. Park Dusik nodded. The fee for the inquiry would be 20,000 up front, and 80,000 after you find Quack Young. It will be 100,000 total. And the three gangsters' eyes opened wide. 100,000? Why? Too little. It's too much. No, it needs to be at least that much. To find the one person who could go against Lee Gong Myung, or even be him, 100,000 was basically nothing. No, but this is too much. For this kind of inquiry, it would start at 8,000 to max of 30,000. If I say I will pay, I will pay. Oh, you by chance. Kang Chul In's eyes narrowed and glared at Park Do Sik, as if he realized something. You must think how I can pay that much money being an intern. No, no. Park Dusik shook his head and waved his hands. It was the image of a man whose intentions had been found out. What do you mean no? Kang Chul and smirked. I will write you a contract. In three days, I will bring 20,000 in cash and be at your office. It would not be a bad deal even with just the 20,000 anyways. Park Dusik? who had been found out was speechless and could only blink in response. Well, then I will be leaving, so you clean up after yourselves. We will talk more in detail at the office then. Kang Chul and with those words left the rooftop. Dot, 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 it was silent between the three gangsters who had been left on the rooftop. Boss. The first one who spoke was the muscle who had been hit on the chin by Kang Chul N. What, punk? Park Dusik answered. What should we do? Should I gather all the boys? Boys? You aren't going to get revenge? Even if he is good, he is alone. There is strength in numbers. Dot Kwong Pil. Yes, boss. The gangster called Kwong Pil answered to Park Dusik's low voice. You, can you land even one punch? Dot, punk, even if I haven't been in a while. I was once the gold medalist of the national sports meet. I know, boss. That guy, no, that boss, isn't just anyone. Even with tens of us, we probably won't be able to bring him down. From the start, if you aren't a professional boxer, you won't even be his match. You call the guys, and you are just prepping for morning. Park Dusik remembered Kang Chol In's fighting skills, and shook his head. Boss but we have a face to maintain. Why, because your pride is hurt so you will go at him again. 
It's. It's not that. But. Leave it. Why dance with knives just to clean up after the CEO? Although his pride was hurt, Park Dusik was not stupid enough to retaliate because of an incident like this. For some reason, I don't have a bad feeling about this one. Park Dusik looked thoughtful for once. I don't know if we can believe him, but if he pays a 100,000 for an errand, it is better than cleaning up after a couple of newly rich kids. Boss. You believe him? He looks like a young little thing. Hey, you stupid idiot. Park Dusik roared. You, did you ever meet someone who used his fists that well and had that much guts? He isn't just anyone, even with just a glance. Even if you waved a branding iron in front of his face, he would not have blinked an eye. That's true. You will survive as a gangster with a knife or people. Fists. Don't be stupid. Like that boss said, gangsters these days have no fun. You throw around punches and fool around in these times, and you will go in and out of school collecting more and more stars. Dot, we won't lose anything anyway, so let's just wait. Let's wait and see, it won't be too late for a decision then. First, we should see if he brings the 20,000 in three days. And the eyes of Park Dusik shine sharply. At the same time, Kang Chol and who had gone in a taxi had been quietly heading to his studio apartment. Finding Kwak Yung has been done for now. And now I need to focus on exercise with the remaining time. It was crucial to train the body with the great summoning ahead. Pangaea was a different world than Earth. There were all sorts of dangerous monsters all over, and there were no laws governing the lands. To prepare for any situation, it was necessary to build strength and power. I also should get a gym membership. Wait. How much is in my bank account? To build muscle in a short amount of time, one on one personal training was needed from a good trainer. And to get a trainer, one needed quite a bit of money, so Kang Chol and checked his bank account with his smartphone app. Crap. There was no money. I can't even give those kids the money up front. Forget the $20,000, there was barely enough for $2,000. It wouldn't even be enough to maintain dignity as a grand sovereign. I'll need to borrow some. Kang Chao In, even as he saw his empty bank account, was calm. It was nothing, to get a private loan. He would be filthy rich in 3-4 months. Chapter 7 The Great Summoning, Again Kang Chao In got the 100,000 by using all means. Aside from the 20,000 he had borrowed from the bank. The interest for all the rest was 34.9% per year, or even more, but Kang Chol In was not afraid of the interest. It was recklessness stemming from confidence. Here is the upfront payment of 20,000. I put in 5,000 more so eat a meal with your subordinates. And as promised, Kang Chol In who had come to Park Du Six's office, placed 20,000 in cash on top of a desk, and signed the contract. You didn't have to do this much. Ha ha, Park Dusik who was on the fence about trusting Kang Chol and for the last three days rubbed his hands together smiling when he saw Kang Chol and and his cool spending habits. Report to me if you have anything. Yes, boss. Oh, and. Yes? Can you get me a car? A car, sir? From what I know, you guys do some used car dealings as well? Ah, that. I don't have enough to deal used cars because as you know, we are small, but I can ask around for you. After hearing what Park Dusik had to say, Kang Chol In thought for a while, and spoke. Can you find a car that I can have starting tonight? Rent, lease, used, it doesn't matter. I'll need it three months at most anyways. He did need a car. He was a grand sovereign, after all and it was uncomfortable for him to use public transportation like buses or the train. What kind of car? A coupe. Kang Chol In answered. I would like a Chevrolet Corvette or Ford Mustang. The price doesn't matter, around that price is fine. Again, I won't be using it for long. Because his budget was limited still, he chose muscle cars like Corvettes and Mustangs. I will find out right away. Park Dusik took his smartphone out right away and spoke on the phone for about 10 minutes. They will bring a Mustang right away. It is a rental, 
but they need a down payment of about 10% because it is a foreign car. Hey, you! Kang Chol and Kao Guang Pil upon hearing about the down payment. Yes, yes? Oh Guang Pil, who almost had his chin broken by Kang Chol and hook, hesitated and headed towards Kang Chol and with a slightly frightened expression. Don't be scared. I won't hit you. Yes, yes. Think. Thank you. Go get my money. The password is 4581. Kang Chol and handed a Wang Pil his card. How, how much do I withdraw? O Wang Pil asked, relieved that Kang Chol and would not hit him. Two. Two dollars? O Kwang Pil made a stupid expression. Do sick, right? Kang Chol and looked to Park Do sick. Are all your guys like this? I'm, I'm sorry. Park Do sick's face was red as he bowed his head in embarrassment. Hey, you stupid idiot. Park Do sick roared as he kicked O Kwang Pil's large. Thick butt. Ugh. Why are you still here? Go bring the money. It's. It apostrophe s dot the amount. You think the big boss would ask you to withdraw two dollars? Huh? You stupid idiot. Park Dusik had began to call Kang Chol and big boss. I. I will go right away. Oh Kwang Pil went out of the office like a boar who had been burned after being slapped multiple times. Both, in a social setting and in a gang. It is tiring to deal with those who don't have any sense. 10%. If it is a Mustang, the down payment would probably be about 8-9,000, and the monthly rate would be right under 1,000? Yes, boss. It probably will be around that much. You take care of the insurance and stuff as well, and then with the rest, split it in half with the one bringing the car and yourself. Ria dot really? Park do six eyes widened. Who would have thought that Kang Chol and would be this generous? Don't make me say it twice. Yes, boss. Kang Chol and with that, ended his deal with Park Do Sik. Quack Young. For right now, this is the end. If there are connections between us, I would be able to find you. Of course, even if it wasn't meant to be, he did not have any intentions of giving up on Quack Young either. If it wasn't meant to be? You can make it meant to be. He was going to use any means necessary to have Kwak Yung work under him. That was the style and way of the Grand Sovereign, Kang Jolin. Then, report to me once every two weeks. I will see you after three months. Yes, boss. Drive carefully. Kang Jolin left Park Dusik's office in his Mustang. The Mustang, a symbol of the American muscle car with a V8 engine, seemed to flaunt its power as the engine revved. Not bad. Although it could not give him the satisfaction of the Bugatti Veyron that he rode in his past life, the American muscle car had its charms. Kang Chol and who had inquired about the whereabouts of Kwak Yung to Park Dusik and his gang, focused only on exercise and working out as he waited for the great summoning. Pangaea was a land where dangerous monsters roamed all around, and to survive in such a place, it was necessary to build strength. And like that, two months passed. And it was December 24, 2020, one day before the Great Summoning. And, Kang Chol and went to bed that night with a composed, calm nature. Calling, the dream that will lead everyone to Pangaea, would come to him when he fell asleep. Father. Just before he fell asleep, Kang Chol and thought of his father who had passed away. Usually, the person that he trusted most would appear in the calling, whether it was a god or human. In Kang Chol In's case, his late father had appeared and led him to the landmark. Perhaps, his late father would appear in his dream again after he fell asleep. As he was thinking so, his eyes slowly closed. I don't have to say anything, right? Surprisingly, it was not his father who had appeared in the calling. I'll just be tired if I say it, do it well. It was himself, the Grand Sovereign Kang Chol In fully equipped with the epic item Volley's Burning Vengeance armor set in the Sword Frag Rock. I really do all sorts of things. The present Kang Chalim snorted. The one he trusted and believed in the most, was himself. It was funny. You will not fail this time? The past Kang Chalim asked. Of course. The present Kang Chalim answered with a faint smile. There is no such thing as two failures. 
If he fails again after returning, he would be nothing more but the most powerless sovereign throughout history. Next morning, 30,000 people from around the world, and future travelers to a different dimension, began to search for their landmarks. This was a silent change. The superpower nations that surveilled the entire world through satellites, as well as the Echelon, a surveillance system that wiretaps the entire world under the control of England and the United States, network, would also not recognize the signs of the impending Great Summoning. Only Kang Chol In would see what was to come. Kang Chol In, after waking up, got in his Mustang and headed towards the 63 building, one of Seoul's landmarks. He could have looked for other landmarks, but he went to the 63 building in case of any random variables. Like the butterfly effect, a small insignificant thing could twist the determined future. And, he did not want the misfortune of not getting his sovereign class because he had gone to a different landmark than in his previous life. Jin, the 63 building is called so, because it has 63 floors, Kang Chol and paced around in front of the 63 building solemnly and waited for the great summoning. Five minutes. Four minutes. And one minute. As it grew closer to ten in the morning, the clear skies began to fill with storm clouds. Flash. There was a flash of light as lightning fell from the sky. Crash. And there followed thunder that seemed to rip one's ears and shook the earth. And then. From the sky, a golden aura fell and shone on Kane Chalin and a few others. It's coming. Compared to others who were screaming or falling to the ground, Kang Chol and received the light calmly. There was no reason to be surprised. He had already experienced the great summoning before, and had already risen to the status of Grand Sovereign once, so it didn't make sense for him to crumble without dignity. Swish. Those who got hit by the golden light disintegrated into particles and disappeared like smoke. Kang Chol and was no exception. He also disintegrated into particles and disappeared. It was the entering into Pangaea, the Great Summoning. Shortly after, in Kang Chalin's line of vision, a message popped up. Welcome to Pangaea. And the next message. Congratulations. You have been appointed to the Sovereign Class. It was as expected. Chapter 8. Akin, the God's Representative. While the 30,000 Dimension Travelers, who were scattered all over the world, metastasized throughout Pangaea, 300 true dimension travelers of the sovereign class opened their eyes in a different location. It was a large hall bigger than most gyms. And, on the ceiling was a grand chandelier and shining floors. The wall was covered with life murals and crown portraits of people all with dark, black hair. What, what is this? Where is this? I was. At the Madison Square Garden. Those who had been appointed sovereign unexpectedly were flustered, all talking in their respective languages. Where is this? Was the dream true? Alu Akbar. Oh my god. There were also those who called out for their gods, that probably appeared in their calling. As everyone called out in confusion, one man with crossed arms was slowly scanning his surroundings amidst the chaos. It is the same. Nothing is different. It was he, Kang Chal In former Grand Sovereign. I see a few familiar faces. Kang Chol and did not know all 300 sovereigns that had gathered in the hall, but he could recognize a few familiar faces. And amongst them were a couple who he had killed himself. But. Someone called his name. Chol In? When he turned his head, a pure-looking Asian woman was looking at him with wide eyes. It was Lee Chai Lin, the employee at M Entertainment. Gosh. She was a sovereign too. Kang Chol and who had recognized Lee Chai Lin was astounded that that woman had also become a sovereign. It was something he had not known in the past. You are Chol Lin, right? Yes, I am. I was worried. What happened? No, more importantly, where is this? Do you know, Chol Lin? Lee Chai Lin didn't seem like she was in her right mind. That was understandable because aside from Kang Chol and who knew everything, this was a different world that was beyond one's imagination. Just wait and see. Kang Chol and did not pretend to not know. Huh? Chol In, what do you mean? There he is. If you listen well to what he is saying, you'll get the gist of it. Of course, it won't seem real anyways. 
Kang Chol and pointed at the platform that was at the middle of the hall. Crack. There were sparks from some current, and shortly a purple portal emerged. Welcome, sovereigns. The being who had come through the portal was not human, but had a human-like figure and was wrapped in golden light. I am Akin, the god's representative who oversees this world and who will oversee you. Akin's voice vibrated and filled the room, as if it was under the echo effect. Oversee? God's representative? What are you saying? A few sovereigns exclaimed at Akin's words. Silence. Boom. Akin's voice roared as if thunders had hit. Silence filled the hall immediately. Only Kang Chol and remained composed with his arms still crossed. There is no point complaining at him. Kang Chol and knew well of Akin, the god's representative and his role. Akin was to put in gaming terms, an operator or a NPC of sorts and could not be touched by any means. He was not an opponent that could be shaken. I know that you are all confused and puzzled. But. Akin spoke with power. Your role right now is to listen, and nothing more. Please quietly listen well to what I am about to say. It meant that he was going to have a one-sided communication, but there was no one who opposed. There was an unimaginable sense of dominance in Akin's words. You have been called the god as a sovereign the most prestigious level of dimension traveler traveling between Earth and Pangaea. Akin began his explanation. A sovereign status means that you will be managing your respective areas of land. From this moment forward, will you expand your lands to control Pangaea and reign supreme? The sovereigns began to listen carefully. However, Kang Chol In was different. Rothschild, where is this bastard? Kang Chol In was half-heartedly listening to Akin's words as he moved face to face, searching for a familiar one. Akin's words were not new to Kang Chol In, and was rather boring. It's hard to find him. He had looked carefully at the 300 faces, but he could not see Alex Roth's child. It seemed as if he was farther away. From this moment on, all your actions and decisions will be recorded onto a system and will be analyzed for the rise and fall of sovereign points. Please proceed with wisdom and caution. Akin's explanations continued for a while longer while Kang Chol and focused on other things. To summarize Akin's explanations, all sovereigns will manage one area of land respectively. The sovereign's actions will be recorded in points. There will be a yearly gathering of sovereigns and the ten sovereigns with the most points will be appointed to the position of Grand Sovereign and will have additional benefits and power. To gain more points, it will be favorable to win and conquer in war with other sovereigns. And. There will be some who have still not fully grasped what is going on. I understand. Earth is not a place where supernatural events occur. However. Akin spoke clearly so all 300 sovereigns could understand. Pangaea is not a false reality. It is reality. Therefore, death in Pangaea. Gulp. Someone swallowing echoed in the hall. Has the same meaning as dying on Earth. Whether you die in Pangaea or in Earth, the fact that you died does not change. Please be mindful of this fact, and do not waste your life in vain. Dot, dot, dot. Horror overcame the faces of the sovereigns in hearing Akin's words. However, Akin quickly continued, as if he could care less about their responses. More information will be given in detail later by your advisors, so please learn slowly. Now. It is time to choose your lands. And hundreds of models appeared when Akin waved his hands in the air. The models that have appeared are smaller versions of lands that you will get to rule. Currently, there is 10,000 gold in your inventory. With that gold, you will need to choose and purchase the land that you wish. When you purchase your land, you will be automatically transported to Pangaea. Well, then, best of luck to all of you. Akin, with those words, left in the portal in which he came. And the portal disappeared along with Akin, and the sovereigns were left in the large hall. What dot what is this? Darn. What a strange dream. What kind of irresponsible bastard is that? As soon as Ikan left, the hall filled with complaints and protests from sovereigns who could not believe what was happening to them. It was like a flea market. Every single thing is the same. Kang Chol In was reminded again that he had been rebirthed. Chol In. And in that moment, Li Chai Lin spoke to him. 
I don't know what is happening. What am I supposed to do? Kang Chol in thought for a moment and spoke. Like Akin said, you need to choose your land. I really don't understand. Even if you asked me, you will not get an answer. Excuse me? There is a saying seeing is believing. It will be faster for you to experience it for yourself. Kang Chol entreated Li Chai Lin coldly. I could help her. But then I will be adding more unexpected variables. I will need to be careful with my words. If he were to help Li Chai Lin in choosing her a land, it was more likely for her to choose a different land than what she would have chosen before. Then, it might change the determined future, so he decided to not say anything else. Of course, the future had begun to shift already, but if a big frame shifted, it would be bad. It would be right to not do anything different than before. First, let's move separately. We can talk in detail when we return to Earth. With those words, Kang Chol and moved towards the models to choose his land. Chalin. Li Chalin looked as if she was going to cry as she stared at the back of Kang Chalin. Kang Chalin immediately went to select his land. I need a mobile fortress. It would be nice if it is an airborne city. For Kang Chol and who had to suffer because of Alex Rothschild's mobile fortress, his preference for a mobile land was understandable. Therefore, he would not choose Valhalla his past headquarters. In the war between sovereigns, the mobility of land was not just a strategy but a tactical card and advantage. His teeth still clenched when he remembered how the entire Siamatis invaded Valhalla when he met his end. And that was not the end. He had tried multiple times to take out Rothschild, but he had lost him multiple times because the mobile headquarters had escaped with great speed. If Kang Chol and had a mobile fortress, he would have been able to kill Rothschild earlier, and he would not have fallen from the alliance of Balder and Gulveig. His pride would have hurt, but he could have escaped. If Rothschild had a tactical advantage only because of his mobility, he would teach Rothschild a lesson by choosing an airborne fortress. Wait. This looks different. Kang Chao In, who was looking carefully at over 900 models stopped at a land that was atop a whale's back and information about the land appeared after a few sparks appeared in the air. Dash Uranus, type, airborne city, tendency, conquest, location, southern part, Alpha and province, description, land atop the back of a flying whale, Uranus, ability, tactical weapon, hydro beam, price, 8000 gold, hydro beam. Is that the energy cannon that completes quickly? The lands that the sovereigns could buy had one or two special abilities and were limited to these, so he needed to decide carefully. It was then. Someone spoke to him as he was looking at the lands. Can you by any chance? Tell me how you got the information to pop up? Kang Chol and turned his head and looked to the person who had spoke to him. And that person was. Chapter 9. Reunion with the Enemy. Alex, Alex Rothschild. It was the Grand Sovereign who had pierced Kang Chol In's heart and cut off his head. His face is still sickening, even for the second time. Kang Chol In evaluated his enemy's face like this, the moment he faced him. Alex Rothschild. Full name was Alexander Meyer von Rothschild. He was the descendant of the Rothschild family, well known in the finance world as a powerhouse. Rothschild was the top zero. 1% of society as a Hollywood celebrity and as part of an extremely wealthy family. And it was ironic that he had fought battles upon battles and was on the brink of death countless of times because of Kang Chal In, a commoner from South Korea. If it was up to me, I want to kill him right here. But it can will not just watch. Kang Chal In, with all he had, held in the burning desire to twist Alex Rothschild's neck on the spot. Akin had disappeared from sight, but Kang Chol In knew that he would be watching from somewhere. And there were also a lot of eyes on them. He could not murder in front of 298 people, excluding himself and Rothschild. Although Kang Chol In was not one to worry about others' opinions of him, there was the right time for everything. Revenge is a dish best served cold. Kang Chol In remembered the wise saying regarding revenge and sharpened his knives quietly in his heart. It was not wise to act rashly before it was the right time anyways. 
Revenge was the best when one could plan every detail meticulously and was able to detach all humane emotion. It would be more fun to impose the maximum torture and humiliation as well. Excuse me. Can you speak English? Rothschild who was unaware of Kang Chilin's thoughts smiled kindly at him and carefully asked. I feel like throwing up. As Kang Chilin looked at the face of Rothschild that was filled with pretense, he felt himself wanting to vomit. Although Rothschild acted like the definition of a gentleman and that he worked for the benefit of the majority, in the inside, he was ruthless, cruel, and vile. Although it seemed like he was conversing with Kang Chol and with no motive, he would have previously calculated this very moment. Rothschild, in the mind of Kang Chol and was like himself, if not crueler. Kang Chol and had actually found out about a couple of evil deeds that Rothschild had committed in secret. It was a sort of hatred of one's kind. Kang Chol and had thought of Rothschild like himself and knew about his true self, therefore he despised him. If Rothschild had admitted his wrongdoings maybe the outcome would have been different, but it was not so, and therefore Kang Chol and hated this descendant of the rich family. You can't speak English. Chinese? Japanese? Rothschild asked again. Korea. Kang Chol and answered. Ah! Rothschild exclaimed, as if he realized something amazing. He was able to understand. In Pangaea, language barriers did not exist. In whatever language one spoke, it was understood 100%. I can hear it. Your words, and that person's words over there. Rothschild pointed at the person talking loudly in Arabic. The Arabian was calling for Allah and was busy practicing his religion. This situation is amazing. Assuming that it isn't a dream, of course. Rothschild was amazed. It would be difficult if it was a dream. Excuse me? No, nothing. Kang Chol and changed the subject from his unconscious answer. Yes, if it was a dream, that would be difficult. Yes, it would. I need to kill you. As Kang Chol and thought, Rothschild spoke again. If it isn't too much to ask. Can you tell me how you got the information to pop up like that? It is not hard. Just look at it for two, three seconds and it will open on its own. Ah, I see. If you got it, get lost. Dot, it makes me nauseous looking at your face. In Kang Chilin's unexpected violent language, Rothschild's face hardened and his eyes flared with rage. Kang Chilin did not fail to take note of that brief moment. However, the face quickly disappeared and the polite person's face returned. You are overstepping your boundaries. Rothschild's face as he said these words were calm and collected. He was acting like a gentleman and not a rich heir of a powerful family. What is overstepping is your social managing. It would be right to frown a little as a human being if you had something bad said to you. Isn't that so, Alex Rothschild? Dot. Rothschild was taken aback hearing his name from an unfamiliar Asian man. Do you know me? Any civilized person would have seen your face at least once. Entertainment reporters are busy writing every little thing you do. It was true. Alex Rothschild appeared very often on the media outlets for someone with a Rothschild family name. Dating a rich heiress, friendship with an actor from a pro wrestling background. Charity benefits gathering hundreds of thousands of dollars. 24 year old Rothschild was known not only in America but the whole world. Ah, that might be so. Unintentionally. What do you mean unintentionally? It's probably is a foundation for you to get your feet into the movie industry. Aren't you going to buy out 20th Century Fox? Dot, Rothschild was definitely taken aback this time. 20th Century Fox Film Corporation as mentioned by Kang Chao In, was a major film production company and the buyout deal was kept strictly confidential to the public or media. And this young Asian man had known. There is no such thing as a perfect secret. Kang Chao In did not give Rothschild a chance to protest. Whether it is business secrets, or personality, I believe that all will be exposed at some point. What do you think? Rothschild, still could not come to his senses and kept quiet as if mute. Who in the world was this man? Knowing me, sure. But how did he know about the buyout deal with 20th Fox? That aside, his words bare teeth. As if he knows me well. 
Who is he? Who are you? Rothschild ransacked his smart brain, the brain smart enough to major in business at Harvard, to find a point of contact with this unfamiliar Asian man. Where? There was no way he could get an answer. Kang Chol and had come from the past, and nationally, Rothschild could not find a connecting strand between the two of them. Spinning your brain again. Kang Chol in, looking at Rothschild, had the devil's smile on his face. Well then, keep on thinking. I will be choosing my land like a control us to do. Kang Chol in, grinning widely to mock Rothschild, moved towards the models. Wait. Who are you? Rothschild called for him, but Kang Chol in did not even look back. Your smart little brain, think all you want. You won't even be able to step on my shadow. A smile formed on the face of Kang Chol and as his back faced Rothschild. This was enough for today. If he was to attack Rothschild who knew nothing, it would bring him no satisfaction. The revenge would not materialize. Just wait. I will crush you slowly. Kang Chol and pledged his revenge. Kang Chol and with Rothschild behind him, went through the trouble of looking at all 900 models carefully. It was a wise and clever choice. The land that they were to choose in the hall was land that they would spend the rest of their life growing and living together. It was important to be cautious and sure since it could not be changed. Many lands were up for candidacy. Dash Stingray, Type, Airborne City, Tendency, Conquest, Location, Southeast, Hyperion Province, Description. Land atop the back of the flying stingray, ability, tactical weapon, venom gale, price, 8,700 gold. The stingray land was able to release a blood poison called venom gale from its long tail and seemed very powerful. Biochemical attacks, both on Earth and Pangaea, had great destructive power. However, Kang Chol and did not make the mistake of choosing his land rashly. It is tempting. But Uranus and stingray, I can't whales back and stingrays back. It got to him that both were lands that were on a living organism. Land atop a living thing was difficult. Even if it is a magical creature, it is living. It could get sick, or die during battle. Also, he would need to feed it and worry about defecation as well. It was a big responsibility and work to raise a cat or a dog, but to raise a giant animal carrying land would require immense food and work. Therefore, he eliminated lands dependent on living organisms from his list. For these reasons, Simurg, Ziz, and other lands atop animals were dropped from Kang Cholin's selection. It was not an easy thing to do to look at 900 lands while weaving through 300 sovereigns, but Kang Cholin slowly looked at the lands with patience. Meanwhile, sovereigns who had already chosen their lands were disappearing one by one. They had purchased their lands and were transported to Pangaea. Alex Roth's child also was nowhere to be seen, and Kang Chol and guessed he had chosen his mobile fortress, Simatis. It would be better to be left alone. Kang Chol and decided to just take his time in purchasing his land. To decrease chances of unforeseen variables, it was better to not disturb other sovereigns' lands anyways. The future changed the moment he had made up his mind to choose an airborne city instead of Valhalla, so for Kang Chal In, it was an inevitable thing. In order to make up for the lost space, he would need to run all over Pangaea. While Kang Chal In was taking his time, a few familiar faces passed him. From Albrecht Wilhelm, the Grand Sovereign who was the leader of the Gulveg Union to the dirty traitor Aylster. Kang Chol and who spotted him slyly pushed him to the ground after he bumped shoulders, and the Grand Sovereign Dorian Explorer who was more focused on exploring for ruins and monuments than war, there were many. It was a new experience. While he was taking his time looking at the other sovereign's land selections, most had already been transported to Pangaea and in the Great Hall, only two remained, himself and a reddish-brown-haired woman. Hecate. Kang Chol and recognized the woman right away. From Eastern Europe. The woman who preferred the nickname Hecate over her given name. She was the Grand Sovereign who had not betrayed Kang Chol into the end. Hecate was contemplating between her future land Tamir and Helios, a land that was more of a chariot pulled by four Pegasus. Tamir is perfect for Hecate. Kang Chol and smiled, remembering Hecate who reigned over Tamir. 
Dash Tamer Air, Type, Airborne City, Tendency, Conquest, Location, Western Part of Pangaea, Countach Province, Description, Land made in the form of a boat using magic spell tech, skill, tactical weapon, fire, price, 9,500 gold, Tamer Air was expensive but it was in the formation of a ship with 74 cannons, and it had unimaginable firepower. I need to intervene. Kang Jolin could not leave his future ally to choose a worthless land like Helios. If she was to choose Helios, it would come at a great loss for him. A ship seems to suit you. Kang Jolin said. Right? Hecate was cool and finical, and she answered without hesitation even when a stranger talked to her. I like it. Hecate nodded and chose to Maria without hesitation, disappearing out of Kang Jolin's sight. Now I just need to choose. It was King Jolin's turn. About 600 lands remained, excluding the 299 lands and Valhalla that he had chosen previously. Let's choose slowly. King Jolin looked at the lands slowly. It was repetitive, but King Jolin did not seem impatient or bothered. It was said that perseverance is sour, fruit is sweet. Who knows? He could buy a land that other sovereigns could slap their knees about. Chapter 11 Starting a new post at Laputa, advisors seemed to vary from land to land. Kang Jolin looked at Lucia and thought of his old advisor Alfred, the vampire butler. My lord. Caution. Your Alfred is amazed by your strength and prowess. You are getting older, so isn't it time for you to start looking for a wife? It is this Alfred's wish to see your children. Please get married before this old vampire dies. Alfred. For a vampire had a 70-year-old man's face, but he was extremely good at his job in assisting Kang Jolin. Also, usually he was a professional like no other, but he knew how to scold Kang Jolin for his rashness or to nag at him like a mother-in-law. Alfred. Kang Jolin was sad that he was to never meet Alfred again and thought of the words that he had said to Alfred. Do not act trashly and do not tremble with fear. Maintain your dignity. We have not lost yet. We may lose today, but not next time. It was. Before the end of Valhalla, King Jolin had said those words and calmed down Alfred. That was not a lie. Although Valhalla had disappeared with the times into a history that never happened, King Jolin remembered those times. Alfred, are you watching? If you can, if you can see me. Wait for it. I will make those cowards pay for messing with Valhalla. King Jolin promised and pledged to Alfred who had remained faithful and loyal to him until the end. This time around, he would crush Roth's child, unify Pangaea, and take possession of the glorious title of emperor amongst the ten grand sovereigns. My lord. Can you hear me, my lord? The advisor Lucia, who did not know of King Jolin's thoughts carefully spoke. It was obvious she was very worried she would displease him in any way. Ah. Are you my advisor? King Jolin finally turned his eyes towards Lucia. Yes, my lord. My name is Lucia. Lucia bowed towards King Jolin again. Lucia. You don't seem like a humanoid, are you human? In Pangaea, there were other life forms that were cousins to humans. Primary examples would be elf, dark elf, vampire, lycanthrope, dwarf, orc, mermaid, devil angel and a couple more that were fewer in number. Combined, there were about 20 different life forms. Those who were advisors to sovereigns, or the NPC unit that came along with the land purchased, were always other life forms. However, Lucia did not have any characteristics of a life form that Kang Jolin was aware of. No. Lucia answered. Not human? Yes, my lord. My roots are human but my body was engineered as a magical design and therefore am not a humanoid, nor human. MMM. I see. It was somewhat complicated, but it seemed that she would be more powerful than a human woman, and therefore he nodded his head and waved his hand in the air. My lord. Speak. With my limited intelligence, I believe that you are not from Pangaea, but from a foreign land far away. You are right. It was mostly true, so King Jolin nodded. Although you are the highest sovereign, I think there are some things you have not been able to completely understand because you are from a different land. Therefore, 
This Lucia. No. Kang Chol and cut Lucia off. I know your role is to help the sovereign adjust to the new surroundings, but I do not need it. But. You don't need to worry. First, can you wait while I take care of some things? Yes, my lord. Lucia followed the wishes of Kang Chao in, but had a worried expression on her face. It is my job to help the lord adjust to life in Pangaea, but he has turned it down. Does he not like me? Lucia was restless in the thoughts that Kang Chao in did not take a liking to her. First, it would be good for me to check my information and the land's current status. Kang Chao in did not care about Lucia's restlessness, and moved to the tasks that he must complete. Open my information. As soon as the order left his lips, an information screen showed his current descriptions. Dash my information, name, Kang Chao in slash rank, sovereign slash class. Warrior, score, 0 point slash complete ranking, level, level 1, specialty, conquest, B grade, tendency, conquest sovereign, kind, human, skill, locked, unlocked when grand sovereign status is obtained, spouse, maximum of 7, charisma, 67, B plus, H, P, 200 200, mana, 100 100, physical attack, 67, Magic Attack, 10, Physical Strength, 120, Intelligence, 141, Agility, 110 Slash Spell Management, 20, Accuracy Rate, B Plus, Evasion Rate, B, Fatal Blow, B, Defensive Power, 9% Slash Endurance, 3%, Finance, D, Internal Affairs, E, Resource, B, Politics, C Plus, Diplomacy, C slash command, A plus, attack, A plus, defense, C, military force, A plus, charm, A plus, obtained points, 0, plus 5 per level, remaining points, 0, not bad. Actually, much better than when I first started. The past level 1 Kang Chol in and the current level 1 Kang Chalin had a big difference in ability. It probably was due to the experiences of the past that had influenced him and allowed him to obtain a good score. Kang Chol-in's abilities were definitely great. It was probably enough to place him in the top 1% of the 300 sovereigns. Okay, so the weaker areas will be filled naturally as my level rises, so there will be no need to worry greatly. Kang Chol-in smiled, pleased after checking his, my information, menu. Next. It was his turn to check the state of the Sky Fortress, Laputa. Kang Chao In, who had high expectations about the land quickly ordered to see the information screen. A brief overview of Laputa appeared. Dash Sky Fortress, Laputa, Type, Airborne City, Tendency, Multipurpose, Location, Southwest Pangaea, Pandemonium Province, Description, Ancient Empire Fortress supplied with advanced magic, skill, cloaking, Self-healing system, additional options, cosmic force, a multi-purpose magic engineering satellite, Lord, Conquest Sovereign Kang Jolin, Level, Level 1, Maximum Growth to Level 30, Status, Calm, Maneuver, Landed State, Gold, Mana, Fuel used for takeoff, Lowest Speed, 5 km slash H, Fastest Speed, 100 km per hour, Fastest Speed Limit depending on level. Basic expense, 100 gold slash 30 days, fluctuates depending on land condition, public order, very good slash financial affairs, weak, food, a small shortage, population, 500 500, military force, 100 100, facilities, 11, durability, 1000 1000, loyalty, 90 90, everything seems to be okay other than the finance and food. I would need to take care of these as soon as possible. The finance and food was short because he had used 9,800 gold out of the 10,000 given to him in the beginning to purchase the land. I will need to fix these one by one. Next, Cosmic Force. Kang Chol and briefly checked the status of the land and then ordered the information on the additional option of Cosmic Force. Dash Cosmic Force, Type, Magic Engineered Artificial Satellite, Tendency multi-purpose, description, an artificial satellite with advanced magical engineering, level, 
Level 1, Maximum Growth Level 5, Level 1, Expiration, Able to be used, Level 2, Location System, Unable to be used, Level 3, Pulse Wave, Unable to be used, Level 4, Unable to be used, Unlocked 1 Level 4 Obtained, Level 5, Unable to be used, Unlocked 1 Level 5 Obtained This is crazy. Kang Chol and was surprised once again after seeing the brief information on Cosmic Force. Exploration is Recon, and the location system is GPS. Pulse Wave. Confusing the enemy's communication lines. These first three skills were enough to toy with the other sovereigns, but he could not even begin to imagine what the fourth and fifth levels would unlock. He thought that maybe even orbital bombardment might be possible. Kang Chol then. Remain calm. He worked hard to calm his heart that was pounding with excitement. You must be cautious. Don't waver and find ways that you can use what you have to the fullest. Even with a treasure in your hand, it is useless if you cannot use it at the right place at the right time. What comes first is to gain back your power. You cannot lose again this time. Kang Chol and steadied himself, thinking about his failed past due to his arrogance and rashness. One failure was unacceptable but another even after another life, he could not even raise his head properly in the afterlife. Sigh. Kang Chol and exhaled loudly organizing his thoughts, and decided to focus on slowly growing. Let's first complete the tutorial. When one was first given land, there were various quests to level up in the starting stages. Lucia. Kang Chol and called Lucia. Yes, my lord. Lucia answered. I am going to inspect my troops after looking over the land. Prepare accordingly. Kang Chulin's eyes twinkled as he gave his order. Chapter 12 Advisor Lucia, Kang Chulin ordered Lucia, but she did not move as if she had a mechanical malfunction. Something was bothering her. Uh, how does he know all the commands? Lucia did not show it on the outside, but in the inside, she was very surprised and taken aback. Kang Chulin who had ordered to see the, my information, and, land status, without any help from her was a shocking sight. Would he not need me, by any chance? Lucia stiffened. It was understandable. The reason for her existence was for her to advise the sovereign and girl Aputa, but if Kang Chol and considered her useless, then her existence was also useless. For Lucia, it was understandable for her to be worried and upset. Excuse me. My lord. Lucia mustered up the strength to ask Kang Chal in, because her existence was threatened. May I ask you something? Lucia, who had a cold and stern feel about her that contrasted her full body, asked Kang Chal in timidly. Kang Chal in wondered why she was acting strange, but he nodded, allowing her to speak further. Of course. You, my lord, was able to command without my help. You also were not surprised nor taken aback. Despite your sovereignty, you are too calm and composed in a strange, new place. Kang Chol and did not agree or disagree with Lucia's words, and silently listened. So that's why I am asking you. Are you, by chance, the all knowing? It was a far off guess. What the heck? Kang Chol and was taken aback by Lucia's guess. All knowing? What was he, a god? It was an absurd statement. No, I am not the all-knowing. Kang Chol and shook his head. I acted too deft. It makes sense that they are puzzled. Kang Chol and realized while Lucia had thought that and was briefly stomped on what to do next, but decided to give an evasive answer. This place is a foreign place to me, but also not so foreign. Lucia tilted her head at the confusing statement. You mean... Lucia spoke first before Kang Chulin could explain further. That the place in which you were born and here is similar. Dot, the corners of Kang Chulin's lips twitched upwards. It was annoying anyways to try to explain, but since she had misunderstood first, it made it easier for him to make up something. Yes. Kang Chulin answered quickly. So, in your hometown, did you reign over a land and was in the position of a sovereign? You are right. It was a lie, but in some sense, it was also true. It was fact that he did reign over a land and rose to the position of Grand Sovereign. Oh, I understand now, my lord. Lucia nodded her head like she understood. 
So, may I know what kind of sovereign you were, my lord? That question, King Chol and could give an answer to so he revealed his previous status as Grand Sovereign. I was a Grand Sovereign, one of the strongest sovereigns amongst sovereigns. Dot, Grand. Sovereign. Lucia shivered. It was as if she felt a shudder in Kang Chalin's words. Here, here in Pangaea, there is also a status of Grand Sovereign. They reign over large lands and command entire continents. My God! You are like a Grand Sovereign, I am honored to serve you, my Lord. Lucia's response was dramatic to a point where it left Kang Chalin surprised. However, it was not surprising. Like the sovereigns, advisors also had their own worlds. They were more revered and respected the more powerful the sovereigns they served. Then, did you also have an advisor? Lucia asked. I had a vampire butler named Alfred. How was the advisor called Alfred? Was he competent? Were you satisfied with Alfred? Lucia who was questioning King Chol and was all worked up, and eyes burned with jealousy. Competition. Kang Chol and saw right through Lucia's emotional state. Kang Chol and looked at Lucia who wanted, like a puppy, to hear that Alfred was an incompetent advisor and started to speak. Alfred was. Lucia's eyes glimmered as she concentrated on Kang Chol and. Competent. It seemed that Lucia was shocked at his answer, but Kang Chol and could not talk badly about Alfred who was faithful to him until the end. He was that good? I was able to rise to the position of Grand Sovereign because of him. Dot really? Lucia's face darkened. He was a Grand Sovereign in his hometown and had a good advisor. If by chance, what if he casts me out? Will I be thrown away? Lucia whose existence was threatened and was overcome with jealousy was about to burst in tears at any moment. Is she afraid that she will be cast out? I will need to reassure her a little. King Chao In who could see right through Lucia, smiled widely and decided to prescribe a fitting medication. Even with his horrible personality, King Chol and used to hold the position of Grand Sovereign. He knew how to handle his subordinates. Lucia. King Chol and called Lucia in a gentle voice. Yes, my lord. Lucia's voice was down. You do not need to worry. I will not abandon you. Dot, Lucia was surprised. It was understandable, seeing Kang Chol and had seen right through her. From where I'm from, the relationship between sovereign and advisor is that you can share your deepest, and most private thoughts, things that you could not even tell your family. Yes, yes. It is the same here as well. Then you will understand quickly. Listen. You are my advisor, and you are like family I would spend eternity with. Why would I abandon you? R. Is that true? Yes. Although I might know a lot more than others, there will be much that I do not yet know. Also, instead of being jealous of Alfred, you just need to be better than him. Do not look so down and let's work together in growing this land. Ah! Lucia exclaimed. Yes, what the Lord says is right. I will prove that I am more capable than Alfred. Lucia who had been encouraged by King Chol and clenched her fists and vowed that she would prove to be more useful than Alfred. Simpleton. King Chol and looked at Lucia and smirked, but he did not get caught. A sovereign must not look easy, and he needed to maintain his dignity. My lord. Lucia spoke with a determined face. Speak. I, Lucia, will serve you with all my soul and heart, and will prove to you my competence. Good. King Chol and looked pleased. First, I will complete the tutorial quest. Get my troops ready for inspection like I had ordered. Yes, my lord. Lucia answered lively. I will order the troops to ready. While Lucia left to prepare for inspection, King Chol and took time to look at the tutorial quest description. Dash tutorial 1, level 10 obtained, description, reach level 10, reward. Experience plus 500 slash 20 gold slash use of warp gate, unlimited, reference, unable to return to earth without completing quest, reference, conquer other sovereign plus 5 levels, reference, related to tutorial 2 quest, the warp gate was the passage that connected earth and Pangaea, and was a must for dimension travelers. Therefore, in order to return to earth, tutorial 1 quest needed to be cleared. Dash tutorial 2 
Monster Subjugation Description Conquer the monsters living in the land Reward Experience plus 250 20 gold Current status 0500 It's the same as the past Kang Chul and who had checked that the quests were the same as the ones he experienced before he decided that he would clear the tutorial quests as soon as possible. It would be difficult because he was in a low level, if he put all his energy into it, three or four days would be enough. As he was thinking, Lucia appeared and notified him that the inspection preparations were complete. Let us go quickly my lord. The troops are longing to meet you. Really? Yes, my lord. I will go right away. Kang Chol and headed out. Chapter 13. Monster Subjugation, 1. The Sovereign is Coming. Troops. Attention. Salute. When Kang Chol in appeared, the commanding officer ordered. Sir. About 70 troops saluted Kang Chol in. They are well trained and on their toes. Kang Chol in's face filled with satisfaction as he saw the troops. My lord, this is the main military of Laputa, the Royal Guard. If you count those who are standing guard on the outer edges of the land, there is a hundred troops. Lucia explained alongside him. A hundred. It's a lot. It was a large troop, considering Valhalla had fifty soldiers. Troop, at ease. With King Chol and orders, the troop fell to the at ease position. In the faces of the soldiers who were staring at King Chol in, there was loyalty and fiery passion. He is our lord. How long have we waited for him? I will make him proud with my distinguished service. It was understandable. All NPCs in Laputa, including Lucia, were asleep for an unimaginable number of years waiting for a master. Without Kang Cholin's choice, they would have never been able to wake up, and therefore, their loyalty was not an overstatement. Nice to meet you all. In three hours, we will patrol the lands and go on a monster subjugation. Prepare accordingly. That is all. His speech was short. Kang Chao In, instead of going on and on, spoke concisely, delivering only the limited amount of information. And you. Kang Chao In pointed his chin towards the one standing at the head of the troops. Name? Commander James, my lord. I have things that I need to discuss, so you will patrol with me. Yes, my lord. James' voice resonated. Uh. My lord. Lucia carefully began to speak. May I also accompany you? Of course. Kang Chol and nodded. If you are my advisor, naturally you will always be with me when I am in Laputa. Yes, my lord. Lucia proudly answered, overjoyed. Like that, Kang Chol in, Lucia, and Commander James slowly walked together around Laputa. Commander. Yes. What are the characteristics of the land that Laputa is on right now? It was an important question. Laputa was an airborne city but it was not flying at the moment, which meant that it was important to know the land that it was currently dependent on. Yes, my lord. It is a wise question. James smiled, and started his debriefing. Currently, Laputa has the Dragonia Mountains that act as the border of Pandemonium in the mainland on her back. It is in the southernmost area of the mainland. It meant that it was the most isolated of the isolated, the countryside. Those large mountains are the Dragonian Mountains, my lord. James pointed at the large and vast mountains that had no end. And if you look at the western side, there is a river that reaches all the way to the mainland called Khartoum River. It is a long river that cuts through all of Pandemonium to the mainland's northern side. Kang Chul and was well aware of the Khartoum River as well. It was a canal that went through all of Pangaea. In order to gain control of Pangaea in the future, it was necessary to gain control of the Khartoum River. In the south, there is a magical forest, but it is an ancient one that has existed even before history was recorded. It is filled with monsters, and it won't be an overstatement to call it the Devil's Forest. Kang Chul in, after hearing James' briefing, began to speak. To the east, the mountains, the west, the river, and the south, the devil's forest. It is a land where three sides are steep. Yes, my lord. So. The north is the key. You are right. The north will be our entry point and where we would need to guard for enemies. 
farms and ranches will also be at the northern side around the castle. It will be key to gain control of the north as soon as possible. Dot, at King Chellen's words, James' eyes opened wide. Lucia's widened as well. My. My lord. James spoke, his voice quivering. May I ask how you came to such a conclusion? Isn't it obvious? King Chellen answered. The eastern mountains would be useful for defense, but it isn't a great option for us to go through, if we are not going to use the flight skill and just fly over the entire thing. Also, if we wanted to go through the Western Canal, we would need to train naval forces, but it won't be an easy task. It won't be done overnight. In order to build ships, you would need to gain control of the southern forest, but it is not possible considering the time and finances of right now. So, the only thing left, is the north. King Chol and said everything casually, but for James and Lucia who were listening, it was a shocking thing to hear. How? James exclaimed. You are so intelligent, my lord. How are you so wise? I, James, am so honored to serve a wise leader as yourself. He was almost going to get down on the ground and bow to him. Wow. He is different because he had been a grand sovereign before. Ah, I am such a blessed advisor. Lucia did not show it openly, but was equally impressed. What is this? Oppositely, King Chalin was taken aback by the responses of the two. He had said something so simple, but they were so amazed. He was even doubting whether they were able to think or not. Mm. King Chalin cleared his throat, calming the atmosphere and asked James, Are there any farms and ranches of ours in the north? Yes, my lord. Every morning, your people go to the plains in the north and farm. Are there monsters? Dot, James froze. You. You mean. Of course, I will guarantee the safety of the North first. I cannot leave my people to be eaten by monsters. It was a definite choice for a ruler. It was important for the economy to be stable for the land to prosper, and the people who were producers of the land were the first priority. Also, if the public sentiment was negative, loyalty will decrease and there will be problems in the fighting power. King Chol and specialty was charisma and internal affairs, but that would decrease as well. My lord. James, unaware of King Chol and thoughts, was awed by him, shaking. I, James, am so honored to meet a benevolent ruler like yourself. How are you so wise and caring of the people? Seemed like his intentions were understood like that. Crap, I can't say anything anymore. For every word he spoke, they were in awe. So even for King Chao In, who had no conscience, was a little embarrassed. Anyways, I will take care of the monsters from the North Plains first, so prepare accordingly. I will give you three hours. Yes, my lord. James answered excitedly. Lucia. King Chao In called Lucia this time. Yes, my lord. Feed the troops who will go to the monster subjugation ahead of time with bread and milk. I will also disperse ahead of time, two days worth of rations. Good thinking. King Chol and nodded his head. Monster hunting could sometimes take a long time, so it was wise to bring two days worth of rations. Then I also will get ready, so you guys prepare as well. King Chol and said, and James and Lucia nodded vigorously and answered. Yes, my lord. I will do so. As you command, my lord. And with that, King Chalin left, and Lucia called to James. Commander James. Yes, advisor. It is the Sovereign's first quest, so pay heed so the troops will not make any mistakes. Lucia as she said this looked cold and stern. It was the complete opposite of how she treated King Chalin. Yes. If the troops do anything out of line or seem like they are not in high spirits, I will not just watch. Do you understand? Of course. James bowed his head. Lucia was second in command to the land. She was an advisor to King Chao In, and for James who was the commander, Lucia was an extremely authoritative figure. Then, do your best. I will be watching. Lucia stared behind her plastic rimmed glasses. A penetrating glare shone in her usually beautiful eyes. Three hours later, King Chao In on top of a white horse, left for Laputa along with James and fifty troops. 
I can't believe I'm armored with these low level items. Kang Chao In, through the Warrior Shop system, purchased Endwar rare level armor and rare level blood sword. Blood sword. It was an arming sword the foot soldiers of the ancient world had used. It was a sword enchanted with blood magic and increased endurance of the user. This item had 40 striking power, and absorbed 10% of the damage that it inflicted for its own powers, making it effective in increasing endurance. However, for King Chol and who had used only epic items in the past, it was not satisfactory. My lord, did you see that? As King Chol and was thinking of the past, James pointed at a faraway place. It was about 30 minutes since they had left. That is your land, my lord. Where James had pointed, there was a vast area of fields and a farm where there were cows and horses. It's small. Since the land is small. If I would take the entirety of these plains, it will be a sturdy foundation for me. Although the farm and fields were small, it was not even zero. 1% of the northern plains. In the future, if he could completely make these plains his, he would not fall behind with even the producing power of the previous Galvag Union. And as King Chol and was thinking such thoughts, one of the units that was standing in front of the troops with binoculars, yelled loudly. Modot monsters. With the soldiers' notice, all the other soldiers pulled out their swords. What monsters, out of the blue? What do you mean? James yelled. About twenty orcs are running towards our farms in the front. Chapter 14 Monster Subjugation 2 The troops started talking amongst each other immediately upon hearing the report. Twenty orcs. We are short in number. Twenty of them. It was a natural response. It would have been a different story if orcs were weak monsters, like they were in games or fantasy novels, but in Pangaea, orcs were strong enough to take on at least four or five adult males. And there were twenty of them. Fifty soldiers were not enough to fight them. Quiet, quiet. The commander James also seemed to be taken aback, but he tried to maintain his composure as a commander and worked to calm his troops. And he carefully addressed King Jeln. My lord, there are too many orcs. I think we should retreat and bring more troops. No. King Chol and cut James off firmly. Are you telling me to turn my back because of a group of orcs? But. But, my lord. With our numbers. I know. King Chol and said. It would be a stretch. No, it seemed like a stretch. Logically, to take those orcs, you would need at least a hundred soldiers. Yes, my lord. For your safety, as well. But that is something an incompetent leader does. Dot, as a commander, your judgment is right. In order to fight those orcs, you would need to prepare for complete annihilation. A competent commander knows also when to retreat. However. Never, Kang Chol and had no intention of backing down. We can win. There is plenty of prospect for success. If you can follow my lead, then we can take all those orcs without one casualty, how dot how? I will show you. In that moment, with Kang Jel in at the center, an intangible aura covered James and the troops. This is enough to take the orcs. The aura that Kang Jel in created was the skill that all conquest sovereigns had, the morale stimulator. Although he was only level 1 so the skill only lasted for 10 minutes, but against the orcs, this was enough. Everyone listen. Kang Jel in roared. Those monsters over there are trying to take our people and our assets. The troops shivered at his charismatic, loud voice. I know you are afraid. However, if we retreat here, now, all those people will die. We will also lose all of our farmland and animals. And therefore, I, Kang Chol and will not back down. I will kill those orcs and I will protect our people and our assets. In the mind of the troops, the thoughts of retreat disappeared completely in the soldiers' minds. The saying lead by example was there for a reason. Let's go. Let's defeat those orcs together. King Chol and decided to add an incentive around this point. I will reward the soldiers who shows exceptionality in killing these orcs. And the soldiers upon hearing this became restless. If you follow my orders, I promise that no life will be sacrificed. Trust me. Trust in me, and do not doubt our victory. 
and with these words, the faces of the soldiers began to fill with decisiveness. It was as expected. They were originally extremely disciplined and eager, but with King Chol and morale stimulator, promise of a reward, and assurance of a victory, all were extremely effective. He had exaggerated, but human history was written on exaggeration. I will lead the way. King Chol and drew his blood sword and roared. All troops. Attack. And with those words, the white horse that King Chol and was on started running full speed. Laputa's royal guards, high in morale, followed behind fiercely. Oh, my back is going to break like this. Oh. My back. Wrestler, a farmer who was taking a break from the farming to soothe his aching back furrowed his brow when he saw a dust storm forming from far away. What is that? Wrestler squinted. With all the dust, it probably was the dust storm that would start around this time. When the storm came, he would cough for a while with the dust covering him, so he was going to leave the work for later and rest in his hut. Huh? That dot that. Wrestler, who had been looking at the dust storm for a while, stuttered in surprise. No, he wasn't surprised, but horrified. Oh dot orcs. Despair filled Wrestler's face. It was understandable. If it was a goblin or other small monster, he would try to protect himself with his farming machines, but orcs were a different story. One orc man destruction amongst the farmers, but they were coming in a group. R. Run. The farmers hard at work, raised their heads with Rustler's scream. Orcs. A group of orcs are coming. Everyone run. And with those words, chaos and fear spread throughout the farmers of Laputa. Hurry. Run. You need to run. Fast. Orcs are coming. For the farmers who had no power, orcs were destruction itself. The moment they were cornered, they would be hit with blunt weapons or axes, and eaten alive. They would die either way. They must run if they wanted to live. Run. Lena, Lena. Rustler, who was going to run for his life remembered his only daughter and began to look around frantically. Lena. Lena. Lina was Rustler's only child, and she had brought afternoon lunch with a couple of other women from the village. D.A. Dad. Upon hearing his daughter's voice from far away, Rustler's fear of the orc disappeared and began running back towards where he had heard her voice. Lana. When Rustler found Lana, she was on the ground with a sprained ankle. Quickly, get on my back. Rustler quickly carried Lana on his back. Lana who had sprained her ankle could not run from the orcs. Squelch. While, the group of orcs had almost reached the farmland. Wrestler ran. He ran with every ounce of strength he had. Or he was going to die. And not only him, but his lovely daughter would also be eaten by the vile orcs. And if not that, she would be a sex slave for the orcs, birth a cursed half-orc, and be eaten. Huff dot huff. Labored breathing left Tressler's mouth. However, a common farmer could not surpass the speed of a monster. Orcs, who had much better muscle build and stamina than humans, had unimaginable speed. Wrestler had no other option than to be caught by the orcs. Squelch. The orcs, with prey in front of their eyes, cried with excitement. No, no, you animals. Wrestler ran and ran, trying to save at least his daughter but finally fell on the ground along with his daughter. Ah! Wrestler yelled as he rolled on the farmland. Lana also had fell hard. Lana! Wrestler yelled his daughter's name from the ground. Dad! Lana, in front of her father, was about to have her head smashed in with the orc's metal bat. It was the same for Wrestler as well, but he looked only towards his daughter without worrying about himself. Squelch squelch! The excited Ark breathed roughly as he brought the metal bat above his head. Oh, Lena, my daughter. Wrestler foresaw the event that was to happen, and closed his eyes tightly. No, he tried to close his eyes. He could not see his daughter's bloody end, and so he was going to close his eyes, curse these monsters, and end his life. But the unfortunate end that he had predicted did not occur. Swish. Wrestler opened his eyes wide at the change of fate that had happened suddenly. Ah! Ah! A knight on a white horse suddenly appeared and was taking off the head of the orc. The orc's neck was gushing with red blood that soaked the ground underneath. 
It was a beautiful performance. Heng. The white horse whined loudly and kicked its front legs. Arise, dear child. The knight who had rescued Lana told him. Your daughter will not die, and you also shall live, for your sovereign has come. And that day, Rustler realized that his son had risen high above the sky. Chapter 15 Monster Subjugation, 3, King Chao In, in the eyes of Rustler and Lana, was like a beam of light. The impending doom, and the invasion of the orcs. And the sovereign that appeared at the moment of death. The strength and prowess of slitting the orc's throat in one stroke while on the back of a white horse. For this father and daughter, King Chao In was their life savior and a rope sent by the heavens. Oh, my lord has come. Rustler was overcome with awe. It was the same for Lana. She thought she was going to die. The orc's fierce cries when she and her father had fallen to the ground was enough to bring chills down to her bones. And when she had given up all hope and accepted her fate, a miracle happened. Oh, my lord. Lena, as her life hung from a thread, felt her heart pounding as she saw King Chul and on top of the white horse. He is Laputa's lord. Amidst the bloody situation, a spring wind formed in the heart of the young girl. It was an unforeseen thing, but it was understandable. A knight on top of a white horse was every girl's dream. However, King Chul and had no interest in the feelings of Lana. And he never even looked at her in the first place. He solely focused on the orcs that were to harm his people. You four. He called to the soldiers who were armed with shields and spears. Move that father and daughter to somewhere safe. Yes, my lord. The four soldiers who were commanded quickly moved to Rustler and Lana, escorting them out of the danger. James. Yes, my lord. Take ten soldiers and protect the people escaping. I will take here. But dot but. How will you? Now. Ye dot yes. And like that, James and Chen soldiers left the group. Fifteen gone. Thirty-five left. This is enough. I will end this in ten minutes. King Chao In, who had divided the little he had, remained calm. Those with shields, come forward and maintain a close formation. King Chao In roared and began to lead the troops. Those with muskets, head to the back. The troops moved quickly with King Chalin's orders. They were quite good in following orders. Squelch! Squelch! The orcs, that until a couple seconds ago was looking forward to their killing and stealing, showed their fangs and screeched at the unexpected visitors. They were menacing. How dare you! King Chalin's eyes, that were looking at the orcs, were filled with disgust and anger. Dirty living things that would have not even been able to look at him before, were threatening him and his people. This was disrespect unforgivable by the Grand Sovereign Kang Chol In. Sigh. Kang Chol In dismounted from his horse with a loud sigh. He did not fit well with horseback riding. The speed and weight that a running horse brought was definitely powerful. He had just killed an orc with one swing. They did not call cavalry troops powerful for nothing. However, with battles like these, it was better to just fight on foot. Kang Chol and himself also preferred to fight with his two feet on the ground compared to on a horse. Musket soldiers, calmly shoot. Kang Chol and ordered immediately after he had gotten off his horse, and joined the royal guards ranks. Boom! Boom! The breech loading muskets that loaded every two shots, fired at the orcs, leaving a thick smoke. Shields, hold! If you crumble! We all die. Kang Chol and worried most about those who faced the orcs in the front of the line. In order for the musket soldiers to safely fire, the role of the shield holding soldiers were important. Use your spears when you can. Aim for the neck. The soldiers' spears penetrated the orcs' necks. Orcs are nothing. In the face of Kang Chol and who was staring at them, was a smug smile. Orcs were quite dangerous monsters. Even for Kang Chol in. In his current state, it was difficult to take on even two orcs. If he had overextended himself, three. And if four, then he too would have to put his life on the line. However, that was in case of a one-to-one -one battle. He had an army. Orcs were strong, but their only tactic was to use their large physique and group together to break and hit everything in their way. It was primitive and one-sided. 
This might be effective in a scuffle or hand-to-hand -hand combat, but if it was a battle with ranks, it was a different story. Humans knew how to group, and knew how to use that to their advantage. Especially King Chao In, the master of war strategy. Boom. Boom. The ten musket soldiers fired their weapons again. Reload. The basic musket had two fires. A bit of time was needed after two blows in order to reload. Shields. Push harder. Hold. King Chao In yelled. If there was a threat, it would be this moment. The moment where firepower had ceased for a quick moment during reload, it was a bit of time for the orcs to attack. King Chao In's prediction was right. Squelch. The orcs who had realized the flying bullet stopped for a short while began to advance fiercely. They were monsters with a bit of intelligence. Prepare well and brace yourselves. It won't be easy. King Cholin warned the soldiers holding the shields in the front of the lines. Boom. An explosive sound was released as the soldiers' shields and orcs' body met. The soldiers swayed. An orc's average weight was about 120 kilograms, much larger than a human. It also had great muscular strength. It was expected. Danger. King Chao In, when he saw this, realized that it was his turn. He could not just sit back. If the front formation was destroyed, then the soldiers will be hit by the orcs in an instant. In order to win this battle, the formation must be maintained. Sigh. King Chao In released a loud breath. His heart pounded. From the top of his head to his feet, he felt all his muscles tighten. And a lone shiver went down his spine. Because he was afraid? No way. King Chol and's body that had been away from battle was filled with excitement. It was a thrill of sorts. Like people who enjoyed extreme sports, King Chol and enjoyed going to battle with his life on the line. It was something that the ruler of a land should never do, but what could he do? He was born a destined warrior and had a heart of steel. He could not control his blood boiling when he went to battle. Let's have some fun. King Chol and left his spot from behind the shield and went towards the orcs. Ah! My lord! A couple of the soldiers called to him when they saw his unexpected action. Do not worry! King Chol and yelled. Do not concern yourselves and maintain the ranks. King Chol in, after giving his order, began to swing his blood sword as if he was possessed. Swish swish! The weapons flew towards him from all directions. It was expected seeing that he had made his way right in the center of the orcs. I just need to create enough chaos. King Chao In, who had made his way into the orcs as a level 1 sovereign, was extremely level-headed. He knew something. Orcs were much larger than humans, which meant there was not enough space for more than three orcs to attack one person at once. Even if there were a lot of orcs, no more than three attacks will come at once. Although, this was the typical theoretical battle. It was easier said than done, therefore, this was almost suicide. But King Chol and could. Countless, numerous battles and the swordsmanship of his past life was clear in his head. Although his physical state would not completely support him, it was enough to buy a little time. Swish, swish. The blood sword grandly drew deathly tracks as it bore through the orcs. King Chol and did not show brute courage and foolishness. He faced the weapons that came to him, but he did not wrestle strength. If he did, he would break bones, or be in a disadvantageous position that would get him lynched by the orcs. If he was to fight with strength, he would cross the valley of death. And therefore, the method he chose was to pretend to respond to the orcs' attacks while actually letting it flow through. It was a skill that was only performed by extremely well-trained and experienced swordsmen. Huh? The soldiers were surprised when they saw King Chol in. There could have been no other feeling. A sovereign had used himself as a distraction amongst the orcs. He had put his life on the line. A person of his status? You. You. Wretched orc bastards. A soldier enchanted by King Chol in's example yelled with rage. And that was the start. How dare! I will kill you! You dogs! Die! Die I said! As the musket soldiers were reloading, the other soldiers started to put forth immense fighting power and began pushing back the orcs. They had skyrocketing morale, 
but it was possible because Kang Jolin had to shovel the orcs. Reload complete. The reload was finally done. Fire. Kang Jolin roared. He was still in the center of the orcs. He could, by chance, be shot by friendly fire. Who dot but. Just shoot. Kang Jolin yelled and the musket soldiers slightly hesitated, but went into firing position, aimed at the orcs, and pulled the trigger. Boom. Boom. Ten gunmen, and ten bullets were fired, aimed for the orcs. Down. Right before the soldiers pulled the trigger, he threw his body quickly onto the ground. Squeal. Three or four orcs were shot and fell to the ground. The soldiers' spears found its home in the fallen bodies. The sharp spear penetrated their necks. Push further. Do not give them a chance to think. Kang Chao In, who had moved to safety in a moment shouted, encouraging his troops. And it was then. The soldiers who had gotten the hang of the battle began to push further into the orcs' ranks. They adapted fast, as if to prove that nothing was better than practice. It's done. Kang Chao In, who realized his troops had gained momentum, smiled. From this moment, everything will fall in place. All they needed to do was to move like a machine, taking the orcs one by one. Almost ten orcs had fallen, so it was already a battle won. How dot how can this? Commander James who had returned to join Kang Chol in and his forces, after evacuating the people of Laputa, could not believe what was happening in front of him. It was a grand victory. There was not one orc alive. Twenty orcs were littered on the plains, cold and dead. Compared to that, how were the friendly troops? There were some with minor abrasions, but there were none with serious injuries. If you follow my lead and orders with loyalty, I promise no lives will be lost. Trust. Trust me, and do not doubt victory. Commander James remembered what his lord had said right before the battle occurred. Really, not one has died. It was hard for James to believe what was happening, because something that he was on the fence about had become reality. To completely wipe out 20 orcs with 35 soldiers. With no casualties. Did you evacuate the people to a safe location? James heard King Jelen's voice as he was marveling and admiring his lord. Yes, my lord. James quickly turned towards the direction of the voice and answered. And there was Kang Jolin. Kang Jolin, sitting atop a straw bed, sipping beer like any other foot soldier. Chapter 16 Someone has their eyes on our land one. The day's battle came as a shock to all the people of Laputa. Their ruler, who had just come from a different land, had defeated twenty orcs with thirty soldiers. It was not only a win, but a grand victory. And that was not all. A rather exaggerated rumor had spread across the lands, where King Chol and had supposedly courageously ran into the center of the orcs alone, and was unmatched by any. King Jolin's popularity soared. It was understandable because for the common folk, it was a surprising thing for lords, sovereigns, kings, emperors, and other people of high ranking, to lead by example. This went beyond Panagia to earth as well and was relatable to all those who were under authority. It was the same thing as a politician, who was visiting and inspecting military troops, to grab a K-2 and engage in combat against a North Korean guerrilla team. Furthermore, it was like the politician then contributed and played a key part in winning the battle. Of course. Something like this would not happen. And after the battle, him sitting casually on a pile of straw drinking beer with the other soldiers added to his image as an approachable, familiar leader. Of course, these effects were not at all intentional. All King Chol and did was battle because a group of orcs appeared, and drank a cold beer after a victory. No prior calculations were made. What are these people? King Chol In, who had returned to Laputa as a triumphant general, no a triumphant sovereign tilted his head in confusion at the loud cheers from the people. In his head, he wondered if this was something to praise about to this extent. It was quite an understandable question coming from Kang Jolin. Valhalla, the land he ruled in his previous life, had very few humans. Most of its inhabitants were vampires, death knights, and other non-human species, so Kang Jolin could not understand human emotion too well. Why were they making such a big deal? And why were they even singing about him? 
favorability due to leading by example plus 20, free-spirited leader image gained so charisma minus 3, free-spirited leader image gained so approachability plus 30, positive response by people of the land, sovereign point plus 20, when he had removed all his gear and returned to the sovereign's hall, an information screen appeared in front of him. I don't like charisma decreasing. Charisma was an extremely important skill needed for a sovereign. It was key for commanding and ordering subordinates as a sovereign. For example, the first thing to think about when purchasing a strong unit through the automated store, was charisma. If charisma was low, one could not control a strong unit even if they purchased one. If a sovereign with an E-grade charisma purchased a Noga through the automated store, it was likely that the ogre would not blink an eye at the orders of the sovereign and do whatever it pleased. Also, if charisma was low, disobedience of orders or revolt of subordinates might occur. I will be more careful from now on. Kang Chul and swore that he would not let his charisma fall again. There will be nothing worse than not being able to control his troops at a critical moment. However, not all was bad. It was actually good. The people's favor meant that the loyalty levels would also rise, and approachability and friendliness also helped in internal affairs. Also, sovereign points, which have the biggest role in determining the grand sovereign status had risen 20 points, so it was definitely an achievement. Sovereign points were the key to becoming a grand sovereign. Sovereign points rose when one gained the respect of the people, hunted monsters, or won a battle against another sovereign. It was rewarded when one had achieved something. All sovereigns were required to participate once a year at the assembly. It was called the Sovereign Meeting. And in this Sovereign Meeting, ten sovereigns who had gained the most points would be elected as a Grand Sovereign. Although his charisma had decreased a little, if he had gained twenty sovereign points, it was not a loss. Hold on, how many points was the cut line for the first Grand Sovereign election? He could not remember clearly. The first election would take place about a year after the current time, which was December 25, 2021, and the past Kang Chol and would remain in 13th place, not being able to become Grand Sovereign by a close fraction. At that time, he was immersed in dungeon exploration and solely concentrated on increasing his personal specs. However, he had ranked 13th, so he was going to become something in the future. Well, there is no rush. The position of Grand Sovereign was risky, so there was no reason to obsess over it from the beginning. Why? Because they are watched by all the other sovereigns. It was especially worse in the first and second years, where the skill set of the sovereigns were downwardly similar. If they showed a bit of prominence, they would be ripped and bitten apart from many different sovereigns. For example, during the first sovereign meeting, Five of the Grand Sovereigns elected including Baroque Al Yusuf and Scotty and Barry, had not been at the second sovereign meeting, they had died, or escaped to earth. My lord. As King Chol and W.S. thinking about sovereign points and Grand Sovereign appointments, Lucia called to him. Rustler and his daughter Lana has sent you tribute. Rustler. Lana? King Chol and Sprouse furrowed in confusion. Are they my people? They are the father and daughter that you rescued from the orcs. I believe they have sent tribute and thanks for saving their life. Really? Here. Lucia handed Kang Chol in a basket with a clean cloth covering it. Lucia's expression as she handed over the basket seemed a bit disapproving. A tribute. Kang Chol and had mixed feelings, receiving his first tribute. In the past, he had never received such things. I mean. How many humans were there in Valhalla? There weren't many to send him tribute. Bread and ham. Kang Chol and mumbled, after opening the basket. In the inside, there were four rye breads and a large chunk of ham, along with a bit of honey and beer made from pure malt. It was a plain tribute, but filled with thanks from the poor. The dot this. Just when Kang Chol and was going to be pleased, Lucia shivered. What is wrong with her again? Kang Chol and was confused. He could not understand why Lucia was shivering suddenly. Is something wrong? How dare! Lucia seemed like she was extremely angry. Dare? Kang Chol and asked in return. My lord! Lucia shouted. Speak! You must bring this father and daughter here right away and punish them. Dot what? 
This rude father and daughter are harassing you my lord. How could they send such a plain thing as tribute? About a hundred hits with the club would not even be enough. My lord, if you order me now, I will go to their home right away and cut their necks. Kang Chol and then understood why Lucia was so enraged. Lucia. Yes, my lord. I will right away. I am satisfied. Huh? What do you mean? Lucia seemed confused and her eyes opened wide. Is it right to be angry that what they have sent is not much? Yes, my lord. How can they send to you bread and ham, something eaten by commoners? And rye bread. Of all the bread in the world, how is it they send rye bread? It is a bad tasting bread, my lord. Not sweet at all. Lucia seemed really angry. It seemed personal to a certain extent, but Kang Chao in, instead of pointing that out, gently scolded her. Lucia. Yes, sovereign. I will say again, I am satisfied. But. Of course, if premium quality wine, gold, or jewels were given as tribute, I would have been happier. It is not that I do not like materialistic effects. In fact, I love money. That was Kang Chalin's honest thoughts. Money? The more the better. In order to have a strong, powerful army, it was common sense that a strong, powerful economy was needed. To gain control of Pangaea, money was a critical element. Also, to maintain his dignity and status in Earth, he needed more money. However. Kang Chol and spoke. They also have their position. How would a farmer who tends to the land send me gold? They might have starved a meal or two so they could send me these. Dot, if a poor man sent tribute with the little he had, it is right to see the heart behind the gift and not the gift itself. Isn't the man quite loyal? Ah! Lucia exclaimed. Sure, if there were to be tribute, it would be good to have a bunch of gold and jewels. But this kind of gift is not bad either. You are a fair ruler. How you love your people so, my lord. Perhaps. Kang Chol and did not agree with what Lucia had called him. His goal, primarily, was unification. It was to be the emperor. For that goal, war was tied together, and that tie could not be severed. For him to fulfill his desire, a tower of bones must be built, and countless must stack their bones atop another. It isn't even true. What common farmer would like war? How many things would match the horrors of war? Kang Chol and ultimately, was just a war-crazed animal, and could never be a benevolent king. My lord? Dot, what are you thinking so intently about? Kang Chol and shook his head slightly at Lucia's question and spoke. I will punish them. Dot my lord? Lucia seemed confused at Kang Chol in, who had praised the father and daughter and now was saying that he would punish them. What you said is also true. I am pleased, but they would need to be punished at least a little for gifting a sovereign such plain things. Appoint the farmer called Rustler to oversee the farming and give him heavy responsibility. There is no heavier punishment than being responsible for something. Dot, Lucia was in awe of Kang Chol and's consideration. What Kang Chol and had ordered wasn't just a punishment, but also a reward. In the background of this order, there was Kang Chalin's intention to listen to Lucia's advice in punishing the father and daughter but also in acknowledging their heart and sending him gifts. He had caught two birds with one stone. Ah! The sovereign is not just anyone. Lucia once again was in awe of Kang Chalin, thinking how extraordinary and competent he was as a leader. That moment, Lucia's loyalty and respect for Kang Chalin grew deeper. However, Kang Chol and did not understand why Lucia made such a big deal and shivered so often. And even after this, Kang Chol and spent many days on the quest for monsters. The monster subjugation, which was originally supposed to last three, four days grew longer and longer, until ten days had passed. It was not because Kang Chol and was incompetent. Actually, Kang Chol and and the royal guard under his leadership had outstanding victories in every battle they had defeating all the monsters. They were straight victories, with no losses, all done by Kang Chol and and his soldiers. However, despite Kang Chol and's efforts, the reason why the monster subjugation took a long time was because of a monster called the Mole Looter. The Mole Looter was a mole about the size of a mid-sized dog, and it would attack humans, 
eating chunks of ankles or the back of the foot making people handicapped. The problem was that these annoying moles were all over the northern plains. Dash tutorial 2, Monster Subjugation, Description, Conquer the Monsters Within the Land, Reward, Experience plus 250, 20 gold, Status, 421 500, His level was already at level 8. If he was to destroy 79 monsters, he would naturally be at level 9, and then simultaneously clear tutorial 1 quest as well, which was linked, putting him at level 10. But these moles were ambushing King Chol in and his royal guard, and the troops dug tunnels every single day, trying to destroy them at their source. Ironically, a low level monster was hindering King Chol in. Sigh. King Chol in, who was hunting the moles with his royal guard in the northern plains, looked up at the blue sky on a quick break. It's already been 10 days. I need to return to Earth in 2 days at the latest. It was postponed over and over again because there were many things to take care of, but returning to Earth was unavoidable. He needed to pay back the money that he had borrowed, and also needed to hear reports about Kwakyung from Park Dusik. Also. Mother. He needed to visit his mother, who was alone. Undutiful Kang Chalin had never gone to see his mother after being rebirthed. It was not intentional. But for Kang Chol and who had been indifferent about his family for 10 years, he had not even thought about visiting. However, now that he had remembered, he felt a lot of guilt. I should visit her more often. For various reasons, Kang Chol and swore he would take care of his mother. And it was then. Sovereign. A soldier who was on the lookout during the break shouted while pointing up to the sky. In the air, something that had been created with magic radiating blue light, was circulating on top of the troops. Kang Chol-in's face hardened. What the heck? It was a scout unit sent by another sovereign called a Scout Hawk. Chapter 17 Someone Has Their Eyes on Our Land, Too. The Scout Hawk was a one-time used scout that was sold in the Lord's store for tin gold. The Lord that sent the Hawk would be looking at Kang Chol-in's territory through the scout. Tin Gold Converting 10 grams of gold, 97.8% purity, into Korean currency would come out to about $4,000, which meant the lord who sent the scout hawk invested $4,000 for this. Idiot, doesn't know how to use his gold. Kang Chol and snorted, looking at the impudent scout hawk that was circling above his head. The scout hawk was only operable for an hour, and the distance that it could travel was about 20 kilometers making it not worth its price. It was not an advised option unless there were emergencies. Bow, does anyone have a bow and arrow? If not, a gun will work as well. Here, my lord. At his words, the one soldier who had a bow among the royal guard handed it over. Four thousand dollars, I'll dismember it in the air. Kang Chol and was going to shoot the hawk and bring it down. Of course, he was not just going to shoot it thoughtlessly. It was built using magic, so it was impossible to intercept with plain physics. It's been a while. I wonder if I will hit it. Kang Chol in thought as he tugged at the bow. He could not remember clearly the last time he had shot a bow and arrow. He was a man of the military arts, but he was a swordsman. He was not too familiar with the use of bows. Well, this should be doable. However, he was not completely lacking in self-confidence either. Although he was not an expert archer, he had an excellent foundation for all martial arts. One scout hawk was nothing. Kang Chol and was confident in his ability. Aim and fire. Whoosh. The arrow that had left its bow became a glint of light as it shot towards the scout hawk. E e e e e e e e. The scout hawk that felt the impending danger let out a haughty sound but did not attempt to dodge the arrow. It was as if it was mocking Kang Chal in, saying, What can you do to me with an arrow? Stupid. Seeing this, Kang Chuan smirked. Kang Chal in had not shot just an arrow. He put a bit of magic on the tip of the arrow before loosing it. It was not strong magic, but the scout hawk had extremely weak defense. It was a secured win if the arrow hit its target. Crack. The arrow hit its target and lodged itself in the scout hawk's belly squeak. A confused cry emanated from the hawk's beak. 
As the magic from another interfered with the body that was made of magic, sparks began to form, and with a bang, the hawk disappeared without a trace. It had blown up. A $4,000 scout. Whoa! Amazing! The Lord is also good with a bow. The soldiers who saw this applauded and praised his skills. It will hurt a little. Kang Chol and smiled, satisfied, not caring about his troops' praise. A scout hawk has a mechanism where it was connected to its lord mentally, so the moment it was destroyed, the lord would also receive the same damage. It was a penalty of sorts and the reason why one must be cautious when using the scout hawk. Although he couldn't see it for himself, the lord who sent the scout hawk should be holding his stomach and groaning painfully as if he himself had been shot with an arrow. All troops, return to base. Kang Chol and ordered. Already, my lord? James asked. That was a scout that another lord sent. Therefore, it means that there is another occupied territory within 20 kilometers. Ah! I don't know what this lord's intentions are, but they might attack suddenly, so it is best to go back to headquarters and prepare. It might just be a routine patrol. Kang Chol and tapered off. He stopped himself from saying, in pandemonium, only the war crazed are everywhere. It was true. It was a paradise for conquest lords, the war crazed, and the devils. It would not be out of the ordinary or strange for them to start fighting and ripping each other apart. Tell the workers and farmers to retreat as well. It doesn't hurt to be careful. Yes, my lord. It bothered him that farming would cease for a couple of days, but something told him to do so. If the enemy invaded, innocent lives would be lost. Ugh! Deep within a tunnel in the northern plains, the lord of the Burrowlands clenched his abdomen and groaned. Lord! Are, are you all right, my lord? The secretary of the burrow, Timothy, helped his lord. Timothy was a goblin with a large white beard. Ugh! Oh, lord! Did your scout hawk get ambushed? The lord of the burrows was unable to answer for a while despite the questioning of his secretary. It was difficult to be in the right state of mind as the pain of an arrow penetrating his abdomen consumed him. His pain lasted for thirty minutes. As the pain subsided, the lord of the burrows ground his teeth in anger. Wretched bastard! Are you okay, lord? Here is some cold water. Please drink this. Shut up! Timothy brought cold water and served it to his lord, but the lord hit the hand that was holding the cup. The cup dropped to the ground, soaking it. You ugly goblin! I told you to not call me lord. Call me shogun, I said. Ah, yes. Yes, shogun. Stupid idiot. Are you stupid because you are a goblin? You old, disgusting thing. Sigh, why is my secretary a goblin of all things? The lord of the burrows, Kimura Heidke, criticized his secretary Timothy and vented out his rage on him. Useless idiot. Why did I get a stupid goblin? Sigh, it would have been better if it was a girl. What is that expression? You, you have a problem with what I said? Ah, uh, no. No, not at all, Miller. No, Shogun. What do you mean no? Kimura yelled. Slap. With a loud noise. The goblin secretary's head turned. Dirty goblin bastard. I am sorry I am a goblin. Timothy thought it was unfair he was struck for no apparent reason, but he said nothing. There was nothing he could do. He needed to endure it even if it was unfair, even if it hurt his pride. The destiny of the secretary was to endure, again and again, regardless of what kind of human his, her lord was. Who would want to be an secretary to this savage? The only thing that Timothy could do was to accept that he just had a bad draw, that the roll of the dice had an unfortunate result. Compared to this, it could be said that Lucia, who met a wise and competent King Chol and as her leader, was an extremely lucky case. The lord in the farmland shot my scout hawk. H he did, my lord? That bastard. I thought if I sent the moles, he would give up the land, that stubborn bastard. Indeed. The one who sent the moles to King Chol and, and hindered him in his quest was Kimura. More accurately, Kimura, who wanted to escape his underground headquarters and have territory above ground to rule was advised by Timothy to target King Chol and. Shogun, what are you going to do? 
Timothy asked. What do you mean what am I going to do? I will attack right now. But. What? If the scout hawk got ambushed, that means they are able to use magic. There is a possibility that he won't be an easy opponent. I got blade. Me. I, sir, completely understand how you feel. It is definite that you were surprised and hurt. But Shogun. War is not play. Shut up, shut up I said. Kimura had no intention of listening to Timothy's advice, advice that would become flesh and blood. The thing that was most important to him was revenge against the man who killed his scout hawk. For him, other facts such as King Chol and ability to control and use magic were not important. Hey, goblin. Yes, Shogun. Prepare my troops. I will invade his headquarters right now. Shogun, could you listen to my dearest wish just once, please? Your wish? I need to fulfill your wish? Timothy accepted Kimura's scoffing and spiteful glare. That was the role of the secretary. No matter how badly they were treated, they were to serve their lord with everything they had. Yes, Shogun. This Timothy, as you said, is nothing but a goblin, but I am still quite useful. If you leave it to me. What will you do then? It isn't an overstatement to say that a war's victory depends on the intel. If you give me just two days, then I will give a full detailed report on the enemy's current military status and facilities. If I do that, don't you think the chances of a victory will increase? So are you thinking that I am going to lose? And no, Shogun. It's just that it is said, if you know your enemy and if you know yourself, you will win a hundred battles. I am just following the basic rules of war. I know that too. Kimura yelled. You think I don't know at least that much? I was going to do that too. Kimura shamelessly spoke as if Timothy's idea was his and made a thoughtful expression. I will take all available scouts and analyze his strength. Oh, Shogun. You are so wise. You dare shoot me? I will repay this debt, bastard. He was obviously way too into it. Kimura Hideki had been in Tokyo Tower when he was brought to Pangaea by coincidence. He was a high schooler who could not believe the situation he fell into at first. Anyone would have had a hard time. One day, without warning, if you were transported to a different world and then made to fulfill quests that you don't know the origins of to rule over your territory, you would have normally denied reality. However, Pangaea was reality, and Kimura accepted his status as lord. As expected of a Japanese person, he quickly adapted to reality and adjusted. Kimura decided to follow the quest, defeat the monsters within his territory, and then follow his tendency as a conquest lord to expand his holdings. It was good up to that point. However, the problem was that although he had accepted reality, he wasn't conscious of the realness and severity of the situation. Death in Pangaea was equal to death on Earth. This was the way of nature and the laws of life stated that if one was a living organism, one could not undo death. Only the man named King Chol and had used the power of soul backup to return to the past once. Kimura wasn't conscious of this important fact. Attacking another lord with only the excitement of being a lord, like a high school gamer, was a prideful and stupid decision. If one was to take the life of another, one should also be prepared to lose one's own. But in the Kimura's mind, there was only the image of his grand self after he conquered King Chalin's territory. It was a foolish act that did not consider the aftermath of a war. However, it would be too late when he did consider it. After all, he had chosen King Chalin as an opponent of all people. After that day, King Chalin felt more clouds forming. It became more frequent to see scout hawks circling Laputa, slightly beyond the reach of an arrow, and within two days, there were about five or six scout hawks around Laputa. He had openly started to patrol and spy on Laputa. It was obvious to anyone that he was announcing an invasion. Although I'll need to push back my return to Earth for a couple days, it's good that something like this happened. Kang Chol and smiled. His territory's economy was all over the place anyways. The cost of most territories was about three four thousand gold. However, Laputa cost 9,800 gold. Due to the price that was almost three times that of another territory, 
they were on the verge of going bankrupt. At such a critical time, another Lord wanted to invade with his own two feet. He had to be thankful. The Lord who won in a battle gained a lot. He would take the enemy Lord's gold, land, people, and military. In addition, he would be rewarded with Lord points as well as levels, which meant that it was a shortcut to becoming an overlord. From Cain Chalin's perspective, it was a gift from the heavens. Lucia. Yes, Lord. Soon, another lord will invade. The one that sent the scout hawks, my lord? Yes. He is a stupid and foolish one. I agree. He is someone who will bring wealth to our territory. We will welcome him well. Of course. King Chol and said, smiling. A welcoming party. He was going to go all out. And pulverize them. Chapter 18. A Declaration of War. The enemy's military is nothing, but. I don't know why I feel so uneasy. Timothy was in a dilemma. As a result of sending seven scout hawks over the last two days, Laputa's military force was mediocre at best, if not a joke. If military power was the only factor, the victory of the Burlands would be given. The basic specs of the Burls were overwhelmingly better than Laputa. King Cholin's land Laputa was composed primarily by humans but the Burr land was comprised of ants, moles, centipedes, mole crickets, and others that lived primarily in the soil. If a war broke out, an overwhelming victory was to be expected. But he felt uneasy. In Kang Chalin's land, it was hard to find any big threats, but this was commonly called having a bad feeling. Timothy did not feel too good about this impulsive and reckless battle. It is difficult. Very difficult. Timothy let out a long sigh. It was understandable, because Timothy's specialty was, administration, and so he was an advisor best suited for paperwork. And so, he was not too competent on war tactics. But also, he could not leave things to the sovereign, Kimura either. Kimura knew nothing. He was immersed in royal plan wanted to be king, labeling himself a shogun and great warrior and other things Timothy could not understand. He was a typical tyrant, a young tyrant at that. Sigh. My fate. A long sigh came from the old goblin's mouth. They definitely had the upper hand in military force, but he could not deal with the uneasiness that overcame him. It was as if he was to poke a beehive. But there wasn't any solid excuse for him to convince Kimura to give up on war either. If he had a good enough excuse, it would be worth it to manipulate and convince him. But their superiority in numbers was so clear that there wasn't any foundation in telling Kimura to give up on battle. It was then. A pretty good idea crossed the old goblin's mind. That's it. It was quite a good idea. This will do. I could make a suitable argument. Timothy smiled widely and went to seek his sovereign, Kimura. Bastard. How dare you shoot an arrow at me. Kimura was drinking honey water in the sovereign hall located deep underground and was grinding his teeth thinking about King Jolin. Shogun. What, goblin? Could you send me as a diplomat? What? Kimura tilted his head, as if asking him what kind of a dumb question that was. Why would you send something like that? You can just invade. There are rules in battle as well. Rules? Kimura squinted and furrowed his brow at Timothy. Although he is the enemy, there are basic rules that one needs to keep. Stop saying things that are difficult to understand, you stupid goblin. I'm sorry. So, what's your point? As the old saying goes, the best victory is won without a fight. Um, yes that is true. Kimura nodded. What Timothy said, anyone heard at least once, and it was a line from the art of war. Although the world was different. It seemed that the victory acquired without a fight was valuable in both worlds. If you send me as a diplomat, I will offer the sovereign who had drawn you to surrender. Surrender? Yes, Shogun. If you offer surrender and they accept, wouldn't we be able to win without shedding any blood? It won't be easy, but since our military strength is much greater, there is a chance. Kimura seemed contemplated, and so Timothy took the opportunity to continue. Even if the opponent did not accept the offer to surrender, wouldn't it be an advantage for me to go as a diplomat anyways? 
Advantage? What advantage? In that moment, sovereign or not aside, Timothy was about to scream why do you live with a head if you have no brain? This was not just an issue of age. The human himself was just stupid and did not think much. In the advisor's position, his patience was tested again and again. I must endure it. This is my sovereign. I must. Timothy persevered with all that he had, and held in his anger. And with a gentle and polite tone, he spoke towards Kimura. First, sending a diplomat shows that Arbor Lands is civilized and will not just use force. It is a show of sorts. Is that it? Of course not my lord. A diplomat is a legal spy. While I offer surrender, I will also bring intel on the enemy. Wouldn't it be more accurate to see it with my own two eyes instead of using expensive scout hawks? I guess you're right as well. When Kimura seemed to agree, Timothy made a reliable face. And also, a war is not just invading whenever you want, but making a declaration first. It is a savage thing to do to just wage war without any warning. Aren't you a good and wise leader, Shogun? Yes, that is true. If you trust and leave it to me, although I cannot guarantee surrender, I will bring good intel. Kimura who had been manipulated by Timothy's words, allowed for him to leave. Ha! You make sure to tell that sovereign. If he does not surrender, he would taste hell. Yes, of course. He he then I will be back, Shogun. Timothy cheered on the inside, after finally getting approval. It is done. Honestly, Timothy did not want this rash, unprepared war. Therefore, saying that he would offer surrender was just to convince Kimura. Timothy's intention was this. He would go, but he would come up with an excuse to make Kimura give up on war such as they have a secret army or a weapon that they were concealing. Timothy knew that a war was no child's play. Also, he wanted to visit Kang Jolin's land and relieve the unknown uneasiness that was consuming him. However, Timothy's delight was short-lived. Sorry, Shogun. But Timothy is prepared to sniff for the safety of the Shogun and the land. Timothy apologized to his sovereign Kimura in the inside. Intention aside, Timothy's actions were undermining the sovereign Kimura, so he felt guilty. Sigh. I hope the Shogun would soon become a wise and quick leader. Timothy mumbled, and went towards Kang Jolin's land. That afternoon, Timothy went to Laputa as the diplomat for the Borough Lands. And he was able to meet the sovereign of Laputa, Kang Jolin. So, it was just a patrol of the surroundings, and you had no other intention? Kang Jolin, sitting on his throne, made an interested expression. Yes, sir. Oh ho dot that's funny. Sir? I wonder who would use seven of those expensive scout hawks to just patrol. And just my land. Are you overflowing with gold over there? Dot, Timothy was speechless at Kang Jolin's sharp response, and started to make an excuse. It's not that. The sovereign of the boroughs want peace. It's just that our lands are so close together, so we are just preparing for unforeseen events. Yes, it's just that. Unforeseen events? I would be very grateful if you would think of it as like a patrol only on defensive terms. Kimura Shogun promised that there will be no more of these situations in the future. Please, this time. Stop. Kang Chol and stop Timothy met sentence. What did you just say? Say it again. Sir? Kimura? Shogun? Ah, yes. The sovereign of the boroughs wishes to be called Shogun instead of sovereign. Ha 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 ha. Kang Chol and exploded in laughter. Dot, Timothy could not understand Kang Chol and sudden laughter. The Kang Chol in that he saw, was not someone who would laugh in a formal situation like now. Even with a glance, Kang Chol in was filled with authority and dignity as he just sat on his throne, but he had laughed. Timothy could not understand. Sovereign, may I ask why you are laughing? I laughed because it was funny. Do I need another reason? Kang Chol in answered. Which part is funny? discomfort filled Timothy's face. Although Kimura was incompetent and showed signs of being a tyrant, he was Timothy's sovereign. In Timothy's position as a loyal advisor, it was right to feel offended. However, Kang Chol and asked again with a smirk, 
not caring of Timothy's feelings. Your sovereign, asked to be called Shogun. Yes, sovereign. Kimura Shogun. Is a crazy bastard. Sir? Your sovereign is the craziest of the crazy, a little rascal. Dot, Timothy's face hardened at the words of King Jolin. Sovereign, your words are insulting the sovereign of the Burrowlands. I call a crazy bastard crazy, what else am I supposed to call him? Sovereign. Maybe if I were to call him something different, idiot? Mentally retarded? Pandemonium. They said it was filled with crazy retards, it was true. King Chell and snorted, as if this situation was absurd. It was an expected response. Maybe if King Chell and was a different race, but as long as he was Korean, Kimura who called himself Shogun was crazy in his eyes. Shogun. It was the most important position of the Bakufu, and was descriptive of Japan's supreme ruler in the medieval and current ages. Despite being Japanese, King Chol and didn't imagine there would be anyone shameless enough to call himself Shogun. However, Timothy who did not know this, had no choice but to be upset. Sovereign. Although Kimura Shogun is young, he is the ruler of a land. If you insult my land's ruler in a formal setting like this, what, are you going to go to war or something? Sovereign. How can you say such violent things? As I said previously, Kimura Shogun wishes for peace. Stop. King Chol and stopped Timothy and said in a calm voice with authority. Timothy, you said? Do not insult me with such lies. Dot, in that moment, Timothy froze at the stare of the man sitting on the throne. Huk. The stare looking down was not that of a criminal. It was like a predator with its prey in front of it. This. This man. Is different from the Shogun. Timothy did not want to admit it, but he needed to accept that the man in front of him had a much larger plate than Kimura. The aura itself was different. It was as if he was born to be king. The throne suited him. And this kind of man spoke with authority, so it was expected that Timothy was suppressed and speechless. Timothy. Remain calm. Wake up. Your shogun was insulted. If you lower your tail here, it is the same as the shogun losing. Timothy tried to be strong. He was trying to be a competent advisor. Sovereign, although you are upset, your words are too harsh. I would like you to apologize to Kimura Shogun, my sovereign. If you don't, the Burrowlands will declare war. It was then. Before Timothy finished his sentence, Commander James hurried into the Sovereign Hall and bowed to King Jolin. My lord, I need to report immediately. What is it? The enemy has moved from the underground and begun to advance into our land. And in that moment, Timothy felt his world go yellow, and wished to bite his tongue. He could not wait that much. That wretched. As Timothy was thinking this, King Chol and smirked and turned towards Timothy. What were you saying? Continue with what you were saying. What was happening? Timothy could not raise his head in embarrassment. From this point. Ford. Our Burrowlands. Are declaring war. On you sovereign. Timothy announced war with his head still bowed. It was a play to be written in history, where the declaration and release of troops happened simultaneously. Chapter 19. Show them what you have got. Sovereign. As Timothy was at a loss for words, Lucia who had been quiet until then stepped forward and called towards King Jolin. That goblin, as the advisor for the enemy sovereign has volunteered himself as a diplomat and visited this land, but in actuality has tried to undermine you and fool you. I believe that he needs to receive adequate punishment for this. Lucia's opinion was fair. Timothy up until a couple of seconds ago was a diplomat, but now was currently a key player in the enemy's movements. It would not have been excessive to behead him this instant. However, King Chol and's opinion was different. There is reason to what you are saying. Then the guillotine. Lucia spoke cruelly. She had no intention of forgiving those who had been disrespectful to King Chol N. Not yet. King Chol and shook his head. Lucia, your opinion is rightful and proper, but there is no significance in killing the goblin right now. It would not be too late to do it after the battle has ended. I sir, do not understand what you are saying. Look at the goblin. At Lucia's question, King Chol and pointed with his chin to Timothy, 
who had frozen on the spot. Timothy was unaware of the conversations happening between Kang Chol and An Lucia, and was just broken. That advisor was abandoned by his sovereign. Dot, and Lucia's eyes opened wide as she understood Kang Chol N. It's true. In Lucia's head formed a picture of Timothy's situation. That advisor did not know his sovereign was invading our land. If he knew, he would not have that kind of response. Ah! The sovereign does not miss out on the details as well. What crazy bastard will wait war not even a full day after he has sent a diplomat with not even a declaration? Violent and uncivilized diplomacy aside, it was a cruel and heartless decision made without even the smallest consideration of the diplomat sent. Yes, my lord. The enemy sovereign does not care whether his advisor dies or not. He was abandoned. As Lucia looked at Timothy, her eyes filled with sympathy. She, too, was an advisor. She knew better than anyone what being abandoned by a sovereign meant. Lucia too, had been uncertain and afraid that she was of no use to Kang Chol and N would be abandoned. Although she couldn't know for sure, Timothy's heart would be burned to nothing right now. Yes. What is the use of taking the life of someone who has already lost all? Yes, my lord. But he still must pay for undermining me. Huh? My lord, what do you mean? I will give him pain worse than death. Dot, Kang Chol and had a profound smile. Timothy, you said? Yes. Sovereign. Timothy's voice had no strength as he answered. His ears were sagging as well, and he could not get any more pitiful. Follow me. Dot, wouldn't you need to see how the one who abandoned you gets ruined? Dot, in that moment, Timothy saw in the face of this man called Kang Chao In, the image of the greatest evil and the image of a benevolent leader overlap. In Kang Chao In's previous statement, there were two meanings. James. Kang Chao In called his commander James, not caring about Timothy's thoughts. Yes, my lord. Go and show that arrogant Jap his place. Yes, sovereign. James answered loudly and saluted Kang Chao In. And. He carefully asked a question as if he was bothered by something. But. Sovereign. Dot, what does Jap mean? There is something like that. Dot yes. Kang Chol and did not answer. He was too lazy to give an explanation. Kang Chol and took Lucia and Timothy to the watchtower. In Laputa, there was a 40 kilometers high watchtower called the Watcher's Tower which made it possible to look over the land and the surrounding areas in one look. The reason for climbing the tower was simple. Kang Chol and was not going to participate in this battle. It was not an urgent situation, nor was it a war big enough for him to go out into battle himself. All he had done was order a few things previously, and those orders would be the key to determining the tide of battle. Kimura and Timothy would have no idea, but Kang Chol and had used a two scout hawks of his own, as well as sending his scouts to gain intel on the borough's current status. Therefore, Laputa's soldiers had already completed all preparations for war before Timothy had arrived and were just waiting for the soldiers of the borough lands to invade. It was like a spider, waiting for its prey after spinning its web. Timothy. Kang Chol and looked at the soldiers of the borough lands that were approaching from afar and called to Timothy. Yes. Sovereign. Timothy was still sullen. The thought of being abandoned was too much for the old goblin. What do you expect the outcome would be? Kang Cholin asked. Dot if you compare just the strategies, it is expected that the borough lands will make a grand victory. Really? The military power of the boroughs is strong. There are 300 ants, 4 giant centipedes, and the shogun has a flammable toad as well. They are specs that would affirm a victory. Kang Cholin nodded. It was the truth. Military power meant economic power. Because Laputa was so expensive, Kang Chol and did not have extra money to spend on the store. It was a bit embarrassing, but the current financial status of Laputa was destitute and sparse. Kimura's war potential was clearly better. However, Kang Chol and did not bat an eye after hearing Timothy. He smiled a leisurely smile. So, you think your sovereign can conquer this land? That. Timothy could not give an answer quickly. We definitely have higher war potential. We have the upper hand. 
but why do I feel so uneasy? The incompetence of the sovereign, Kimura was that, but King Chol In's confident demeanor got to him. How could he be so relaxed when he was extremely disadvantaged? Timothy could not guess the outcome of this battle. I'll give you the answer. King Chol In spoke. I will win. Dot. It was a straightforward, confident statement without an ounce of doubt. Today, your land will fall. No. Before anyone could blink, Timothy shouted and disagreed. So, he is still an advisor, I see. King Chol In looked at Timothy and was a bit in awe of the old goblin's loyalty. Timothy, as seen through King Chol In's eyes, looked as if although abandoned, he did not lose his loyalty towards his sovereign. Also, although the shogun is inexperienced, he will not lose. Really? Of course. Although your grace seems extraordinary, you will not be able to easily overcome the difference in statistics. Well, if you wait, you'll see. King Chol and cut Timothy off and spoke to Lucia. The megaphone. Yes, my lord. Lucia politely handed King Chol in a megaphone bewitched with a sound amplifier. An offering of surrender is the virtue of the strong. King Chol and looked below and spoke. And there was Kimura and the soldiers of the borough who had almost reached Laputa. Beep. Ah ah, can you hear me? King Chol and did a mick test of sorts. Are you the sovereign of this land? Kimura yelled to answer King Chol in. Kimura, who hadn't brought a megaphone, had no choice but to yell as loud as he could. Surrend. Surrender jamp. Dot, then I will spare you your life. King Chol and beat him to the punch. J. Dot, jab. Kimura's eyes burned up with rage. You, you. Josie and Bug. As Koreans knew the insult Josie and Bug, the Japanese also knew their insult. How dare you call me ya? I call a Jap a Jap, what else would I call you? Stop talking nonsense and surrender. You dot you. Kimura shook with rage. King Chol In's voice was so detestable and it felt as if his rage would bubble and fill into his bone marrows. If you don't surrender nicely. King Chol In, with a smirking voice sent Kimura the final punch. I will let you feel what it feels like to be hit with an atomic bomb. Wait, that is you Jap's specialty. You are the only people who got hit with one. Two at that. You people can really take it though. You cockroaches. Kimura could not muster a comeback. Although King Chol In was pushing all his buttons, it was fact that no one could deny. Japan was the first to ever be hit with an atomic bomb in the world, and it was also the last to be hit with an atomic bomb. Little boy, the atomic bomb made from uranium and fat man, the bomb made from plutonium, was one of the biggest humiliations for the Japanese people. I will, kill you. Kimura, who was angered to the point of bursting, roared. Well, try it then. Kang Chol and sneered. Don't know if you are capable of doing so, though. And in that moment, Kimura felt something snap in his head. He had lost his sanity. Attack. Kimura roared the command. Now. Go bring him to me. Attack, I said. And that was the start. The soldiers of the burrows under the leadership of Kimura all began to charge towards Laputa's castle walls. The siege had started. Ah, oh Shogun. Timothy shut his eyes tightly at the dismal situation. Even if he had lost in the verbal battle, the sovereign had fallen easily by King Chalin's taunts. For Timothy who was in the center of enemy territory, he was so embarrassed he wanted to hide in a hole. Are you still loyal to a stupid idiot like him? King Chol and who had seen this, threw Timothy a question. Sovereign, please be watchful of your language. This Timothy, although he has been abandoned by the shogun, still has his loyalty. Really? King Chol and said, as if he was intrigued. Then. And he smiled. It was the devil's smile. Enjoy watching. And it was then that the soldiers of the burrows began to climb the castle walls. Chapter 20. Got you, you little thing. The ants were masters of siege warfare, or more accurately, masters of wall climbing. It was expected, seeing that the ants were basically in large dance. Although they preferred to walk on two feet like humans, their foundations were ants. It was no effort to climb walls. Therefore, 
The time that the ants took to climb the walls of Laputa was almost none at all. If the ants climb the walls and make it over the edge, my sovereign will win. Timothy watched and clenched his fists. The current state of the battle was the 300 ants that were almost about to take over Laputa's castle walls. If the ants were to safely climb the castle walls, the victory would belong to Kimura. Although the soldiers were well trained, there was no way a hundred troops would be able to hold off 300 ants. Ants were extremely strong and able to hold up 20 times its weight. But, the ants that seemed as if they would make it over the castle walls at any minute, had to endure the humiliation of not even one making it over. Ready. James ordered and the soldiers of Laputa made suspicious movements. What the soldiers had in hand were not swords, spears, bows, or muskets. Instead, they carried buckets filled with an unknown liquid. And the liquid in the buckets were letting off warm steam as if it was boiling up until just a moment ago. Is it hot water? Ants can deal with hot water. Timothy tilted his head and mumbled. Then, Lucia stepped forward and shook her head. No. Ah, it isn't? Yes, it isn't. It is hot water, but there is no way we can win against the ants with just water. Then, what is? It is water infused with mint. Dot, Timothy's face hardened. Ants do not like mint. The ants are no exception. Of course, they probably will have more endurance against it, but they do not like it the same. We specially put a high concentration, so it will be effective. Look. Lucia pointed to the castle walls, where the battle was taking place. Eat this. Here, drink some mint tea. How dare you crawl up here? King Chol and soldiers shouted and poured the mint-infused water on the ants who were climbing the walls. When about a hundred pails of mint-infused water were poured, a strong mint scent filled the battleground. It was so heavily concentrated that Timothy, who had been watching the battle from the watchtower, felt as if his nose was paralyzed. The reaction was instant. The ants that were crawling up the walls with dangerous speed, could not use any of their power and began to fall from the walls one by one. There were also ants who were shaking and convulsing amongst the fallen. How can this be? Timothy mumbled to himself, full of grief, fault with. Just this simple strategy. It is simple but clever. Well, we have used all our mint in our inventory but. Lucia beamed with pride. Timothy, you said? The sovereign you serve will not win. Our sovereign had previously already figured out your land's main military forces and came up with a solution. This battle will end with Laputa's overwhelming victory. But, of course, with only mint infused water, it is not enough. But, Timothy began to protest, but Lucia shook her head as if to tell him that it was not the end. Do you think this is it? My sovereign is much greater than what you believe. Observe with your eyes wide open and see how great he is. Lucia said proudly. And King Chol and had to tightly shut his mouth of embarrassment. Crap, I don't know why she is making such a big fuss about nothing. How can I live off embarrassment? Ants were powerful organisms, but most sovereigns would know that they had a clear weakness. Of course, there would still be a few who could think of these things in situations like these. And while this was happening, the tide of the war was turning towards the favor of Laputa. Aha! You ants! Try and climb! How does mint tea taste? Come, try and come! I'll kill you all! As the ants fell one by one, Laputa's soldiers who were pumped with adrenaline showed amazing skill as they protected the castle. Boom! Boom! The musket soldiers pulled the triggers. Swoosh! And the soldiers with long spears threw them towards the bottom of the castle walls. Ah, ah, ah! The ants yelled. The ants who lost their energy from the mint scent crumbled like dried leaves, and were all falling from the castle walls. This, this, Kimura, watching this, was grinding his teeth. Hey, you incompetent idiots! Climb the walls. Get over, I said. Kimura yelled from the top of his lungs, demanding the ants to move. His tone seemed like he did not care at all whether the ants died or not. However, what was not, could not be. No matter how much Kimura yelled, cursed, and roared, Laputa's castle walls held solid. As more and more time passed, 
only more and more ants were dying. Go. Go fast and kill all of those. And Kimura finally pulled out the giant centipedes that he had been saving. S-H-H-H-H. As the order fell from Kimura, four giant centipedes that were standing ready began to charge towards the castle walls. It's coming. Tell it to come. Nasty centipedes. Let's kill all of them. Giant centipedes were almost 10 meters long and were powerful enough to chew on a couple of orcs, but King Chol and soldiers shouted without fear, fired up for battle. It was because the certainty of their victory had hindered them from fear. It was then. As the four giant centipedes were just about to climb the castle walls, King Chol and picked up the megaphone. Hey, monkey. After Jap, it was monkey this time. This is your last warning. Surrender now. If you don't want to be taught a lesson. It was a final warning of sorts, but Kimura completely ignored Kang Chalin's offer. You arrogant Josian bug. You surrender. Say something that makes sense. Kimura was far from surrendering, and was going to send in more troops. The giant centipedes were just about to join in on the battle. He had no intentions of surrendering in the first place, but in a moment like this, there was no way he could. You go too. Go now, and bring that arrogant bastard to me. And finally, Kimura sent the leftover 50 troops that were guarding him. It was a display of how determined he was to win over Kang Chol N. And that decision acted as a signal to Kimura's fall. Kang Chol N called to James. Yes, Sovereign. James, who had been leading the troops as commander, roared, answering Kang Chol N. Teach him a lesson. Yes, I will show him what we have got. Did you all hear that? The Sovereign has ordered us to teach them a lesson. As James repeated King Chol and order, Laputa's soldiers all chimed in and brought out the secret weapon. He said to show them all we have got. Let's grill them. Let's make them nice and brown. In the hands of the soldiers, there were not pails with mint-infused water, but with something different. Mint-infused again. No. Lucia disagreed with Timothy. Then. It's oil. Extremely high in combustibility. Dot. Timothy then finally realized the outcome of this battle. Attack with fire. Ants or giant centipedes, both were in essence, insects. Anyone knew that insects' weakness was fire. The Burland's main power was most susceptible to an attack with fire. And if they were all dangling on the castle wall like they were now. It was obvious that the fire would spread in a flash. The effectiveness of fire was going to amplify. Ah, Shogun. Timothy, overcome with grief, called out to Kimura and helplessly fell to the ground. And as this was happening, the soldiers of Laputa were busy pouring buckets filled to the brim with oil. Light the fire. James ordered, and the soldiers all grabbed the torches hanging on the castle walls, and threw it towards the soldiers of the burrow. Whoosh! Whoosh! The flames caught in an instant. Ah! Help! Help me! The ants who were engulfed in flames unexpectedly began to scream as they caught fire. Keek! The giant centipedes were no exception. All those who had absorbed large amounts of oil were all engulfed in giant flames. A battle with fire began to show greater effectiveness as time passed. Because they were all tangled up right below the castle walls, the fire spread extremely quickly. Before Kimura could order his troops to retreat, over half were consumed in flames. My. My soldiers. Kimura could not hide his horror as he witnessed his soldiers becoming roasted in an instant. He had been so confident. And the result was a brutal defeat, complete annihilation. I must run away. Kimura who realized that he had lost, finally accepted reality and decided to run away to save his foolish life. It was obvious that he would experience horrendous things the moment he was captured. Run, run away. Now. Let's go. Kimura urged the flame toes that he was on. But. Kang Chol and was not nice enough, nor dumb enough to allow Kimura to run away. Clip clop, clip clop. Tain horsemen appeared from nowhere and roared towards Kimura. You stop right there. You. Where are you going? The sovereign is waiting for you. Ha ha ha. Where are you running to? You will die when you are caught. The horsemen were set aside by Kang Chol and to capture Kimura in advance. 
they had been waiting quietly and watching the situation and appeared when they had seen the opportunity to capture Kimura. At dot attack, Kimura ordered the flame toad. Because he had poured all his troops towards the battle, he had only the toad to protect him now. The toad opened its mouth and let out a huge flame. Fire. Spread out. The cavalry did not sit still and watch. The flame toad has strong firepower, but the distance is short and has slow movements. You will be able to overpower it easily if you spread out. The cavalry was already informed of the traits of the flame toad by King Chol and Prior. Clip clop, clip clop. The cavalry that had spread out according to orders avoided the flames of the toad and made their way to Kimura's blind spots. Swish. A couple of the cavalry fastened snares to the toad. Ah. Kimura, who was taken aback, swayed and fell to the ground. Go, go away. Go away. Kimura who was now alone screamed, afraid, but King Chol and soldiers had no mercy. Get lost, get lost now. Ah. Kimura clenched his neck and screamed. His neck had gotten caught in the snare thrown by one of the men. The soldier who had caught Kimura laughed and roared in delight. That cavalryman was named Bodersky. Got you, little thing. Chapter 21 Initiated Mental Training Victory We won. Yeah. Laputa's soldiers who had been watching Kimura being caught atop the castle walls roared. They had won. It was not just a victory but it was a grand victory in a situation where they were in an extreme disadvantage. It was a complete victory. It was an inspiring achievement. Are any injured, or dead? Report. Commander James as soon as the battle ended, sought to quickly check the status of his soldiers. Platoon 1, none, sir. Platoon 2, two injured. Platoon 3, none, sir. Amazingly, there were no casualties. Two soldiers who had suffered minor injuries were all the setbacks that Laputa suffered in the battle. My lord, did you predict this would happen? James looked towards the watchtower that King Chulin would have been in, and could not hide his awe. With the combination of troops that the enemy has, they will not win against us, no matter what they do. King Chulin, who had gained intel on the borough's troops, assured them that they cannot lose and that they will make an overwhelming victory. And that had come true, right in front of his eyes. Walk faster. Meanwhile, Podersky and the other cavalrymen bound Kimura tightly with rope and returned to Laputa. Ugh! Kimura was dragged along by the soldier named Podersky. But! He looked a bit strange. What, what is that bounding method? Scary! How in the world did he tie it like that? In the minds of those looking, Lots of questions arose. Kimura was tightly bound in a very complicated and strange rope tie, and it was tied so well that it did not allow for any movement from the head to the toes. It was enough to make everyone surprised. Kang Chul and Tu, was taken aback. Ha! This is driving me crazy. Kang Chul and hid his face in his hands, as if he was tired. Where Podersky learned this was unknown but the rope tie that was used on Kimura was a technique similar to the tortoise shell tie, commonly found in Japanese avs. A Japanese sovereign bound with a tie found in Japanese pornography. It was ironic. Sovereign, it is a complete victory. But why do you seem? No, nothing. Kang Chol and swatted his hand at Lucia's worried question. I probably did not sleep well last night. Kang Chol and who could not say that the tie method was lewd just avoided the question saying that he was tired and moved his eyes towards Timothy. Timothy. Yes. Sovereign. Timothy looked as if he had lost his country. In reality, he did lose a country. From today, the boroughs would fall to King Chalin's leadership. Your sovereign is incompetent and foolish. Dot, Timothy did not answer. Although Kimura was incompetent and foolish, he was, up until a moment ago. Still Timothy's owner who he had pledged all of his loyalty. He could not turn his back the moment Kimura had lost. And he abandoned you. If you still have loyalty to pledge to a leader like him, pledge it to me. Dot, Timothy opened his eyes wide. So dot sovereign. I don't know how it looks in your perspective, but I value man of talent. I don't know your capacity, but I like your loyalty. What do you think? Would you grow this land together with me? 
It was an unforeseen proposal, but it was also an attractive proposal. Me, me. Does he want this Timothy? Timothy could not speak, confused and jumbled at the sudden conciliation. You must need time. There, the sun sets. Kang Chol and pointed at the mountains. Decide before the sun sets and darkness comes. I am not that laid back. Then, I will go see that arrogant monkey. Kang Chol and left, giving Timothy less than an hour to make a choice. Timothy. Lucia called to Timothy, who was staring blankly. What are you contemplating? What do you mean? You have hit the jackpot right now. You have the opportunity of a lifetime right in front of you, but why are you not taking it? Lucia spoke in a serious tone. It was not the tone of treating a loser's advisor, but an advisor to an advisor. Us advisors, all of the land service people have waited an infinite amount of time between the dimensions. For our sovereignty come and lead us. Dot, but we cannot choose sovereigns. Only the sovereigns make a choice. Only God knows what sovereign will lead us. Am I wrong? You. You are right. And a chance has been given to you to choose your sovereign. Are you going to choose that incompetent sovereign? Lucia raised her arm and pointed at the doors of Laputa. There was Kimura, who was being dragged and humiliated all tied up with a rope tie of Boderski. Or choose an extraordinary sovereign like mine. This time, the choice is entirely yours. However, the sovereign's right hand is my spot so do not dare. Lucia's eyes burned. Anyways, the sovereign has given you time, so think wisely. Also, the sovereign has already granted you a pardon once. That is true. It was true. If it was any other sovereign, they would have had Timothy's head at the start of dawn. Do not disappoint him. Although he has shown mercy, he is blood and iron at the core. This is probably the last chance you will be given. Lucia was saying, there is no second chance. Timothy's choice was either to serve King Chao in, or die. Then, I hope you make a wise decision. Lucia with those words, quickly left the watchtower. Ah! Gods! What is this Timothy to do? Timothy who was now left alone, thought again and again. Was he to remain loyal as an advisor to the end, or was he going to serve a new master? It was hard to decide. It was a problem too difficult to solve before the sunset. When everyone was celebrating the victory, one person, King Chol and was not rejoicing. No, he was happy, but the material of his happiness differed. If the others were purely celebrating the victory, King Chol and was celebrating the rewards of the victory. He had won in the battle, and he had captured the leader of the enemy, Kimura. From today, the gold and surviving troops of the burrows would fall into King Chalin's hands. And. Timothy, he will prove useful. The old goblin was the biggest harvest. King Chalin wanted Timothy to pledge his loyalty to him. Because Timothy was too, an advisor. Like the 300 sovereigns, there were also 300 advisors. Therefore, for each advisor, there was a, specialty. A specialty usually for internal affairs. Maybe she was a special case, but he could not see Alusha's specialty. However, Timothy was different. Timothy in the eyes of King Chol and had the skill of, Administration Master. The capabilities of that skill were as follows, Dash Administration Master, Level, 1, Maximum Level 5, Effect, Administration Work Performed, Efficiency Plus 20%, Effect, Night Shift Performed, Efficiency Plus 70%, Effect, Administration work performed, stamina plus 30%. It was a skill perfect to put to work on a desk. For King Chao In, whose head spun just hearing the A in administration, Timothy was an extremely needed asset. If Timothy pledged himself to King Chao In, he would for the rest of his life, until his death, be in front of a desk with papers. King Chao In, thinking of this and that, arrived at the sovereign hall where his throne was. In the Sovereign Hall, there were Commander James and ten soldiers, the cavalryman Poderski, and Kimura waiting for him. My lord, my congratulations on the victory. Congratulations, my lord. His soldiers sent awestruck congratulations, but King Chol and was not satisfied with this boring win, so he did not show happiness. It was an easy win. 
Kimura was an idiot too stupid to even call sovereign, and trash not worthy of dealing with. Kang Cholin was not a man who would be satisfied with a victory over an incompetent leader. Think about it. Would a professional boxer be happy that he had won against an elementary school child? Would a strong, fit man celebrate a victory after twisting a chicken's neck? If there was one who was happy, that person would be the true trash that laughed after stepping on the weak. It would not be an overstatement to say all those who enjoyed massacres of innocent people, were crazy. Enough congratulating. Now, I will teach this one a lesson so if you have a club that's suitable, bring it. Yes, Sovereign. At King Chol and orders, a soldier quickly went to fetch for a club. Are you Podersky? King Chol and called for the cavalryman who had captured Kimura. Yes, my lord. I am Podersky. Dot do you like handcuffs, by chance? Huh? That. Handcuffs are a wonderful catalyst that makes boring sex life more interesting. Poldersky was about to explain something, a little embarrassed, but Kang Jolin waved his hand and cut him off. Stop. Do not speak further. Yes. How do you know, my lord, that I like handcuffs? Dot don't try to know anything. Kang Jolin turned away. The reason why Kang Jolin asked such a question. Was that Podersky looked just like the mascot of a public safety organization of a certain country. The round eyes, short haircut, the imp-shaped forehead like a monkey, the excessively large ears, and the brown hair. If he had worn the uniform, no one could deny that it was that mascot. A guy like that, used that crude rope tie? You have to live long to see certain things. Kang Chol impressed his aching head tenderly and shook his head. Dot anyways. You captured the enemy's leader, so you have done well. I will appoint you to Laputa's director general. Thank you, my lord. Boderski bowed to Kang Chol in ingratitude of his unexpected raise in position. I, always wanted to be a cop ever since I was young. Dot seemed like it. How, how do you know that, my lord? Just. Don't ask. You'll get hurt. Yes, sovereign. Anyways. Podersky who said he wanted to be a cop since he was little, was given a position of determining Laputa's safety. Kang Cholin looked at Podersky and thought that maybe a person's destiny was predetermined. James. Yes, my lord. You did a good job as well. I will reward five gold. Oh, thank you my lord. Five gold was about two thousand dollars. James' smile reached his ears. I will postpone detailed rewards to a later time. Kang Chol and looked down at Kimura and spoke. A dot huh? MMM. Kimura bound with Polderski's rope and with a gag in his mouth was trying to say something. Although he could not understand it, he was almost a 100% sure Kimura was begging for him to spare his life. Young. Kang Chol and who had seen Kimura's face grimaced, as if to say the little boy was nothing. About a high schooler? Well, I have no intentions of going easy anyway. Kang Cholin was not someone to go easy because the other was young. A uh, dot huh? MMM. Kimura, overcome with horror yelled. He must have felt his life in danger looking at Kang Cholin's eyes. It was that moment when the soldier who was looking for a club ran into the sovereign hall and handed Kang Cholin an iron club. My lord, here it is. Coincidentally. The iron club resembled the shape of a baseball bat, making it perfect to hit someone. There was not a club better to teach someone a lesson. Undo that idiot's rope and make him lay in front of me. Kang Chol in ordered, it was time to train the monkey. The Overlord of Blood and Iron, Chapter 22 The Weight of War, The Weight of Order. Kang Chol and silently swung the metal bat. He did not swing it with everything he had. If he did. Kimura's hip bones would break after two or three hits, and he would die after ten blows. He controlled his strength as well as he could and hit as much as Kimura would be able to endure. However, even that was too much for Kimura. Ugh! MMMM. Every time the metal club swung, Kimura screamed, but the gag in his mouth muffled the sound. Crack, crack. Kang Chol and him like a machine. He looked so emotionless that... For those who were watching, the hairs on their backs rose. And this lasted for about 30 minutes. 
When Kimura had received about 50 blows, Kang Chaolin spoke. Untie him. Yes, sovereign. One of the soldiers quickly did as he ordered. Please. Spare, spare me. Kimura, who had been untied from Poderski's rope tie and gag, begged and pleaded until his hands became his feet. He was crying and making a big commotion. Kimura looked like a young boy who just had gotten in serious trouble by his father. I. I will never do that again. Please, please spare me my life. Don't kill me. Kimura, who was begging on his knees, had lost any last sense of dignity he had as a sovereign. He was so servile and desolate that even those looking clicked their tongues. What have you done wrong? Kang Cholin asked. I am sorry for causing the war. I am sorry. I'm sorry for cursing. Wrong. Kang Chol and shook his head. Put the gag back on him. The gag went back on Kimura's mouth. MMMM.MMMM. The metal club swung again. Speak. What did you do wrong? Kang Chol and who had delivered the second blow, asked Kimura again. I did wrong. I'm sorry. So, what did you do wrong? I don't know, but I'm sorry for everything. Please just spare my life. Put it back. Kang Chol and seemed unsatisfied, as if the answer was again not what he was looking for. Crack. After the blows landed again for the third time and Kimura was almost unconscious, the iron club finally stopped. Ugh. Did you still not know what you did wrong? Please. If you tell, if you tell me. Kimura seemed like he did not even have the strength to beg anymore. Indeed. Since although Kang Cholin controlled his strength, he had been hit almost a hundred times. Sovereign, why don't you just take his head instead? James came forward, unable to watch further. Kimura was in so much pain that James had asked for a comfortable death. No, I am not going to kill him. Kang Cholin shook his head. Feed him the potion. When the order fell, Kang and subordinates shook in terror. It had sounded like he would heal him, then hit Kimura some more. The person who you should be begging to is not me but over there. Kang Chol and went against everyone's predictions and put down his iron club. Since you ask to be taught, I will teach you. Kang Chol and's finger pointed outside. The one you should apologize to is not me but your soldiers. Those who died for nothing because of the orders you gave with your incompetence. Dot. You have the authority to give orders, no matter how incompetent of a sovereign you are, but have you ever thought of the weight of those orders? Have you ever thought of the things that were going to happen because of your orders? At King Cholin's criticism, Kimura could not say anything. It was even more so because they were all true. Of course, you are extremely young and you probably were not able to completely figure out the grand calling that suddenly happened. This situation may have felt like it was a dream or a game. It's not that I cannot understand. But. Kimura flinched at his loud voice. No matter how ignorant and incompetent you were, what you did is not easily forgivable. Giant centipedes, sure, but ants are a kind that has emotion and intelligence. And over 200 of those ants are dead. Because of your orders. The Sovereign Hall fell silent at Kang Chol-in's words. If you are in a high position. You need to be able to carry responsibility. How could you not, for the lives of your soldiers depend on your decision? It was not for Kang Chol and to say, since he was the prime example of a conquest sovereign, but it was also something that only Kang Chol and could say. How many had their life or death dependent on his orders? Kang Chol and was once, a man who controlled thousands of lives. There were probably few who knew better than him, the weight of a sovereign and the weight of a war. If even one of my soldiers died, I would have killed you without hesitation. But I guess you're quite lucky, seeing that not one of my soldiers died in this battle. But. Even if I forgive you, who will listen to the cries of your soldiers who died today? How about the emotional state of your loyal Timothy who you abandoned? Ah, ah. It seemed like you more finally understood King Jolin. Beg for forgiveness to those who died because of your foolishness. I am sorry. I'm so sorry. Kimura kneeled towards the front and bowed his head. I am sorry. I'm so sorry. The apology lasted for a long while. I changed a lot too. 
Kang Chol and silently looked at Kimura and realized he too, had changed. If it was him before, he would have cut the throats of every man and woman, as well as the lives of the people of the enemy sovereign. Although it was not often, there were a couple of times when he had. However, after his return, he himself could feel that he was different from before. Maybe it was because of that day's defeat that he had changed. Well, let's just call it an extenuating circumstance. Underage, foolishness, lack of realization that it is reality, etc. It was okay to show mercy once considering it was shortly after the grand calling. Of course, as previously mentioned, it was also because there were no casualties on his side. As time passed and Kimura apologized again and again to a point where he was almost unconscious, Kang Cholin spoke. That is enough apologizing in front of me. I don't know if the apology that you showed right now is sincere or a slight trick to save yourself from this situation. I don't have a way of knowing nor do I care. But, if you truly feel sorry, then you must never forget what you did today. That is dependent on your humanistic qualities, and I will not intervene. Kang Chol and paused briefly, and then continued. My lecturing stops here. Like I said, I will spare you, so return home as soon as your throat gets better. Ah, before that, we must finish what we were doing. Lucia. Lucia who had come into the Sovereign Hall and was watching the event unfold, answered when she heard her name be called. Yes, Sovereign. What do you need? Bring the Soul Core. Yes, my lord. Lucia disappeared somewhere, and then reappeared with a fancy sword that she held with two hands. Soul Core. It was a sword that had no use as an actual weapon and was purely for ceremonial purposes but it was a key controller that symbolized the Sovereign and controlled the land. Therefore, the Soul Core was something that only the Sovereign and his advisor could touch. Kang Chol In was able to control Laputa's facilities and the magic engineered satellite in space only with the Soul Core. The Soul Core for a Sovereign was like a royal seal, or a God-given gift. You do not have the right to be a Sovereign. Also, the responsibility of defeat falls solely on the Sovereign. Therefore. I will take away your position here as sovereign. How? Kimura answered with a quivering voice. The thing you are wearing on your waist, that is the soul core. You need to make a vow to me holding it. Kimura took at the bro's soul core at Kang Cholin's orders. Get on your knees and touch your sword to mine. Repeat after me. I, I. Pledge my troops and my land, pledge my troops and my land, to the one who was victorious over me. To the one who was victorious over me, Laputa's sovereign, Kang Jolin. Laputa's sovereign, Kang Jolin. Leaving nothing, leaving nothing. As the vow continued, the soul cores of Laputa and the bro began to radiate an energy. And give up my status as sovereign. And give up my status as sovereign. As soon as Kimura finished reciting the vow, the bro land's soul core burned bright red. And. Crack broke into a million pieces. In the remains of the broken soul core of the Burlands, magic energy flowed into Kang Jolin's soul core. And messages popped up in front of Kang Jolin. You have gained control of the Burlands. You have gained 5 levels with the conquest of an enemy sovereign. You have gained 50 sovereign points with the conquest of an enemy sovereign. Level 14 reached. Tutorial 1 Quest Complete. Reward and Quest Completion. Experience plus 500 slash 20 gold slash warp gate unlocked, unlimited, because it was brief information it was not in detail, it was definite that the ownership of the burrows fell to Kang Jolin. The ants who survived as well as the gold that Kimura had would have also transferred to Kang Jolin. Aside from the advisor Timothy of course. Also, because he cleared the tutorial 1 quest, the reward that followed was also given. Even if it was a boring win, the reward was clear. Is, is it? Over now? Kimura spoke weakly. Yes, it is over. I, I am sorry. I am sorry to everyone. I apologize. And Kimura fainted, falling to the ground. He could not finish. Take him and tend to him. As soon as Kang Chalin ordered, two soldiers took Kimura and disappeared to somewhere. Now, would I have some time to return to Earth? 
compared to the three or four days he had predicted in the beginning, he was in Pangaea for two weeks, so he had postponed for an extremely long time. However, he could not go right away. He needed to take care of the ants who survived, the fire toes that he took from Kimura, reward for his troops, as well as dealing with what to do with the burrow land. In order for him to return to Earth, he needed at least two or three more days. Also, was it time for me to pay the interest? Kang Chol in remembered the borrowed money and smiled a bitter smile. He probably had to tell Lucia from the privy purse. But, there probably would be quite a bit of gold from Kimura, so there would be plenty after the debt was paid. If there was a bit more, he maybe would be able to give his mother some allowance and find her a good apartment for rent. It was true. The sovereign Kang Chao in, too, could not escape worrying about debt and apartment rent. Of course, if more time passed, he would claw in heaps of money in the millions instead of the thousands, but that would be at least a year later. The Overlord of Blood and Iron, Chapter 23 Timothy's Loyalty, and Kimor's Disappearance. Kang Chol and Dove straight to post-war management. But. As soon as he started, the vessels in Kang Chol and's forehead bulged. It had happened after he checked the amount of gold. Apostrophe dot what is this idiot? Unfortunately, the gold that he had taken from Kimura was only 2,000 gold. 2,000 gold. If you had estimated one gold to be about $400, 2,000 gold would be about 800,000. It was a lot of money. However, that was not enough. It was incomparable to the amount that Kang Jolin had imagined previously. Control yourself, calm down. Rg. Kang Jolin had to fight the urge to run to Kimura and grab him by the collar and mustered up all his patience to calm himself. It was too little. The price of the Burra land would be at most 4,000 gold, but aside from the 2,000 that he had acquired, where had the remaining 4,000 gone? Sovereign. Lucia, who was holding Laputa's soul core gingerly, asked carefully when she noticed Kang Chol and shaking in anger. Is there something wrong? There is too little. What? What do you mean? The gold that we took from him. It's too little. There is only 2,000 gold. Dot. Lucia was also surprised at what Kang Chol and said. 2,000? There is no way. There needs to be at least 4,000. Dot I think he spent a lot. He probably spent excessively seeing the money. Oh my god. There is nothing we can do. We can't tell him to return gold he has already spent. That is true. Lucia. Yes, Sovereign. That's why. Please speak. Can you give me 500 gold for my private pocket? Dot, Kang Chol and said, a little embarrassed. Private pocket. It was personal money only for a sovereign. More simply put, it was an allowance of sorts for the sovereign. It was usually decided after consulting the advisor, but Kang Chol and was embarrassed because the financial state of Laputa was quite bad. They were very close to being in financial trouble, but as soon as some money came in, he had asked for personal money. Sigh. Lucia sighed. Dot, Kang Chao in, a bit embarrassed, pretended to do something else. Sovereign. Dot speak. I would have given you a thousand gold, if you have asked without hesitation. Dot, there is a saying, a man is able to be proud if his wallet is full. Yes. If you were to maintain your dignity, you would need at least a thousand gold. I will give you a thousand. Lucia had big hands. This Lucia, even if we have to save and go without, will give you enough allowance. Even if all the people have to eat boiled cattle feed instead of bread. But she must also have known how to apply pressure. Dot give me only 500 gold. Is that enough? Dot it is more than enough. Kang Chol and succeeded in getting 500 gold in allowance. It was then. From far away. Timothy ran with his short legs towards him and kneeled in front of Kang Jolin. Sov, Sovereign. Dot, this Timothy, after much thought has decided to serve you, Sovereign. Although I am an unfaithful body that has changed sovereigns, I will give all I have to serve you. Please take me. Stand, Timothy. Kang Jolin smiled widely and stood Timothy up. You are an important asset that will take care of my land's administrative duties and distributions. 
Dot, I will appoint you the land's executive official. Also, I will also entrust you with the military distributions. Your title. Kang Chol and who was in thought for a moment turned his head and smirked widely. As administrative supply officer. Administrative supply officer. Yes. Entrusting such an important task to me. I am grateful. Timothy was crying as he thanked Kang Chol and again and again. However, Kang Chol and his intentions were black and evil. Hey, hey. I will bury you in papers. Timothy had the skill of being more and more effective the more and more he was overworked. In order to make him the most productive, night shifts were a must. I will go attend to post-war management, so you rest well for the time being. Yes, Sovereign. Kang Chao In, who had sent Timothy away, went immediately to his royal guard to reward them for their contributions. Hooray! Hooray! Glory to the Sovereign! Congratulations for the win! Laputa's soldiers congratulated Kang Chol in and celebrated their victory. Tonight, I will send beer and sausages, so everyone eat and drink to your heart's content. Kang Chol in suggested a meal to comfort the soldiers and reward them for their hard work. Whoa! This is the best. Like young, energetic men, the soldiers were extremely happy at the news of beer. He met the people of the land as well. A couple of the women of the land, gifted Kang Chol in bouquets of flowers or necklaces made from flowers. Amongst them was Lana, Rustler's daughter as well. My lord. Dot, Lana who was not yet of age, blushed and looked embarrassed. What the? What's wrong with her? Kang Chol in was taken aback by Lana, who was twisting her body, but he did not show it. Sovereign. Lana is. Rustler's only daughter spoke and lowered her eyes to the ground. Her ears were so red that it seemed like it would explode at any moment. It was then. Commander James ran to him quickly and yelled to Kang Chao in, covering Lana's voice. Sovereign. Sovereign. What is it, James? I have gathered the surviving ants and the fire toad in the drill grounds. Right. I will go now. Kang Chao in turned towards the drill grounds right away. It was important to deal with the enemy troops. Dot, Lena, who could not finish her sentence, blew her in her cheeks and glared at James, but no one noticed. Kang Chao In, who arrived in the drill grounds, looked at the enemy troops from the reviewing stand. They looked horrible, all of them horribly burned. Lucia. Yes, my lord. Bring all the honey from storage and feed it to them. Yes, sovereign. Honey for ants were the best health food, and the medicine that cures all. For them who were insects, sugar was the most nutritious. James. Yes, my lord. Give them potions. Take care of them so their wounds will heal well. Yes, my lord. After giving the orders, Kang Chol and left the stand and headed towards the leader of the ants. You are probably hurting a lot, and also very sad. Dot, Verna, the leader of the ants opened her eyes wide at Kang Chol and's comforting words. I feel sorry. No dot it's nothing. But what can we do? War is all like this. If I did not want to die, I had to kill you instead. I know. Verna lowered her head. You must hate me and despise me. But what can we do? The burrows are under my leadership now. Yes, Sovereign. I wish to entrust you with the architecture of this land. Dot. In the surprising offer, Verna opened her eyes wide. I will not send you to battle. Building, I will only ask you to build. Would you help me and build grand buildings in this land? Do you mean that, Sovereign? I know that your happiness is work, and only work. I do not need anything else. I want only work, and not fighting power from you. Then. Will you do it? Yes, Sovereign. No, my lord. I will serve you. Verna bent her six legs as best as she could and bowed as best as she could. I will serve you to the best of my ability. I will serve you to the best of my ability. I will serve you to the best of my ability. All the ants all vowed their loyalty to Kang Chol in. Simpletons. Kang Chol and smiled in the inside. Honestly, this kind of show was not needed, for he was able to control them, but there was a big difference in doing it and not. There was a difference in loyalty. 
gain plus 30 favorability from the ants, loyalty of the ants from 60 to 75, it was effective, as expected. Ants are great manpower. Kang Chol and wanted the ants vigorously. There were dwarves who specialized in architecture, but dwarves were more useful in craftsmanship or as blacksmiths. For simply building architecture, ants were the best in construction sites. They were manual laborers down to the bone. And were a great labor force, so they would be extremely helpful in internal affairs. Also, they enjoyed doing manual labor, so he did not need to feel guilty in putting them to work. They would not complain no matter how hard he worked them. James. Yes, Sovereign. Follow me with the flame toad. King Chao In, who had left the drill grounds, finally went to the place where the land's blacksmith worked. Oh, welcome, my lord. The old man who worked as the blacksmith of the land was called Volcanos. This guy, can you raise him well? King Chol and handed the flame toad's leash to the old man. This guy. This place is the foundation that determines our land's military force. The blacksmith's workshop needs to be well stocked so good weapons can be made. Thank, thank you my lord. Gifting me with such a good monster. The old man Volcanos kneeled and bowed. For a blacksmith who worked with metal, a fire toad would be extremely helpful. A flame toad would be a great asset and friend. I will support you well from now on. King Chol and was a conquest sovereign. There was no way he would be cheap with his support in a place where weapons were made. This old man, will pay back with twice, no ten times more than what you have supported me with. With that, post-war administration was finished. Night had fallen and torches were hung all over the land. I'll finally go home. King Chol and was planning to return to Earth as soon as the sun rose tomorrow. He would visit his mother and also check on the status of finding Quack Young. The next morning, King Chol and stood in the magic square that lied in the center of the Sovereign Hall. However, he could not see the person that he was supposed to see. This idiot, where did he go? King Chol and asked, and James' face hardened. It's that. Speak. It seems, like he hid somewhere. What? The person that Kang Chol in was looking for was no other than Kimura. He was going to take him along when he was returning to Earth. It's that. There were a couple people who heard him whining that he did not want to go home. He doesn't want to go home? That he is scared of his house. He said he would much rather stay here. Dot what is he? Kang Chol in put his face in his hands, as if he was annoyed. He had spared Kimura's life yet he didn't want to go home. He could not understand what kind of a messed up situation this was. Find him, before I get back. King Chol in ordered. Then, a man who seemed like he would be handy with a pair of handcuffs answered. Yes, my lord. Boderski smiled widely and answered. On his waist were a pair of silver handcuffs, gleaming in the light. Leave it to me, my lord. Was it just him that felt assured that it would get done when Poderski answered? King Chol and shook his head and activated the magic square. Returning to Earth was priority. The Overlord of Blood and Iron, Chapter 24 Making a Deal, 1. The UN has launched an investigation on the posts of light that has been appearing on the landmarks around the world. Meanwhile from witness accounts and first-hand accounts, there have been official reports that these posts are gates that lead to a different world. There have been supernatural beings found around the world. From the reports of those who are traveling through the gate, the other world has all sorts of monsters. While mysterious medicines and items are one by one emerging, the United States has announced that they will actively recruit American dimension travelers in order to gain intel on this other world. The news was noisy. There were some who had gained special abilities from Pangaea who then went on an American talk show, although it was simple magic, and videos of healing serious wounds with a red liquid in a glass jar was all over YouTube. And articles of an animal that looked like a mixture of a squirrel and rabbit that was able to resist a 5. 56 NATO flooded the mass media. January of 2021 was noisy and filled with news of findings of a new world. Sigh. King Chao In, who had almost been watching the news for three hours, turned off the TV while letting out a sigh. Habit. 
A bitter smile formed on his lips. The reason for watching the news was simple. It was a way of sorts to lessen the gap between Pangaea and Earth. Different from Earth, where the supernatural did not exist and only pure science existed, Pangaea was a world where advanced magic, martial arts, and monsters existed simultaneously. If you lived in such a place for a while, one's mind to the way one speaks were prone to becoming like that of Pangaea. In order to lessen this, watching TV for long periods of time helped. Then, at least in reality, one would not use corny things like Shakespeare tone and diction. Of course, when one returned to Pangaea, it would all become useless. Should I slowly get moving? Kang Chol in mumbled and left his house. In the hands of Kang Chol in who was stepping out the door, there was a full bag, and in it was the 500 gold that Lucia had given him. Kang Chol in was planning to sell this gold and get some money. Broom. The Mustang let out a heavy sound as it left the parking lot. The destination was Yangsen, in old terms called Bukgondo, the 21st street of an old business district. With a boom of online shopping from the 2000s and the opening of the 2016 HDC Shinra Duty Free, there were almost no natives in Yangsen, and were almost all Chinese tourists. The glory of the electronic district long ago had become ancient history. We are not in business. The 40-year-old man who was playing a card game on his computer with a cigarette in his mouth, said that when Kang Chol and entered the old, shabby store filled with old, dusty computer parts. We don't buy things here. He seemed like he got some cigarette smoke in his eyes, because he did not even look at Kang Chol and and just crinkled his brow. I didn't come here to sell, I came here to buy. Don't pretend to do other things, and open the shutters. Kang Chol and spoke. Then, the man turned his head slowly and looked at Kang Chol and up and down. What is this, young little boy? The man's eyebrows came together. In his memory, Kang Chol and's face did not exist. It was a face he had never seen before. Open the shutter? That means he does know something. Cop? Oh crap. The man was wary of Kang Chol and and was put in a difficult place. For those who made a living dealing illegally. Strange faces were always a dangerous factor. To make a deal with a stranger was always risky. I don't know what you are talking about, but we don't sell or buy. Okay? So, don't be annoying and go to your business somewhere else. Huh? I screwed up. Crap. The man glared and said in a threatening tone. It seemed like he would throw a punch if he did not leave nicely. I came to see the old man Guan so open the shutter. Dot. I'm not police, nor do I work for the government. I came to sell this. With a thud, the bag with the gold fell on top of the laptop which the man was playing his card games. Ha! This bastard! The man with an annoyed face stood up suddenly. And he stepped close towards Kang Chel and, and put on a threatening face. Hey, what are you? What do you think this place is? What do you mean, what is this place? It's the old man Quan store. Korea's greatest money bug, old man Quan. Kang Chol and spoke. You rude little bastard. In that moment, the man swung a fist towards Kang Chol N. The result was unfortunate. Black, black. The man grabbed his stomach and groaned, and threw up his lunch that he had eaten about an hour ago. Boss. What is that? Get him. Just in time. The other gangsters who had stepped outside for a smoke came back inside and lunged towards Kang Chol N. The result was the same. There was not one who was able to touch even Kang Chol N's clothes. With one blow, all of them fell to the ground. Kang Chol N was a man whose fighting power surpassed that of a professional boxer with no skill. If he was level 14. Even if it was a lower level, these gangsters were elementary schoolers at most. You. You bastard. You. Who sent? You. Talk. Before. I make a hole. In your head. The man who fell first spoke menacingly. Before anyone noticed, his hand was in the inside pocket of his jacket. This little idiot? Kang Chol and know what was in that inside pocket. Old man Guan was a money thirsty man who would deal anything that would bring in money, like drugs, guns, or stolen goods. And for a gangster protecting old man Guan's store, 
although this was just one of the many, they would carry at least one gun. However, Kang Chol and did not seem at all scared even when he knew his opponent was carrying a gun. Of course, if he was hit with a bullet now, in 9 cases out of 10, he would die, but he was confident he would not be hit in the first place, so there was no reason to be afraid. I'll break your neck. It was when Kang Chol and smiled a bitter smile and decided to lunge at the man. Put the toy away. Nothing good comes of making a commotion. An old voice flowed out of the speakers that hung at the corner of the ceiling. I don't know where you are from. But you got some fists. It was the voice of old man Guan. He's still the same. Kang Chol and smiled quickly at the familiar voice of old man Guan. Quan had often made deals with Kang Chol and in the past. Kang Chol and had sold items that were difficult to distribute for him with a fee or purchased items as well, it was quite a nice business partnership. Open the shutter and bring him downstairs. I want to see his face. Kang Chol and was able to meet old man Guan, who was surrounded by eight bodyguards, when he passed the shutter and went down a secret tunnel leading to a bottom floor. You are not a familiar face, who introduced you? Old man Guan formed a sort of approachable smile and asked. No comment. Kang Chol and answered. That won't do. Although it may seem that in this line of work, you just do whatever, but there is no after trouble if both sides are clean. The old man seemed reluctant. You won't get an upset stomach even if you eat this, so let's just deal. Let's just deal? In old man Quan's bald forehead, the veins bulged. Ha ha. Hey, young man. Have you never heard of respecting your elders? You will go with one blow like that. The old man Quan that I know likes money more than talking about petty formalities. Kang Chol and responded back. Dot, first, this. Kang Chol and put the bag with 500 gold on Quan's table. 500 gold that are 10 grams each. 97. 8% purity. Market price is about 200,000? 10% commission is enough? Ho. Oh. Work talk right away. Fine, money over formality. So, origin? Stolen? Illegal mining? The noisy place these days. Dot, old man Quan's face hardened. You must know that in any business, it is beneficial to start in the early stages, yes? Kang Chol and slyly threw bait. Very, beneficial. The early bird catches the worm. Yes, of course. However, entering a new market has also big risks. Old man Guan said pretending not to pay attention. He was an experienced old man, so he did not go for the bait right away. It is appealing, but he means that there is no reason to jump into it if the money is good right now. Kang Chol and could understand what old man Quan was intending. However, old man, you are going to decide to work with me. There was a critical weakness in what old man Quan said, and old man Quan too would be played by Kang Chol's speech. Seems like the risk is big enough, even now? Guns, drugs, fake IDs, money laundering, etc. If you get caught with one, 20 years is minimum. That's your lifeline, and talking about risk, it doesn't make sense. KMMM. An uncomfortable dry cough came from the old man's mouth. To speak the truth, old man Quan was a criminal. No matter how powerful Quan was in the dark world, it would be complete annihilation once he got caught by the authorities. The old man had come this far with luck and good resources, but it was still like walking on eggshells. Like a man dancing on the edge of a sword, it was not strange if the old man went to prison suddenly. Hey, young friend. What you say isn't false, but if you push me like this, nothing will be beneficial to your life. If I put my mind to it. You think you can do something to me with those gangsters? Kang Chol and snorted and pointed to that the old man's guards with his chin. No matter how strong your fist is, there is no use in front of a bullet. The old man spoke coldly. It meant he will kill him if he fooled around further. I'm disappointed old man. Disappointed? I thought you wanted to come out to the bright side. Dot. Upon hearing those words, old man Quan's wrinkled eyes opened wide. Old man, your money is like a prize beyond your reach. You can't even buy a building under your name, 
And how long do you think you can live under an assumed one? What are you saying, that you don't have too long to live anyways? Dot, of course you deal in cash, so profit must be large. But considering how much it costs to silence mouths and risks, isn't living that kind of life not that great either? There isn't a country like Korea that is sensitive to guns and drugs either. But I guess to change businesses now, you are probably afraid of all the negative responses from all sorts of places. It's obvious you can't fold your business because you cannot do this or that. Am I wrong? Kang Chol and speech was sharp and painful, enough to rip the old man's heart to shreds, but not one part of it was untrue. Old man, this is a chance. A chance for you to leave the dark side and come up to the light. Dot, I'll give you a bit of information. Of course, it will spread everywhere. But it is quite a good piece of information right now. Ta dot talk. It seemed like the old man agreed with what Kang Chol in was saying. The other world, more precisely, in Pangaea, you cannot take items from this world. You can only bring things. Think about it well, what this means. The old man slowly thought of the information that Kang Chol in gave him. Cannot take in. Can only bring out. Pangaea? Those who go back and forth are the select few. Can only bring out. Wait, it seems like he is saying there is no need to invest a big amount of money. In that moment, the old man's eyes sparkled. Distribution. Although it was illegal, he had lived doing business for tens of years. Even with a bit of source, his head spun fast, and a way to profit had come to him. Still smart. Kang Chol and smiled a satisfied smile, as if he knew what the old man had thought of. You need to just secure a distribution network. Just sit still and wait until the travelers of Pangaea bring the items for you to distribute, and all you need to do is profit off the commission. That was the key. But, but what? What do I know what they can bring from there? In detail, what kind of items? Old man Quan asked. For example. Kang Chol in answered. The Overlord of Blood and Iron, Chapter 25. Making a Deal, 2. Something like this? The thing that he handed towards the old man was a plain looking ring. What is this? Meanwhile, old man Quan's tone was quite different. It was a green light. It meant that he would treat Kang Chol in as a business partner, instead of some little kid of unknown origin. A ring of strength. A ring of strength? It will increase the strength of the one wearing it of about 10 kilograms. It is cheap, but the effect is apparent. Are you telling me to believe? Old man. Kang Chol and cut him off. You think I came to sell drugs? The cold question, and the colder eyes. Old man Guan had to fight the urge to want to faint. What kind of a guy's eyes look like that? It was a horrifying glare that he had never seen in his many years of life. Can this be? Due to his business, Guan was to meet all sorts of criminals, and amongst them were guns for hire or gangsters who had killed many. However, amongst those cruel gangsters, there was none who made his hairs stand on edge like this young man. He did not know where this guy had come from. I. I am sorry. I made a mistake. Finally, old man Guan lowered his tail. Guan, himself, could not believe it either. His pride as a man was hurt, for he had gotten scared with eight bulky bodyguards behind him who were all armed. He thought that there were all sorts of people in this world. Well, it's okay. Kang Chol and who had scared him without intending to, swatted his hand. There is a saying, seeing is believing. It would be easier for you to understand when you use it once than me saying it a thousand times. Could I? Of course. Kang Chol and nodded and carefully extended his hand to put the two rings on his finger. Um, um. The old man coughed softly, as if he was embarrassed. This. Has no special feeling? Yes, it's that. It's not an expensive item, and it is just a commonplace object. Expect plausible things, old man. Dot how do you use it? Just lift anything. It would be better if it was something you usually could not carry because you did not have enough strength. At Kang Chalin's words, the old man stroked his white beard and picked up a 20 kilograms barbell that was at the corner of the office. 
It was a barbell that one of his bodyguards used often to work out. Dot, the old man's eyes opened wide. What, what is this? Of course, the old man would have been surprised, seeing that he lifted the barbell, which he could have not picked up with two hands, with one hand. You wore two at once so you can lift up 20 kilograms more than usual. It would be possible for you to swing it too. Kang Chol and kindly explained. Is that true? Of course. Can I try? Of course. As the approval fell, old man Quan as if he had become young again spread out his shoulders, prepared, and swung the barbells. Swish. The 20 kilograms barbells swam in the old man's hand. Able-bodied men would have strained their joints. For a man who was almost 80, it was surprise-worthy. It was as if he had gone back in time. Dot, that. No way. The bodyguards who had been watching silently also let out odd remarks. Amazing. Hey, in that pangea or whatever it was, are there lots of things like this? I called it cheap. Kang Chol and spoke. That ring is an extremely small part of the things that one can bring from Pangaea. Some things are strong enough to bring down entire cities. Then, that means, whether you believe or not, is not important. As time passes, you will come to believe it. That is true too. First, I want to start off our deal with selling off the gold that I brought today. What do you think, would you do it? Well, no reason I couldn't. If what you say is true, I will jump into the business that you suggested, and not this one. This business is a goose that lays golden eggs. Of course. Then you can have a fresh start and be honest to your family. Didn't the daughter you had laid hate your job? Dot, I say this again, but this is an opportunity. Dot. Seems like there is nothing you do not know about me. Do you think I would have come not knowing? Kang Chol and knew very well of old man Quan's desires. They were desires and hunger that all criminals could not help but have. Humans, the moment they commit a crime, become engulfed in the law's grasp and suffer. The more and more they avoid capture, they needed to live in fear until the day they stand trial in a court of law. Therefore, of course they would want to escape the criminal status and live as a clean member of society. The gangsters did not escape law and become a corporation for nothing. That mentality and desire was also the same for the old man, no, even greater, seeing that he was such a powerful figure in the dark world. It was a last wish for someone who had lived his entire life as a criminal. For King Chol and who knew that better than anyone, he could control the old man. Your wish, I can make it come true. Real. Really? The old man's voice shook. Just wait and see. The world will change after one or two months. Sigh. Who would have guessed I would hear something like this when I was 80 years old? That's why living is so fun. Who knew? That a gate to a different world would open? You are right. The world is funny. You have to live long and see. In no time, there was a large smile plastered on the old man's face. Hey, Chief O. Yes, Chairman. Take a couple of the kids and take 300,000 out of the safe. Yes, sir. It was a 100,000 more than the actual price of the gold. I will not take commission. The 200,000 of the gold and the 100,000 is for the price of the ring. It is not worth that much. Two or three thousand at most. Really? You can just have it, old man. This, you are just giving this for free? Let's just call it a reception expense for our future deals. I have no use for it even if I carry it around anyways. Dot you go big. But I cannot take it for free. Take the extra. I need to show at least that much appreciation for my future possible partner. Well, if you insist, I will take it. And like that, the first deal between Kang Chol and an old man Guan was sealed. It was a deal that both sides would have been satisfied with. Kang Chol and was happy that he could get cash, and old man Guan was happy because he had gained items for business and that he was able to rekindle his old dreams. It was a win-win situation for both sides. I will contact you in a month. Be careful with your deals for a while. Even better if you close business for a while. It would be unfortunate if it falls apart before you ride the flower train. 
It's annoying for me to find a new business too. Kang Chul and who checked that the mounds of money were in the trunk, did not forget a request to be careful as he left the office. It would be difficult if old man Guan had to go to prison even before he had started the new business. Of course, I will. The old man nodded. If you are to do some big jobs, you need to watch your safety. Don't worry, I did not live my life in vain, so prepare well for our next deal. Of course. With those final words, Kang Chol and got in his now heavy Mustang and headed to Park Du Six's office. Chairman. Chi Fo called to old man Quan who was watching the back of Kang Chol and's car that was speeding away. Ah, Chi Fo. Even so, don't you think a 100,000 was too much? What part of him do you trust? Intuition. Intuition? At the strange response, Chi Fo's face fell into a grimace. Intuition. Also, a business was an evil that should never be done on intuition, but should only be dealt with by secure information and cold reason. Business was something that would put a person in debt with one wrong step, but the old man had given away a 100,000 on pure intuition. It was not something that the great old man Quan would have done. Chairman, are you by any chance? I haven't gone senile, so don't question me. Old man Quan, who saw right through Chi Fo's thoughts, screamed. Oh, Chi Fo. You stupid idiot. Because you have a head like that on your shoulders, I don't finance your business. Dot, this business, you don't need to do anything at all. You know? He said, you cannot take anything from this world into the other one, so in the businessman's perspective, there is no expenditures if you take out labor costs. It means that if you secure the ones who can move from this world to that, you will get filthy rich. Oh, is that true? And this ring? Old man Quan mumbled looking at the cheap strength ring that was on his finger. Science and technology aside, I have never seen or heard of something like this. What would happen if I give a professional baseball player something like this, huh? Well, well. A crazy play. And what if that professional baseball player played in the major league? Dot the yearly pay would be about millions? An idiot who knows that complains about a 100,000? Oh. Chi Fo clenched the back of his head and looked as if he was going to pass out. It was not the strength of an old man. The ring of strength had increased his powers, and he was as strong as a fit man. From now on, when that friend comes, be good to him. Although I don't know for sure. He isn't ordinary. Huh, where did someone like that come from? Like he said, you need to live long and see. Ha ha ha. Old man Quan laughed loudly and smiled. It was really a chance that had come after a long time. An opportunity of a lifetime that came at the age of 80. Kang Chul and who came to the office of Park Dusik was treated like a king and sat on Park Dusik's chairman chair. Report. It's. It's that. Seems like there isn't too much advancement? Dot, Park Dusik had no excuses. I understand. Dot, I do not think you could find him with a couple days anyways. It would take at least a couple months. Kang Chol and thought of Yu Bai, who waited for a long time to gain Ji Liang and reminded himself to remain calm. You bastard, born with a golden spoon in your mouth and you eat up Li Gong Myung too? On the other hand, his anger towards Roth's child bubbled. Roth's child was the prime example of being born with a golden spoon and handed things left and right in his life. Li Gong Myung, a Chinese immigrant residing in Korea had been able to study at Harvard because of his smart brain, and Roth's child who too, was studying at Harvard as the student body president, and had kept a keen eye on Li Gong Myung for his intelligence. In Kang Chol In's perspective, imagining the man and woman, no the two jerks who he wanted to curse the most hitting their friendship off at Harvard made his blood flow backwards. This, in your language, do you say by a suit? Kang Chul and tried to calm his anger and placed four stacks of money on the table each with $150 bills. Ay goo, oh, big boss. Why do you give us something like this? You know what it means? Of course. I will send out three or four of them and find him. Park Dusik clenched his fists tightly, as if to tell Kang Chol and to trust him. But. Aren't you using too much? Two is more than enough. 
Don't pretend to care for my finances. Dot yes, big boss. Kwa Kyung was the key if he wanted to teach Roth's child and Lee Gong Myung a real lesson. A bit of money was not valuable to him at all. If he could have Kwa Kyung, he would try three, no ten more times. I'm leaving. I'll come again soon. Kang Chul and who was finished with his business left Park Do Sik's office right away and headed to Bu Chun. It was to visit his mother. I am such an unfilial child. If he thought back to the last 10 years, aside from the early 2,3 years, he had almost never seen his mother. To that extent, Kang Chul and was crazed over paying Gia, and so he had committed the sin of turning his back on his only family. No matter how much money he gave her, he did not massage her shoulders once. As her son, he felt sorry. I can't even take care of my own family, so how can I rule paying Gia? Kang Chol in thought and he pledged to be dutiful to his mother. It was then. The silent phone vibrated. It was from. Agent Lee? It was the sovereign that he didn't know about, Lee Chai Lin. Chapter 26 Sovereign Lee Chai Lin Yes, please speak. Kang Chol in answered Lee Chai Lin's phone call. If Lee Chai Lin was not a sovereign, he would not have answered, but if she was someone who had become a sovereign, he could answer a phone call any time. A sovereign's enemy was a sovereign, and a sovereign's ally was also a sovereign. Chalin. Yes, Senior Assistant Lee. No, I will call you Lee Chalin now. It doesn't matter what you call me. I got fired from the company. Did you return now? Yes. It was understandable why she was fired. For any company, they do not fire accountants very well. There are situations where they mostly quit on their own. The cause would have 100% been, because she did not go to work for a long time, due to the grand summoning. Chalin. Yes, please speak. Chalin, you know something, right? That's why you can be that calm? Right? Li Chalin blurted out a series of questions. It seemed like she did not really understand the reality of things. I have nothing to say regarding that. Kang Chul and drew the line. If he were to advise Lee Chai Lin, he did not know how he would change the future. He had to try and eliminate any external variables, so he could not give her any advice even if he wanted to. Chai Lin. It was obvious that she was hurt by the cold response. I. I am so scared. Dot. I have never seen such things before. There are dwarves, and crows. I can't understand or accept it. So. Chalin. Can you please just hear me out? Please. Li Chalin's quivering voice was moist with fear. She is half sane. Kang Chalin could see the psychological state of Li Chalin right away. Fear of the unknown, the gap between reality, and the responsibility that came from the suddenly given position of sovereign the monster quests, and more. Honestly, if you were any normal person, it would be difficult to escape from the shock of the grand summoning for a while. Especially if you were not a crazy wench like Hecate and just a plain woman like Lee Trilin, she would be even more confused. It would not be strange for her to die at any time with that sort of mental state, whether that was by suicide or murder. Should I exchange some information just in case? Kang Chul and's mind began to spin. If Lee Chai Lin's land is near that of Roth's child, then I would be able to get some intel. He then thought that he might gain something just by helping her just enough to not affect the future. Chai Lin. Kang Chul In, who had made up his mind, spoke. Yes, Chai Lin. I might not be of much help. But let's talk face to face. There might be some things we can help each other with. Where are you right now? You can. Meet right now? Yes. Then I will send you the location right now, so please contact me when you arrive. Ah, also. Dot, thank you. For meeting me. I'm hanging up. Dot. Kang Chul and did not know how to respond to those words, so he just hung up. He was not used to someone depending on him. Are you here? He could meet Li Chai Lin at a cafe near the train station located in front of Seoul University. What is the name of your land? Kang Chul and asked the question right away. That, it's. Dorado. Li Chai Lin answered, taken aback. 
Dorado. Does not sound familiar. He did not know the name of every land, but he did know any land that had any influence on the big picture. If it was a land that he did not know, that meant that it was an insignificant one that did not have any influence on the future. What is your specialty? Uh. Specialty. I can't remember. Repeat after me. My information open. My information open. Lee Chai Lin repeated the words and a semi opaque window popped up, showing her the information. This, this is possible. Lee Chai Lin was surprised. Pangea was understandable because it was a different world, but she did not think she could order in real life. Because it is reality. Kang Chol and answered bluntly. Anyways. A sovereign's information is made so that other people cannot look at it. I can see the window, but I can't see the contents. So, you need to read it out to me. Did you ask about the specialty? Yes. It is. Called wealth. Dot. In that moment, Kang Chol and eyes widened. Oh crap. Wealth? It was really something surprising. Wealth. It was a specialty that amplified the land's economy. The cost of building facilities decreases, and when you develop a gold mine and extract resources, the yield increases exponentially. It is also the same for diamonds and rubies. In purchasing units using the Sovereign Store and in collecting booty when hunting monsters, this specialty is useful. Small output, large input. That is the key to this wealth specialty. Why are you so surprised all of a sudden? Lee Chilin asked, but Kang Chol and did not answer. She has the wealth specialty but her name is not known? This does not make sense. What did she do in the past? Lee Chilin? I have never seen you before. Wealth was almost a cheat specialty that makes the economy of your land boom even with one not doing anything. A woman with such specialty and she is not known? It did not make logical sense. Let's think back. It is fair to say that it was not fate for me to meet her at Akin's Hall in the past. It is very possible for me to not recognize even a familiar face. It was not strange for him to not have ran into Lee Chilin in the past. It was very possible. But not the first sovereign meeting. Whether I wanted to or not, I would have seen her at least once. The first sovereign meeting. Lee Chilin was definitely not there. He was sure. No matter how much he dug through his memory, he had no recollection of seeing her during the first sovereign meeting. Then, there could only be two logical explanations. The future changed? No, no that can't be. There is nothing that I have interfered or changed for that to have happened. It is either God or Ken that chose Lee Trilin, not me. There was no external factor before the great summoning. Then, Kang Chol and thought hard before the first sovereign meeting. It must mean that she was stripped of her status or had died. Or she gave up going to Pangea completely. The solution came. Chai Lin. Yes? Can you tell me by chance where your land is located? Ah, that's not difficult. My land's location. Li Chai Lin looked at the information window briefly and then spoke. It is in the south. Dot, pandemonium. Dot. Li Chai Lin's words answered all of Kang Chao Lin's questions at once. I get it now. He understood why Li Chai Lin could not appear in the first sovereign meeting even with a specialty like wealth. Pandemonium. A land of hell that is filled with the war crazed. It was too cruel of a place for someone like Li Chai Lin, who was so delicate. It would not be strange for her to have left early from the ranking competition. Wealth. She could be quite the useful partner. Kang Chilin was overcome with thought as he looked towards Li Chilin. Pandemonium does not have an impact on the bigger picture anyways. I can intervene however I want. I can help Li Chilin's survival, and if she supplies me with gold, then we both benefit. It was quite a good idea. For Kang Chilin who would be struggling financially, no, who would continue to struggle, Li Chilin would be a good source of money. Sai, Chilin. Li Chai Lin let out a heavy sigh as Kang Chao Lin was thinking about the deal. I am so confused. I don't know what is what, and I am scared. But. There is no one I can talk to. And it seems like the people of the land all look to me. So what can I do? I barely did the monster conquest. 
but I am not confident I can do it again. It seemed like Lee Chai Lin was struggling quite a bit. It was obvious she wanted to depend on Kang Chao Lin. But. There is nothing I can do. Kang Chao Lin answered coldly. Chai Lin, you are an adult. Do not ask others how to live your life. Aren't you going to do whatever you want anyways regardless of what I am going to say? That. If I were to give you any advice. Don't you just need to decide whether you will never return to Pangaea again, or faithfully carry out your role as a sovereign? No matter how hard she was thought about it, the answer would be black or white. Would she live as a sovereign, or would she live a normal life? No matter what she chose, that was Lee Chai Lin's own life, and not his. But, if you are willing to live as one sovereign with dignity, I will help you. Chao Lin, you? I will not spoon feed you, but yes, to an extent. Yes. You need to remember only one thing. There is risk in living as a sovereign, but there is also great rewards. With your specialty, you will have a building within the year here. I don't even want that much. Money isn't everything. But. Li Chai Lin said something quite impressive. I am so afraid. But you aren't alone? Ah? Uh? If you were not a sovereign, I would have advised you not to ever return to Pangaea ever again. However, you are a sovereign. You have a loyal advisor, and people of the land who trust you and are loyal to you. What is the problem? Even with the monster conquest, you probably just sat back and watched. Am I wrong? Dot, I will end it here. If after a lot of thought, you decided to live as a sovereign, then you can contact me then. Then, I will treat you like a sovereign then. Yes. Li Chai Lin lowered her eyes, as if she was confused. Let's end it here, and talk next time. R. Are you leaving? There is nothing else I have left to say. But. Dot, how can you be so nonchalant about everything? As if you have been going to Pangaea from the past. You are so level-headed and calm. It seemed like you changed as well. How much do you know about Pangaea? No comment. I don't want, or need tell you anything regarding that. Well, then. Kang Chao In, with those words, left the cafe. He had shown all the kindness he could muster. No matter how much I babble on, it is no use. The choice is yours, Li Chai Lin. You can give up, you can. But if you decide you want to live as a sovereign, we will be great partners. It would be a wonderful alliance if Kang Chao and and Li Chai Lin were to join hands, because it would be a union of military and economic power. Of course, the current Li Chai Lin did not know that. With Kang Chao Lin's void, Laputa's governing body was busy with establishing the land's internal affairs. Timothy, as intended by Kang Chao Lin, was working into the night trying to establish the land's administration system and was buried underneath paperwork. And the Director General Podolsky searched all over the land looking for Kimura. And Commander James pushed the Royal Guard into intense training. Lucia was busy training the four servants that she had chosen for Kang Chao Lin's comfort, as well as performing interim duties out in the fields. But a problem arose. The problem happened in the construction site that was working to dig the land's moat deeper. Ah! A laborer who was working hard amongst the ants shot up into the air. Help me! Along with a scream. Splurt. Dot and blood squirted to the sky. Ambush, it was an attack. The Overlord of Blood and Iron. Chapter 27. Kang Chao In's Anger. Kang Chao In, the meeting with Li Chao In behind him, drove his Mustang towards the marketplace near Jungido, Bu Chun. His mother ran a fruit shop in the marketplace for 20 years. Yes. If Alex Roth's child was the typical privileged born to wealth scenario, Kang Chao In was a commoner that was raised by a single mother after losing his father at a young age. Are you there? His mother Park Sunya, who he noticed from far away, was staying warm in front of an antique heater, fighting the cold winter wind. It was late. All the other stores had closed its shutters one by one, and the grandmas who were selling different things on the ground were packing up, but Park Sunya was not moving with her eyes locked on the TV. I need to work hard and earn money if I want to give you a nice home when you get married. Kang Chol and remembered what Park Sunya always said to him. 
a nice home. Park sun Yaw, who could not give him an apartment worth $400-$500, but still said she wanted to get him at least a nice home for rent, opened her store the earliest and closed the latest compared to anyone else. It was her determination to not send her son off with empty hands. Son? Park sun Yaw noticed her son Kane Chalin right away and smiled widely. What are you doing here? It is the weekday. You haven't contacted me in a while. I'm back, mother. Kang Chol and smiled, and unlike his usual self, responded back to Park Sun Ya. It's been seven years. Kang Chol and helped Park Sun Ya close the store, and went home for a late dinner. Kang Chol and spoke, with the fruit in front of him after the meal. I changed my job. Kang Chol and made up something. Changed your job? Why? You were doing well. With the surprising news, Mother Park Sun Ya seems surprised. It was expected. 2020's South Korea was filled with the fight for jobs amongst the young like Kang Chol and with the westernization and unemployment. Employment front, unlimited competition. Was a slogan and saying that was spreading amongst the young. In those sorts of times, Kang Chol and had left his job, so it was understandable that Lee Sun Ya was worried. Intern again? Then, it would be better if you worked at the store with me. No. Kang Chol and shook his head. I got to know the president of a trade company, and decided to move to that job. The company isn't too large, but it is going to be listed soon, and there is a big possibility that it will become about medium sized. Also, I am an official employee. Employee? Yes. There are a lot of business trips, but the pay is good and there are good benefits, so it is much better than the company I was at before. Dot. In that moment, Park Sunya's eyes opened wide. Is. Is that true? Yes. Oh. Who is that president? Taking my chol in. in. He will be blessed, he will. President Kwon Hyung Woo. He is known in the trade business. He is almost 80, but he is well enough to still work in the field. Kang Chol and sold out old man Guan. He felt a little guilty lying to his mother, but the world still thought of Pangaea as a dangerous, foreign planet. What sort of parent would be glad if her son was going back and forth to such a place? It would be better to tell a little white liar right now, even if he was to tell her in the future. Also, for him who would be gone often to Pangaea, a trade company job would be a good excuse to avoid Park Sun Ya's worries and doubts. Oh, I see. Oh. Seems like your father is looking out for you in heaven. Park Sun Ya mentioned Kang Chol and's father who had passed away and cheered up. I will be good to you. Kang Chol and watched Park Sun Ya and pledged that he would be a different son from before, different from the stoic, detached son from the past. No, this can't do. Park Sun Ya thought of something and made a serious face. Son, go to an academy starting tomorrow. I will give you money. Dot, Kang Chol and's face hardened at the words. It was as if he got hit on the back of the head. You said there are a lot of foreign business trips. Aren't you not good with foreign language? Dot, Park Sun Ya was right. The Kang Chol and who Park Sun Ya knew was not someone who had the ability to go on a business trip. It was also true that he did not have the background or the specs either. She is smart in these ways. Kang Chol and was taken aback for the moment, but it was just that, a moment. Japanese from the original book, didn't know how to type these words out, dot, Park Sun Ya looked confused as he spoke Japanese unexpectedly. Meanwhile, I have learned conversation in whatever I can, in English. Kang Chol and had begun to speak foreign languages. Chinese from original book, didn't know how to type these words out, that was not all. For a while after, Kang Chol and showcased more foreign languages, and Park Sun Ya, who did not know any other languages, was close to feigning at her son's skills. Although I am not fluent in Japanese, English, and Chinese, it is enough for me to work. It may be awkward, but I can slowly learn while I work. There isn't time for me to go to an academy because I am working, as well. Did you study separately until now? Yes. What studying? He had drunk a potion from a special tree in Pangaea and had mastered the languages on a whim, not studied formally. 
What time did he have amidst all the battles and attacking dungeons to study? A. I goo. My son, I'm so proud of you. The academies cost so much, so I could not pay for a good education. But. I'm so proud. Mother Park Sonia's eyes turned red, and finally released tears. Crap. Kang Chul and who did not expect his mother to cry, was put in an awkward position. He had conned his mother, but she was crying. Son. I'm sorry. I should have supported your education more. My son is this smart. Dot, Kang Jel and was going to say something, but he was a stoic and emotionless man by nature, so he answered by solemnly holding his crying mother. After Park Sun Ya cried up a storm, Kang Jel and took out a thick envelope from his inside pocket. What is this, son? The president must have taken a liking to me, and he gave me a bit of a bonus. It is for you. No, you need to use that when you get married. I don't need anything like that. Speaking of which. Dot, I want grandkids. A granddaughter might be better. I have had a son, but I have never had a daughter. Now my son is an official employee, so you need to get married soon. Right? Dot, as the feared marriage talk came up, fear appeared for the first time on Kang Chol and's face. Crap. For the last 10 years, he was too busy fighting battle after battle and had no time to date, much less to get married. He had spent brief fiery moments with charming women, but those were only single nights. And, for Kang Chol and to hear his mother talk about grandchildren, it was quite burdensome. It is before I have settled down. It is not too late to talk about that after I have settled in more. I know that. But. You can bring a nice lady within this year, right? Dot, I'm going to say it again, but I want a granddaughter. Dot, Park Sun Ya emphasized granddaughter and Kang Chol and broke out in cold sweat every time she mentioned it. Even the great Kang Chol and was just a powerless son in the face of the marriage weapon. But, he did not know then. Kang Chol in, nor his mother Park Sun Ya. What would happen in just a couple of months? Second day. After he had breakfast with his mother, he got on his Mustang and headed towards Seoul. He first paid off the loan in the bank and others that he borrowed, and chose to purchase the Mustang. It did not seem like he would be able to buy a good car anytime soon, because the economy of the land was still unstable. And that night, Kang Chol and headed to the 63 building in order to return to Pangaea. A couple of soldiers and a couple researchers from the government was around the building but there wasn't anyone stopping him. Although the 63 building acted like a sort of dimension door, it was limited to the outside of the building. The inside was still used by people. Also, one did not have to go inside the building to go to Pangaea anyways. Two kilometers within the building and you could go to Pangaea. PGZT. Kang Chol and opened the dimension door, not caring if anyone looked or not. Return. When he said the command, the golden light that came from the 63 building fell on Kang Chal In, and he could return to Pangaea, disappearing without a trace. Sovereign, welcome back. The one that greeted Kang Chal in the moment he was back was Lucia. But. Lucia did not look happy. Lucia, who had the aura of a headstrong, passionate career woman had a rather cold and picky look to her, but she was always widely smiling towards Kang Chal In. But how was Lucia's face now? Serious, and more serious. No, actually, her face was hardened beyond seriousness. Something is up. Kang Chul and saw Lucia's face and realized something bothersome had happened. Is there something wrong? It's. Speak. Yes, Sovereign. Please do not be surprised. Lucia seemed to think for a brief moment, and spoke. Four workers and five ants died. Dot. Kang Chol and's face hardened. The cause of death. No, who did it? Is it a sovereign? If it was a simple accident on the building site or a fall, then there was no way Lucia would have this sort of response. This meant that it was another sovereign, or. Or is it a monster? There was rage on Kang Chol and's face. He had returned to Earth, made deals, searched for Kwa Kung, and even gone to see his mother. He had come back with a light heart, but his precious people had died. 
for King Chol and who was extremely possessive and valued his things, his anger was understandable. It is a monster. Lucia answered. What kind? A peacock dragon. Dot. King Cholin's eyes glistened sharply upon hearing the attack was by a peacock dragon. Peacock dragon. It was a monster that was a dragon, but was also not. In Pangaea, dragons existed, but usually dragons were red, gold, blue, or the like, and were pure bloods. But, there were so few in existence, and were so rare that it was difficult to even see one in one's lifetime. King Cholin, too. In his ten years at Pangaea saw only one blue dragon. But, a subspecies like a peacock dragon was not too difficult to find. Roughly about ten different species. But it did have dragon blood and was not a monster to take lightly. Kang Chol and in his prime called the dragon subspecies fake dragons and poked fun, but for the current Kang Chol in, peacock dragons came as a definite threat. Peacock dragons. Is it from the Dragonia Mountains? The Dragonia Mountains were the mountains located in the eastern side of Laputa. Like the name, it was well known to be home to dragons and its subspecies for a long time. It seems so. Ha. A peacock dragon invasion at this time. I'm mad. This was a time to focus on internal affairs and build the governing system of the land. And, for the peacock dragon to invade at such a time, King Chol and felt like his ankles were grabbed from behind as he was trying to move forward. Lucia. Yes, Sovereign. From this moment, announce to the entire land that we are at war, and to stay inside their homes. I will fulfill the order, my lord. Also, I will use the land's hiding specialty to prepare for future attacks. Based on the diet of the peacock dragons that like the human meat, a second attack was inevitable if the first had already come. If he was to avoid additional casualties, it would be a wise decision to hide the land, even if it would cost him gold. Instruct Administrator Timothy to take care of the compensations for the families of the deceased. Ah uh, also. When Kang Chol and tapered off as if he was thinking about something, Lucia spoke quickly. The Royal Guard is already waiting on orders, and are fully armed. If you give an order. No, not that. Kang Chol and shook his head. If you say no. Peacock dragons are strong monsters. With our military strength right now, we will suffer immense casualties. It is time for us to grow our land, not shed blood. But if you just leave the peacock dragon like this, there will be continuous casualties. I did not say that I will leave the peacock dragon be. I will take care of it as quickly as possible. But how? Sovereign, a battle cannot be won without bloodshed. I know. But in this battle, our blood will not be shed. Then. Explorers. Dot. I will use them to hunt him. Kang Chol In's eyes glistened. Explorers. Kang Chol In was going to get in touch with the dimension travelers from Earth and hunt the peacock dragon. The Overlord of Blood and Iron. Chapter 28. Gathering the Punitive Force 1. Lucia was amazed. It was, to simply put it, to use another to claim a victory. So if they were to recruit explorers, Laputa would not need to have additional casualties. Sovereign. Lucia said after realizing something. Speak. You said that you will recruit explorers and hunt the peacock dragon. Then, does that mean that although you will not take the troops, you will be participating yourself? Yes. I want to go as well. You? You are my advisor. If my deputy is also gone, who will run the land? There is someone. Someone? After seeing him work for a couple of days, Administrator Timothy's abilities are amazing. Even if I'm gone for a bit, Timothy would be able to fulfill the deputy duties. He too was an advisor. Even if we leave it to him for a couple of days, it will not be a problem. Um, Lucia had a point too. Honestly, even if Timothy took over the deputy duties, there would not be a problem. However, if there was something that bothered him, it was the question of how useful Lucia would be in the battle against the peacock dragon. Lucia. King Chol and thought for a moment and spoke. Yes, speak, my sovereign. Strangely, I cannot see your specialty. For me who cannot know what abilities you have, I am hesitant. Therefore, I ask you. Lucia, 
Can you tell me what your specialty is? If you cannot see, you just need to ask. Lucia, who was his advisor, would not lie to him. Yes, sovereign. Lucia smiled widely and answered. Servant Lucia, reporting to my sovereign. I do not have a specialty. If I said I had any special abilities, I have one skill. It is called War Machine. War Machine? No specialty? Yes, my sovereign. Do you remember the day that we first met? Yes, I remember. It was only three weeks ago. He couldn't not remember. Then, I thought that I may be abandoned by you. I am not that smart, nor do I have a specialty that is helpful in ruling the land. I was worried that you might have considered me useless. I know. As expected. Did you know everything? Not exactly. I just know the reason why advisors exist, so I was able to determine your internal state. Kang Chol and had no intentions of talking big. No matter what anyone said, Lucia was his advisor. Even when everyone betrayed him, Lucia would not. What was the use of talking big to the one you could trust most in this world? Anyways, I will never abandon you. I don't want you to think that ever again. Of course. I know, my lord. Lucia smiled innocently like a child, nodding her head. Even if I do not possess any specialties in helping with state affairs, I can fight better than any advisor if I use the war machine skill. Can fight well? This Lucia, is not a human. I am an artificial human made for battle, especially in defense. There is nothing that I can offer you except this skill. Faithful servant, Lucia, if you leave it to me, I will not disappoint you as the shield protecting you. Lucia exclaimed. Oh. She is fired up. Kang Chol and recognized why Lucia was so motivated and smiled a satisfied smile. Lucia's current emotion was a competitive one, a feeling of danger driving her. The point was this. Timothy who was competent in the books and administration had joined the land and begun to slowly establish the internal and governing body so it was understandable that Lucia would feel threatened. Also, her competitiveness in wanting to prove her competence over Timothy was also pushing her to the battlefield. Fine. Kang Chol and who saw Lucia's determination nodded. In this Peacock Dragon conquest, I will take you Lucia. Really? Of course. But. Kang Chol and said, requesting. You need to surely show me, Lucia. Your abilities. Of course. I will show you well. As soon as the permission fell from Kang Chol in, Lucia was overjoyed and fired up. Alfred, if you met Lucia, I am so curious of how you will act. Kang Chol and saw Lucia who was so pure and innocent around him, and thought of his once faithful advisor, Alfred. It would not happen but it was funny to just imagine what kind of scene would play out if the two advisors met. Alfred also had a side to him that was just as jealous and petty like Lucia, so it was obvious that the two would bicker and argue. However, it was all useless thinking, for the two will never meet. The advisor Kang Cholin chose in this life was Lucia, not Alfred. Dungeon captures, exploring ruins and monster conquests were all quite important for sovereigns as well as the regular dimension travelers. The reason was extremely simple, and it was for the sovereign's personal growth and acquiring items. In dungeons and ruins that were located all around Pangaea, there were monsters along with ancient treasure and artifacts. Occasionally, the treasures and artifacts that turned up were extremely valuable, with the prime examples being unique, legendary, or epic items. Gold piled up like mountains, and magic books that contain magical powers, or ancient books on martial arts were abundant. For these reasons, there were some sovereigns who left the management of their lands to their advisors and focused solely on dungeon searching. Kang Chol and also, was a sovereign that had his own opinion on dungeon searching and quest for artifacts as well as having a particular fondness for monster quests. Peacock Dragon the monster level was about 40 I think? Kang Chol and spent the night thinking about this and that on his throne. Crap, feeling threatened by a fake dragon. Although he did not show it, Kang Chol and was extremely upset. His current level was 14, and the peacock dragon's level was 40. He would face a horrible death if he were to go hunting for it alone. 
for prideful King Chao In. It was understandable that he was upset because he had to strategize against a mere dragon subspecies. But what could he do? He was currently a level 14 sovereign, and the peacock dragon was flaunting a level 40, respectable to its status as a subspecies of dragon, threatening his villagers. If he did not want to suffer any more lasses, he needed to hunt the peacock dragon as soon as possible. However, there was one upside. I will gain the dragon heart. It was the peacock dragon's heart. The peacock dragon was the weakest and lowest level subspecies of the dragon, but still having the blood of dragon in its veins, still had the dragon heart. Dragon heart. Like its name, the dragon's heart was a concentrated source of mana, and when consumed, the user became stronger in an instant. Of course, if one considered the level of the peacock dragon you could not expect a drastic power up, but for the current King Chao In, he needed the dragon heart badly. If he had that, then it was obvious that the time that it would take for him to go back to his glory days as a grand sovereign would be drastically shortened. I will hide my land using the conceal skill. I will hide it. And then I will return to earth, round up the dimension travelers, and will hunt the peacock dragon. It was perfect up to that point. But, if there was one thing that bothered him, it was that the dimension travelers were all too inexperienced to hunt the peacock dragon. The one with the highest level would be no more than 20. I myself am only 14. I must find a way. And that way would be the key to the peacock dragon quest. If the land's finances were more stable, he would not have needed to use such ways to hunt the peacock dragon and could have just used the land's military, but what other choice did he have? Even one soldier was precious at this time. He had to save every penny and find a way to rule pandemonium. Let's start by hiding the land first. Because he thought he would not have a clear answer by contemplating further, King Jolin chose to hide the land and comfort the families of the dead. Go tell Lucia to bring the soul core. Yes, my majesty. The newly hired servant answered. Here it is, my lord. Lucia appeared in less than ten minutes, handing the soul core that controlled the Puda over to King Jolin. Land Control Manual. As soon as he gave the order, the status bar appeared in front of Kang Chao In, showing the menu regarding the control of Laputa. Dash Laputa Control Manual, Hide, Self Heal, Wealth, Cosmic Force. When Kang Chao In pressed the Hide item, information on the skill unfolded. Dash Hide, will use gold to hide the castle. Skill Level, Level 1, Grow Up to Level 3, Cost, Gold, Amount Decrease or Increase Depending on Level and Cost of Castle. Skill time, up to 720 hours from activation, gold cost, zero. Five gold per hour, will you activate the hide skill? Yes slash no, that is disgustingly expensive. The price of the hide skill was expensive. If it was zero. Five gold per hour, it meant that 12 gold would be spent in 24 hours, which meant in order to use the hide skill for a day, it costed $4,800. 12 gold spent every day. 3 weeks until the peacock dragon conquest. 3 weeks was 21 days. 12 by 21 would be 252. 252 gold would be about $100,800. It was truly gasp worthy. Sigh. I am going to go bankrupt before I can even start a business. Kang Chol uncovered his face, as if he was tired. This wretched land had the best skills compared to any land, but it made up for it with the high price. If the hide skill was this much, it was obvious that the other skills, especially cosmic force, would be extremely expensive. A money-eating machine would be the perfect description. Yes. But he couldn't not use it, so with tears in his eyes, Kang Chol and turned on the hide function. Notice, level 1 hide function has been activated on the land. Please be cautious to not lose your way after traveling outside Laputa boundaries. Conveniently, as soon as the hide function was activated, the speakers that were all over the land automatically announced the updated status. Kang Chol and thought this made the cost a little better, because it was so expensive. Lucia. Yes, my sovereign. I will go back to my homeland to gather the explorers. I did turn on the hide function but you do know that you cannot let your guard down, right? Of course. 
If there is any additional attacks, make sure there are no casualties, and if there is, the least possible. Please leave it to me. With Lucia's confident answer, Kang Chol and nodded his head, and headed towards Earth. In order to gather the explorers, one needed the benefits of modern technology, and there was nothing else more effective than the internet to gather those befitting. But, there was a problem that needed to be solved before that. How would he hunt for the peacock dragon with explorers who were much weaker in comparison? It was almost impossible for level 10 or 20 explorers to hunt a level 40 monster. The Overlord of Blood and Iron. Chapter 29. Gathering the Punitive Force 2. What to do? Kang Chol and even on Earth, and as he got on his Mustang and headed towards his home, was preoccupied in trying to come up with a solution to that problem. Nothing is impossible. There must be a way. If it doesn't work, make it work, even by force, under any circumstances. It was like Kang Cholin's motto. If it doesn't work, I need to make it work. I must. Make it work. Wait. In that moment, Kang Cholin opened his eyes wide at the sudden thought that crossed his head. Low level. Then he could grow the explorer's levels enough to hunt the peacock dragon. Different from the humans in Pangaea. The Dimension Traveler's growth is incomparably fast. I found a way. Kang Chol and smiled. Why did Kang Chol and decide to use the help of the explorers? In order to solve this mystery, it was necessary to think of the relationship between a sovereign and the explorer. There were 300,000 Dimension Travelers that responded to the Great Summoning, among them 300 sovereigns, and the 299,700 left over were called explorers. The relationship between the sovereigns and explorers were much like symbiosis, one needed the other to survive. It could be called a ruler and subject relationship as well, and sometimes, a client as well. However, the Dimension Travelers were special, enough to be summoned from Earth, and therefore had faster rates of growth, which made it possible to expect tremendous growth. Sovereigns often joined hands with explorers to target dungeons or ruins as well as monster conquests, and sometimes invited explorers they connected well with to their land as subjects. There were even sovereigns with an exceptional business mindset that created businesses such as motels, restaurants, and even prostitution bars and opened them up to explorers, gaining immense profit. For various reasons, sovereigns associated with explorers from Earth and exchanged items they needed and the relationship with the explorers were crucial for growth and to a strong sovereign. Therefore, even Kang Cholin who was extremely independent, was about to establish a strong relationship with the explorers in this lifetime and gain some useful individuals. It's not a bad plan. If I were to train them quickly, we could take on the peacock dragon. It would obviously be a struggle, but the result would not be horrible. At the very least, Kang Chol in himself was confident he would survive, so there was no big problem. Gather the explorers and teach them in a short, fast-paced course. If I were to set the time to about two weeks, the remaining week I can use to hunt the peacock dragon. When he came up with a plan, the rest followed. With a plan, it was obvious that he would put it to action right away, so Kang Chol and went home right away, turned on his MacBook, and turned on the world the world's biggest online community. World was a website that a young businessman from America created, much like Facebook, Twitter, and Google and it had various functions and accessibility that allowed it to grow almost immediately into the world's largest community. Kang Chol's idea was to use the world's community to gather the explorers that usually worked in the pandemonium area. It was because World was a site that English-speaking dimension travelers all around the world used to exchange information. What ID? He thought for a brief moment, remembered his ID, and pressed the login button. ID, Overlord, Password, as soon as the page appeared, he opened a category. As soon as he clicked the large category named Great Summoning, he clicked on the subcategory Call Location and then Pandemonium. Dash information exchange, organization of monsters in pandemonium, dash trade, selling level 15 defense armor, dash recruiting, looking for teammates, dash recruiting, explorers with hunting experience click, amidst the various types of posts, he could not find any similar posts. 
It probably was because it was Pandemonium which was far off from Pangaea's mainland, therefore not having many explorers in the first place. Okay. Kang Chol and liked that there were little posts. If it was the mainland category, it would be blowing up. Almost all of the 300,000 dimension travelers would be in the mainland category. Should I bring some interest? In order to gather the explorers, he needed to write a post and gather interest. Kang Chol and knew better than anyone how to grab the attention of the explorers. First, Kang Chol and who took off the set of green bracelets that were on his wrists took a picture of them with his iPhone, and then uploaded them to the network, and wrote the post. Dash item, proof of rare item, item obtained from pandemonium. It seems like it has great power, so I am sharing it to the users of world. There are a couple more. I will reveal other items if the response is good. Name, all stat armlet, level, rare, item type, bracelet, level limit, none, option, every stat plus 2% slash attack speed plus 3%. If there are any questions, ask in the comments. I am thinking to put together a team soon. If there are any explorers in need of a team, DM anytime. Good. A faint smile formed on Kang Chao In's lips. Information? Search? You could not attract attention with such things. The best would be item, especially proof of a rare item. Kang Chao In's prediction was spot on. Not even five minutes after the post, there were comments. In Chino, oh. One set means that for all stat 4% and attack speed 6%? It's crazy. Enter LJ, did you get it from a monster, or ruin? TTSM, not one but one set? Hey, buddy, where do you get such luck? Minus zero, Adkin, look at this class, Riven, rare level item. Wow. In a short amount of time, there were five comments. Let's add some flavor. If this was all the response that he was getting, it was almost impossible to gather the explorers. He needed a sort of trick. Kang Chol and copied the link to the post and pasted it into a messaging app, sent it to Park Dusik and called him. Yes, big boss. For what reason are you calling me after two days? You don't need to know why, but I send you a link so have your boys comment and click share. Ah. When will you send it, boss? I send it already. I will check right away. Uh. Um. Big boss? Park Dusik's voice was weird. Kang Chol and was sure that Park Dusik was sweating on the other side of the phone. It was obvious that Park Dusik was in a difficult position. I am sorry. But. Our boys. It's that. Our boys. Their backpack straps are a little short. Dot. He got it. World was an English based community with its headquarters in America. Even if translation was available, one would need to be able to communicate a bit in English to use it. Although now even gangsters needed to go to college to survive, still most were high school graduates. And someone who was a gangster was very unlikely to have studied hard in school anyways. Dot you uneducated idiots. Dot Kang Chol and said over the phone and Park Dusik could not utter a word. His face would be red from the embarrassment by now. You should be ashamed. Dot yes. Big boss. Well, it is my fault for expecting so much from a bunch of idiots. Dot, I will hang up before your idiocy transfers to me. Then, at least click share. Yes. Kang Chol and hung up quickly and called old man Guan. Old man, I have a favor. Luckily, Things worked out well with old man Guan. Ah, really? All right. I will get my Hong Kong boys on it. They speak some English. Would about 100 comments be enough? That's enough. Old man Guan was eager to help after hearing Kang Chol and revealed a new item, perhaps he smelled money. A person first needs to be smart. You are trying to get explorers together. Is it a foundation beneficial for our partnership as well? this and that. We will talk details later. Now is not the time. I guess I will find out one by one. I will take care of what you asked within the hour, so do not worry. I got it old man. After the conversation with old man Guan, Kang Chol and casually waited for the post to go viral. After an hour or so, 
Kang Jolin's post became ranked as one of the top posts, and grabbed the attention of the world users. I got it. The response was explosive. The post that was already attention-worthy combined with a bit of manipulation caused the viewings to skyrocket. Before it became two hours since the post, there were over a thousand comments. And that was not all. Personal messages flowed in his mailbox. 1. 2. Suddenly 50. And when three hours passed, around 500 messages were in his mailbox. This is still not enough. Kang Chol and did not stop there. Dash notice, I will reveal new items every hour. I will go on a conquest soon. Explorers who wish to join my team send me a message of your profile, and I will respond after review. And after that, Kang Chol and revealed one item per hour for three hours. The world community exploded. Kang Chol and's post ranked 1, 2, 3, and 4 in the entire world best post, creating a frenzy. And this news spread to Korea's other sites, creating noise in Korea's internet as well. Easy. Kang Chol In, who had created a viral post in a simple way, sipped his coffee leisurely and smiled. Honestly, the items that Kang Chol In had posted were not that great, nor was it attention worthy. The reasons were as follows. First, the items that were introduced on World World O level items that would be used in the early stages of the Grand Summoning. Second, any sovereign with enough wealth in their land could introduce even better items than Kang Cholin. But the reason why Kang Cholin had gotten such viral responses was that he acted quickly before anyone could think or have a chance to. There is a saying, life is timing. Whatever it was, the one who did it first would have the most gain. And through this, Kang Cholin gained something else other than just gathering explorers. Because all his posts were first to fourth place in the best post category in world, it was not an overstatement to say that there was almost no user in world that did not know his username, Overlord. He had become famous after just a couple posts. From now on, Kang Chol In's posts would automatically become one of the most viewed posts, and he had to a certain extent gain the trust of the world users. It was something that he did not expect from the start. Nice. Now I will throw some incentives. The next step was easy. He would throw gold and items as bait and recruit competent explorers, meet at pandemonium, and create a team. Although he did have work cut out for him to look through all the thousands of messages in his inbox. He went at the messages right away. There were all sorts of messages, from those questioning where the items came from, or those wishing to buy the items, messages cursing him, and much more however. Of the bunch. There was one that stood out to him and grabbed his attention. Aha! Kang Cholin's eyes sparkled after checking the sender of the message. The account's name was Lumpen. It was a message from someone that had received the title of Grand Sovereign in the past, and had been a worthy opponent to Kang Cholin himself, Dorian Explorer. The Overlord of Blood and Iron. Chapter 30. Dorian Needs to be Played With. Dorian Explorer. He had become, like Kang Chao In, one of the Grand Sovereigns during the Second Sovereign meeting but had never cared much on administration and his land. It was to a point where even when the Ten Grand Sovereigns had been established and had stabilized their lands, Dorian's land was the size of a pea, and just a small city. In reality, of the Ten Grand Sovereigns, Dorian's land was the smallest and had the weakest army, and also was not much of a threat. It was to a point where there were many regular sovereigns with a much better army than his. But how could he maintain his status as Grand Sovereign? The answer was simple. Dorian Explorer was the world's best explorer, dungeon explorer, and monster hunter. And he had even succeeded in hunting the Blue Dragon and had gained the honorary title of Dragon Slayer. Dorian Explorer was someone who had risen to the position of Grand Sovereign whilst gathering points on a different category other than managing his land. Dorian, you remain loyal to me until the end. Kang Chol and who had exchanged messages with an unexpected figure thought of his relationship with Dorian. Grand Sovereign Dorian was Kang Chol and's friend and equal, as well as enemy. This meant that Kang Chol and and Dorian searched for dungeons together roar ruins and also went on monster conquests together. 
they fought for first and second place amongst the grand sovereigns for power and strength as well. But King Chol and Andorian's relationship began to strain with the start of Ragnarok. King Chol and killings toward Zal and everyone that stood in his way and crude conquest activities were the heart of the strain. And their delicate relationship ended when King Chol and crushed a sovereign that Dorian had maintained a close relationship with. But Dorian remained loyal. Even when the three cornered battle of Ragnarok was going on, Dorian did not fight with the Ishtar coalition. The reason was that he could not go to battle with an old friend. If he looked back at it now, Dorian might have tried to block King Chol and ravaging and set up the power struggle between the Grand Sovereigns. And, that Dorian had sent a message to King Chol in. He could not be more curious. This guy, should I see what nonsense he is saying? King Chol and opened his messages without hesitation and checked the message from Dorian. Cinder, Lumpen, message. Hey, you are a sovereign, huh? Who are you trying to con? How can you get an item like that if you are not a sovereign? You cheater. It was simple, but right to the point. Dorian, as a sovereign, knew that the items were from the sovereign store. Ha! Huh. King Chol and snorted. It was not because he was poking fun, or because he was baffled. It was simply because he remembered the voice and facial expressions of an old friend. Overlord, should we talk for a moment? King Chol and requested a one to one messaging to Lumpen, Dorian's account. It would be easier to chat than to exchange messages constantly. Lumpen, oh, who is this? It's the cheater. Dorian behind his monitor poked fun. Lumpen, what special item? You bought it with gold, isn't that right? Overlord, bingo. Lumpen, I knew it. You con artist. I am going to put up a post right now and expose you. See the power of 100,000 hate comments. Ha ha. J, overlord, before that, would you hear me out? Lumpen, hear you out? Hear what? You telling me to listen to a con artist? Overlord, if you knew what my real goal was, you would be pretty interested. And in that moment, King Chol and made up his mind to bring Dorian into this peacock dragon conquest. There was no doubt that Dorian, who was the world's best explorer and also one with the same level of mastery in the martial arts as himself, would be extremely beneficial for the peacock dragon conquest. Lumpen, you are funny. Shut up and eat the hate comments. Overlord, dragon conquest. Lumpen. At the word dragon, Dorian hesitated. I know you. King Chol and smirked. Dorian went crazy over unique monsters, dungeons, and ruins. He was sure that Dorian would still be interested even if he could not believe the person for sure. Lumpen, Dradot Dragon? Dorian grabbed the bait. Overlord, it is a subspecies of the dragon, to be more precise. It is called a peacock dragon, and it is a level 40 monster. Lumpen, a subspecies? What? There is something like that too. Overlord, of course. My goal is to gather explorers and hunt the peacock dragon. I just needed a trick in order to gather people. Lumpen, how can I trust you? There is something like a peacock dragon? Overlord, if you can't trust me, you can just ask your advisor. Lumpen, that's true? Overlord, I have no reason to lie. Lumpen, so? Are you going to catch it? Overlord, the peacock drong itself is strong, but there are also many items you can get. It is dangerous, but I think it is worth the risk. What are your thoughts? Lumpen, well. I agree. Dorian showed signs of compliance, and King Chol and decided to play his final card at this stage. Overlord, maybe with this as the start, we might be able to make a Pangaea monster pictorial book. Don't know if there will be anyone to make something like this, but still. Lumpen, what? Pictorial book? Crazy. Overlord, what is that response? King Chol and knew everything, but pretended not to. Lumpen, do you really think that? Overlord, what? Lumpen, about making the pictorial book. Overlord, well, of course. For people like us from Earth, Pangaea is an alien planet. We can come and go from somewhere like that. Of course, we should make a book. 
I believe it is a very important task. It was a lie. Kang Chol and did not have the slightest interest in making some book. He only wanted to rule Pang Gia. However, Dorian, who was listening, had a different perspective. Lumpen, oh my god. Overlord, why? Lumpen, you, are pretty great. Overlord, what do you mean? Lumpen, I also was thinking I should make a monster's pictorial book. I did not know we were thinking alike. Overlord, really? Lumpen, hey, Overlord. Overlord. Lumpen, put me in your team. And in that moment, Kang Chol and smiled a crude smile. Kang Chol and knew Dorian's dream. Dungeons and ruin hunting was important, but what triggered Dorian's curiosity the most was the different life forms of Pangaea. In actuality, even during Ragnarok, Dorian took great efforts in the pictorial book. Lumpen, I want to participate in the Peacock Dragon Conquest too. Overlord, well I don't know, the Peacock Dragon is strong. I don't know if you have the courage. Lumpen, what are you saying? Dorian was angry. Lumpen, you. Are you calling me a coward? Huh? Are you? Dorian, as more and more time passed fell into Kang Cholin's trap and was unable to come out of it. Overlord, choose wisely. The peacock dragon is a monster that you need to put your life on the line for. Our entire team might get wiped out if we are not careful. Do you have the courage to take on something like that? Lumpen, you underestimate me. Overlord, I'm not underestimating you, it's impossible to know the person with a couple lines of chat. Lumpen, ha. Huh. Then what can I do to get on the team? Overlord, before the peacock dragon conquest, I am thinking of leveling up and building some teamwork along with the other explorers. About two weeks? Lumpen, so, prove myself to you then? Overlord, then I could trust you. If you don't have even that much dedication, I don't need you on my team. Lumpen, fine, I will take you on that offer. Overlord, I will watch you then. Lumpen, and the details? Overlord, I will announce it separately. Lumpen, email protected. Com. This is my email address. Email me here. Make sure you do. Okay? Overlord, I will. Lumpen, you must. If you do not include me, then I will expose you online. Overlord, your stupid threats. Lumpen, what? Threat. Overlord, this user is not available. Lumpen, hey. Overlord, this user is not available. Lumpen, answer. Overlord, this user is not available. One to one conversation has ended. Kang Chol and hurried and ended the conversation before Dorian could complain further. It was a trick to get Dorian to get more fired up. You stupid idiot, getting tricked again. That's why you cannot escape my clutches. Kang Chol and who had succeeded in getting Dorian smiled a huge smile unlike himself. Tricking Dorian was always fun. Dorian in the past and the Dorian now was such a simple human being that if one nudged him a little bit, Dorian did the rest on his own. Kang Chol and baited and fished for Dorian when he was bored, when he needed someone to search ruins with, or when he needed someone to go on monster conquests with. Dorian Explorer was Kang Chol and's true sidekick. I can give everyone up, but I cannot give this guy up to Rothschild. Kang Chol and thought this, and swore that he would make Dorian completely on his side. During Ragnarok, Dorian who had joined Rothschild's side had worked as a hitman in the Baldur Alliance side and had rescued Baldur from the Gulvags. Honestly, it would not be an exaggeration to say that the three-cornered battle of Ragnarok was made because of Dorian's choice. If Dorian was on Kang Cholin's side, then it would have been very possible for the tide of the war to have swayed on the side of the Ishtar Coalition. Who is more capable than you? He was simple and stupid, but his skills were undoubtable. He was sure. And he had loyalty. That was Kang Cholin's honest thought on Dorian. Next day. Kang Cholin looked at the messages that arrived and analyzed the profiles of the explorers and sent responses to 200 explorers with over 10 levels. The message was as follows. Dash notice, Team Slayer's recruitment, location, Southwest Pandemonium, near the Devil's Forest, 
the precise location is marked on the map and contract, so check, date, after 2 days, 9 a.m., duration, about 3 weeks, purpose, level up through monster conquest and item, reward, after completion, gold worth $4,000 per person will be given, and the items gathered from the monster conquest itself will be evenly divided. Those who show exceptional abilities will be given rare items. Notice, life may be in danger. Remember that this is a monster conquest. In the case that you die, Overlord has no responsibility. Notice, the boss orders and instruction is absolute, and if one goes against any of these, remember that there will be dire consequences. Same goes for those who break up the team. Attached, contract, regarding the payment. PDF. The recruitment's details were like a double-edged sword. The gold worth $4,000 and the rare items would be the best compensation and pay compared to any recruitment that was currently outstanding. However, the second notice also had people hesitant on joining. There would be those who would hesitate. Of the 200 that he had sent the replies to, about a hundred would not participate. I don't need scaredy cats. I only want the best. That was King Jelen's wish. Those who wish to be stronger even if they risked death, those who wished to get rich, and those who wanted adventure was the ones he needed. It was his belief that there was no human being more attractive and strong than someone who was honest with his desires. Kang Chul and himself was led by his desire to rule over Pangaea. He would gather those individuals and have them train for two weeks, and then naturally get them to join in on the Peacock Dragon Conquest. From the starting 200, a 120 people, including Dorian, responded. 120. Kang Chol and knew that not all would participate in the conquest. There were many who talked big and pulled their feet out of the water in fear in the key moment. It would be fine if even one fourth showed up, which was 30 people. Let's see how many show up. Kang Chol and uploaded the contract stating that he would pay $4,000, and left his home right away. There were a couple of things that he needed to take care of before meeting the explorers. Chapter 31 Kang Chao In, at the front. What is a bus driver? The term bus driver originated from online games, where it described those who use their high levels, skills, and items to help low level players clear dungeons or lead a team into victory. Simply said, the low level players were the passengers, and the high level players were the drivers. Therefore, in the Peacock Dragon Conquest this time, Kang Chol In's role would be to get the explorers to get on the bus like passengers. It was a difficult thing to do. It was not easy to grow a low level, newbie group of explorers and go against a level 40 monster. Bluntly said, it was as impossible as a camel passing through a needle hole. But. Maybe it was impossible for someone else, but Kang Chol In had a way. Even if they could not take on other level 40 monsters, it was very possible to make them able to handle one peacock dragon. He was sort of a professional peacock dragon hunter. Because he had full understanding of the monster, Kang Chol In's plan was not a delusion, but a possible goal. Kang Chol In opened the store as soon as he got back to Laputa. Item Store Normal, Magic, Rare Item Purchase Available Sovereign Level Rises and the items available for purchase levels rises. Main weapons, sub weapons, shield, clothing, expendables, accessories, utilities pertaining to land management, gold or jewels are needed in purchasing items. Epic level items are not available for purchase in the store. Kang Chul and knew exactly what items he needed to buy. The items that he purchased were as follows minus 10 blood swords, 5 gold each, 50 gold total. Minus 25 Blackthorn Spears, 10 gold each, 250 gold total, minus 5 cold pave eyes, a large shield, about 8 kilograms, very heavy, 20 gold each, 100 gold total, minus 70 stamina potion low level, 1 gold each, 70 gold, minus 70 low level wisdom potion, 3 gold each, 210 gold total, minus 2 chains, 50 gold each, 100 gold total total, 780 gold, will you purchase the above items? Yes slash no, 780 gold. It was a large sum of money totaling almost $32,000 so it made him cringe a little, but
but he did not feel like it was a waste. He would collect most of the items back anyways, and this would be cheaper than purchasing an army. Gold could be gathered and earned back, but dead people would not come back alive. This is enough. With this, he had everything he needed in order to face the peacock dragon. Lucia, load these items onto the wagon. Yes, sovereign. Tell Timothy, three weeks worth of rations for forty men also needs to be prepared. Yes, sovereign. Ah, also. King Chol and added. I will take Boderski in this conquest. The director of security, my sovereign? Yes. But Podersky is questioning Kimura. What? He is caught already? Two days after he hid, Podersky found him hiding inside the closet and locked him inside the dungeon with handcuffs. He is like I thought. Huh? What do you mean? Ah, nothing. Podersky, was the master of capture and binding. But, my sovereign how is it that you are taking Podersky? For the Peacock Dragon Conquest? It seems like Commander James is more fit for the role. Lucia asked. I have a reason. Kang Chol and answered with an unknown smile. And what is that? If you want to hunt a dragon, you need to bind those wings first. Dot, the Poderski that I have seen is a master in knots and binding. I do not think there is one better to handle the metal chains than him. Oh, really? I did not know that Poderski had such skills. It is even the way he looks. Dot, Lucia did not understand what Kang Chol in was saying at all, and tilted her head in confusion. There was no way for her to know that Poderski looked exactly like the Korean police department mascot. Do not try to know everything. Ah, yes my sovereign. Prepare everything. Yes, sovereign. And the preparations ended with that. Next morning. Kang Chol and set out to meet the explorers. Oh, oh. Our sovereign is going out. Sovereign. Please rid us of the bad monster. Please be safe. Our people are putting our faith in you. Around 500 people of Laputa saw King Chol and off and paid their respects to their leader. It's perfect. Lucia who was standing on the right side of King Chol and worthy of her position as an advisor, she was very much pleased with the current situation. King Chol and's march to battle was small but was filled with class and authority. Kang Chol and who was wearing a black armor with the print of a tiger on it showed off the sovereign image. And the white horse that Kang Chol and was on was a horse from a good bloodline, enough to add more authority to the sovereign. And to the right and left of Kang Chol in, there stood Lucia who was wearing a tight leather suit, sword, and shield, and Poderski who was wearing a blue uniform. It exemplified power and authority to anyone who saw. How was the back? Bulls as big as a house were pulling three wagons that held items and food for the explorers, and the ten troops that were guarding the wagons were the most competent soldiers of Laputa, in full armor. All these things were a scene that Lucia had prepared. She had shown her potential as an advisor. I don't know if there is a need for the troops as well. Kang Chol and said. I am using the explorers to preserve our troops, but this seems counterintuitive. However, Lucia's opinions differed from that of Kang Chol-in. Sovereign, I think that I am right this time around. Really? Yes, a sovereign needs to have authority. No matter how charismatic and competent you are, I do not think the explorers will see that right away. Also, humans are highly dependent on what they see and they are quick to judge others based on this. I believe that it is right to prevent any possible negative thoughts amongst the explorers before it happens. Lucia was right. Alfred in the past had also often pointed out Kang Chol and flaws such as these and nagged at him often. Sovereign, maintain your dignity. Sovereign, please do not go to the enemy's side on your own. The author called Dorian is too frivolous. How is this putting some distance? I cannot close my eyes at night worried you might become frivolous as well. Lucia probably would have agreed with Alfred as well. You are right. Kang Chol and agreed with Lucia and nodded. He needed an aura of sovereignty from the beginning if he was to control the explorers from the start. It was about an hour and thirty minutes from Laputa to the entrance of the dark forest, so Kang Chol and spoke about many things with Poderski and Lucia while on his horse. Kang Chol and mostly listened. 
This humble servant, Poderski is so honored and glad that you have called me, my sovereign. Poderski who was riding on the wagon with the supplies laughed loudly and was happy. The handcuffs that were on his left waist gleamed in the reflection of the sun. I will make sure to tie up the peacock dragon's wings and prove that your trust in me is worthy. It seemed like Poderski was fired up to prove himself. Ha! Huh. Director General, you know a few tricks, but do you have the skills to please the sovereign? Lucia looked at Poderski and laughed. Tricks. These are all skills that are flesh and blood. Poderski roared. Well, Director General, you can't even handle one ogre. That. Think about it. If you are to keep your position as Director General, you will need to train and improve yourself diligently. But dot but. Of course, you have many tricks up your sleeve. But that is not enough, definitely not. Director General Poderski got swept up in Lucia's sharp remarks over and over again and got scolded again and again. However, talking back was impossible, for Lucia was second in command to the land. Position was everything. Sovereign, that dethroned sovereign, he is still crying and saying that he still does not want to go home. Poderski who gained nothing of the conversation he had with Lucia tried to avoid the situation by throwing a conversation over to Kang Jelen. Sovereign, after this conquest, won't you check out the bar within the land? The woman who runs the place is so beautiful that the men of Laputa are all crazy over her. However, the woman did not even blink an eye. Don't you think the story might be different if you showed up? However, Lucia did not leave Poderski alone. Can you please shut that low mouth of yours? Our sovereign is far from the flames of desires from a common man, Director General Poderski. Lucia's face showed clear signs of disapproval. The sovereign will only associate with pure and virtuous women, like myself. Lucia's shoulders puffed up. Who, who is pure and virtuous? Boderski tilted his head to the side, what do you mean who? Of course, it is me. If one was to receive the sovereign's royal favor, shouldn't the woman at least be myself? Ha! Huh. What is this? Why? Is there a problem? Well, aren't you, advisor Lucia, far from purity and virtue? What? What does that mean? I mean, your body. Ah! In that moment, Poderski caught himself and shut his mouth, but it was spilled milk. Director General, Poderski? Dot. Yes, advisor Lucia. For harassment of a superior, you will have a salary reduction for three months. Dot. Do you have an issue with this? No. No. There was no way he would have such a thing. If he had said he had any issues. It was obvious that today would be his last day alive. Ha. Huh. Sovereign, I am sorry that I had to make a scene. Please forgive me. Lucia with a flustered expression asked for forgiveness. No. Of course, you are in a higher position than Poderski, so of course he can be punished. It was just. Thank you, Sovereign. Sigh. It seems like you trust and like Poderski, but in my opinion, it doesn't seem like he is someone to keep close. Why? Is it because he is rude to you? It is not that. Dot, isn't he too crude? Crude? How can he talk to you about a bartending woman? I am worried that you might be influenced by the Director General's crudeness. Dot, Sovereign, you will only have a pure, virtuous, and innocent woman. And also, don't you think only such a woman will suit you? It seemed like Lucia really had gotten things mixed up. Sovereign, you are the highest and most dignified of men. If you were to have a woman, a woman from a high status and pure bloodline from a good family. Lucia. Kang Chol and cut in. I have no interest in status or family. Dot. Lucia's face was filled with shock at the response that she did not expect. It looked like the face of someone who was betrayed. I want to explain in detail, but it would be too long anyways, so I will not. Just know that. To tell the truth, Kang Chol and had maintained an allied relationship with the Grand Sovereign Hecate on plan enjoyment. It was a shocking truth that the Ishtar coalition was built on him and Hecate's fiery one-night stands, but it was a long-lost past that no one remembered but Kang Chol and himself. I, Lucia, get it finally. Lucia nodded as if she understood. So, 
You do not care about status, nor family background of the woman, but only herself as a person. Lucia who did not know Kang Chol and's true intentions misunderstood. Ah, love that goes beyond status and position. You are a true romantic, sovereign. Dot, Kang Chol and did not know what to answer, and so he just stayed quiet, nudging his horse to walk ahead. What romantic! He had never been called such a thing in his life. Would Overlord really come? I mean, I doubt he wouldn't. He even sent a contract. Right? But how did he get those items? Did he find a good dungeon somewhere? On World, there were posts that said they gained items by opening up treasure chests found in ruins. Overlord probably opened one of those. 10 in the morning, the 40 explorers who showed up to the promised location were talking amongst themselves and were busily talking about Overlord, who had shook the world community upside down. However, when Overlord did not appear even after 10 o'clock passed, the explorers began to talk. There were even explorers who were quick to anger in running here and there with red faces. This bastard. How dare he trick me. Billy who was almost 190 centimeters and all muscle showed his anger at Overlord who did not appear even after 10 minutes. Yay, don't come at all. If you come late, I will break your neck. Billy was threatening Overlord, and then. There, there he comes. White horse? What's with the wagons? Overlord, is it? A couple of the explorers pointed to the figures coming towards him and shouted. What? Overlord is here? Billy opened his eyes wide and looked towards the pointed fingers. Ha, he's late, and he's taking his sweet time? Billy's thick hands grasped the handle of his axe. Let's see if he will move like a turtle in front of me. Billy took large, bouldering steps towards Kang Jolin who was approaching them from far away. The Overlord of Blood and Iron. Chapter 32. Meeting with the Explorers. What, what is that? An army? Billy who had lessened the distance between himself and Kang Chao and was surprised that Kang Chao and was not alone. That is Overlord? And was surprised once again at the sight of Kang Chao and. Kang Chao and in the eyes of Billy was not just any ordinary explorer. Firstly, the level of armor and items that he had was quality on a different level. Kang Chao and's items were all rare level items, and they were made different from the explorer's cheap shields and weapons. Billy's axe seemed like a hunk of metal compared to the sword that Kang Chao and had. And Kang Chao and's appearance also had a lot to do with putting Billy in his place. A gaze that looked down on everything, a determination coming from his tightly drawn lips, wide shoulders, and a gleaming gaze. Kang Chol and could not be summed up as a lucky explorer like Billy initially thought. An explorer? Kang Chol and who had reached Billy spoke in his leisurely voice. Ye, yes. Billy stuttered, overcome before he knew it of Kang Chol and, and his soldiers. His thought of teaching Overlord a lesson had disappeared long ago. Crap. How, how can I beat all these guys by myself? Simply put, Billy chickened out. He was intimidated by Kang Chol and charisma, but Lucia's icy cold stare and Poderski staring at him with gleaming eyes overwhelmed him just the same. Also, the ten soldiers that were guarding the wagon were filled with discipline, and if he were to start a fight, he would become food, skewered on their spears. You walked fast. Almost running. Kang Chol and spoke, as Billy was unsure of what to do next. Are you, by chance, upset that I was late? Billy flinched because Kang Chol and hit the spot, but he shook his head right away and answered. Ah, no, no it's not that. Just wondering why you were late. Wondering if something had happened. There is no phone here and stuff. It was a lame excuse. I get it. Kang Chol and could see right through Billy, but he did not show it. Instead, he toyed with Billy, so that Billy would be at an awkward place. Really? I thought you were mad. No, no. Really, you aren't upset? I am not. I really am not. Really? Really? Finally, Billy put his tail between his legs, intimidated by Kang Chol and, and his people. Even those who tell everyone, I have anger management issues controlled their anger extremely well in the face of the strong. Lead the way. Kang Chol and spoke. Oh, okay. 
he had embarrassed himself, but Billy had no other choice. He did not have the courage to cause a commotion in front of Kang Chol and and his subordinates. Let's go. Kang Chol and had Billy lead the way, and called for his troops. The speed was still slow. The horses' hooves, the wheels turning on the wagons, and the footsteps of the soldiers created a harmony that showed off military discipline. And Billy who felt all this behind him had to hold his bladder as he tried his hardest not to fall to the ground. That. That Asian is overlord? When Kang Chol and and his people drew closer to the explorers, someone spoke in a surprised tone. All the other explorers were the same. All forty explorers like Billy were overwhelmed by Kang Chol and and his troops, and there was not one person who complained about Kang Chol and being late. Lucia, you are competent in these things. Kang Chol and was impressed at Lucia. The explorers' responses were 100% the same as the response that Lucia was trying to have. Lucia's opinion that humans decide on others depending on what they see was the right one. Move, move. To the side. The explorers moved left and right, making a road for King Chol and, and his troops. It was like Moses and the parting of the Red Sea. The white horse that King Chol and was on stopped. The soldiers of Laputa with a large clique stopped behind Kang Chol and in a disciplined, structured way. Nice to meet you. Kang Chol and introduced himself atop the white horse. I am Overlord. And that was the first meeting between Kang Chol and and the 40 explorers. Kang Chol and who had joined the explorers began by putting down ground rules. Our goal is hunting, and hunting again for three weeks. During this time, I will provide tents and food as well as potions if any injuries are to occur. Also, those who will show exceptional skill, I will actually give you the rare level items. In that moment, Poderski uncovered the cloth that was covering the wagon and revealed the items inside. Dot, wow. All of those are rare items? The explorers were surprised. The items that were on the wagon, they were chosen for the hunt, were on a different level than the low level items that the explorers had. It was the difference between a sovereign and explorer. I will divide equally all the treasures that we receive while hunting monsters, and I will only take shares when we hunt high-level monsters. It was in thought of the Peacock Dragon Conquest. The items that you could receive from hunting lower-level monsters in Kang Chalin's position were things that he didn't really need to have. It would be better to give it up coolly in order to be received favorably by the explorers. Kang Chalin's real purpose lied in the dragon heart anyways. Hey, overlord, are you serious? You are really giving rare level items as well as dividing up treasure evenly? A couple of explorers shouted questions. In their position, it was too good of an offer. Of course. Kang Chalin nodded. Wait. In that moment, Lucia stepped forward, and after asking permission from Kang Chalin, stood in front of the explorers. I am Lucia, and I tend to His Majesty King Chal In, here. Nice to meet you, explorers. Lucia's face seemed stern and cold as she introduced herself. Majesty? What Majesty? He's a king? What's up with the title? The explorers started to talk. Most did not know of the existence of the sovereign class. Quiet, quiet down. Lucia scolded the explorers and quieted them, and continued. I. Lucia will talk about a couple of things that you explorers must keep in mind. Please listen carefully. The explorers were drawn in by Lucia's cold charisma and quietly focused on what she had to say. First, the leader of this army, Slayers, is Majesty King Jelen. Therefore, if there is any reason to call for him, you must use proper honorifics. Of course, I will not force you to call him Majesty. General would be fine instead. Lucia talked about all things that Kang Chalin could not say for himself, and she was fulfilling her duties as advisor wonderfully. Also, there are no such things as not following orders or disobedience. The Majesty's orders are absolute, and if one was not to follow orders, or cause unrest, prepare to pay the price. Thud. The soldiers who were behind Kang Chalin slammed their spears to the ground, focusing the attention of the explorers. If there are any of you who have issues with this, return home with your own two feet when you can. As you know, this is not your world. 
I heard there is a saying when in Rome, do as the Romans do in your world. I believe you are all familiar with this saying. I will end here. Lucia went back to her position and the air was frigid. However, this was extremely necessary. In any organization, clear relationship between superiors and inferiors, as well as commands and directions needed to be clear in order to prevent disputes. Even if the mood was a bit depressing, this could not be avoided. Are there any of you who want to go back? Kang Cholin asked. Like Lucia said, if you want to return, go back now. There was no one. It's because the conditions are good. Kang Cholin looked at the explorers and thought. There were a couple who seemed to have issues here and there. Their expressions said, What majesty! And how great is he, that he pretends to be a king! If it was not for the good conditions, they were the kind to go right away. I can mold them slowly. Kang Cholin was not in a rush. It was not even an hour since they formed the team. It did not make sense to expect loyalty or trust from them at this moment. If there is no one, then I will think everyone agrees, and I will move forward in our schedule. Boderski, distribute the items to the explorers. Yes, Majesty. Come here everyone. I will give you all the items. Ah, of course, we are not giving it to you but lending it to you for the time being. At the announcement, the cold atmosphere began to warm up. You had to give a carrot after the whip. The blood sword? The black thorn spear? Ugh! What shield is this heavy? The explorers were delighted at the rare level items that they had never seen before. Simpletons! Kang Cholin looked at the explorers and laughed to himself. Just like the past, explorers were so easy to control. Sovereign, the items have been dispersed. Really? Let's go. Yes, Sovereign. When the item dispersion ended, the slayers went on to the monster conquest. Sovereign, you don't look too well. Lucia asked as they were entering the dark forest. Like she said, Kang Chol and did not look too well. The one I needed did not come. The one that you need. It's a guy named Dorian. Like he said, Dorian Explorer was nowhere to be seen. I don't know where he wandered off to, when he said he was going to come for sure. Dorian had said over and over again that he wanted to participate in the Peacock Dragon Conquest. And he had not come, so it was understandable that Kang Cholin was upset. He must be quite useful, seeing that you even remember his name. He isn't just useful. Dot, the Dorian that I know has the potential to be the best dungeon hunter there is. He is that good? And he too is a sovereign. Of course, he is a different level than these explorers. Ah! Lucia heard of the explanation of Dorian and exclaimed. If it was someone Kang Chol and spoke highly of, Lucia would also respect him. Well, ultimately, he didn't even show up so he is nothing but a liar. What was the point of thinking highly of him if he didn't even show up? Maybe it was just not meant to be today. Idiot. I will kill him if I meet him later. Kang Chol and grinded his teeth towards Dorian. It was then. Sovereign. The soldier who was walking ahead quickly came to Kang Cholin and reported back. In 200 meters from us, I found a crocodile. Perfect timing. Kang Cholin smiled, as if he approved. Crocodiles were half human and half animal, and had the head of a hyena monster that was compatible with the Nola which was a level 15 monster. Its level was 20, a strong monster that was difficult to beat with even three explorers at their current levels. Let's go, I will take it on myself. Kang Chol and guided his horse. Sovereign, are you thinking to take the croquet to yourself? How, why Sovereign? Lucia opened her eyes wide in surprise and asked. I will need to show an example so that the explorers can trust and follow me. Kang Chol and smiled and answered. In hunting for the croquet himself, he would teach the explorers how to hunt as well as exemplifying his skill. That was Kang Chelin's plan. He would catch two birds with one stone. Hiya! Kang Chelin nudged the side of the white horse. Nay! The strong horse quickly ran ahead. The Overlord of Blood and Iron. Chapter 33 Proving One's Class W.H. What's going on? Why did he suddenly dash forward? Did he say Krokita? What is that? 
the gathered explorers were surprised with King Chol and sudden movements. Be quiet. Lucia's strength-filled voice shut the explorers' mouths up. Master, no, General has already stated that he would be showing us how to kill the level 20 Grokita monster. However, that remark had stirred up the group even more. Th, that's nonsense. A level 20 monster? By himself? Hey, stop fooling around. How do you kill at level 20 monster by yourself? Disbelief quickly spread like an infectious disease. Hey, you pretty lady over there. Does that make sense? Even if he is the general, how is he planning on killing a level 20 monster? Not only that, but by himself? A robust African-American man yelled. That's right. A couple of days ago, I tried fighting against a level 15 monster and almost got myself killed. But, a level 20 monster? Do you really expect us to believe that? Another explorer came forward and spoke of his distrust towards King Jolin. Is this some sort of deception? Are you trying to scam us by placing a dead, or already weakened monster in front of him to supposedly kill by himself? That's right, that's also possible. Beginning with one person's suspicions after the other, distrust continued to grow. It was an obvious reaction. Even the current highest leveled explorer was only level 12. For these types of people, they were unable to fathom the thought of solo killing a level 20 monster, and thus could do nothing more than to show disbelief. Crack. They dare to disbelieve our general? These bastards who aren't even showing the slightest bit of trust. A raging fire was burning within Lucia. But, she did not lose her rationality, because she knew. The more the explorers disbelieved and were suspicious, the more faith would be returned later. Lucia firmly believed in Kang Jolin. Even if the monster was level 25, she believed that Kang Jolin would easily be able to manage against it. This feeling wasn't just because she was his aide, but because she could feel the calmness and confidence from Kang Jolin that could only be felt from the strong. Everyone. Lucia laughed as if it was ridiculous, and spoke to the explorers. If you really don't believe it, then all you have to do is see it with your own eyes. Since the general has dashed forward, he should have made contact with the Krokita by now. Before you start thinking of useless suspicions, I want you to see with your own eyes, exactly how amazing our general is. The explorers responded back as such. Ha! Huh. Alright, let's see how amazing your special general is. Just tell him not to die. That's right. You said some great words. I'll make sure to watch everything with these eyes of mine. Dot. While Lucia responded back as such. Who? All right. Follow me everyone. Riding the horse, Lucia headed towards the direction that King Chol and had disappeared to. The explorers followed behind her one by one, as they spoke to themselves. She thinks we wouldn't be able to go with her? But, do you think he'll really be able to kill it by himself? Bullshit. If it's the Krokita, even I've seen it once before. It's a brutal monster that can't even be compared to the null. Is, is that so? E, whatever. Let's go and see for ourselves. That's right. I need to confirm it with my own eyes. It took five minutes for the group to reach Kang Jolin's location. He was at the mouth of a running stream, in a confrontation with a Krokita monster that had the head of a hyena. Gen FYI Krokita is the scientific term for spotted hyenas, is everyone gathered? Kang Chol and did not even look behind him as he spoke. I shall show you all, as slowly as I can. His eyes were still focused on the Krokita. GRRR. Feeling that Kang Chol and was looking down on it, the Krokita bared its fangs as it growled. The Krokita is no different from the Nul. It just grew a little. Jin Nul is a humanoid hyena. People who play D&D &D should recognize it, he honestly was looking down on the monster. Whether the Krokita was growling or not, Kang Jolin did not even blink as he continued to explain. You deal with the Krokita the same way you would deal with an L. If you can go against them, you can go against the Krokita as well. Of course, you do have to have a stronger physical body, but the attacking method still stays the same. Kang Chol and had the attitude of a teacher teaching his students. Th, this psycho. Who the hell does he think he is? The explorers were surprised. 
They were surprised of his boldness, and again surprised of his calmness. How could he be so bold in front of a brutal level 20 monster? The explorers were unable to understand it with their common sense. It was at that moment. The Crocuta that did not rush and rashly, began to rush towards King Jell and as if it was now angered. Ah! D. Danger! Seeing such a scene, several explorers yelled out. Within their heads, King Jell and was already considered to be dead. However! Bang! It is not difficult to stop a Crocuta's frontal attack. The Crocuta's attack was unable to get through King Jolin's sword. You can do it as much as you want if you're at least level 10. King Jolin spoke calmly, as if it was nothing much. Dot. Dot. The eyes of the explorers were filled with dismay. A level 20 monster was blocked so easily. If that wasn't enough, he was even talking? They were completely shocked. However. King Chol and continued. Roar. With a roar, the Crocuta tried to rip apart King Chol in. With the head of a hyena, the Crocuta's base belonged to the canine family. Its biting strength was so immense, that it was also a dangerous attack for someone like King Chol in. Only, if it could succeed in actually biting him. This is a bit dangerous. With a swish, King Chol and easily slid to the side and evaded the Crocuta's attack. The main force for both Thin and Crocuta are their mouths. It wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that their jaw strength is all they have. As for their strength, I would say about 600 kilograms? Should be around there. The moment you get bit, there will be no more future for you. Kang Chol and spoke as he hit the head of the Crocuta away with his wrist guard, as it was constantly trying to bite him. I will emphasize this again. Just watch out for its bite. If you do that, whether it's an or a Crocuta, there will be no reason for your death. Afterwards, King Chol and spent another 30 minutes playing with the Crocuta, as he continued to teach the group. The explorers were awestruck. Their predictions were completely shattered, as King Chol and had proven with skills that he was on a different class as them. With his expert and seasoned techniques, the explorers could not dare to stand against him, I should do it now. Thinking that he had taught them enough, King Chol and began to move to finish off the Crocuta. Their weakness. King Chol and Ni kicked the bloody Crocuta in the stomach, and got back into a stance. Is here. And, after lowering his stance, King Chol and rushed in towards the right. Right below the ribs. And stabbed the Crocuta right into its weak point. Stab. Together with the sound of ripping skin and flesh. Bang. The Crocuta cried out in pain. And, using the vampiric sword that was stabbed into the Crocuta's lung, King Chol and fixed himself to grab the sword at an inverse, then stepping in with his right foot, he twisted his body to his left and pulled the sword from the inside to the out, cutting the Crocuta's stomach completely. Spurt. With a massive amount of blood coming out, the Crocuta's white and black innards began to drop to the floor. Finisher. As a finisher, the vampiric sword was stabbed through the inside of the monster's jaw. With a drop, the Crocuta fell. It was over with that. Swish, swish swish. Having killed cleanly killed the Crocuta, King Jolin waved around the sword a few times to clean it of the monster's blood. Lucia quietly walked to King Jolin's side and cleaned the sword of blood and grease with an immaculate white cloth. It's easy, and anyone can do it. While receiving Lucia's care, King Chol and spoke flatly as if it was nothing. Dot. Dot. With those words, the explorer's face expressions became rotten. Yay, easy? That is? Psycho. That son of a bitch. Does he think it's going to be easy for everyone just because it's easy for him? If that's considered easy, then what's considered to be difficult? King Chol and's words did not have a conscience. The explorers were normal people that were living very normal lives in their own respective countries until just a few months ago. For the explorers that have only held a weapon for the first time since a few months ago, King Cholin's movements and skills were not considered to be easy. Dot. Seeing the strange reactions from the explorers, King Cholin tilted his head. Why are their expressions like that? He could not understand the explorers' expressions. Lucia. So, he decided to secretly ask Lucia. Yes, General. 
the reactions from the explorers don't seem that great. Why is that? That is. Dot dot I think it is difficult for someone from a high stature to see the world of those that are lowly. Dot. You, General, have said that your actions were easy, but for them, it is definitely not so. If a crotid tries to walk like a stork, it will break its legs. Jin it's basically a Korean phrase that means to tailor your ambitions to the measure of your abilities, ah. Kang Chol in was finally able to realize his mistake. He tried his best to teach the group in the easiest way possible, but from the point of view of the explorers, that wasn't the case. Well, I never was that great at teaching. Kang Chol in sneered at himself. Even in the past, he had tried to guide his followers himself, but the results were terrifying. Different from his trouble-free personality, Kang Chol and sword skills were very technical, and was very difficult for normal people to grasp. As much as his fighting style was instinctive and was a talent that he was born with, even if Kang Chol and was to explain everything step by step, it was honestly difficult to say that the explorers would be able to follow his movements. It would be a wonder if they were able to at least grasp the key points. General please don't be disappointed. Lucia tried to comfort Kang Chol in. Please look at their expressions. Have they not become inspired from watching your skills? I think that is plenty enough, sir. That was true. Although the explorers showed confusion within their expressions, they did not deny his skills. Their suspicions suddenly seemed to have disappeared. Were you guys able to see everything? Lucia turned to the explorers and haughtily stared at them. The general has the skills to be at the level of a general. I'd be very glad if you did not look down on him in public. Who? Although it was quite the bitter irony, the explorers were unable to rebut against Lucia's words because of the things they had previously said. I should be content with just showing them my skills. Although he wasn't able to catch two rabbits at once, Kang Chol and should now be able to easily control the explorers since he had shown them his skills. He was planning on showing them more in the near future. Dorian, if that bastard was here it'd make things so much easier. Kang Chol and thought of Dorian. It was safe to say that there were no suitable candidates to train the explorers except Dorian. Although the Dorian now was a sovereign that was at the same level as Kang Chol in, he had a unique talent. If Kang Chol in was known for his techniques, then Dorian could be known as someone with great understanding of basic standards. Their styles were so different that, in the past, even if they were to look at the same thing, their opinions of it were completely different. It was true that Dorian's lighter style of training was better for the explorers. They say that it's sometimes difficult to get something very common for an emergency use, but this was exactly that type of situation. You better owe me for today. As King Chol in was cursing Dorian, it happened. Clap, clap, clap. The sound of clapping could be heard from somewhere. Wow how shocking. I've really been struck with admiration. A Caucasian man walked out from within the thicket, and began to walk towards King Chol and with his thumbs up. The Overlord of Blood and Iron. Chapter 34. Level up, again and again. Your Overlord, right? Spoke a man that looked like a bum. Nice to meet you. You, your skills aren't too bad? Then, he proceeded to walk towards King Chol and to shake his hands. I'm known as Lumpen in the world community, Dorian. Dorian Explorer. King Chol and did not grab Dorian's hand. He was very dirty, and there was no way for King Chol and to harbor goodwill towards him since he was late. I'm King Chol and. But, why were you late? Asking instead. Th, that is. Dorian began to give out poor excuses. I. I was too excited. As soon as I received your message, I asked an adventurer to borrow his gate and immediately came here. But. It somehow ended up. Know that I think about it, I don't even have any food. Or a bag. Then I noticed a weird looking animal, so I followed it around and eventually, the day was over. I was hungry. And as I was looking for food to eat, it basically meant that he had come to this world with just his body and ended up running around in the forest. This crazy bastard. Listening to Dorian's excuses, a vein popped up on Kang Chol and's forehead. For a guy who said that he was from the special forces, 
How is he able to get lost? Starting from the year 2021, the 25-year-old Dorian was part of the famous ESAS, Special Air Service, in the British Armed Forces, and was a monster with plenty of experience in Afghanistan, Somalia, etc. Although it was weird that such a person could get lost, the real Dorian often got lost. So, I rushed to the meeting spot as quickly as I could, but it seemed like everyone had left first. The only thing I could do was to follow the traces and ended up here. Either way, I'm sorry I'm late. Dorian apologized. But, the handshake? I told you I'm sorry. You're making me feel embarrassed. If you're going to stick your hand out, wash yourself first. Kang Chul and retorted. Forget the handshake, even a bum would cry after looking at your appearance. It, it's that bad? No, dirtier. Dot. Aren't you a sovereign as well? It would have been better if you had brought a subordinate or two with you? Ah, they all seem to be sleeping. I felt bad waking them up, so I came by myself. Dot. Kang Chul and understood. It was obvious that this guy had ran out in the middle of the night while his confidants and leaders were asleep. Dorian was a tiresome, and irresponsible sovereign in their eyes. Well, it's nothing new I guess. Since, you've always been like that. It wasn't something that had only occurred once or twice. I don't understand how this guy went through military life. There was something that Kang Cholin did not know. The Navy SEAL and Delta Force. Famous special forces like the SAS, had a very different image from what regular civilians knew. Most of the people in these forces were filled with people that were worse than thugs. Of course, once training started, their personalities would take a full 180 degree change, but it was undeniable that the military discipline was poor. Same with Dorian, normally he seemed to be out of it, but once he was put into battle or was killing monsters, he would completely change into a different person. Murder? If it was necessary, Dorian would be able to heartlessly kill a person, just like Kang Jolin. Ah, by the way. Dorian spoke as if he had something to say. That thing just now. That thing just now? When you killed off the Crocuta. Dot? Did you hold the sword backwards to put more force into it? And, did you turn your body to the right? so you could dodge the Crocuta's counter? It just seemed like a movement that was preparing you for the possibility of being bitten, since you would have to get close to the body with the sword pierced into it. The purpose of attacking with the most amount of damage, yet at the same time, dodging the counter. Wasn't it a movement of the perfect balance between attack and defense? Well, at least that's what it looked like in my eyes, but it's alright if it's not. A discerning eye that had looked completely through Kang Jolin's intentions. He was indeed the dungeon attacking strategist, at least in the past, with those sharp insights. Ah, is that so? Was that what it was? It kind of makes sense after it was explained like that. Is that why the general moved to the right when he cut the croak at his body? The adventurers that had listened to Dorian's explanation began to understand Kang Jolin's demonstrations. What do you think about my words? It's accurate. Kang Chol and nodded his head. As I thought, he has a lot of uses. He would be perfect as a teaching assistant. Kang Chol and felt very happy and believed that it was God's grace to be able to catch Dorian. Dorian's questions had the same effect as being able to explain the confusing parts to the adventurers. Kang Chol and believed that if he used Dorian right, he would be able to create a great synergy in teaching the adventurers. I will use you to the fullest. Although he was late, since Dorian had joined the group, Kang Jolin vowed that he would use him to the fullest rather than destroying him. Although, that was his true purpose from the beginning. With the addition of Dorian, the attack unit slayers, gained momentum. It was the same as giving lectures. If Kang Jolin fought against a monster one-on-one -on -one to show a demonstration, Dorian would ask questions he was curious about, and share his opinions. If Kang Jolin was the teacher, then Dorian was the assistant, or an honor student. Thanks to the discussions between the two, the adventurers could find solutions for the parts they were doubtful of and were slowly able to build up their knowledge. Thanks to that, their learning efficiency had increased greatly, and in proportion to that, their levels grew quickly.
although the adventurers were unaware of it themselves, but they were currently getting private lessons from the rare scam character Noah's Kang Chao In, and the genius Noah's Dorian. You have raised your level. Attained level 15. You have raised your level. Attained level 16. You have raised your level. Attained level 17. You have raised your level. Attained level 18. You have raised your level. Attained level 19. One week since starting the hunt, Kang Chol and had attained level 19. Excluding eating and sleeping, all his time was put into monster hunting. However, Kang Chol and was unsatisfied. He had a high threshold that he wanted to hit, and it was a far road of hitting at least level 100. Also, he knew that he would be unable to go against the Peacock Dragon with a mere level 19. Still too far. I won't be able to deal with that thing unless I hit at least level 25. Late at night, Kang Chol and was lost in thought while everyone was already asleep. Listening to the reports from Poderski, who was going back and forth between the territory and base camp, the bastard peacock dragon was still looking for food around the territory, even though the territory had been concealed. It would be best to hit level 30. But, it'll be too late by then. Even now, gold was quickly being used. With the territory being concealed, Kang Chol and would suffer a great loss as more time continued to pass. Hey, what are you thinking about so hard? With a swish, Dorian got closer and spoke. I. So hard, so hard. I don't think it's ever been this tough even during my military days. It's not easy hunting monsters. It was obvious that Dorian was exhausted. Because, Kang Chol and was staring at Dorian as if he was going to eat him. The adventurers that were watching from the side, felt pity for Dorian because of how severely he was being exploited. If it was anyone else, there was a high chance that they would have ran away by now. It seems like you're having a tough time? Would it be considered normal if this wasn't tough? It's so easy with such half-assed demonstrations, huh? You should try it yourself, or what do you want me to do? Sigh. It's not like I'm some kind of genius. Dorian grumbled. You are a genius. A dumpy genius. Kang Chol and laughed to himself. If it's that hard, why don't you go back? I won't stop you. Words that Kang Chol and truly didn't believe in. What are you talking about? I'm not going back until I fight that peacock dragon. Of course, although it's tough. Dot dot time learning a lot from you, and I feel that it was a good idea to have come here. Dorian truly seemed to be enjoying himself right now. That's, they're all things I learned from you. In more ways than one, Kang Chol and was also enjoying himself. The owner was like the customer and the customer like the owner. It was a situation where their roles had completely changed. If Kang Chol and was the one learning in the past, it was different this time. Dorian was learning from him now. He was learning his own tips and attack strategies from Kang Chol and. For such an irony to occur. It was something that could not have occurred if there wasn't a soul backup. A situation that Dorian would never have dreamed of. Hey, buddy. Dorian spoke. Can I ask you something? If it's something that I can answer. Why are you not telling the adventurers their final goal? Although the others aren't saying anything, because they're unsure, their goal isn't to simply level up, right? It's a problem of confidence. Confidence. Although the peacock dragoness is the weakest of the dragon species, it is a level 40 monster in name. If I was to tell them that we were going to fight against an uncouth monster like that, do you think they would follow me? Dorian made a stupid expression. They would have run away, or would have said that they would not do it. E, what do you mean run away? I'm sure they have definitely agreed, since we'll be fighting against a dragon type. You idiot. Dot. You think everyone is like you? The adventurer's goals are money and items, not to die from fighting a high-level monster. I, is that so? Dorian could understand Kang Chalin's words. No matter what it was, there was a big difference between having confidence, and not. By tomorrow, you and I should be level 20, while the adventurers will be level 15. Kang Chalin spoke. He was planning on fighting against the peacock dragon once he hit level 25, and the adventurers level 20. 
I think we can slowly enter into special training. Special training? What special training? Did you by chance think up a strategy specifically to fight against the peacock dragon? How admirable. To think that you would be able to think that far. Dot. Hey, I'm not stupid. Of course you are. Dot. As King Chol and responded like so, he thought to himself. If you're not stupid, then who is? It was quite pleasant to be messing around with Dorian. At that moment. Dorian spoke as if he was doubtful of something. Wait, something's weird? What's weird? You. What's your purpose? Dot. Something's weird. How do you know how to fight every monster that we come across? How do you know the existence of the peacock dragon and how to fight against it? Are the items that you distributed also part of the strategy to specifically fight against the peacock dragon? Dot. For a moment, Kang Chol in was very surprised with Dorian. He did not know how sharp Dorian was, because he had only seen Dorian as an easy fish, someone who could easily be played around with. It really is suspicious. It's only been a month since the grand summoning, yet you know too much. Are you by chance? With eyes full of suspicion, Dorian stared at Kang Chol in. When did this bastard get this smart? He usually would skip through it as if it was nothing. As Kang Chol in was at a loss, Dorian took the initiative. Did you practice earlier? You wanted to get stronger quicker, and wanted to fight against high-leveled monsters? Dot. Kang Chol in was super nervous, but as expected, Dorian guessed wrong. You asked your confidence, and if there was something they didn't know, you researched the information on the world. What do you say, am I right? Kang Chol in thought you stupid idiot, that's why you always get played within the palm of my hands. Apostrophe, as he agreed enthusiastically. Dot. I've been caught. As I thought. Dorian was elated as he perked his shoulders up. Idiots were idiots and were happy because of it. Well, either way. We just need to gain the skills needed to fight against the peacock dragon. Or, fight against monsters that have similar characteristics as the peacock dragon. Dorian used his innate monster hunting skills to grasp Kang Jolin's intentions. That's what I'm planning. Kang Chol in had already planned a curriculum of monsters that he wanted to kill. Slowly, there was a list of monsters in Kang Chol in's head that he wanted to hunt within the next week. From this point on, we need to fight against big monsters. In order to fight against the peacock dragon, the 40 plus adventurers needed a big monster that could take on everyone's attacks at once. A big monster that was at least around level 30. What Kang Chol and didn't know was that, this opportunity would come a lot faster than he thought. The Overlord of Blood and Iron. Chapter 35. The Inexperienced Genius, and the United Body. There was nothing particularly special about the next morning. As usual, Team Slayers ate breakfast as soon as dawn came, then Poderski did an informal roll call to check on the health of the adventurers. The results were good health. They were good to start their day. An hour before departure, Kang Chol in and Dorian moved to a secluded location. One could say that it was a type of private tutoring. In order to solidify their relationship, Kang Chol in decided to teach Dorian one on one. It was an act to keep Dorian away from the bastard Rothschild once Ragnarok came. Dorian was a man that showed loyalty to those that showed him favor. If Kang Chol in was to help him grow quickly, at the least, they would not become enemies. Sigh dot dot this doesn't seem to be working out too well. Having blossomed a deep blue flame onto his hand, Dorian suddenly furrowed his brows. With the sound of a bang, the flame disappeared. You're struggling with something so easy. Kang Chol-in's mouth made a tiny smirk as he teased Dorian. Such an easy thing. As he spoke such words, a flame bigger than the one that Dorian had created appeared on Kang Chol-in's hand. It was the skill modifier. It was a skill that wasn't particularly special. Monofire utilized the root of mana for all supernatural powers to create the flame. And, although it was just the spirit of the natural laws, it was a skill that wasn't known to the adventurers. To put it simply, it was the most basic of basic skills. You can't even do an easy thing like this. How incompetent. Kang Chol and made fun of Dorian as he proceeded to teach him the basic skill. 
Shit. Dorian exploded. Why, why isn't it working? Dorian suddenly created the flame, but it did not last long. It would last for about 20-30 seconds and disappear. Compared to Kang Jolin who had had his flame going for over 5 minutes, it was a drop of water in the middle of an ocean. Who knows? Kang Jolin smiled. You. You you dot dot are you pitying me? What pity? I have no pity for an incompetent person. Crack. The angry Dorian clenched his teeth. Ah. Why, why isn't it working? Why? It was normal for him to be angry. They were both sovereigns, at the same levels, using the same skill, yet Kang Chol'ins was like an active volcano while Dorian's was nothing more than a match flame. Being on equal terms, it was normal for Dorian to get angry when he's trying so hard. Chet, nothing is coming out of me teaching you. Kang Chol and shook his head. Th, there's no point in teach me? But, isn't this considered to be good? Go somewhere else if you want to hear compliments. Dot. If you think that everything is going to work out just because you're trying, then there would be no such things as failure in this world. Th, that's true. Find the cause. Your skills won't get any better if you're not fixing the fundamental problem. I'm telling you that I don't know what that is. If you don't know, then you will stay as an incompetent person. W-H, what? That's the way this world works. Dot. Kang Chol and continued to admonish the depressed Dorian. He seems to be quite angry. Keeping to himself that he was quite happy. No matter how talented you are, it's still too much for you. Although Dorian's learning abilities were quick, it would take some time for him to catch a clue. At the least two months? It was impossible for him to create an intact modifier before then. However, if I give him the answer, it would be different. He may understand at a moment's notice. Kang Chol and was also a talented individual, and knew how to use modifier like the bag of his hand, so he knew exactly how he was to guide Dorian. It's because your head is too stupid. Kang Chol and spoke. Head? Mine? Dorian was surprised. How? I'm not stupid. Saying that he wasn't stupid when he was stupid made Kang Chol'un laugh, but he decided not to react to those words. Although Dorian had slow senses and was clumsy, he was definitely at the top when it came to utilizing Rana, compared to the 300,000 people that had crossed over to this world. Close your mouth and listen. Dot. Yes, sir. I'm not sure if it's because you've spent a lot of your time in the military but your head has gotten a bit dull. Although you might be good at following orders and doing as you're told. You probably don't know where those orders came from, and why those orders were being given. It may have also just been a waste of time to be questioning the orders that were given to you. Is, is that so? From what I can see dot dot although you don't want to admit it, you are extremely smart when it comes to specific fields. Only, you're unable to apply everything because of how dull your head has gotten. MMMM. So, what's your point? The reason why you're not able to properly command your modifier. Dot. At Kang Chalin's words, Dorian's eyes grew wide. It's very simple. Ah, really? Do you want to learn it? Of course. With Kang and subtle question, Dorian nodded his head with strength. You need to come to me whenever I call for you. Whenever? When are you going to call for me? I also have a schedule. Whenever you're completely free and have time. Okay, I'll do it. Is that enough? Now tell me. Dorian did not know that he was signing into a type of slave contract. You are now my little bitch. Kang Chol and kept Dorian hard at work in the past, and now he had set himself up to do the same in the present. He was quite the ruthless man. What's the fundamental for the modifier? Hiding his black heart, Kang Cholin spoke. That is. You said that I had to focus my mind onto my mana and release it? And, think of a flame as I'm releasing it? At least, that's what you said. That's just if you're talking theoretically. What you do you think you need to do if you want to create a flame that lasts as long as mine, and is as strong as mine? Dot? It's the power of your imagination. Imagination? Dorian asked back regarding the unexpected answer. 
Is that the solution? I'm sure I told you that it was simple. Why, you did. When you use monofire, I'm sure you simply think of a flame. Something like a bonfire or a s fire. How did you? That is the difference between you and me. Dot. I'm sure I have told you before that we do not use the mono within our hearts with the strength of our heartbeats or the use of muscles. That's right. You told me that it was my concentration, and the power of my imagination. You can't expect your monofire to be strong when your imagination is so weak. When I use monofire, I picture an active volcano or floating lava. Dot. If you use your whole mind to focus on the image, and completely solidify your image making dot dot this can happen. Watch. Whoosh. A deep red flame rose up from Kane Challen's hand and shot up 5 meters into the air. This was the true monofire. In his prime days, Kane Challen had used the basic monofire skill to skill a company of enemies. Whoa. Dorian gulped down a storm. H, how can such a thing? The current monofire was on a completely different level to any of the ones that Kang Chol and had shown till now. It was strong, and looked dangerous. There was no doubt about it that the damage would be immense as well. It doesn't always work just because you think about it. You need put yourself through intense mediation every day to grind and polish the flames within your heart. Ah! As if he finally understood, Dorian gave a shout. Only. Bear in mind that you will deplete a lot of mana if you release something this big. Aha! Try it! Kang Chol and pointed at Dorian with his chin. Already? It hasn't even been a minute since you've taught me. You should be able to do it after seeing it once. Th, that's too much. If it's too much, then don't learn it. Dot dot I'll try it. Dorian lowered his tail as soon as Kang Chol and made a scene. The only one disappointed was Dorian himself. A bigger flame. Concentrate, and concentrate some more. Using what he had learned from Kang Chao in, Dorian focused his mind. Whoosh, whoosh. A monofire appeared. Uh, uh? Dorian was surprised to see that the flame was stronger than before. It was obvious that it was unbelievable for him, even though he had created it himself. It, it worked. I'll give you 10 points out of 100. Kang Chol and smiled as he rated the flame. H, how? Because, it's smaller than mine. Dot. If you think it's unfair, then do better. After saying such words, Kang Chol and began to move before Dorian could say anything. Just in time for Poderski to leave for his morning hunt. The afternoon of that day. Dorian applied his monifier for 10 minutes and played the leading role for the engineering group. Smack! Dorian had hit the orc in its chin. Swoosh! Quickly turning his body, he threw out his elbow. Bam! With a dull sound, the orc fell to the ground whilst vomiting. Surprisingly, Dorian could take down his opponent with his bare hands. Sigh! Having just finished a fight, Dorian took a deep breath. Wow, Dorian's getting stronger? How was he able to take down an orc with his bare hands? That, what is that blue thing that's wrapped around his hands? Seeing the rapid growth within Dorian, many surprised adventurers were speaking amongst themselves. Kang Cholin is much stronger than this. How exactly did he become so strong? Dorian was not fazed by the attention he was getting from the adventurers. The only thing running in his mind was his curiosity towards Kang Cholin's strength and the strong desire of wanting to reach that same level. Kang Chol and had no way of knowing that he had become a god within Dorian's mind. He's quick, but he's too hasty. On the other side, Kang Chol and was very cold with his evaluation of Dorian. I'm sure you want to hurry and get stronger. However, there are steps for everything, Dorian. Kang Chol and could see Dorian's psychological stain like a ghost. The you right now is too hasty. No matter how much of a genius you are, you're going to end up paying dearly for it if you rush things. He even knew how much of a dangerous state Dorian was currently in. The period where it's most dangerous for anyone. That was the situation Dorian was currently in. It was a situation where, with the slightest mistake, one could be filled with rage acting with haste. And, 
Kang Chol and's worries did not go long as it became a reality right in front of his eyes. One hour later. It happened when Team Slayers was on their way back to base camp after a tough fight with an orc. Crack. As a gigantic tree fell to the ground, a huge greenish-gray giant appeared and blocked their path. It was a distance of about 150 meters. Roar. The loud roar was like thunder as it shook the entire forest. Dot. Dot. With the sudden appearance of a giant, the adventurers were frozen with fear. Leader. Let's hurry and retreat. Lucia yelled out. It's dangerous. Boderski also urgently yelled. It was because they knew the identity of the monster. It's still a young. Just like Lucia and Poderski, Kang Chol and was also able to tell the identity of the monster with a quick look. Ogre. It was a level 35 ogre that was often known as the king of the forest. Lucia, Boderski. To the front. Kang Chol and yelled out. Yes, General. On my way. Having received orders, Lucia and Poderski rushed out like lightning. This, might be dangerous. A fully grown ogre was about 5 meters tall, however, the ogre that had just appeared was only about 3. 5 meters. Yet, it was still dangerous. Even if the ogre is considered to be young, it was still dangerous for the current adventurers, and with a slight mistake, they may be unable to escape total annihilation. ra u r With a loud roar, the ogre began to rush towards them. Parvis, equip the Parvis. Kang Chol and issued his orders. The five Parvis shields that were given to the adventurers were about 8 kilograms in weight, and were used to ram into the ground as obstacles. Swords, to the front. Spear, Parvis to the back. With Kang Chol and orders, the adventurers quickly moved. They knew that the only person they could believe in at this moment was Kang Chol and. It was at that moment. Mr. Dorian. Lucia yelled out. That crazy bastard. A vein popped up on Kang Chol and's forehead. Dorian Explorer was the first to rush out, and was trying to fight against the ogre head on. Being able to take down an orc with bare hands, he must have thought that the ogre was easy game. Even if he's able to use mono fire, the ogre was currently way out of his league. The desire to become strong, it was the outcome of a hasty heart. Smack. Kang Chol and kicked the white horse in the ribs. Nig. The horse began to gallop forward. I can't leave you to die like this. Dorian was an indispensable human resource that had to be fully used. There was no way that Kang Chol and was going to leave him to die a dog's death. The unified body was attempting to correct the mistakes of the immature genius. Chapter 36. To the Dragonia Mountain Range. However, it was impossible to prevent Dorian who had already dashed out. As both sides were rushing towards each other with the ogre approaching quickly as well, Kang Chol and did not have a chance to cut in between them. That's just your luck. Kang Chol and left Dorian's life to pure chance. There was no doubt in the fact that Dorian will lose, regardless of monofire, because a 3.5 meters massive muscle was about to collide with Dorian, who topped at 171 centimeters. Kwong. Equipped with mana fire, Dorian's fist collided with the ogre's fist. Crack. With a sound of something breaking, ack. Dorian fell back with a single scream. Lucia. Kang Chol and called out for Lucia as he rushed. Yes. Recognizing Kang Chalan's call, Lucia removed a large shield, Aegis, from her back, and protected Dorian, who has fallen. Kai Chunk. A loud noise rang out as the ogre's fist and Lucia's Aegis shield collided. Ah! A painful scream exploded from the ogre. Surprisingly, the side that lost was the ogre while Lucia remained unwavering. Especially skilled and shielding. Kang Chol and was amazed to see that. Without even being pushed back a step, Lucia has perfectly defended against the ogre's punch. All that had happened was just a 10 centimeters divot, where she was standing. However, there wasn't any time to be marveling at that. The ogre rushed to attack again as fallen Dorian looked helpless. Someone had to come and divert the ogre's attention. Coming. Already on his saddle, Kang Chol and was storming towards the ogre. There. Levitating in the air, Kang Chol and looked for a point of attack, using the height advantage like a falcon's eyes. Puck. 
With foul trick, the blood sword has cut through the ogre's collarbone. The offensive move was deemed to have scored 100 out of 100 points. The ogre's muscle fiber was overwhelmingly hard, strong, and elastic beyond that of iron. His skull was also as hard as steel. Kang Chul and had aimed at what seemed to be the least attractive point of attack, in fact, it wasn't, and went after the most vulnerable area. If the shoulders had been targeted, the trapezius muscles could not have been penetrated, and if the head had been targeted, the blood sword would have been shattered into little pieces. Ah ah ah! The ogre let out a painful scream after the unexpected attack. Continued to affect fatal wound. Kang Chol and quickly thought of delivering a fatal wound to Ogre, using Mana Fire. However, he wasn't able to do so. Unexpectedly, the Ogre executed an agile, reflexive move and attempted to crush Kang Chol in by swinging both of his arms. Abandon. Calmly abandoning the attack, Kang Chol and swiftly moved to beside Lucia and out of the range of Ogre's attack. His conditions? Kang Chol and asked, keeping his eyes on the Ogre. His right arm is broken and even lost his consciousness. Pick out four soldiers and move him. He cannot die. Must keep him alive. Yes, my lord. There, four guards. This way. Take Dorian. Upon hearing Lucia's commands, the four guards that were moving towards the ogre quickly made their way towards them and took Dorian. Meanwhile, suppressing the pain, the ogre glared at Kang Chol and, and rushed to attack him. Let's go, Lucia. It's my honor. Kang Chol and and Lucia rushed towards the approaching ogre. The synergy that was created by the two was enormous. The collaboration between Kang Chol in, the dedicated offense, and Lucia, the master of defense displayed perfect teamwork. Pang. As Lucia's shield blocks the ogre's attack, Puck. Kang Chol and came forward and saw the ogre's vital point. Lucia, to the left. I will bypass my attack to the top. Kang Chol and An Lucia were communicating without speaking, using only their movements and their eyes while defending against the ogre. The coordination and harmony was incredible. Even though they have never coordinated their movements before, Kang Chol and An Lucia worked in perfect unison as if they have been in practice for a long time. It was as if the gods of war were in telepathic communication. In the meantime, the confused adventurers came back to their senses and began to assemble, holding on to the rare items distributed by Kang Chol-en. Lucia, stay back. Yes, my lord. Both, Kang Chol and and Lucia simultaneously sprang. K-R-R-R. Immensely angered, the ogre clenched every one of his muscles as if to explode. Having reached the limit of his rage. His wrath was uncontrollable and this was an indication that the ogre had raised his capacity to battle to the limit. In contrast, Kang Chol and no longer had the intention of continuing the fight with the ogre. Putting the ogre down belonged to the adventurers, not him and Lucia. Pavis, assemble. The thick, authoritarian voice of Kang Chol and led the adventurers. Tuck. Eight adventurers of excellent physiques assembled, raising their Pavis shields. Spear, to the back. An adventurer, holding a black thorn spear, and six troops from Laputa territory stood behind the shield. Sword, next to me. Adventurers, holding blood swords assembled next to Lucia and King Chelen. Poderski, iron shackles. Lastly, Poderski and three adventurers with powerful physiques grabbed onto the iron shackles of bondage. With that, the lineup was completed as King Chol and had planned for the purpose of fighting monsters. Do not be afraid. King Chol and spoke to the nervous adventurers. We will win, focus on my words. By the assurances carried in the voice of King Chol in, the adventurers were reassured. It was the power of charismatic invocation that is only available to those with the sovereign class. Roar. The ogre catapulted his heavy body towards the humans confronting them with a roar. Sword, this way. Pavis, prepare for impact. The line of Pavis shields met the ogre as King Chol and sidestepped. Kwong. The ogre and the Pavis line have collided. Spear, pierce. Twenty-five black thorn spears pierce the ogre's abdomen. Iron shackle, restraint. Spinning the chain splendidly, Poderski tied up the ogre's left leg, using the iron shackle. 
three adventurers followed by coming close and pulling the iron shackle with all their might. Kwong. The ogre fell, losing its balance. It would have sustained its balance had it been an adult ogre. However, not having been fully grown, that much force was sufficient against the ogre. Sword, let's go. Lastly, Kang Chol and led the adventurers, holding blood swords, towards the ogre. Puck. Puck. Crimson blood sprang out. This is it, this is it. This was the fight that Kang Chaolin wanted. That is, training the adventurers with strong individual personalities to coordinate in a military formation to fight against the monsters. After that, there were a couple more useless attacks by the ogre. The result was. Grok, crew oak. Soon, honeycombed by the swords, the ogre gave a death rattle. The attack unit led by Kang Chao In, it was the Slayer's victory. Hash, after the day the Slayers have been victorious, they kept hunting monsters like ogres and minotaurs. Dorian, who was severely injured and fell unconscious, was rushed to Laputa territory for treatment. Kang Chao In was disappointed in missing Dorian's camaraderie, but he continued on with his agenda as he took satisfaction that Dorian was not dead. And one week has passed. As the adventurers have reached level 20, Poderski eavesdropped on the adventurers following Kang Chaolin's order. He was performing his secret duties as the security head. Hugh. This is insane, insane. What is? This crazy hunting is killing everyone. Some adventurers complained. Still you are getting stronger? Tough is still tough. You are speaking like a rich man. How much was earned up to now? Just tallying up trophy items would be enormous? That's true. However. What is the identity of the general, anyway? Other adventurer expressed curiosity over Kang Jolin. Mr. Dorian seems ordinary, but the general does not seem be a human. That's right. For crying out loud, how can that be a human? When the general confronts an ogre with a sword. Just forget it. Thinking about it over and over would not give an answer. We should just sit back and enjoy the spoils. I have no interest in the identity of the general. Just do as you're told then make money and grow stronger, that's all. Some ten or so adventurers were busy murmuring stories around the bonfire. Still, isn't it awesome? We can destroy anything as long as we follow the general's instructions. That, I agree. I'm thinking that we can hunt anything as long as we are with the general. Now our levels have gone up so high that we can even easily capture an ogre, even without the general? On top of that, if the general and Lucia join forces, everything becomes a piece of cake. Certainly. We are strong. I'm not sure, but wouldn't our level be the top class among the adventurers? The conversation of the adventurers was full of praise, trust, and extreme confidence regarding Kang Jolin. Oh ooh. Poderski who was listening in on the adventurer's conversation was elated as he ran over to Kang Chaolin to report. The time has come. Kang Chaolin nodded his head upon hearing the report. That's what he wanted. The respect, trust for the leader, harmony among the adventurers, and most importantly, strong confidence that anything can be overcome. Finally, the preparations to pursue his objective is complete. Although it will be accompanied by sacrifices, after ordering Poderski to assemble the adventurers, Kang Chol and fell into a thought. I'm the Lord, my territory is more important. It was certain that someone will meet their death in the hunt for the peacock dragon. Minimum 10, maybe 20 deaths, in an extreme case, could be possible. In the worst case, Kang Chol and An Lucia may be the only survivors. However, for that purpose, this army of slayers has been organized. They were the mercenaries that will preserve the power of Rapida, and become the future customers of the territory. Although it was callous, to a lord, other than towards his own citizens, being merciful towards non-citizens of his land was not a virtue. Besides, as it was unavoidable for the lord to cast his own people into hell, Kang Chol and has assembled the adventurers to hunt for the peacock dragon without hesitation. We are setting out to hunt a level 40 monster. Kang Chol and spoke. That's a strong monster. As an Asian dragon, it is a monster on a different plane than anything else that we have faced. If it had been just two weeks ago, 
such speech would be considered explosive. However, there was not even a single adventurer that showed fear or stirred any unrest. Death is possible, no, someone right here will certainly die. Maybe 10. Maybe more. Kang Chol and raised the stakes. However, it was the same. No one stirred up unrest. Some adventurers even showed expressions of feeling bored. What is the problem? Billy, an American adventurer, standing 190 centimeters, shouted. He has become a devout new believer and admirer of Kang Chol and since some time ago. We will do it. Being an adventurer, are we not staking our lives for being adventurers, anyway? In a short time, Billy has realized what being an adventurer is all about. That was it. Putting his life as a pawn, moving around the great land of Pangaea was what being an adventurer is all about. I'll do it. With a general, what is there to fear? Besides, more the dangerous it is, the more we have to gain. Isn't that so? That's right. Kang Chol and responded. Then he spoke of the spoils to gain once the peacock dragon would be hunted, in order to mesmerize the adventurers. The meat of the monster that I wish to hunt is a medicine that gives a weakling health and longevity, and drinking its blood will increase mana. The feather of its tail can be used to make an item that can cause strong hallucinations. Its eyeballs are ingredients for making an anti-spell item. It was like throwing a double-edged sword, both carrot and stick. However, the responses of the adventurers were. We will do it. Another adventurer, other than Billy led the chant. With that, every member of Team Slayer came forth, committing to participate in the hunt for the peacock dragon. I will do it, too. General, count me in, too. We can do it. With you general, what is there to fear? You only die once, not twice. Let's turn our fortunes around. We will do it, we will do it. With the exception of three that put family matters for reason, everyone said that they will follow Kang Chol in. The adventurers that have been exposed and mesmerized by Kang Chol in's power and control, fear was nowhere to be seen. Even the confidence that death can be overcome, which Kang Chol in wanted, existed among Team Slayer. All right. Showing a satisfactory smile, Kang Chol in nodded his head. It is my honor to be with you. He was sincere. Kang Chol in used to think highly of those who would jump into fire for one's own ambition. The monster that you will be hunting is called. The Peacock Dragon. Then the slayers led by Kang Chol in left the dark forest and headed towards the Dragonia Mountain in search of the Peacock Dragon. Hash, the Peacock Dragon was an easy monster to track. An Asian Dragon, this monster displayed well integrated features of a dragon and a peacock, hence, it would often drop its tail feathers in and around its habitat, unknowingly exposing its location. There is a basin in the Cypress Forest, about 7 kilometers straight ahead from here. That appears to be the nest area of the peacock dragon. Mr. Paskramers, a veteran hunter in the Laputa territory, who was ordered by Kang Chol and to track the peacock dragon in advance, provided the decisive intel. As a result, Kang Chol and did not have to search the wide area of the Dragonia mountain range. Have you seen it yourself? I have not seen it. I might come close to my death. Mr. Paskramers did not finish his sentence. He appeared to be in fear of certain imminent chastisement from Kang Chol N. Well done. Dot. Dot. It took a lot of guts for sure. I shall reward you soon. Return to the territory and wait. My, my lord. Hurry. I'm overwhelmed, your highness. After being promised a reward, Mr. Paskramer bowed to Kang Chol in many times before returning to the territory. We shall meet within the day. It has been ten hours since he has been lying in ambush with the adventurers. Kang Chol and felt the imminent face off against the peacock dragon. Such feeling has never proven untrue. Kang Chol and had that what has often been called sixth sense. And that feeling soon materialized. Flock. A great sound of wings was heard. The Overlord of Blood and Iron. Chapter 37. Hunting of the Peacock Dragon. S.R.R.R.R.R. A green monster softly landed from the sky. Measuring about 11 meters from head to toe, this was a unique monster species, 
displaying features of a dragon and a peacock. It was beautiful. As all peacocks are, the peacock dragon's figure was elaborate and had unmatched beauty. It was appropriate that it ranked at the top among the dragon species with respect to aesthetics. Male Kang Chul and has determined the gender of the peacock dragon after observing a half moon shaped feather around its waist. In fact, the feather is also on the peacock's waist. The females of the peacock dragons did not have the half moon shaped feather that symbolized peacock dragons. A female would have been easier. Kang Chul and smacked his lips. The fighting power between the male and female was like night and day. If the fighting power of the male was more or less like four, five fully grown ogres, that of the female was far short of that. No, perhaps, it is better. However, as the heart of a male dragon is more precious, King Chol and switched the disappointment with a thought of anticipatory rewards. Poderski, you, you are first. King Chol and sent a hand signal to Poderski. Just leave it to me, my lord. Poderski nodded his head. The best. First step in battling a peacock dragon, or any other winged monsters, was to take away its mobility. It required breaking its wings or shackling up its ankles. That was the reason for engaging Poderski, the master of shackles. Wait, wait. Kang Chol and waited for the most opportune time without taking his eyes off of the peacock dragon. Hunting demands patience. It has been about 30 minutes. The peacock dragon finally came to a rest in the middle of the basin after moving around the area for a while. Then twisting its body, it buried its beak into the left wing. Sleeping, this is the chance. It was the best opportunity for Kang Chol and, and the adventurers as the peacock dragon prepared to sleep. I, will lure its attention from the front. Kang Chol and sent a hand signal. In that time, tie it up, failure, will not be, tolerated. Boderski's eyes looked suddenly piercing as it was the first strict order that he had received since he had come to Laputa territory. As failure will not be tolerated men strict accountability will follow, for Poderski, he had to ensure that his duty was carried out with all his might. Lucia, let's, synchronize. Anytime, I'm always waiting, my lord. After giving strict commands to Poderski, Kang Chol in turn to Lucia and requested the same performance that he had shown during the battle with the ogre. On three, we shall attack. After the final hand signal to the adventurers, Kang Chol in tightened up his entire body muscles. Inhaling, exhaling. Inhaling, exhaling. Kang Chol in observed the sleeping peacock dragon's body as he waited for the right timing. This was utilization of the feature that Dorian had discovered in the past where the time that it took a peacock dragon from inhaling to exhaling takes a long time and that it becomes quite sensitive while inhaling. However, during exhaling, the peacock dragon becomes completely defenseless, and this could afford about 10 seconds. If the attack was made right at that moment, it was possible to gain the advantage when engaging in a battle. Inhaling, exhaling. Inhaling, exhaling. Inhaling. Now. Finally. Kang Chol and stood up after finding the right time to attack. After him, Lucia, the adventurers with blood swords followed. Yeah. The front line of the slayers led by Kang Chol and began rushing towards the peacock dragon. Lucia, hold. Kang Chol and stretched his hand toward Lucia. Tuck. As soon as their hands met, Lucia turned her body, using her right leg as the axis, and threw Kang Chol in with all her might. It was an incredible power similar to a war catapult. Tat. Springing forward in an instant, Kang Chulin reached next to the sleeping peacock dragon in a blink of an eye. Flash. Having transitioned from exhaling to inhaling, the peacock dragon felt someone and opened wide its unique emerald eyes and leered at Kang Chulin. Then, spreading its wings, it prepared to punish the human that dared to attack it. However, as Kang Chol and had come as close to the tip of its nose, there was no way that it can dodge his blow. PRRRR. Kang Chol and's blood sword dipped in mana fire, flared up as struck the peacock dragon. Kai Chung. The beak of the peacock dragon and the blood sword met, causing a clashing sound as if metal and metal have collided. Knocking its head back, the peacock dragon stumbled. 
It illustrated the destructive power that Kang Chol In's attack carried. The chance was then. Kang Chol In's strike partially stunned the peacock dragon's brain and prevented it from taking flight, even buying time for the adventurers to approach. Let's go. Die. The leading adventurers attacked like a colony of bees as they swung the blood swords at the peacock dragon. Snap, snap. The adventurers with Pavi's shields and the adventurers with Blackthorn spears assembled, following right behind. Boderski, hurry! Kang Chol and did not look towards the adventurers. He kept his eyes on only Boderski, who was holding the iron shackles, Billy the adventurer, and the two other adventurers. The most important issue was to succeed in tying up the peacock dragon to the ground. Thud Aduk. Aiming the left leg of the peacock dragon, Poderski has launched the iron chain. Click, click, snap. The iron chain has successfully wrapped around the left leg of the peacock dragon. Done. Upon seeing what Poderski has done, Kang Chol and believed that bringing him was a godsend move. As a master of the shackles, he was certainly a useful talent. Everyone, attack. Kang Chol and suddenly shouted and led the adventurers. Having been ambushed suddenly and left leg tied up tightly, the peacock dragon did not even have a chance to fly, but was getting indiscriminately pummeled by more than forty or so humans. All the while, Poderski tied up the iron shackles around a number of cypress trees in order to strengthen the hold. However, even with the successful ambushing and shackling, the peacock dragon was not an easy opponent. Ka -u -u -u. The dragon blood wasn't flowing inside the peacock dragon for nothing as its large body mass alone was sufficient to overcome the team slayer's attack. On top of that, as if the shackled left leg was maddening, it crazily shook its body. As a result of that shaking, the first casualty occurred. Puck. An adventurer snapped his neck after receiving a direct headshot by the wildly wielded tail, feathers are on its back, then fell and rolled to the ground. Anyone could tell that it was an instant death by the broken neck. Dot. With the first casualty, some adventurers showed shock in their eyes. They could not have imagined that someone would meet instant death, right in front of them. That was the discrepancy between having confidence and realty. Focus. Helping them overcome that discrepancy was King Chalin's rule. All will die if you retreat. Killing it is the only way to live. It only takes a matter of seconds for a team to disintegrate before a colleague's death. Well aware of this, Kang Chol and saw a need to severely push the adventurers, so that they do not break. Nonetheless, there was nothing that Kang Chol and could do as the number of casualties rose one by one. As his level was also low at the moment, it was impossible for him to save every adventurer. With a Sheik sound, one adventurer, with a blood sword, fell as he was sliced in half from the top of his head. Another adventurer was killed by getting his upper body pierced with the peacock dragon's beak. The movements of crazed peacock dragon produced immense power. Just to hear, losing more will mean no future. When the number of casualties rose to seven, Kang Chol and felt a crisis. If the casualty count kept Troy's like this, there was a very high chance that the adventurers would collapse. Something had to be done before reaching that point. Lucia, let's go. Yes, my lord. Ultimately, leaving the large formation that he had formed with the adventurers, Kang Chol and joined Lucia, rushing towards the peacock dragon for a full frontal assault. It was a highly risky maneuver, but someone had to carry the torch. As it is also a life form, the peacock dragon will eventually become exhausted, Hence the real key to victory is who lands the fatal blow. The duo of Kang Chol and An Lucia face the peacock dragon. As a result, the peacock dragon's attention was focused on the two, providing the adventurers with some breathing room. As defending against the peacock dragon's attacks fell almost entirely on Kang Chol and An Lucia, they felt like it would be the death of them. Kang Chol and was nearly burnt out, but he did his best to sustain himself. As long as he was able to sustain himself, the adventurer's attacks would become more active. Damn it! While he was holding himself up, his inside was filling up with the inferno of wrath. He felt suffocated. Since he was engaged in a battle with an opponent that in his usual self, would have been cut into two pieces with effortless wielding of his great sword, Frag Rock, 
he realized how powerless he was at the moment. Be patient. Impetuousness is poison. I will strong after this hunt. What I need right now is patience, not wrath. He grew angry, but did not lose control. He focused on battling the peacock dragon, suppressing the sense of suffocation. He knew that by overcoming the current situation, he will obtain a dragon heart that will become the platform for recapturing his old power. That patience has finally opened a door. The peacock dragon, having shed so much blood after being stabbed countless times with the black thorn spears, has become very weak and the tail that was being swung wildly became useless by the Pavi's shields. Along with that, with the advanced coordinated attacks by the adventurers, King Chol and An Lucia have caused the hard exterior leathery scales to begin to show cracks as it became brittle. Abdomen, lower abdomen. King Chol and shouted. He couldn't lose this great chance. Let's go. Stab. Die, you bastard. Filled with rage, the adventurers wildly stabbed the lower abdomen of the peacock dragon as they shouted. Designed just for the purpose of stabbing, the sharpness of the twenty-four black thorn spears was beyond imagination. Shook, 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 shook. Blood began to pour out of the lower abdomen of the peacock dragon. Some areas showed scarlet skin through torn leathery scale. It was then. Feeling threatened for its life, the peacock dragon roared and took out its secret weapon. Well. The feathers on the back of the peacock dragon opened wide and formed into a fan shape. The peacock dragon has initiated psychedelic silk, known as its lethal weapon. The peacock dragon's fan-shaped feather, the psychedelic silk, was a technique that causes one to suffer intense hallucination upon looking at them. Once falling into it, one enters near unconscious state for about five minutes during which time the peacock dragon could devour them as they fell victim to the technique's crowd control mechanism. S-R-R-R. 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 The peacock dragon's feather swayed as if to be dancing as it cast its psychedelic spell. Without a counter, everyone was in danger of falling into the hallucination spell. K-R-R-R-R-R. The peacock dragon tilted its head. Something was strange. None of the adventurers that were in the peacock dragon spell showed any swaying at all. It was so even after using the psychedelic silk used to cause complacency. It must have looked impossible for the peacock dragon. Q. King Chol and let out a long exhale as he raised mana level. He gave a fishy smile. It was as if he was saying, I knew it all along, it is a futile effort. Having drunk a focus potion in advance, he and the adventurers were free from the effects of the psychedelic silk. The up. Raising the blood sword, King Cholin became one with the flash of silver as he stormed towards the peacock dragon. Shook. The blood sword penetrated the peacock dragon in between the crack of its leathery skin. The target was lower abdomen, a single penetration, moving from bottom to top. Krrrr. The peacock dragon tried to shake, letting out a cry filled with pain. That's the end. However, King Chol and had no interest in leaving the peacock dragon alone. Seek, seek. The blood sword produced sparks. Mana fire, King Chol and devised a way to neutralize his opponent even with a low sorcery power as he gathered up all his mana. It was explosion, great explosion that he visualized. Intraburst. King Chol and Smana transformed into an explosive and it flowed down the blood sword into the peacock dragon's body. The target was the head of the peacock dragon. It took less than one second for King Chol and Smana to travel from the lower abdomen, through the neck, into the brain. Kwong. With a sound of explosion, well. Dot the skull and its contents of the peacock dragon broke into million pieces and fell to the ground. Level has been raised. Level 26 reached. Level has been raised. Level 27 reached. Two levels have been raised instantly, and, secret quest, ambush of the peacock dragon cleared. Award for completing the quest, experience plus 1200 slash gold plus 300 slash buff, dragon species prohibited slash one who bends air title attained. Buff, with the effect of initiating dragon species prohibition. The monarch's region will be free of any presence of dragon species for six months. Level has been raised. Level 28 reached. 
Additional one level has been raised. That's how the Peacock Dragon Hunt has ended. However, as it appeared to have reached the finale, an uninvited guest appeared and threw cold water on the Team Slayers, who were about to pop firecrackers in order to celebrate. Lord, my lord. Lucia ran towards King Cholin like a madwoman. The Overlord of Blood and Iron. Chapter 38 Awakening, King Cholin. War Machine, Lucia. Dot. King Cholin was surprised at the inexplicable behavior of Lucia, but immediately tried to find the cause. First, he followed Lucia's gaze. Lucia, who ran across, was staring at the sky far behind him, not at him. Behind. Unless the eyes were on the back of the head, it was impossible to spot an enemy from the rear. King Chol and turned his head and looked at Lucia's eyes. Dot. At the moment King Chol and's eyes filled with embarrassment. Something was diving at him, at a tremendous speed. The speed was great, and would only take a few seconds to hit him. Female. King Chol and felt his stomach tighten as he realized the identity of the diving thing. Damn it, it's a female. The peacock dragon he knows breeds and spawns every spring. It was unusual that peacock dragons, moreover a pair of male and female, were here at the Cypress Forest Basin in this season like now. But, sorry. Now he had to find a way to live somehow rather than complaining. Right now, King Cholin was in a state that he has no power left for even lifting his finger, as he had fought for a long time and used them on a fire interburst. Completely exhausted, he still needed time to move his body. Move. King Chol and concentrated his whole mind and tried to move his legs. Move, move. In fact, he was completely spent and couldn't move his body due to exhaustion, but he had to move his body if did not want to die. Despite the superhuman mentality, he was not able to move. However, King Chol and still tried to avoid the diving female peacock dragon even at the painfully slow speed which was all he was able to manage. It would have been nice if all the stamina and mana recharged because the level had risen, but that was only in a game. Rather, thrust. In the end, King Chol and decided to give up and accept his fate. He was King Chol in the Kingslayer, the Grand Sovereign. If he cannot avoid it, even if he die, it suited his temper to die in one strike. He did not want to be beaten to death. Eyes. King Cholin was aiming at the right eye of the female peacock dragon only a short distance away. Now it was only the eye he could damage now. Come. It was when King Cholin squeezed out his strength and stretched out his vampiric sword. Eye. Lucia appeared like a lightning, covering his front side. This Lucia. Chuck. The Aegis shield covered King Cholin. I protect the Lord. At the same time, the diving female peacock dragon and Lucia's Aegis shield collided. Clank. King Cholin and Lucia flew for several tens of meters and were thrown against the cypress forest surrounding the basin, with a roar and a tearful sound. Cough. Blood gushed out of King Cholin's mouth. It was his first injury after the resurrection. Sigh. That. Almost killed me. While muttered dryly, King Cholin looked at his abdomen. At the moment of the collision, the peacock dragon's beak was scratched and his left side was pierced, and blood was pouring out. Lo, Lord. Are you all right? Lucia, who fell into King Cholin's arms, lifted her head. And she was surprised to see the wound in King Cholin's abdomen. Dot. Lucia's expression hardened. My. My lord. Dot, how dare. Dot, an inferior beast. Dot, to the master of my soul. Lucia who spoke to herself with rage-filled voice, suddenly got up. Lord. This Lucia dot will protect you, my lord dot please. For a while. Please close your eyes for a moment dot close your eyes. With those words, Lucia left King Chol and sighed and started walking towards the peacock dragon. King Chol and couldn't see it, but suddenly Lucia's eyes were out of focus. Her facial expression was terrifying and it was frozen on her face as if she was a doll. Soon after dot the deep black darkness started to spread in Lucia's eyes. War. Machine. Mode. Ready. Mechanical voice flowed out of Lucia's mouth. Target. Confirmed. Aim. Extermination. War machine mode. Operate. When the word operate came out, 
intense energy was emitted from Lucia's body. At first glance, it seemed to be several times stronger than the original Lucia. War Machine Mode Time Remaining 459. 458. 457. Lucia ran. With Zenith, the Sword of Heaven, on her left hand and Aegis, the Shield of God on her right, Lucia's appearance was dignified and frightening as she was indeed a warrior born for battle. Die. With a flat, emotionless and an eerie voice, Lucia began to attack the peacock dragon. Die. Lucia repeated that word only and fought the peacock dragon like a machine. How powerful were her attacks and defense that she was able to fight equally with the female peacock dragon that is 9 meters long. Lord. General. While Lucia blocked the peacock dragon, Podersky and Billy urgently ran to King Jelen. I, I will escort you. Podersky was trying to support King Jelen with great astonishment. But, surprisingly, the reaction of Kang Jelen. Leave it. His voice was so cold. Dot. Don't think to bring me anywhere. Boo. But. Is there a thread and a needle? Were you. Going to stitch up your wounds here? Just tell me. Whether you have it or not. I have. I can do a simple surgical procedure. Do it. Dot. I won't say it twice. Boderski opened his backpack due to Kang Jelen's tough attitude and pulled out thread, needle, bandage, and two bottles of potion. I do not have an anesthetic. It would be very painful so. Right now. Kang Jolin had already turned away his eyes. I comma dot am I being protected by making my subordinates stand in front of me? It was natural that a sovereign was protected by his subordinates, but Kang Jolin was the world's strongest, and it was humiliating to be helpless. Quickly. There's no time. Yes, yes. At the command of Kang Chao In, Podersky hurriedly began executing first aid on his wounds. You g Kang Chao In swallowed the pain inside. He refused to cry out from the pain. He endured the pain with iron will and thought only to get up once again. Five minutes. The war machine mode limit. Lucia's war machine mode, that he saw, was obviously powerful but it was impossible to beat Peacock Dragon by herself as long as there was a five minutes limit. The adventurers are exhausted. If Lucia lost, it's complete destruction. Kang Chol and sought to find a way to overcome the situation calmly while Podersky stitched his torn side. Kang Chol and was the only person Kang Chol and could believe now. Lord, I have finished the first aid treatment. Podersky said it while tying a knot to cover the sutures with a bandage. Boderski. Yes, Lord. Go and cut the peacock dragon's heart out. Dot. Hurry. Yes. Boderski ran out of hurry. Jen, General. Just run away. Said by the big man, Billy with tearful face that didn't match to his image. Do you say run? Yes. Look at that. Billy's gaze turned turned to the direction that Kang Chol and has pointed to. Dot. The adventurers. The adventurers were moving to support Lucia, while dragging their weary bodies from the battle before. Do you think it makes sense to ask me to flee this situation? It, it was right but. Do not worry. Dot, I will stand up, and. I will kill that damn bird. Kang Chol and declared. Kang Chol and will keep his word, to make reality follow his will, even if the sky fell down. Lord. Here is the peacock dragon's heart. Boderski brought the heart of the dead male peacock dragon. Good work. Kang Chol and nodded slightly and accepted dragons here from Poderski. The dragon's heart was small. The size was similar to human's heart. It doesn't make sense when you recall that the peacock dragon's body reached 12 meters. However, dragon's heart is originally like that, the higher the dragon's level, the smaller the heart, refining and purifying like a diamond. The peacock dragon's heart was small and nothing was wrong. Kang Chalin immediately brought dragon's heart to his mouth. Gulp. There was a creepy sound as the flesh crunched. Dot. Dot. Boderski and Billy were shocked. The appearance of Kang Chalin, chewing the dragon's heart with his mouth dripping blood, was diabolical. It looked like the great king of hell eating the enemy's heart. Eat, and after eating it will strengthen you. Although it was Dragon Heart, it is not an ordinary thing to chew a lump of flesh with the blood still dripping.
but Kang Chol and has to endure the horrifying texture for him to recover his strength. When he almost finished consuming the dragon's heart, the reaction started. Dot. Level has been raised. Level 29 reached. Level has been raised. Level 30 reached. Kang Chuan felt that his depleted mana had risen at the same time as the level. His physical strength has also recovered to some extent. Even if the peacock dragon was the weakest among the dragons, at least the dragon's heart was still useful. The potion. At Kang Chulin's words, Poderski immediately pulled out the potion and opened the lid. Kang Chulin, who received it, gulping down the 250 milliliters potion to the dregs. Phew. Kang Chao In, who drank the potion, took out a long breath and threw the potion glass bottle away. Lord, my lord. If you get up already. Move aside. Boderski tried to persevere, but Kang Chao In was stubborn. It was not good that Kang Chao In was still bleeding, staining the wrapped bandages. If you block, I'll cut you down. Kang Chao In, who uttered an obviously empty threat used the vampiric sword as a staff as he raised his body. S-S-S-H-H. From Kang Chol and's body, white steam started to emerge. It grew like a haze, and the dense mana flowed from Kang Chol and's inside. How dare you drive me into a corner? Seen in Kang Chol and's eyes, the man who came back to life with the power of dragon, was a heavy light that wasn't there before. I will kill you. According to common sense. Kang Chol In's words were ridiculous. However, it was true that his body was in very bad condition, although he stood up by the power of Dragon Heart. If it was put into numbers, would it be about 40% of his best condition? It was obvious that he was weak. But, as soon as he reached level 30, Kang Chol In had a trump card that could destroy the Peacock Dragon. Now was the time to show it. Hash, Lucia who had turned on the war machine mode, proved her worth by holding her own against the peacock dragon. Although it's a female, but the fact that only in five minutes, she drove the monster that even Kang Cholin could not stand against alone, was enough to acknowledge Lucia's power and prowess. But, by the time it reached five minutes, the limit of war machine mode, Lucia was in crisis. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. The countdown ended. War Machine Mode, Shut Down. Cool Down Time, 168 Hours, Lucia's Declaration of War is Over. Dot. And the Peacock Dragon's Counterattack has begun. Ems. Lucia. It is dangerous. Avoid it. The adventurers who fought together with Lucia shouted all at once, but Lucia, who suffered the aftermath of the ended War Machine Mode, was unable to move even a single step. The giant hind legs of the peacock dragon fell on Lucia. It would have been natural for Lucia to be crushed to death if she was trampled by the sharp claws. Ow, Lord. Lucia felt only praise for Kang Chol and even though death had come in front of her. By now, you have escaped to a safe place, and because I have done my job, there is no lingering feeling even if I die now. Mr. Timothy, please take good care of my Lord. Lord, even without me. I hope you accomplish your goal. Lucia closed her eyes. She was the one who waited for Kang Chol and for an eternity from the other dimension. It was a glorious end for her to be able to die for Kang Chol N. Of course, Kang Chol N would not let it end like this. Good work. Kang Chol N, who appeared like a ghost, embraced Lucia. Then jumped. The peacock dragon's foot smashed the ground in vain. L, Lord. Embraced in Kang Chalin's arms, Lucia was surprised. Kang Chalin's condition was severe. It did not make sense for him to be able to move so quickly. That was enough. But. I have the power to kill that thing. Dot. So, stand down. Dot. Heavy. So, sorry. Lucia was surprised and wriggled out from Kang Chalin's arms. Her face turned red. Ten seconds. Kang Chalin said. I will see the end of it. And he rushed to the peacock dragon. Fut. Kang Chol and moved so fast there was the sound made by a sonic boom. At that time, everyone on the scene was able to see and hear how poorly the peacock dragon fared against Kang Chol and's devastating strikes. The Overlord of Blood and Iron. Chapter 39. Overdrive, 
Activate. Overdrive, which can be used from level 30, was a skill of the buff concept that increased the total ability of the user by 40%. Kang Cholin acquired this ability by discovering and exploring an ancient ruin, from the excavation, and since then he has swept into the battlefield as a sovereign, a powerful force. In other words, Overdrive was the base and source of Kang Cholin's armed might. Kang Cholin, who activated the Overdrive, has nothing to fear. Peacock Dragon? At that moment, it's just a sandbag. Kathud. Kang Cholin's fist struck the abdomen of the peacock dragon. Ugh! Surprisingly, the giant body of the peacock dragon was wobbling. Hit and kill. Kang Cholin did not draw a sword. Only two fists, the peacock dragon was crushed with bare hands. Bok, bok. Every time a simple punch hit the body of the peacock dragon, the peacock dragon rolled over in the basin with strange sounds. It was a scene that was unbelievably unrealistic and amazing. 7 seconds. Kang Chol and remembered the overdrive's time limit and rushed his attacks. Overdrive was a crazy skill that consumed significant quantities of mana per second. Even after eating a dragon heart, it was hard to sustain it longer than 10 seconds. He had to finish it during that time. Kayak. The peacock dragon spread her wings open widely with a strange sound. It was obvious that Kang Cholin's attack was so brutal that she tried to fly away to the air. Where are you going? Kang Cholin had no intention of releasing the peacock dragon. Kang Cholin jumped up on the right wing of the peacock dragon like a lightning bolt. And he caught the corresponding part of the peacock dragon's shoulder joint. Keek. The red blood burst out while the right wing of the peacock dragon was ripped off. Kang Cholin's marvelous strength was power that could make your jaw drop. There was no other way to explain it. Kang Cholin immediately got off the peacock dragon's back and landed in a good posture, then jumped back towards the crazy peacock dragon. All of them happened in only less than two seconds. Done. Kang Cholin knew that there was not much time given. Soon the mana was about to run out. Now, he had to end it. Walk. The two fists of Kang Cholin knocked out the peacock dragon. Wabok. The speed of his fists was the speed of light. Kang Cholin's fists were so fast that no one knows how many punches per second he made. They also contained powerful destructive power. Kaiyu. The peacock dragon was unilaterally devastated by the punches of Kang Cholin, which was not suitable for her big body. Even peacock dragon was nothing but a mere sandbag in front of Kang Cholin with overdrive. Ugh. For the first time, Groaning sound came out of Kang Cholin's mouth. Blarg. The bandage that Poderski bundle tightly pulled off and the red blood poured out. The dynamic movement made the stitched wound tear. Kang Cholin did not let it bother him. He did not stop even though the blood flowing from his side. He had the toughness to crush his enemy while ignoring his wound. I'm going. By the time the duration of overdrive was almost over, Kang Cholin stretched out his fist once for all. Bam! The peacock dragon's body leaned to the side and fell with a heavy sound. Pat! Kang Cholin leapt off the ground. Cluck! The peacock dragon found Kang Cholin on her back. So she shook her head to throw him off. But Kang Cholin's attack ended that. Kajik! Kang Cholin's fist pierced through the skull of the peacock dragon. The spark then sprang up and Kang Cholin's remaining mana flowed into the brain of the peacock dragon. Interburst, the technique that ended the male peacock dragon was again activated. Pong. The results were the same as before. Kothud. The peacock dragon, which the head was blown apart, became a dead body and laid her enormous body in the basin. Hu-u. Hu-u. Kang Chal in who walked on the ground, gasped his rough breath. Swollen muscles, bloody eyes, shaking shoulders, and blood dripping from both hands. Kang Cholin now was like a beast, an angry beast. Lord. Lucia ran towards Kang Cholin. I, I was worried. Sob. My lord. Sob. Sob. Lucia, who ran to Kang Cholin's embrace, sobbing and wailing. In just ten seconds, she felt her heart choked and stomped tinlessly. Stop. Get off me. On the other hand, Kang Cholin was burdened and felt like he was dying because of Lucia, 
who suddenly come to his embrace. Lucia's weight was unbearable for him who had been completely exhausted. He could have collapsed. I'm okay. Kang Chol and pushed Lucia slightly and stood firmly on his legs. Jen. General. You won. Such a monster. How could you to that huge monster? When? We won. Wah-ah. General. Wah-ah. The adventurers jumped in towards Kang Chol in. Damn. For Kang Chol in, the flocking adventurers who gathered like dogs were more pressuring than the dead peacock dragon, but he could not run away. Now it was really the time for him to rest. So, the hunting of the peacock dragon came to an end. Hash, Kang Chol in did not return quickly. Kang Chol in knew that if you started anything, you should finish it well. The return of Kang Chol in and the adventurers was very relaxed and calm. First, they had to move the peacock dragon's body. Kang Chol in sent Boderski to Laputa to call up eight large wagons and loaded the dead bodies of the peacock dragons. Unfortunately, except for the dragon heart, the dead body of the female peacock dragon had little value, so it was divided into two pieces to be loaded to two large wagon. By the way, when the female's belly had been sliced open, there were three big eggs that surprised everyone. Kang Chol in ordered the adventurers to take care of the eggs well. Peacock dragon's eggs had a lot of uses. Compared to the females, the male peacock dragon's body was treated better. The expensive and colorful feather that reached 12 meters, was the symbol of the peacock dragon hunting by Kang Chol in. Even if only to show off the dignity of the sovereign to the people, the body of the male peacock dragon had to be fully preserved. Because of that, Poderski had to sew together all the pieces of the peacock dragon's head that was blown apart. Where are we going? Billy asked Poderski, who was carrying the body of the male peacock dragon. I go to my homeland. Go back to your hometown after a rest for a few days. To your homeland? Is there any place for a person to live? You'll know if you go. For the sovereign class, their existence is unknown to the public and there was no way for them to know about it. It was the same for the other adventurers, but Kang Chol in and other people of Laputa just responded the same, you will know when you go. Because Kang Chol in's instructions said that rather than explain it in detail it would be better if they see, hear, and feel it by themselves. Lucia. While taking care of the peacock dragon's body, Kang Chol in called Lucia secretly. Wash it off. Dot. Lucia's face grew hot. I lord. Uh. How? Dot. I I still. Because she seemed to have misunderstood something, Kang Chol in explained what he wanted exactly with his eyes closed. Just literally like what I said, let's wash it. Dot. I can't return with this beggar look. Ah. It was Kang Chol in, whose name became the triumphant sovereign. Considering the crowds, there was a need to return in a clean appearance. My body still doesn't work well. So, I need help. If you feel uncomfortable, I will ask Poderski or Billy. Oh, no no. I will do it. Then, please. Yes. My lord, Kang Chol and and Lucia found a stream nearby. I just need you to wash my upper body only, so don't worry. Kang Chol in, who said that, took off the coat he was wearing. Ha. Huh. Lucia, who saw it, can only moan inside. She clamped her mouth shut. Kang Chol In's body was beautiful. Also, it was like a sculpture. The white broad shoulders, the rock hard ABS, the muscles which are not too small nor big, just the right size, and moreover the inverted triangle make his body perfectly balanced. Kang Chol In's body has the charm that make any woman can only see it in a Lucia. Dot. Lucia. Dot yes? Lord? Did you call me? What are you thinking so deeply like that? Ah, no, sir. Please help me start from the wound site. Yes, Lord. Lucia hid her shamed and embarrassed feeling and quickly moved her hands to touch Kang Chalin's wound. She removed the bandages that was soaked with blood, poured the potion, added the regenerative power to the wound, cleaned it with cloth, and covered it with a new bandage. A series of processes just as good as any doctor or nurse. Lord, the blood still. Cover it with more bandage. All right. Finally, 
after she bandaged it several times then the blood barely stopped. Don't you feel hurt? How can you not let out even a moan? This kind of wound. Was nothing at all. Amazing, it's not amazing. Next please wash my hair and face. Yes, Lord. Kang Chulin was able to finish cleaning himself with Lucia's help. In black. Kang Chulin shook his head when Lucia was trying to hand over the white clothes. Pardon? Since you have been victorious, of course that is the pure white clothes. Are you going to let the people see the blood? Ah. No one should be aware of my injuries. How come you think so far? The sovereign that reveals his weakness, is not more than a third rate. Even if I die tomorrow, I have to look good today, that is the weight in life that a sovereign has to bear. Dot. In his remarks, Lucia once again realized that Kang Chulin was extraordinary. Indeed, my lord is really a sovereign to the bone. Kang Chulin's words were the word that usually could be said by a king. It was an opportunity to make Lucia fully trust, though she already believed it, Kang Chulin's words, he who was the overlord in the past. Hash, Kang Chulin said that he would take care of the bodies of the dead adventurers neatly and give them a brief funeral at Laputa. He also promised to give some compensations to the bereaved families when he returned to Earth. The adventurers were impressed and satisfied with Kang Chulin's meticulous care. No one complained. It was purely their choice to join the peacock dragon hunting and not because there was a push or threat by Kang Chulin. Let's go. Kang Chulin, who had been cleaned, turned to Laputa. Depart. Boderski shouted. The procession began to continue. Kang Chulin led the way, Lucia stood in a position slightly behind him. After that, two tiers of the adventurers followed up. Kang Chulin led the wagon carrying the bodies of the peacock dragons which were brought by ten soldiers and four bulls, in addition, he was escorted by twenty soldiers lined up on both sides. Lord, are you all right? I'm fine. Don't mind me. Lucia was worried about Kang Chulin, but Kang Chulin maintained his dignity like a frozen statue without as much as an eyebrow twitching. It was impossible to find traces of injury from that look. The travel time was not long. It takes about two hours to walk from Cyprus Forest to the destination, and the party was able to arrive at the entrance gate of Laputa soon. What? Where are you going? Is there any place could be the general's place? The adventurers shook their heads. Lucia, go and get my soul core, yes. Lucia flew away and disappeared somewhere at Kang Jolin's command. Dot. Dot. The adventurers were surprised. Since Lucia suddenly disappeared in front of them, they were like that. Lucia came back in less than ten minutes and handing a luxurious sword to Kang Chulin. It was the main controller of Laputa, the Soul Corps. Kang Chulin, the owner of the Soul Corps, slightly looked around the adventurers. The adventurers were bewildering because they do not know how things are going now. They seemed shocked. While thinking like that, Kang Chulin released the hide function of the land using Soul Core. Dash, total maintenance time, 467 hours. Total maintenance cost, 233. 5 gold, 0. 5 gold per hour, do you want to deactivate the hide function? Yes, no? Yes, dash, as soon as he press yes, 233. 5 gold in the inventory disappeared in a moment and the land's hidden function was immediately deactivated. Fagic, Fagic. The shroud that surrounded the land began to unravel, and the appearance of Laputa from the top of the Sky Fortress gradually began to show up. Woo! What, what is that? The pupils of the adventurers, who looked at all of that, widened. And, from the inside of the land, a thunderous applause and cheers burst out. It was fun. The Overlord of Blood and Iron. Chapter 40. Triumphant Sovereign Kang Chulin. Wa wa. Kang Chulin, Your Majesty, Hooray. Hooray. Your Majesty has defeated the evil monsters. Hooray. 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 The people of Laputa cheered enthusiastically like crazy. Kang Chulin shone as a hero in the people's eyes. Slash P, how troubled you are because of the assault of the wicked peacock dragon. The fear that it might hurt them or their family, was beyond imagination. 
the peacock dragon, source of their fear, the two of them was dragged in by the men of the sovereign. Even with the head shattered. No wonder that King Chalin looked like a hero. Besides, look at the stunning imposing appearance. Although peacock dragon is a subspecies of dragons, but it is definitely a dragon. Even though he hunted down such monsters, moreover two of them, King Chalin was expressionless and wearied. He even showed they were not a big deal. Could you not respect such a sovereign? Could you not love him? No matter what is King Chalin's nature, in the eyes of his people now, he became a foremost king that will not appear again in history for the second time. On the other hand, the adventurers were still astonished. Actually, what is the true identity of General? Who are these people? Oh my gosh! There was such a castle in Pangaea continent. Majesty! Do you mean the general is a real king? Everything was doubtful. Laputa Fortress, the people of this land, King Jelen's real identity, etc. Lots of things were confusing the adventurers. Moreover, because there was no one who can explain it, it was natural that the frustration would grow like a snowball over time. Wow! Although I don't know, but I can see that General was really great. Is he coming from a royal family? I think even the Queen of England was not as popular as him. I think so. Where is it? Ah! Wouldn't Mr. Kim from the North enjoy it too? This idiot! He's a dictator. Do you call that as popular? Oops! Look at those people! Look at their expressions! Everyone is just looking at the general! I don't know whether the general is the king of these people! Damn it! As long as that man is an earthling! Ah! What, what is that? The curiosity and the conversations of the adventurers was just up to there. Kayak. The brave warriors, thank you. Thank you very much. Come here let's dance together with me, the ladies of Laputa clung onto the adventurers. The adventurers were also heroes for the Laputa's people. It was reasonable for the ladies to cling on the proud and amazing adventurers. Slash P, it's cool. Ha ha. It was nothing. Thank you, thank you very much. No, I just did what I had to do. Warm scenes could be seen here and there. Young man how can you be so strong? Look at these arms. That, that is. Huh. Where are you going, young man? Young man. Dangerous scenes were also produced. The condition was good. By eliminating the evil monsters. The sovereign proved his ability while the adventurers were given a very warm welcome. There is no one who is not happy, everyone was satisfied. The crisis has passed. King Chul and watched these scenes silently from the top of the white horse that he usually ride on. Although actually he also was in a good mood, but he did not show it. Being a sovereign was generally a heavy duty. Your Majesty. Your Majesty, please give us a chance to celebrate your victory. When Kang Chol and quietly watched the festive atmosphere, a group of ladies stepped forward into the procession. They were the young ladies of Laputa. <laughs> Kang Chol and was embarrassed for a moment. Why are there so many? It seemed that all ladies from teens and twenties have come to him. The ladies who have come to Kang Chol and were much more outstanding than the ladies who have come to the adventurers. Your Majesty. This is the watch that my late grandfather wore. This is a 77-year-old mandrake clicker. For the Lord, I devote this body and heart. This is a ring that descended from my ancestors for generations. Various ladies gave offering to Kang Jelen. There are diverse group. The ladies with pure heart, the ladies full of lust, the ladies trying to get a chance to succeed, and so on. There were quite varied in goals and desires. Slash P, Tribute. Kang Jelen opened his mouth. I will accept your heart only. But. Those who watched him saying this unexpected remark were surprised. Did he refuse the offering? Refusing the offerings which offered voluntarily and not by force was a pretty exceptional event. Moreover, ignoring the sincerity of the ladies who offered the tribute was a problem. It is not the time to take them now. However, Kang Chol and had a thought and made a wise judgment. It didn't matter with the offerings. It was Sovereign's right to receive offerings from the subordinates. But, the things that weighed his mind the most was the place and the ladies as the subject who gave the offerings. 
There is no position that needs someone to be careful and aware of others' gaze, as much as sovereign. Those in high status are all like that, but especially sovereign is the highest position, he had to do it more. Slash p, there is no free things in the world. Even if it is not a big thing for me, but they are precious things for them. Besides, if that position is open to the public, there will be troublesome things. Every single act of my life here is going to be interpreted as the official sovereign. For example, let's say that King Chulin received the watch from the lady and with orange hair. So, what will happen? It was the thing that her late grandfather wore. Despite the price, that watch contains a symbolic meaning. Maybe the lady with orange hair would think that King Chulin accepted her heart. What if he take the ring that descended for generations? The lady who offered that ring laughed but showed her inner feelings in a glimpse. Perhaps she had been pushed by her parents to come out. What if he takes everything? If he takes everything like that, it would make gossip. How does he deal with the ladies who offered their body and heart? That would be more troublesome. The person who became a sovereign had to doubt even the simple tributes as being suspicious. There were many ladies with pure motives, but the problem is the haughty things within them. Who will be Kang Jolin's woman also could be a problem. Of course, there must be the kind heart within them. However, it would be unfair to receive only the offerings of a specific individual. But it was not easy to not receive any of it at all. It was obviously a tiring situation in many ways. Therefore, Kang Jolin had to show his wisdom. You. Kang Jolin's finger pointed at the impressive girl with maroon hair. People's gaze turned to the girl whom King Chol and pointed at once. Pardon. The surprised girl got in the wind. My, my lord, I. Rustler's daughter, Lena, was amazed and confused. I will accept yours. That tribute, gave it to me. Said King Chol and. My, my lord. This. Is very. Tacky. It's fine. Then. My dot my lord. I dot will dot give you dot this thing dot I made dot by myself. Lana's offering was a flower wreath that looked like a necklace and made of wild flowers. As a matter of fact, based on price, her offering was the cheapest among all. Slash p, however, King Jolin's choice was correct and wise. Why dot is he choose that? A wreath made of wild flowers. I offer this to you, Lord. A little lady and her flower wreath. It seems you will only take the pure heart only. As King Chol and has chosen to take only the wreath of the little lady, he rejected the talk that he will ignore all of the sincerity, and dealt with the problem about women. The past King Chol and would not have taken such a sophisticated political stance. I'd rather be in a battlefield a hundred times. While thinking about that, King Chol and get down the horse and headed towards Lena. But. Plop. Lena has collapsed. Dot. Just by thinking of standing close to the sovereign, would surely make somebody faint. Dot Lucia. Yes, Lord. Take that child to her parents and hang the wreath on the horse saddle. King Chol and found a suitable compromise because he could not hang the wreath on his neck. Let's go. Leaving behind the minor incident behind, King Chol and climbed on his white horse with the wreath and headed towards the inside of the land. Hash. Even after he arrived at the Sovereign's Hall, King Jolin did not rest. First, he ordered Timothy to give the Slayers the land's first class pass and paid for the accommodations and food, slash p. After that, he personally met the bereaved families of those lost in the Peacock Dragon's hunting, he came with informality, comforted them and paid the compensation. He also met Commander James. He received some awards because he was able to protect the land safely while King Jelen was away. The awards for Lucia, Podersky, and ten elite soldiers were postponed. They had to receive the bigger award, to take a break now is the first award. Be generous with alcohol and food. Let's not be hungry for today. Lastly, King Jelen ordered the festival to commemorate the Peacock Dragon's subjugation. It was the one thing he can do to lift the mourning and sorrows of the people and to raise the happiness to the highest level. Hu-u. King Chao In, who had done all of this work, was finally able to sit down on the throne and take a deep breath while looked like perfectly ripe green onion kimchi. 
The sound of singing praise and the glory of Sovereign came loosely as if the festival had begun outside. Let's check this one last thing and rest. Lastly, open, my information, items. Dash, my information, slash p, name, King Chao in, rank, Sovereign, class, warrior, score, 140p, complete ranking, D100 to the public, level, 31, specialty. B grade, tendency, conquest sovereign, kind, human, skill, locked, unlocked when grand sovereign status is obtained, spouse, dash, maximum of 7, charisma, 77, B++, H, P, 119, 1412, warning, please take a rest, mana, 63, 1954, physical attack, 248, magic attack, 79, Physical Strength, 187, Intelligence, 141, Agility, 161, Spell Management, 20, Accuracy Rate, B+, Evasion Rate, B, Fatal Blow, B+, Defensive Power, 17, Endurance, 14, Finance, D, Internal Affairs, E, Resource, B, Politics, C+, Diplomacy, C, Command, A+, plus, Attack, A+, plus, Defense, C, Military Force, A+, plus, Charm, A+, plus, Obtained Points, 30, plus 5 per level, Remaining Points, 30, Slash P, Dash, I have grown quite a lot. Start from the level, it was from level 25, then Hunting Male Peacock Dragon plus 2, while clearing the Secret Quest plus 1, Ingested the Dragon Heart plus 2. Then by killing the female peacock dragon plus 1 level, total it raised 6 levels, so it reached level 31. As the effect of dragon heart the total amount of mana has also increased to 800. In addition to this, if he eats dragon heart of the female peacock dragon, he can gain up to 1. 5 level of the experience and mana. Moreover, since he obtained 70p of sovereign points in this hunting, it would be more advantageous for him in the ranking competition of Grand Sovereign. Great. Now, if I can resolve the financial situation of the land, I can do conquest immediately. Everything was fine except the lack of gold coins being the only obstacle. He was planning on getting the whole eastern plains of Dongjun right after finishing in the finances. It was that time. Ugh. The pain began to spread out when the stitching on his side burst again. Now. I really need to get rest. In a three week hunt, he battled with the peacock dragon, he has done a variety of work with a serious injury on his body. If it happened to the others, they would have collapsed ten times at least. Your Majesty. It was when Kang Chol and was trying to take the lid off the potion held to his mouth. Mr. Mr. Dorian. Lucia ran in a hurry and told him the bad news. It was a news that similar to a death sentence to Kang Chao In, who was trying to be able to breathe. It was very interesting. Chapter 41. Teaching Down. Dot what could happen to that fellow? Kang Chao In answered with a grim voice as he is fatigued. He is recovering from the trauma, but due to the exhaustion of losing extreme mana, it seems that the flow of mana has mixed up. If we leave it like that, I think he won't make it through the night. The matter was pretty serious. So, it was that. But, Kang Chalin's mind was different. He knew how to improve Dorian's condition. There was a very simple and easy way. Cut the heart of the peacock dragon in half and feed it to him, help him absorb the mana. He will be fine. Female peacock dragon's heart, half. That's enough to cover Dorian's condition. Th, that. Lucia surprised. Dragon Heart is a spirit elixir. I think that Mr. Dorian's life is important, but it is a treasure. Investment. Dot. Lucia, don't look at me like a small fry. I, how can I dare to see your majesty as such a disgraceful sight? Lucia glared to show she was being treated unfairly. How can you draw a big picture by being stingy? It seems like the value of the peacock dragon's heart made your hands tremble. I just want to do my best for the future instead of following the mainstream thinking of the continent. Your Majesty's words are right. It is not giving him all, just half, 
it is a plenty amount to invest. Moreover, it would be troublesome to let him die. He must live. All right, sir. I will feed the dragon heart to Mr. Dorian and help him absorb the mana. No, I will do it myself. Kang Chul and stood up from his throne as though he had trouble. It will be more efficient if I do it myself. Mana's intensive recovery using dragon heart. Rather than simply ingesting, let someone help in absorbing the mana was the proper way. Of course, Kang Chul and is a better choice than Lucia. Lord. With that body. You need to immediately rest. I know. I'll take care of this one thing only then rest. I have a limit too. But Kang Chol and did not finish his crazy words. This. Kang Chol and fainted because of the dizziness and giddiness. The limit. That was the last one thought by Kang Chol and. Lucia. Wait a moment I need. Help. Kang Chol had tilted forward like in a slow motion. He kept on holding on but in the end he collapsed. My lord. Lucia, who really startled, hugged Kang Chol and immediately. My lord. Are you okay? Stay awake. Lord, Lord? Lucia, who was worried about the half conscious Kang Chol and safety, found a strange thing at the end of his words that was unclear. Is, is he sleeping? Kang Chol and didn't fall unconscious because of an emergency to his health. He just fell asleep as he is fatigued, there was no other signs to Lucia. Phew. He does everything so well but taking care of his jade body like a baby. Lucia laughed while pulling Kang Chol into her embrace. Kang Chol and is sleeping with his face stayed between her busty chest. Slash P, Lord, please do not bear everything on you shoulder only. Lucia is here, and there are other loyal people too. So. Please rest when it is the time to rest. This Lucia will do better so that my lord can rest comfortably. Lucia pledged to be a more faithful, more capable assistant. But. Your sleeping look. Why so? Then her face blushed. Kang Chul In's face, who was usually as hard as a tiger, was calm after sleeping. His look when he was sleeping like a baby, stimulated her maternal love strongly. Lord, please forgive. Disgracefully, Lucia dared to touch Kang Chul In's jade body. Lucia's white fingers gently swept Kang Chul In's head. Kang Chul In, who fell into a sleep as deep as the deep sea, didn't notice it. Hash, the next day. In the end, Kang Chol and had to be side by side with Dorian to get treatment. Does it make sense that the winner and the loser look the same? Kang Chol and was impressed while he was looking at Dorian, who was still sleeping. Something was missing because the person, who did the stupid thing, or the person, who reached for the goal till the end and won, were both cared for as patients. Ugh. Since then Dorian woke up two days later. Here, here is. My land. Dot. Dorian raised his upper body toward the voice that he heard. No, he tried to raise it, but he had to lay down again because of the severe pain. Ugh. It was impossible, though. In the eyes of Dorian, who turned his head, he was seeing King Chao In, who was lying on the bedside and reading the book of Benji Continent. How? How come? You are dead and come back alive, that's all. Ah. You don't need me to nag at you, right? Because you, yourself, know what you did wrong better than I. Dot. Dorian's face hardened by Kang Chulin's admonition. I. I did that kind. Of mistake. Disgust feeling swept out Dorian in a blink. Ah, how stupid and foolish his action can be. He was one of the first and the best soldiers in the world who served in Special Forces SAS, and was active in the conflict area. He knew better than anyone else how catastrophic an individual's recklessness in a team unit battle could be. Therefore, the feeling of disgust that Dorian felt was beyond imagination. Slash P, it was possible. The voice of Kang Chulin flowed to the ear of such Dorian. Unfamiliar places, unfamiliar enemy, and unfamiliar skills. The distinction between you in the past and you in the present has totally ruined your judgment. Dot. Dorian's face was covered with unexpected encouragement. We are the dimensional travelers. Kang Chol and said this. I am constantly in conflict and agony between the me from the earth and the me from Pangaea continent. Actually, 
It's not that different. I'm just confused by the changed environment and abrupt power. I have ever been like that. Dot. If you get into that state, normal accidents would be impossible. Everyone does something crazy at least once. Like you. Is it? It was something you had to go through once anyway. Because you got burned, you are better prepared for the future. Actually. Even I do not feel like letting it go. Dot. If you have any reason to do it, then it would be better to do it. If you had been alone, you'd be dead by now. It was like that. Kang Chulin's action, which caused Dorian get mad and stirred up, was actually meant to look ahead and as a test for Dorian. Don't be in a hurry. It has been two months since the summons took place. Just think about whether you were too greedy in these two months. I've seen it once. So I believe you won't do it again but dot remember, it is important to hold on to the center of yourself tightly and not let it go. Kang Chao In, who had said that so far, took a sip of the beverage that the caretaker had left. Oh, I will send the bill to your land. What, bill? Treatment fees? Dorian was panicked when the money talk came out. If you swallowed the peacock dragon's heart, shouldn't you pay money? Dragon dot heart? Your mana got mixed, so I wrote it off as a remedy. You supposed to feel it, right? The total amount of mana must be increased much than before. Slash P, dot. Dorian opened his eyes. Po, powerful mana. It seems added 20% more than before. Kang Chulin's words were indeed true. How much can I charge? I appreciate it but. How much it would be? It seems. Expensive. Dorian shed cold sweat. It was difficult to gauge how much Peacock Dragon's heart was worth. Okay. Kang Chul and smirked and said. Dot. Do you remember your promise to me? The promise that I will come whenever you call? Just remember that. Just be thankful and work it out to pay me. Alright. I will surely pay this debt. Dorian grasped both of his fists. Kang Chul and was in fact being restrained but unfortunately Dorian did not notice it. However. Dot. Are we friend, buddy, now? Dot. Kang Chul and turned his eyes. Friend? Has he ever had a relationship with a friend? Probably not. A relationship called friend for a sovereign was like a proverb of the international relation that says there are no permanent enemies, and no permanent friends, only permanent interests. Especially if the opponent was the same sovereign it was even harder. Because when the relationship breaks down, the crash is just different from just friends. Maybe it's okay. But, he thought that if it was Dorian, it would not be bad. Dorian could be regarded as sovereign, which emphasizes his own activities rather than having power, a godly strong adventurer. He wasn't a hitman of the Baldur Alliance. Anyway the twisting moment is over, if the distance in this life also get wider then that time he should eliminate Dorian. Friends or whatever. Kang Chul and said. Think as you like. I'm tired. Kang Chul in, who did not want to let the words like friends out from his mouth, closed his eyes by covering them using the book, he was reading. He stopped the conversation as he did not know what to say. Okay, as long you think that we are friends, then let's stop. Dorian interpreted what Kang Chul and said according to his thought then humming happily. At that time. Your Majesty, it is time to eat. A maid came into the room and informed them it was lunch time. Grumbling. Just at that time, Dorian's stomach alarm sounded. Will you wake up? Ah, yes. Master Dorian's meal is not ready yet. You have to wait about 30 minutes. Unfortunately. The meal brought by the maid was only enough for one person and there was not enough portion for Dorian. I'm fine. Kang Chul and spoke unexpectedly. Give it to him. Your Majesty, but this meal is made by Assistant Luca by herself. Give it to him. Slash P, yes, sir. Then I will prepare your meal right away. Do it. She put the spectacular meal in front of Dorian and went out of the room. Wait a minute. Are you sure is it okay to give yours to me? I said I am not hungry. The maid said your assistant made it by herself. Can I really eat it? It doesn't matter. Re, really? Of course. 
Then I'll eat it thankfully. Because I was starving that I thought I was going crazy. Dorian picked up the fork. Wow, Lucia's skill was unexpectedly amazing. It looks appetizing and it even smells good. She seems to fight well and even cooks well. You said you are hungry? Oh yeah. I'm hungry. The fork took a piece of meat in the stew. If you look at the steaming meat in a glance, it was such a mouth-watering visual. Then let's try it. Dorian bit the meat. Dot. Then. Blay. He immediately spit it out. What, what is this? Why is it so bad? Dorian's face that was becoming white, was like a sick man. What was actually this thing made from? The meat of the peacock dragon. W-H, what? It is good for your body. Eat it all to make quickly recovered your body. Was it? The peacock dragon's meat usually not good? No way. Then? Lucia. Can't cook well. Dot. Still. Once your hand touches it, you should eat everything. Eat it, you won't like to see Lucia's anger. It, it is hell. The meat tastes similar to tires. Dorian made the tearful face. Picky eater is the worst. It is not the problem of picky eater. Aren't you British? I am Scottish. The tasteless food is normal, though. Even though like that. This is so bad. Even the demons in the hell would not eat it. Whatever. But once you touch it, you need to finish it. Dot. After all, Dorian was finally able to handle the dishes made by Lucia after repeatedly eating and vomiting at the toilet for several times. You. King Chal and Dot this wicked fellow. A fool was a fool like always. Hash. At the same time, the phone you are calling is not active. You are connected to the voicemail and the connection fee will be charged. Again, the phone you are calling is not active. You are connected to the voicemail and the connection fee will be charged. Again, the phone you are calling is not active. You are connected to the voicemail and the connection fee will be charged. And again, chill in dot please dot please take the call dot please. Lee Chai Lin cried out. Slash P, it is interesting. The Overlord of Blood and Iron. Chapter 42. Trade and Alliance 1. Kang Chul Lin reported back to Earth through the warp gate as soon as he recovered. Please be swift. I, Lucia, will wait for my lord. Lucia saw him out. Laputa's most trusted advisors were too busy executing Kang Chul Lin's special orders. They had to accomplish all of their given orders before he came back. It's going to be around two weeks. That is too long. My hands are tied. I have business back home. I am afraid that I might wither to death while waiting for you my lord. Dot. Please remember that I am waiting for you and hurry back. Lucia looked like as if she was in such despair, she looked like a puppy who lost its master. I really don't understand why she acts like this recently. Kang Chul In could not get used to Lucia's change after the hunt. He also thought that he was not like her. Think about it. 167 centimeters, size D, skinny waist, broad pelvis, and strong thighs. Lucia was a merciless glamour who easily outranked other female kinds. And her face? Sharp eyes and horn rimmed glasses cool beauty, which reminded of a strict professional woman. There isn't a woman whose cute puppy form cannot go as well as she is now. Dot well, I will have to come back once the business is over. I did order some things to be done, so I won't be gone long. You should do so. I will. He stood at the warp gate with a huge sack on his back. There were all sorts of items and trading goods samples between the Earth and Pangaea. His plan was to proceed a trading business after consulting with Mr. Quan on the items in the bag. Money? He will be able to buy a private jet after a year. Please take care of the land. Do not worry, my lord. Then, he ran the warp to head to Earth. Hash, as soon as he arrived, Kang Chul and went to the parking lot and opened the hood of a Mustang and loaded his cargo. The cargo, which included gold and other things, easily exceeded 100 kilograms. The meat, Realizing that there was something missing, he pulled out a preciously wrapped meat. It was the meat of Peacock Dragon. Slash P, needless to say, it was not an ordinary cut of meat. 
The meat he brought with him was the equivalent of neck chain of a cow and there was only 3 kilograms of it in the gigantic body of a peacock dragon, so it was a very rare meat. I do have to fulfill the duty of a son. He was to bring the meat to his mother. A peacock dragon's meat had a special effect. Anti-aging, increase of immune system, the increase of strength, fuel energy, etc. The meat's worth was more than a common restorative. No, the meat of peacock dragon could be the best restorative there is. It was different from the unverified health food where it was impossible to know the benefits other than the gossip surround it. The effect took place after a couple of pieces of the meat. This was the real deal. And for Mr. Guan. He also had the meat for Mr. Guan. It wasn't as good as the neck chain, but it was a good cut. Mr. Guan was going to be his business partner, so it was better in many ways for him to restore his youth. After placing the meat separately, Kang Chil and drove the Mustang to Bukin. I was going to present the meat to his mother before anything. Vroom. The 2020 Ford Mustang Coupe 5. Zero liters GT coughed out a heavy exhaust sound. It is time to get a new car. I will have to move too. As the fund grew, he started to think of moving and getting a new car. It was nonsense for a lord to live in a small studio of 33 square meters. And the Mustang. It was a great car but it wasn't a car for a lord. He was not going to sell it but was going to keep it as a collection. He collects cars. While heading to Buchan, he turned on the radio. As always, he watched newspapers, TV and listened to the radio to ease the gap between the two places, just after he comes back. Now, foreign affair news. The young heir of the Rothschild, Alex Rothschild, has announced that he is a dimension traveler. It is reported that Mr. Alex Rothschild has shown the ability to use psychic powers in front of many of the Hollywood celebrities. The very first news on the radio was that of a very unpleasant one. Kang Chul and frowned. He changed the channel. It was better to listen to a cheesy radio station than to listen to the news of the Rothschilds. The government announced to postpone the restriction against animals and plants brought from the other world. He didn't actually change the channel to a music station. The high-level adventurer Mr. Lee Sang Duck subdued a trio of the same adventurer and handed over to the police. Mr. Lee Sang Duck is known to be. The world was changing. The market will grow. Kang Chol and thought of the near future. Thanks to the growing trade between the Earth and Pangaea, the Republic of Korea entered into a record-breaking economic boom. Needless to say, that the man who made that possible was Kang Chol in. The world was calm before the storm, and the fire was in its smallest state, yet. Slash P, Kang Chul and turned on his iPhone as he got closer to Bukin. He wanted to call his mother as well as see the missed call he had. Missed call, mother, 7, missed call, Dusik Park, 3, missed call, Mr. Guan, 1, 7 missed calls from mother, 3 from Park Dusik and 1 from Mr. Guan. It was not bad considering he was out of earth for a month. But. There was one who left him hundreds of calls. Missed call, Lee Chiran assistant manager, 287, Lee Chiran, she was the lord with the abundance skill. He checked the time stamp. Dot. The last call was from 30 minutes ago. She must have called him over a week like this. He turned on the mobile messenger application to see why she was trying to reach him. Lee Chiran, Mr. Chow In. I have decided to live like a lord. Lee Chiran, are you busy? Lee Chiran, are you still in Pangaea? Lee Chiran, let's meet when you come back. I haven't forgotten about that talk last time. I hope we can keep a good relationship as partners. Dot admit. The messages from a week ago looked fine. But the content of the message started to become a bit worrisome. Lee Chiran, Mr. Chow In. Your phone is still off. Would you please call me back when you come back? Lee Chiran, I can't reach you today too. Lee Chiran, Mr. Chow In. Lee Chiran, are you going to be out for long? Lee Chiran, help me. Mr. Chow In, please help me. If you see this message, please call me as soon as possible.
He could feel the desperation from the messages. He couldn't know the scale of the trouble that she was in, which made her this desperate. It was clear that something had happened. Just then, he was receiving a phone call and the screen showed the name Lee Charin assistant manager. The call came as soon as he turned on the phone. This is Kang Chao In. He answered. Dot. Chao In? Chai In's voice was trembling over the phone. Yes, it's me. I've been waiting. For you. Dot. Can we meet? Where are you? I'll be there. She sounded desperate. A person on top of the edge of a mountain will sound like that. I can't at the moment. But Kang Chol and refused her request. It was time to serve his mother some good food. No matter how bad others need his time, that couldn't come before his family. I am on my way home. Let me call you back tonight. I don't have any batteries left too. I'm in Bukin. Dot. I thought you would go to meet your parents when you come back. I'm in a hotel in Buchan. I remembered that your mother works in Buchan local market so. Dot. She was very desperate after all. So desperate enough for her to pack up and wait nearby. Slash P, please give me a call when you are done. Dot. But please meet me. I. I need you, Mr. Chow In. Her attitude made him wonder why? It is not that difficult to meet her. Kang Chol In remembered what he said to her when they met before. But I will only help you when you really want to live like a lord. You? I won't spoon feed you, but yes. He even said this. I will end it here. Think about it and if you think you are ready to live as a lord, then call me. Then I will think and treat you like one. Okay. It is said that a man must keep one's word. Kang Chol and promised Lee Chiren that he would help her once she made up her mind to live as one. And she wanted to live as one. Now, Lee Chiren is begging me to meet her. Because he gave his word, he is obliged to grant her request. Even so, there was a possibility that she might become spoiled if he helped her without any hesitation. No wonder people say that if a favor continues, the recipient thinks that it is their right. He had to be picky about it in the beginning. Fine, I will meet you. Kang Chol In decided to meet Lee Chai Rin. A thought crossed his mind. He thought of a reasonable reason to grant her wish so he thought this will be an ideal deal for both of them. He also needed her as she did of him. But before that. Ems. Chai Rin. He said. Didn't you told me that you were going to live a life of a lord? He had to make sure of the things that bothered him. I did. Yes. Then you will have to fix your attitude first. A lord is never servile, nor they beg of others' favors. Even if they want something from another, they will have to mask their real intentions and make the opponent to do it for them. That is the foundation of being a lord. Your actions only remind me of the assistant manager Lee Chiren, not a lord. Dot. Kang Chol In's words made her speechless? I wouldn't even meet you in other circumstances. A naive lord is nothing but a prey for other stronger lords. Like how the lions never talk to the deer. Dot. This is the last chance. If you show the same attitude as today in the future. Then that will be the end of our relationship. If you want to talk to me as one lord to another, you have to show it to me with your attitude. Slash p I'm sorry. No. I will. I will keep in mind what you have told me, Mr. Chow In. Her voice recovered slightly from before. She seems to realize the position of a lord from Kang Chol In's advice. Let's meet now. Finally, Kang Chol In told the very words that Lee Chiren wanted to hear the most. Re. Really? But, before that. Dot. There is one condition. Anything. Anything is conditions will be heard if I can meet you, Mr. Kang Chol In. Are you good at BBQ? BBQ. Because of this unexpected term, a slight hint of dumbfounded tone could be heard from her voice. The Overlord of Blood and Iron. Chapter 43. Trade and Alliance 2. Kang Chol In had no intention of meeting Li Chiren for free. If she wanted to meet him this bad in, there must be a reason or she wanted to depend on him so badly. If Li Chiren was a commoner, it wasn't a problem, but she was a lord which made him act colder against her. 
That is why he had to set a term on this meeting, even if that was a minor thing. And that term was. BBQ. Yes. Kang Cholin has no talent in cooking meat or in preparing a nice meal. How was he supposed to respect his parents if he was not good at these things? I had to use whatever was available, and that was Lee Chiren. Son. Park Sunya called Kang Cholin in the most subtle way. Where did you meet her? We used to work together. Did you notice that she is so bubbly and pretty? I guess she would be a perfect fit for my son's bride, don't you think? Oh my. I would like to have her as a daughter-in-law this instant. Park Sunya's eyes were locked on Lee Chiren who was washing the vegetables at the sink. It's not like that. Kang Chol in shook his head. You may know her as a close friend. We are not involved romantically in any way. But still. I hope you try, okay? Dot. He did not answer. At least there won't be any mention of blind dates anymore. He felt relief. Funny. How this tedious problem can be a burden. Kang Chol in could not believe the difference between a lord and Chol in and his mother's son. Even so, he had no intention of boosting his position as a lord in front of this mother. He was a bad son to her in the past. He was so into money and power that he was neglecting his one and only blood family in this world. A son who could only send his mother thousands of dollars but never show up for ten years. He had to feel guilty on his actions. Mother, it is ready. Please sit here. The dinner was set and Lee Chiron led Park Soon Yacht to the table with an amiable attitude. I told you to just sit here, you shouldn't have done anything. No. Mr. Chol and's mother is my mother too, so how could I just simply accept the dinner table? Don't think about it and sit here. Oh you adorable one. Please. Sit here, the two women were having such a nice time. Kang Chol in was the only one who could not get used to this atmosphere. What would Lucia think if his merciless strong lord was in this situation? But. It is not a bad deal. Even if he could not be used to the scene, he was satisfied by the deal he made with Lee Chiren, as he looked at his smiling mother. He set his term to meet his mother, set a dinner table and cook the meat for her instead of him. Also, he asked her to hint as if they were seeing each other. It was also a big light to his mother, but it was a reasonable choice. Losing her husband Kang Han in the early stage of marriage and to raise Kang Chol in alone, Park Soon Yo wanted her son to get married fast and start a family. Maybe it was an obvious thing. Slash P, to the Kang Chol and family, there wasn't a lot of cousins and the ones who were there were trouble. The caused stress and act worse than a neighbor. That is why Park Soon Jin wanted to have a daughter-in-law and a grandchild. The thing is, Kang Chol In didn't want to date someone, nor go on blind dates. That is why his mother was so keen on this subject. So, the only option that he could think of was, to put Lee Chire in before him, giving his mother false hope and escape the deadly marriage pressure. It was as if the pressure was the spear and he dodged it with the shield called Lee Chire in. At least she won't mention it for another few months. How knows? He might actually have a girlfriend by then. What kind of meat is it? Tasking the well-cooked peacock dragon meat, Park Sunya was surprised. Son, where did you get this? It is something I've never tasted before. Of course, it was a meat of a dragon, so she would never have tasted before. It's bare. He gave an excuse. I went to Japan and the owner there gave me bear meat. It's supposed to be a special type of meat so, I brought it for you. Really? Yes. That is delicious. But why aren't you eating? I don't like it. There are some people who like it and not. If it's okay, please have some more. But still. You should try some. I'm okay. It was a meat for Park Soon so, he wouldn't eat after a piece. Lee Chiren also did not touch the meat. Phew. Park Soon Yaw sighed after finishing the meal. Why is it so hot in here? She was flapping her hands as if the meat was working. Ems. Stay with my son. I feel like I'm overheating so I want to go outside. I guess that bear meat really worked. Why do I feel so good? She should be. Eating a peacock dragon's meat is like the neck chain of a cow. So. She won't be able to feel sick for a good one, two years. 
I'll be back, my son. Spend a little time with this young lady, will you? Have a good time. Okay, Tilda. She hurried off after leaving some hint in her words. She must have liked Lee Chiran so much. I should get her a good IT pact. Kang Chol and saw the back of his mother and thought of items that could protect her, that was at least over the unique level. If he got her something like a ring or an earring, two, three of them will be able to protect her from any harm. Lee Chiran was struggling to start a conversation. Slash P, let's talk, shall we? Kang Chol and started. No, let's talk. Lord Lee Chiran. She startled a bit to the change of the tone of his voice, but she realized that he was addressing her as a lord, so she accepted it. Okay, Lord Kang Chol in. She nodded. Hash, the two talked on the roof of Kang Chol in's house. This was to prepare from when Park Sunya coming in without a warning. Help me. She spoke bluntly. What? He answered in short. Anything. Anything? I am under attack. Already. Well, that can happen. He realized that her land was located in the same pandemonium region. Kang Chol and held his face with great stress. Crazy bastards. While the lords of the mainland were all concentrating on the inside, the lords of the outskirts of pandemonium region was starting a war already. This could only be explained by the sanity of their leaders. As I thought. The reason why I don't know Lee Chiren. Now he knew why she could not show up during the Lord Union meeting. She already lost. The longest she could survive was probably until right before the first Lord Union meeting on 25th of December 2012. She will be stripped off of her title before then. Or worse to be killed by the other lords. So. He continued. How am I supposed to help you? That is. She hesitated. After listening to him over the phone. It was clear that she was trying to express herself as a lord. If you are trying to act like a lord at this point, it is too late. Just tell me. This will not be done in a day. Kang Chol in smirked. She already begged to him. There was no dignity to be protected. Send. Send me the supporting army. You are a lord too. If you send me the troops. I oppose. He cut the conversation sharp, declining Li Chiren's request. If what you want is a supporting troop, then there is nothing to be discussed further. It is a waste of time. Why? You said you'll help. I can give you personal advices of help. But sending troops is a different matter. It was. A simple help and sending a whole region of the army was different in scale. A war is not a joke. Asking for a troop was not to be said even as a joke. Even if Kang Chol in wanted to help her. He had to put things straight. Lord Lee Chiren. He looked at her straight into her eyes. Clear to the point. Think about it. The meaning of asking for troops. Dot. Is there a reason why my people have to spill their blood to protect you and your land? Of course, they will die for you if I give the right orders. But where is the meaning in that? Have you ever thought about the blood my people will have to spill because of your request? Dot. His cold answer made her freeze. She didn't expect him to decline the request like this. Mr. Chilim. But she didn't give up. I'm not asking without a price. This showed how desperate she was. Let's make a deal. Slash P, she finally showed her side of the card. Deal? I will pay for the troops you send me. What kind of payment? I have a lot of money. A lot. Then why don't you buy troops with your own money? That. Is not that easy. To be honest, even if I have the money, I can't win this war. There must be a reason for this. Otherwise, the equation of, money equals troops, should have worked. Like the politician and father of the Latin language, Cicero said a war's never-ending engine is the infinite fund. So, you will give me money if I send the troops? Yes, please. Fearless, you are. Dot. There is almost no interaction between the lords and you are here asking me to welcome my troops to your land. I don't know why you would say that in this kind of situation. What? Do you mean? A bloodless victory, and betrayal. Dot, it's only going to take about 30 minutes to get to the headquarters. 
then your head will be paraded on top of the castle wall and I will take your land as a whole. No aftermath. Nobody is looking over you and me, so there is no need to make a valid reason for it, don't you think? How can you be so cruel? Don't act naive. A lord's enemy is a lord. You can always be betrayed by the one that you believed the most. That is a lord. His words were harsh but right. What would you do about it? That was the life of a lord. R. You're going to do so? Will you pretend to help me and march in with your soldiers, cutting my head off? Taking everything that I have? Her voice trembled. How she sobbed while saying these words was so pitiful that most of the men would become soft. If necessary, yes. But King Chol In was not one of those men. Dot. But. I would look over this if that person is the one who helped a clueless newbie. He thought of the old days with Lee Chai Rin. There was one woman who looked after Kang Chao In, while he was working for a human garbage, psychotic bastard boss. It was over ten years ago, but thinking about it, he had some affectionate feeling to Lee Chai Rin. So. Will you send the troops? She asked as if she was hanging from a cliff. Of course not. He still had no intention of sending the troops. He had his own problems. Laputa's army was only about 100 men. He had no treasury to back him up to buy units or expand the land. What if he landed the troops and other lords attacked? Thanks to the dragon safe buff, there might not be another dragon, but what if another kind of monster attacked? Then. That will not happen. I understand now. How you feel. Slash P. Understand what? Aren't you saying that you will not send me troops? I need those troops. If you can't send me them, then I have no business with you anymore. Huh. It is my fault. I try to lean on you. I'm sorry, to show such a disappointing side of me. Her tears dropped as she spoke those words. The tears looked frozen after being swept by the cold winter night's breeze. Too fast. It is too soon. He spoke. What? Do you mean? Don't you think that there is a way, even if I did not send you those troops? Dot. Lee Chiron lights up as she was the slight chance of hope. The Overlord of Blood and Iron. Chapter 44. Deal and Alliance 3. I'd like to hear more of the story. He needed to know what situation Lee Chiron was in. Only then, could he either decide to make a deal or help. Should we go somewhere else? That would be good. We could go to my hotel room. It is a good place to chat in private. Let's go. The two moved to the hotel called Urio and Lucan, where Li Chiren was staying. Rooftop wasn't a suitable place to conduct a discussion between a monarch and a queen. Li Chiren's room was the presidential suite. She was said to have a lot of money, and certainly, the room was fit for a queen with wealth. Would you like a drink? Perhaps, due to being emotionally tormented. As soon as Lee Chiron entered the room, she took a bottle of Hennessy Pardis. Hennessy Pardis, which is an upscale cognac from Hennessy Incorporated. It is an expensive brandy that would cost 800,000 won in retail, not a fan of cognac. After replying that way, Kang Chol and called room service. Single malt, the most expensive one. Kang Chol and preferred whiskey. First, let me share the mini map. It will make our discussion easier. Can the mini map be shared, too? Of course. Did your assistant not inform you that? There are so many things that I don't know. Use this time as a learning opportunity. Kang Chol and turned on the mini map, which was the lower menu in the map menu. This is my mini map. Centering my territory, it marks the miniaturized terrain features of all the places that I have surveyed. My location is at the west end of the Pandemonium region, which is a remote region of the frontier. Kang Chol and explained. Your mini map. Yes. Lee Chiron turned on the mini map. Share mini map. Share mini map. As both recited the command, their mini maps overlapped with each other and the location information was shared. This thing also works. Quiet. Kang Chol and cut off Lee Chiron's exclaiming appreciation. I'll take a look. While Lee Chiron took a sip of the cognac, Kang Chalin's eyes swiftly scanned the shared map. Slash P, it's close to me. 
the area is about 50 kilometers away from the southeast end of the dark forest. This green dot is Lee Chiron's territory. To both sides. Red dots, they are other monarchs' territories. It's unfavorably sandwiched in between, not good, but. There is no need for a territorial war yet. Why is that, why? Every conflict has a reason, there could be smoke from a chimney even if there wasn't a fire, but there is no war without reason. With Lee Chiron's economic might, there was no reason for her to be in such a dire state of mind just because a monarch was launching an attack. It's more accurate to assume that she is being hit by both monarchs from the two sides. How did both sides come to attack her? Wait. While he was thinking, something significant came into King Chellen's eyes. This. Yes? Is it because of this mine? Dot. Li Chiren was flabbergasted in surprise. Just by scanning a simple mini-map once, he has accurately analyzed the situation that she was in, so she was obviously surprised by that. How, how did you? However, Li Chiren could not continue. It was because, right at that time, Kang Chol and moved away as the room service came to the door. Can't tell. It is strange that a person has changed, but how can this? Fixing her eyes on the back of Kang Chol in, Li Chiren was filled with odd mixed emotions. That was only appropriate. If someone, who didn't talk much, but very kind to others, has at one moment become a cold hearted emperor, anyone would consider it strange. As you are saying, do continue. Kang Chol and poured whiskey into the glass filled with ice. Don't drink. Okay. Facing each other, the man and the woman held their respective whiskey and cognac in their glasses. My conclusion is this. Quickly emptying his glass and putting the mini-map on the table, Kang Chol and pointed his finger to Li Chai Rin's territory, in the shared mini-map. Next to the territory, this mountain. Although I'm not sure what kind of mountain this is, but I'm sure that this is a mine, where precious resources are being mined. That's right. And these two bastards. Kang Chol and fingers touched the other two monarchs' territories at the northwest and east of Li Chiren's region. Slash P, the two of them formed an alliance and are going after your mine. Is that all visible to you? Li Chiren was in awe. Anyone could have simply guessed that she was under the attack of the two allied monarchs, but a random person would not be able to pinpoint the reason behind it as accurately as was done. Your response and mini map. With those two things, it isn't that hard to demonstrate this level of insight. Q. It is a very difficult idea to me. It's an obvious situation. Dot. It is easy to have a discerning perspective, after having lived a tough life to just survive. You're just not used to it yet, not that you are foolish. I, I see. Anyhow. Kang Chol and stopped at that point to take another sip of whiskey, before continuing. My honest feeling is. That it is totally incomprehensible. Dot. No matter what the two's inclinations are and what their military combination was like, it is impossible, for a queen with wealth, to concurrently face two wars at the same time. Uh, how could you say something that makes no sense at all? Why doesn't it make sense? Just by purchasing some military and having them placed at the enemy camp would have prevented the situation from getting this difficult. Even by simply leading the battles to a war of attrition, the winner in the end will be you with your wealth, not those two bastards. In the past, Kang Chol and had a teeth-gnashing experience against Kobega Alliance's great economic power and the enormous output of that economic power. He knew the awesome power of wealth better than anyone else. Then there can be two conclusions in the end. First, the condition is not ripe for a war of attrition, or the enemy monarchs have some special powers. If not that. Kang Chol and fiercely stared at Li Chiren. The mine has been lost and in order to reclaim it, siege warfare is being carried out. It is being carried out against a foe with a far superior position, thus reclaiming he mine is impossible, no matter however many military units are sacrificed. You are reading. That far, Jolin. Li Chiren acknowledged immediately. If you have already lost the mine, you could cut it off cleanly, give it up and by focusing on protecting your palace, you can sustain for a while. 
Why are you obsessed with the mine? Is the mine more important than your own life? At this rate, your life is at their mercy. Either lose your head, or lose the title of a queen. There is no doubt you'll be ruined. Li Chiran, give up the mine. Kang Chol and spoke of the predetermined outcome. If he does not interfere, Li Chiran's life will pass as he has just predicted. Perhaps. The Li Chiran, of previous life, did not give up that mine. Therefore, she couldn't have attended the first monarch's meetings. It is wise to give up at this juncture. With wealth, even without that mine, there would be no issue with running a territory. Kang Chol and advised. I. I too. Want to do that. Unexpectedly, a strange response came from Li Chiren. That mine, I don't need it either. If they want it, I can always hand it over to them. Dot. It was hard to understand why she was struggling so much for such a mine, unnecessary mine, a mine that can be given away. Slash P, your words and actions do not sync up. Why do you obsessively spending military for something that can just be given up? It's not my will. Dot. At that moment, an expression of shock appeared in Kang Chao In's eyes. What is this bullshit? It's not by her will? It does not make any sense. It wasn't even laughable. The full authority over a territory certainly belongs to the monarch. It is a sacred and inviolable domain that no one else can intrude upon. Who would dare meddle with the monarch's authority? It was not comprehensible. It was more so to Kang Chao In who had strong pride and belonging to the class of monarchy. Who would dare? Kang Chol and was certain that he would either behead or even to take it a step further, hand down a punishment of physical dismemberment, by tying the guilty to horses for drawing and quartering, or being broken on the wheel, to those who would dare to intrude on his authority. Need explanation? Kang Chol and urged Li Chiren. It does not make sense at all. Then Li Chiren poured another glass of cognac and drank it roughly, before speaking. It is the will of my subordinates and the citizens of the territory. Dot. The name of the mountain is Nidavlar, besides the tombs of the dwarfs that make up the 60% of the territory's population, it is a gold mine at the same time and precious stones are mined there as well. If I was to live as the queen, I must reclaim that area. The significances of the mine with respect to monetary and symbolic values were enormous beyond his thought. Dot was it. Slash P, Kang Chol and could finally understand the situation that Li Chiren was in. It was a mutiny, in which the monarch was being dragged by the dwarf residents of the territory. Hash, the details of the story were too long to hear. Furthermore, more accurate assessment can be made after a personal visit rather than getting the story from Li Chiren. Thus, putting off the discussion of the whole story to a later time in Pangaea, for now, a decision was made to informally negotiate the terms of the deal. It is not a problem that can be resolved with simple assistance. It is an issue to be dealt with from one monarch to another monarch. Any issues that must be discussed must be dealt first before proceeding. I understand. It's not an easy problem. Li Chiren nodded her head. I, too, consider this dealing with Kang Chao In, the monarch, rather than Kang Chao In that I know. The discussion should be easier since you understand that. Of course. There will follow a formal contract, but the basic outline is this. I help you to overcome the difficulty that you are in and in return, you will make payments to me. That is the terms of the contract. Agreed. Kang Chao In shook his head. Making deals with me is costly. I'm already at the edge of a cliff. If I can overcome my situation, I am prepared to offer you anything that you want. Having determined to live as a monarch, Li Chiren strongly stated her own volition to overcome this difficulty at any cost. Then, downing the whiskey, Kang Chao spoke. The work will begin after one week. Within a month, I will eliminate the two bastards. Reclaim Nidavlar and return stability of the territory back to you. In return, my condition is a 30% payment of all the goods mined from the mine for the next five years. It was certainly expensive. Nidavlar Mountain was not only a gold mine, but also the place where the warp stones, which is the substance needed for the warp gate from Pangaea to Earth, are mined. 
a 30% share for the next five years from an enormously valuable mine would come to billions. Apostrophe, that would be the required minimum. However, Kang Chol and certainly did not think this requirement was excessive. It goes beyond just assisting Li Chiran to overcome her difficulties, in the long run, it will save her life as well. Furthermore, by helping her, as the loss of his time would be massive as well, he needed to recover it. Kang Chol and one month was on a different scale than other monarchs. Since he has reincarnated, one month time would allow him unimaginable profits. As he was using such precious time in helping Li Chiran, he needed to be paid at least that much. As a matter of fact, 30% amount was very fair. Even if 80% requirement was called, Li Chiran would have accepted it under these circumstances. Kang Chol and was very considerate for not stabbing her on her back based on the intel. The debt he had in the past, he was determined to pay it back in this way. Agreed. Li Chiran readily accepted Kang Chol-in's proposal. In addition, she took a step further. I have one more condition to add. Speak. Be my ally for the next 10 years. Although I have money, I do not have the ability to utilize them. Perhaps, my capability is specialized in domestic management. That was true. As Kang Chol-in was weak in domestic management although he was a peerless general, so demonstrating strong domestic management abilities, it was unavoidable for Li Chiran to have shortcomings in military skills. If you agree to become my ally, I will add 10% and give you 40% for the next 10 years, not 5 years. At such terms, could we not smile about the deal between you and me? It was a rather forthcoming proposal, but also very logical and shrewd one as well. It's not bad. A small subtle smile came to Kang Jelin's lips. Slash P, at least, you know how to deal like a monarch. Is dot that so? Li Chiran spoke and suddenly thought that Kang Jelin's cold-hearted posture may not be 100% sincere. Perhaps, is Jelin attempting to teach me? It appeared that was so after a careful deliberation. All words that Kang Jelin spoke would become her food and nutrition. The words that were spoken before the subject of the mind came up, do not thoughtlessly request for reinforcements, do not readily trust other monarchs, reinforcements are not the only solution, etc. Looking back, they were the words that led her to open her immature eyes and make prudent decisions. It was a lesson in the harsh form of hear and learn according to your own ability, but Li Chiran came to understand the meaning behind those words. Further, when she demonstrated audaciousness, a subtle smile appeared around Kang Chalin's mouth as well. I see. Chalin. You have not forgotten me. Thank you, Chalin. Her hardened heart has melted like snow. Li Chiran felt appreciative towards Kang Chalin, but did not show it. It was because she knew that Kang Chalin's lesson has not ended. At least until this deal is completed. Chalin. Li Chiran extended her hand out. From now on, we are allies. I am glad to form an alliance with you Kang Chao In, the monarch. I, too. Kang Chao In grabbed Li Chiran's hand. I'd like to show a sign of gratitude. Dot. Trade. Li Chiran recited a command. Gold coin, convey, 2000 gold, Kang Chao In, the monarch. Then, 2000 gold coins were transferred from Li Chiran's inventory to Kang Chao In's inventory. Nearly 800 million won worth of gold coins were transferred without anything in return. Although looking a bit immature, Li Chiran also held the capacity for decisive action, worthy of a monarch. Consider it a down payment. For the strength of our alliance. Li Chiran smiled widely. I will accept in gratitude, I shall use it well. Kang Chol-in also smiled. No one would dislike when someone gives you money especially when showing such a level of appreciation at that. Slash P, however, Li Chiran spoke as if she was curious about something. What is your plan, how you will help me, Chalin? I am going straight for the roots. How am I going to help? Kang Chalin was not interested in disclosing how he will help her at this time. He wanted to show it in person. The Overlord of Blood and Iron. Chapter 45 Businessman Kang Jolin
Li Charan decided to return to the Pankeha continent first and wait for Kang Jolin there. Five days later, after making an excuse of having a vacation, Kang Jolin spent lots of time with his mother. After that, he the met old man Quan before deciding to meet Li Chiran again. It was to discuss the trade going on between Pankeha continent and Earth. Soon, my territory's economy will be able to grow. While heading to Yangsan, a place in Seoul, Kang Chol and thought of the contract he had made with Li Chiran with his eyes shining. The contract was wonderful. It was beneficial to both sides, and even Li Chiran was right when she said they would both be happy with it. It was good for her as she would gain the protection of Kang Chao In, and it was good for him as his economic might would increase. It was time for the immense synergy of both economic and military might. Since he was so broke, he couldn't even use his cosmic force ability. Instead of expanding his territory or buying units, he had to spend his precious money on hunting the peacock dragons. But by being able to solve this request well, he would be able to aim for total domination of the eastern plains. Dominating the pandemonium region. This was Kang Jolin's number one priority right now. Hey, it's you. Good thing you came. Gahahaha. Old man Guan was greeting him as if they hadn't met for 30 years. You disgust me. He waved his hands. What is a dying old man like you doing? He hated men who stuck close to him like that. It's because I'm so happy and thankful. Because of the ring that you gave me last time, I was able to win the seniors university tennis competition. Dot you go to a seniors university? Since I regretted how I spent my youth, I've been going since year. This shouldn't be the school term though? Cuckoo. For old and dying people like us, there's no such thing as a school term or a vacation. It's just that we're bored and that we want to go out. It's always like that when you're old. Although it was a sad and bitter tale, it seemed as if old man Guan seemed to be happy about going to the university. Let's get to business. Of course, Kang Chol and didn't really care what old man Quan did in his leisure time. Yeah, I think that we will be able to officially become partners from today. Old man Guan's eyes were full of hope and expectations. The dimension travelers as well as the items from the Pankeha continent were receiving attention from all over the world. He had no choice but to put his hope onto Kang Jolin. Before that. Before they discussed terms, Kang Jolin decided to tell old man Quan his requests and terms. It was like the basics of cooperation. Well, say it quickly. I'm getting dizzy because you aren't saying anything. Are you going to take responsibility if I die because of that? Well, that's your fate, not mine. There are many businessmen out there. Kang Jolin responded casually. HMPH. Are you really going to pull that on a senior like me? Well, I would be able to do much worse things to a criminal. Dot okay, name your terms. Old man Quan decided to give up. I need a house and a car. A house and a car? It would be much better if it's a manor but it's not easy to get those kind of houses in Seoul. And it has to be bigger than 100 square meters. Make it in Socho, another district in Seoul, if possible. Well, since I won't be living there for long, it doesn't really matter. That's not very hard. I have spare mansions, I'll lend you those. But why a car? The one that you ride right now, isn't it a Ford Mustang? It's not a bad car. Why? Did you get ignored by someone riding a Lamborghini? Old man Guan seemed to know some things about cars. Ignored? Ha ha. Kang Chol and burst out laughing. It's a hobby. Collecting cars? Ha. That's a very expensive hobby. You are quite extravagant. So, what car do you want then? For example, an Aston Martin? Tell James Bond to ride something like that. Those cars are for gangsters as well as psychos. W.H. What makes you think that? Aston Martin is a perfect fusion of a sedan and a sports car. There are no other cars that can express a young gentleman like Aston Martin. Those cars are perfect with suits. I just don't really like them. Kang Chol-in's tastes were quite straightforward. Although he didn't really know why, he just didn't like Aston Martin's. Well. Since you yourself don't like it, there's no choice. 
Just tell me what you want. Old man Guan said so with a crestfallen expression. Jaguar, F-type coupe. Jaguar F-type. You really know how to look at cars. How about the model year? Make it a 2013 one if possible. And then color has to be black. And of course. 5000 cc. Of course, if you're a man, you need 5000 cc. The house and the car, both within 3 hours. As well as moving my baggage. For the Mustang, tell one of your underlings to move it to the new house. Sigh. All within 3 hours. I don't like rent or lease. Dot. Kang Chulin's ridiculous requests made him unable to speak, but he didn't disagree to them nonetheless. Although it would be tiring, it wasn't impossible. They didn't call old man Quan the king of the underworld for nothing after all. And Kang Chulin knew this. Manager O. Yes boss. Did you hear him? Three hours. I'll start immediately. Manager Rose started moving with his precise movements and took Kang Chol in's car and drove off outside. Now, are you satisfied? Let's begin then. Kang Chol in nodded his head and took out a huge bag and dropped in on the table with a loud bang. I brought a lot of items that can be mass produced and found easily. Today we will discuss what we will use. It really wasn't a waste of money buying a Jaguar for you. Good, let's talk. Here. After holding the bag up, he flipped it upside down, making the contents of the bag all fall down. With a sound making one think of a domino, a bunch of items from the Pankeha continent all fell down at once. Oh? Are these all items with special abilities? Of course. For example. This is the blinding ring. Kang Chol and took out a white ring from the bag. The blinding ring? It blinds the enemy for three seconds perfectly. Although it isn't of much use against monsters, I think it could be effective for self-protection. How do you use it? Like this. Is what Kang Chol and said before putting on his right index finger and pointed at one of old man Quan's underlings. Flash. It seemed as if white sparks flew. Ugh. The underling of his started to grab his face and roll on the ground in pain. My eyes. The only bad thing that the underling did was catch Kang Chulin's eyes. He became a lab rat because of that. No wonder why they called him a gangster. Why you? There are no side or after effects. Well, isn't it best experiencing something firsthand? Although old man Guan was extremely surprised, Kang Chulin said it offhandedly. After three seconds, the underling seemed to regain his sight and felt confused. It really is effective, but I think it's a bit over the top. Well, I think they are better than using gas guns for self-defense. You're right. But the only good thing about this country is copying and taking. Since guns, swords and other weapons are banned here, the government would try their damnedest to take it from us. No matter whether it has any way to kill or not. Although he sold guns to the Chinese and Japanese criminal syndicates. It was something sensible coming from old man Guan. Well, there really was some problems that came from that in the past. Kang Chol and thought of the things that happened in his past life after old man Quan brought the topic of selling up. It was too early. He needed more time. As the spec and power of the dimension travelers rose, the item's ranks would go up and the government's intervention would grow weaker as well. Now was not the time to take the world by storm. Then another one. He had brought a variety of items. Although some weren't items used for attacking, there probably was something here that could be mass-produced. The conversation grew longer. What's this? Not this. It's too expensive. There would be problems if you sold this. There were many discussions going on. What's this? Is this for drinking or for applying on the skin? Old man Quan took out a flask that contained a milkish liquid inside and shook it. It seems to look like that. Are you sure this is not a drug? Kang Chol and know what old man Quan was thinking. Old man Quan probably thought what was inside was something similar to propofol, a drug that you inject in your body to get high. It was fitting of someone that was known as the king of the underworld. Ha! Huh. The way you think. He smirked. Some people can only see some things. Ahem. Guam. 
old man Guan started making fake coughs with an embarrassed face. This is a liquid extracted from the talking tree. Kang Chao and explained. Talking tree? Extraction? As I said, it's a liquid taken from the talking tree. What is the talking tree? It's literally a tree that talks. Dot unbelievable. It's not that it talks because they have thoughts. Just that they read the brain waves of the nearby humans. After that, they can talk so people decided to call it the talking tree. Ooh. The Pankeha continent truly has many things. Fascinating. What does this liquid do then? You can learn languages. What? Old man Quan's body shaked. A are you serious? Talk about it in more detail. After you drink this liquid and you think of a language, it's like data about that language coming into your body. If you drink one every day, you would be able to learn one language within a week. If it's something many people speak, like Chinese or English, it would only take around 3-4 days. This is it. It's this. Dot. Let's do it with this. Is this really that good? Of course. Korea is the haven of academy as well as education. Things like TOEIC, English test for international countries, cause people to spend a bunch of money on it. With this, we would be able to earn a bunch of money. Dot. From the talking of old man Guan, Kang Chol and seems to understand something too. Yes. South Korea really was the haven of education. It was a country where people went into serious debt and risked the future to let their children get better education. By selling the liquid in a country like this, they would be able to dominate the education market in not just Korea, but other countries too. And there are no need to worry about the regulations either. If it's good for their children's education, Korean parents would make their children eat whatever. If the government tried to regulate this, they would taste some of their own medicine. Kukaku. Old man Guan spoke as if he had already achieved his dream. I will create an academy. I will allow the students to drink this liquid and make a curriculum for them. As well as a business for adventurers. Yes, that's right. Now I understand what you are truly talking about. This business is truly one that will let the goose lay the gold egg. There are infinite possibilities that can branch out from this. By using this extracted liquid as a signal flare in order to gain the people's trust, it would be easier when selling new items. This is just the beginning. Old man, you don't need to try and rush. There will be regulations. Although the plan of the academy is great, there will be regulations and rules made against it. Yes, he was right. It would be a fight. A tough and long fight. But that was obvious. Living light itself was like participating in a cruel battlefield. It was a society of infinite battles. The second you were out of your mother's womb, it was a competition, a competition against tall odds. Starting from primary school was a fight of grades, until fighting for salary when they were adults, a fight to gain a job after college. Especially Korea in the 2020s was an era where the competition was very ruthless. In an era like this, they had to wage war in any way possible. I will help you. Kang Chol and said. However, I won't do absolutely everything. This is not my fight, but yours. The one controlling this business will be you, not me. Kang Chol and's fight was in the Pankeha continent. He had no time waging war against the civilians of Earth. Your words, I understand them well. Old man Quan took his wrinkled fists and gripped them hard. Just leave it to me. I will succeed. Of course you will. If you fail. You will immediately switch partners. You know me well. Looking at you, I think of my elder brother of yesteryear, when he had yet to pass. Dot. Old man Guan started talking about the past. He was not just a businessman, but an emperor. He had more charisma than anyone, and was absolutely strict in management. I know what you are going to do to me if I fail. But I also know how you will treat me if we succeed. Talking about it, old man Quan said. Thank you. Dot. From this conversation, I can tell how our future business relationship and business will be like. With this, I truly will be able to leave the underworld and clean up. My dream will finally come true. For letting me escape my fate of being a criminal, thank you. Kang Chol and didn't respond. 
he didn't know much about these kind of conversations after all. Eat this meat later. He handed some of the peacock dragon's meat to old man Guan. What is this? Is it steak? Are you trying to revitalize this old man? It's dragon meat. Dot. It's good for your health. Don't eat things like ginseng or Viagra, and eat this instead. I don't eat Viagra. Yet. Old man Quan tried to make an excuse, when Kang Chol and phone started ringing and saw that there was a message from Park Dusik. Dot. But the face of Kang Chol and face turned stiff when he saw the message. Old man, I'll give you the liquid for the talking tree within two months. We'll talk in more detail later. Kang Chol and stood up. W where are you going? I have something that I need to do. Okay. Well, I'll start getting prepared for that. I'm leaving now. Wait. Old man Guan grabbed Kang Chol and. Let me go, I'm busy. Kang Chol and coldly snapped out, and pushed old man Quan's arm off of him. Your car. Ah. The Jaguar you asked for is still coming here. Give me a car key, anything is fine. Then use this. Since Kang Chol and was in a hurry, old man Quan handed his own car key over to him. A Porsche? Yep, the best there is. Dot this old guy. Startled, Kang Chol and started mumbling to himself. Age doesn't matter. To a man, his car, suit, and watch is key. Dot. Well then, you should get going. I will put your new house's location on your phone, so put it there later. I'll also put the Mustang and Jaguar. Also, is this truly enough to show my sincerity for you? It's definitely enough. Thanks, old man. Kang Chol and said something that was truly rare coming from him, he thanked someone. Old man Guan was right, a car was really something important to a man. He knew what it meant, lending a car key over to someone else. At least, Kang Chol and did. I'm leaving. Kang Chol and hurriedly left old man Quan's office. And. One hour later, old man Quan felt his strength from his prime coming back, and reminisced of his glorious past. After eating the meat from the peacock dragon, he felt as if he got at least ten years younger. Kukaku, I might even get another child from this. Ha 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 ha. Old man Quan's opinion of Kang Chalan rose even more. Startlingly, old man Quan's car was a Porsche 911 Boxster, and was even a convertible. For a man that was 80 years old, he truly had some good tastes. Room, Kang Chalan immediately started heading towards Park Du Sik's office. Although feeling the F6 engine was something someone wouldn't be able to experience often, he had no time to feel the enjoyment. Quack Young. Kang Chol and read the message that Du Sik left for him. This is what it said, Park Du Sik, Big Boss, I think I've found him, but something's off. If you read the message, please contact me as soon as possible. Although he felt anxious when it said something was off. He started off immediately when he heard that they had found a lead. Boom. As soon as Kang Chalin arrived at Du Sik's office, he broke the door open. It wasn't intentional, but the door broke due to his immense strength. W what? Get your weapons out. Big boss, big boss. Du Sik's underlings took out their weapons and got ready to fight. Dot. Kang Chalin was very fascinating to look at right now. He thought that they were overreacting for just a broken door. You crazy bastards. Aren't you going to put the weapons away immediately? Huh? Dusik hurriedly came out and stopped his underlings from doing something stupid. Sorry, I'm truly sorry, big boss. They're nervous recently because the situation for us isn't very good right now. Hey, you bastards. What are you doing? Apologize quickly. After recognizing that it was Kang Chal In, some of the gangsters' faces turned pale, and did a 90-degree bow. I'm sorry, big boss. Please forgive me. Although Kang Chal In face turned stiff because of the gangsters, it wasn't really a problem. He had no time to dwell on this matter. I'm truly sorry. Dusik apologized again. Something had happened to our people in Anchon, because of a guy called Black Leopard. A. I. He really is like a ghost. We can't catch him. Sighing, Kang Chol and stated, It truly it difficult trying to eat and stay alive now. 
Pangea was in a war, Old Man Guan was in a war, and even these gangsters were fighting a war to feed themselves and keep themselves alive. Anyway, what did you mean by you think you found him? Kang Chol indirectly asked. Th the thing is. Well, I think it's better if you sit down first. Du Six forehead was covered in cold sweat. It seemed like he was afraid of getting beaten up again. Just say it. Did you manage to find him? The thing is. With his hands trembling, Du Six handed Kang Chol in some documents. What's this? Well. 35 years old right now, the man called Kwa Kyung who lives in Seoul. Listening to Dusik talking with his ear, he skimmed through the documents with his eyes. And while reading, his eyes suddenly widened. These documents. He died last summer from a car crash. It was his birth certificate, as well as details of death. Dot. What kind of bullshit was this? Kwa Kyung was dead? Last summer, before Kang Chol and had even come back with a soul backup, reviving? No. Everything that Du Sik brought to him was not facts, but utter nonsense. This nonsense truly incurred Kang Chol and's temper, as he fought to calm himself down. No. He threw away the documents that Du Sik had handed him earlier. And no? Long story short, this isn't him. The Kwakyung that Kang Chol and knew worked under a lord that was part of the Gulveg Alliance until he died of lung cancer at the age of 38. But it was currently 2021, and Kwa Kyung was only 35. He should still be working as an adventurer. He should be roaming around some dungeons at this point. Look again. Kang Chol and shook his head. Chi the thing is. Do you have more things to say? Big boss. Just say it. Every policeman, government working. They helped us. Not only Seoul, we searched other areas too. Not only that. We looked at criminals with the name of Kwak Young. There was one living in prison, as well as a maths teacher named Kwak Young. But there was none that was 35 years old this year, who smokes. Go on. Yes, boss. After drinking some coffee, Kang Chol and signaled with his hands to continue. Although I'm not very smart, I'm not too stupid either. I used my brain too. If what Big Boss said was right, and that there was a Kwakyung that smoked, we found him. Yeah? Continue. So we hurried to a non-smoking clinic to find him, and found a dead Kwakyung. Dot. The dead Kwakyung had gotten nicotine patches to stop his addiction. It seemed like he was a serious smoker after looking through his details. Still no. When he said no, it truly was not. Although it makes sense why you think it is this Kwakyung. The Kwakyung I'm looking for is alive, not dead. Are you sure? I'm certain. Sigh, I'm sorry then. There was too little information. No, well done. At least you got something. Listening to Dusik's story, he could truly feel that Dusik had worked hard in order to locate Kwakyung, so he consoled him. You there? Kang Chol and pointed at one of Dusik's underlings, and handed a card to him. Take out 3,000, equivalent to $30,000. Th thank you. A are you continuing? Of course. If he's not in Seoul or anywhere near Seoul, try looking anywhere in Korea. The price doesn't matter to me. Why yes sir. I will try calling as much centers as possible. I like your attitude. Oh, I have one more piece of information. I information? Wow, that would really be helpful. It seems like Kwakyung has become an adventurer in the Pangea continent. Dot. It looks like the search will become much easier now. Thank you, sir. Do six face countenance brightened, it truly would be much easier to find an adventurer. Since there wasn't that much adventurers, he could look through communities and look for them more easily. Lucia, Old Man Guan, and even Do Sik now. Kang Chol and felt like he didn't need to do that much work nowadays, and felt a little bit uncomfortable. Big Boss, it seemed like you need to leave soon. Black Leopard, we don't know when that guy will strike. Is that so? Although Black Leopard isn't worth anything to Big Boss, doesn't Big Boss dislike a commotion? Don't you think it'd be better if I was here though? Ah, what do you mean? How could we ask for Big Boss's help? 
We aren't that kind of gangsters. Not even close. Kang Chol and thought that what Du Sik said was honorable, and was impressed. If you have any thoughts, you can quit this job and do something else. I'll introduce you. W. What do you mean? Old man Quan Hyung Wu. Do you know him? W. What? Which gangster wouldn't know the true boss and holder of power overall of Seoul? Old man Quan was truly a giant in the underworld business. Someone like Du Sik wouldn't have a chance to even see his face one. I have a business relationship with that old man. There will be a period in time where he will need some manpower. At that time, I'll introduce you to him. How long are you going to be able to feed yourself fist fighting? T thank you sir. No, I'm only doing this because I was impressed by you. Keep up the hard work. Thank you, thank you, big boss. I'm leaving now. I'll be back in a month. Yes, sir. Have a safe. It was at this moment. When Du Sik was about to do another 90 degree bow to Kang Chao In, a man suddenly appeared in the office. Ah. Black Leopard, you bastard. As luck would have it, Black Leopard came in coincidentally at this moment. Where the hell do you think you are? Is what one of Du Sik's underlings said before. Pow. Dot and he fell to the ground screaming in pain. Oh? Looking at this, Kang Chaolin's eyes gleamed with interest. This black leopard truly had some skill. Although it was just one punch, Kang Chaolin's eyes were sharp. Your park do sick? Black leopard, who seemed around 30, looked at do sick, smirking and smoking his cigar. How could he look so annoying, although it was a handsome looking face, anyone looking at him would want to beat him up. He truly was not a normal type of human. And who the hell are you? Black Leopard looked at Kang Chol in and said. Hey Black Leopard. If you touch him, you might as well prepare your funeral. We should talk amongst ourselves. Du Sik stated. Oh, so this guy's the boss of the gang? I thought that the boss of the Su, area name, was you, Park Du Sik. Shut the hell up, you bastard. Dusik went back to looking intimidating like a gangster, and ran towards Black Leopard with a sinister expression on his face. That won't work. Kang Chol and predicted the outcome of this battle. Arg. As expected, Dusik clutched his face in pain from the punch of Black Leopard. Be boss. You want a taste of this too? You crazy bastard. Looking at their fallen boss, the gangsters of Asu started piling on Black Leopard wanting to beat him up. Still not enough. Kang Chol and predicted that this still wouldn't be enough to defeat him. Fighting a battle with multiple members in a small area wouldn't benefit the gangsters. Not only that, Black Leopard was not a normal fighter. Footwork, smoothly flowing martial arts, as well as a kick at a decisive moment. Instead of a gangster, Black Leopard resembled a boxing, judo, kickboxing MMA player. Ufker. Finally, one of Du Sik's underlings took out a knife, no longer able to handle the humiliation. Hey, hey. Even though there was a sharp knife in front of him, Black Leopard didn't lose his calm and confidence. Using a weapon? Out of Black Leopard's hands came out a blackish mist. Surprisingly, Black Leopard wasn't a normal civilian, but someone who knew how to use mana. An adventurer. Kang Chol and looked at this scene in interest. You're so effed now. Using mana, Black Leopard started beat up the gangster who took out the knife. It seemed like his specialty was Mua Itai, a type of martial art. Pow. Papa. With some satisfying noises. A R G H. W H what are you doing to me? Ugh. M I A R M. Like leaves, do six underlings fell down. It wasn't even five minutes. This was the difference between a civilian and a mana user. Whoa. Smoke filled the office. Black Leopard didn't even stop smoking in the midst of the fight. After fighting the guys at Asu, should I take Gangnam, another area, or him? Yang De Unkbo, doesn't seem bad either. Black Leopard mumbled to himself. It was as if he thought it was a game of hopscotch, where he could take the territory of opponents for fun. Oi. Walking in front of Kang Cholin now, Black Leopard started staring at him, and spoke. Who the hell are you to stand in front of me so arrogantly? 
with a TSHHH, the cigar smeared all over the table that Kang Chol and was sitting in front of. Did you say it was Black Leopard? You're not bad. Smirking, Kang Chol and complimented him. Black Leopard? Sigh. Who the hell gave me this kind of stupid nickname? I have a proper name that's the letters long too. Korean names are typically three letters long. Mine is Cho Young Woo. Oh wait, it's actually two letters. Saying this, Black Leopard took out a new cigarette and lit it up. Who? My name is Kwak Hyung, not some cheesy and childish name like Black Leopard. The Overlord of Blood and Iron. Chapter 47. Kwak Hyung or not? After hearing that the other man's name was Kwak Hyung, Kang Chol and's face turned stiff, like stone. Black Leopard. Is Kwak Hyung? First of all, Three of the four things that confirmed that it was Kwak Hyung was already checked by him. Smoker, adventurer, and name. If the guy in front of him was truly 35 years old, the guy in front of him would truly be the Kwak Hyung he was looking for. To think that the Kwak Hyung he had been looking for all this time came to him of his own volition? It felt as if someone had tangled the threads of destiny with him and Kwak Hyung. No way. Kang Chol and first thought of the possibility that this man in front of him was truly the Kwak Hyung he was looking for. First of all, the image of a scholar and soldier truly didn't fit the gangster that stood opposite him. It was like the opposite of Lee Gong Myung. Fitting the fact that people called him a genius, Lee Gong Myung was able to get in the prestigious Harvard University with a scholarship, that's how smart he was. Not only that, but his image. They say that the water you play in changes the man himself, Lee Gong Myung, who played with Alex Rothschild in Harvard University was the epitome of gentleness, as well as being able to stay calm and cool no matter what the situation was. But a gangster? The Kwak Hyung that was toe-to-toe -to -toe with a genius like Lee Gong Myung was a gangster? With a not-so-funny nickname like Black Leopard too? No, it can't be. Kang Chol and shook his head. Out of the population of 51 million, there would surely be other Kwak Hyungs that were of age 35. They had only looked around Seoul. There was a chance that he had moved to Seoul in 2022. Kwak Hyung, huh? How old are you this year? Kang Chol and asked just in case. Huh, so disrespectful. Black Leopard gave Kang Chol in the stink eye. Even if you look at me like this, I'm still in my mid 30s, you know. Don't talk to your elder so disrespectfully. Kang Chol and was only at his late twenties. In Black Leopard's opinion, of course he was older than Kang Chol and. It was truly like that too. But. You're whatever years old, but you are sitting there talking to me. Doesn't make sense to me. Even though you're definitely under me. Black Leopard Kwak Hyung tilted his head. Just tell me your age. Kang Chol and gave him a grin in response and stood up from Dusik's chair. Dot. And Kang Chol and started looking down on Kwak Young. Kang Chol and was 184 centimeters, and Black Leopard's height was only in the mid-170s. Of course he was looking down on him. Who you you you? Smoke covered up Kang Chol and's face. Listen here, arrogant pry. But as he was talking. Bam. Kang Chol and flipped the table over, and ran towards Kwak Young. See crack. The heavy dust score bashed into smithereens, and the rubble filled up the whole office. Q. Black Leopard Kwak Hyung was nearly crushed by the impact, and he grabbed his wrist and screamed in pain. Impaled by wooden shrapnel, Kwak Hyung's wrist was bleeding profusely. Black Leopard, was it? Kang Chol and took a step forward. Dot. Suddenly, Kwak Hyung's face whitened and paled in fear. W. Who the hell is this guy? From head to toe, his whole body was trembling in fear. Even though he wasn't nervous raiding Park Dusik's office by himself, he truly was afraid now. It was like he had met a terrifying wild beast. Tell. Me. Your. Age. Who the hell are you to look down on me? Kwak Hyung aimed a low kick at Kang Chol and's face. Dot. But he struck thin air. That quickly? Black Leopard Kwak Hyung was startled. He had never seen someone dodge his low kick with such fast, precise movements. I guess you just won't listen, huh? Muttered Kang Chao in, as he closed the distance between them. 
Dot. Kwakyung hurriedly put his guard up, and tried to put distance between him and Kang Chao in. However, pow, the second Kwakyung raised his guard, Kang Chao In's right hand came in and grabbed Kwakyung's shoulders. Uh oh, I'm falling. Was what Kwakyung thought, as his body unintentionally fell down, drawing a smooth arc. Boom, gyu. Kwakyung's lips were bloodied, as he coughed blood out of his mouth. Cough, cough, cough. Trying to breathe after the damage to his lungs, Kwakyung seemed unable to speak properly. Speak. Kang Chul and stopped on Kwakyung's throat and spoke imposingly. How old are you? It was as if he was threatening that he would actually kill Kwakyung. You crazy bastard. Why do you care about how old I am so much? Kwakyung was frustrated. Who would beat up someone to such a state just because they didn't say their age? This was the first time he met someone as peculiar as this. As if I would get beaten like this. Kwakyung still didn't give up. Ha, try to stand up to this. Saying this, Kwakyung pulled up his mana. The effect of mana was more than just increasing your muscle strength, or increasing your energy output. You could beat someone that you normally couldn't just by using mana. It could reverse almost any kind of situation. PSHH, PSHHHH. As soon as mana started flowing in his hands, Kwakyung aimed his left hand towards Kang Chalin's ankles. But Kang Chalin's feet moved quickly. And. Kuyuk. With his ridiculous grip strength, he once again grabbed Kwakyung's collar. Runt. Kang Chol and grabbed Kwakyung and held him up, like a ragdoll. Test. And threw Kwakyung to the ground violently. Although Kwakyung screamed. My. Kang Chol in, who was already pissed off, continued to beat him up. Patience. Pow. One more time. Papa. Once again. Kapa. And one last time. I. Kwakyung, who was lying flat on the ground right now screamed in intense agony. Mana? When you fought, you had to choose your opponents wisely. Although his puny mana tricks would work on people like Do Sick, it definitely wouldn't work on him. I ask you one last time. Kang Chul and stared at him with a cold light in his eyes. If he didn't answer here? Kwak Yung or not, he wouldn't forgive the monkey that put smoke in front of his face. Cuck. W-W-H-Y. Did you want to know my? Huk? Kwakyung realized. Staring at Kang Chalin right now, there was no hesitation in his eyes. Kang Chalin would truly kill him if he didn't tell him his age. It's. 30. 5. Kwakyung finally relented. 35, huh? What region of the Pangaea continent do you work? I. Kwakyung opened his mouth. East. Part of the continent. Lamet goes. Cough. With a big cough, he spat out blood. Uh, uh? Kwakyung finally couldn't keep his consciousness, and fell to the ground, and fainted. But Kang Chol and didn't care about that. Kwakyung, smoker, 35 years old, adventurer. Everything that he knew about the past Kwakyung fell perfectly with the man fainted in front of him, and he was agitated because of that. Dot East Continent the Lord of Lamikos. Guadro's strategist, Quack Young. God of King Dammit. As the thought ended, Kang Chol and headed towards Quack Young in a flash. Do sick. Kang Chol and called. Gyu, yes big boss? You did well. Dot? That bastard is probably the Quack Young I was looking for. No, there's a very high chance that he is. Dot. Although Do sick was very surprised. Kang Chol and seemed like he didn't care, and called old man Guan. Yeah, what's the matter? This meat, it's insane. My strength. Kukaku. I have a request. Huh? I beat up a person. I want to treat him quietly, is there a method? Sigh. It hasn't even been that long since you've left, but you already beat some poor guy up? You have a one-of-a-kind personality. But treat him? For that. Why don't you just give him one of your potions? I think that would be more effective for those kind of bruises. It's not just bruises. I need a precise check up on him, to check whether he has lung cancer or not. Lung cancer? On the other side of the call, 
Old Man Guan was surprised. After beating someone up, Kang Jelin was going to make the other person do a full body check? What the hell was he even saying? I need a hospital where he can get treated and checked up. He needs to be locked up, enough so that he wouldn't be able to move a muscle for a month. If this was the Kwakyung that Kang Jolin was looking for, he should be at the beginning stages of the cancer, or the first stage of it. But he wanted concrete evidence. There is a hospital which I have some connections for. Since it's a big hospital, we can have him separated in a VIP room. He's an adventurer. What? Well, it seems like locking him up won't be easy then. I would lock him up myself if I had time, but I have no time to stick with you guys. I have another promise that I made. The promise he referred to was naturally with Lee Chirin. The deal he had made was undoubtedly huge. Kang Chol and had no plans to relinquish either Kwakyung or that deal. Ten special forces guards, no. Twenty of them, along with titanium locks to bind him up. Is this enough? For the guards, arm them all with pistols. It doesn't matter if they shoot an arm or leg of him if he resists. Got it. Send me your location. I'll send some men immediately. After ending the call with old man Guan, he stared at the fainted Kwakyung in front of him. Did I go overboard? But to think that this guy would be Kwakyung. Yeah, there's no way he is, right? He had one straw of hope left, which was whether the Kwakyung lying in front of him had cancer or not. Before that, the black leopard in front of him was not Kwakyung, but someone that had a chance to be Kwakyung. To think that someone equal to Lee Gong Myung would be like this. No kind of soldier or reputable general was like. Not possible, right? Kang Chul and thought. Soon after, a few famous figures in history flashed past his mind. Han Sen. Han Sen was a great general, of the Han dynasty, one of the few that could truly be called the greatest. From a young age, he was an orphan, and had to beg for food, and even faced the humiliation of being beaten up by gangsters. Compared to him, Kwakyung wasn't much worse. Liub. Another great in history, Liub was the main character in the whole three warring states period, and was also the first emperor of Shu Han. But there was a period in time when he had to beg for food too. Yes. People changed. Kang Chul and himself was a poor young man looking for any type of job, looking to earn money in any way possible. Although Kwakyung was a gangster, there was a chance that he was the Kwakyung he was looking for. Well, I guess we'll find out soon enough. At least he had found someone that he suspected was Kwakyung. Dusik. Yes, boss. Old man Kwan's underlings are coming. Hand Black Leopard over to them. The rest will be up to them. Dot. Although Dusik was startled when he heard that old man Kwan's underlings were coming, he soon regained his calm. Yes, boss. Continue what I first told you to. The one in front of me might not be the one I'm looking for. Can I continue after resting a few days? Dot? That's fine. I'll see you in a month then. Kang Chol and started to move. Are you leaving? I have something I need to do. The deal with Chiran was urgent. He had to move to the Pangaea continent immediately in order to meet the time. Dash, Mr. Chal In. Are you coming soon? At the date of the promised day, Li Chiren waited urgently for Kang Chol and to come. The situation wasn't good. They had spent thousands of their forces to take back Nadevler, and when they thought their forces weren't enough, their opponents used guerrilla tactics in order to ambush some of their men, and were still near them. If things continued like this, her territory would surely be decimated. If she couldn't manage to deal with these guerrilla tactics in a few days, they would have to go all out against them immediately. At least they wouldn't be starved or die of slow, torturous attacks. It was at that moment. Your Highness? A dwarf that looked tough came before Chiron. You could tell his attitude from the way he spoke, he had no respect for their lord. It was obvious that he didn't really care about their lord. Tell me, Secretary Sledge. That's right. The one treating the lord. Lee Chiron disrespectfully was none other than her own secretary. There's someone that says he wants to meet you. Dot. 
Li Chiren abruptly stood up from her throne. The Overlord of Blood and Iron. Chapter 48 Li Chiren's Fury. Then let him in, please, Secretary Sledge. Chiren had been waiting for Kang Chol in the whole time, and wanted to meet him badly. So you've come. For her, who was getting attacked by an alliance of two other lords, she was delighted to see that Kang Chol and had come. However, there was someone who made the happiness go away. My lord, why are you letting an unidentified person come into our territory? It was Secretary Sledge. I'll meet him first, and decide whether he is fit to see you or not. So please wait here. Even though he was the secretary of Chiran, he had no respect for her. The reason was complicated. First of all, the dwarves were sexist, and believed that males were greater and more important than females. They had strong and prideful personalities, and would never allow a female ruler to order them around. So the fact that Chiran had chosen this territory was a disaster. Second, Li Chiran had almost no charisma at all. Third, to the dwarves, Nadevlur was a sacred place, and even though their lord opposed trying to take it back, they didn't listen to her. All the dwarves thought about was taking it back. In conclusion, all of these factors lead to the dwarves ridiculing and mistreating their own lord, and had caused a disaster. H how dare you! thought Chiran, as she felt rage boiling inside her. From the beginning of the great summoning, she was confused and now all of her pent-up feelings felt like they were going to erupt and explode, like a volcano. Not only that, after hearing from Kang Chol in the life and ways of a lord, she felt humiliated and disgusted by the actions that her own secretary, Sledge was taking. Calm down, me! thought Chiran, as she fought the urge to punch her secretary in the face. Right now, Secretary Sledge was on the verge on rebelling against her for the territory of Dorado. If she raged right now and managed to irk Sledge, no one could tell whether he would truly fight back against her. Secretary Sledge. Closing her eyes, Chiron spoke. Please speak. Sledge retorted in a disrespectful manner. The one that's here right now is someone I know from my hometown. He's not someone to be suspicious of, so you can let him in. Are you sure about that? Yes. And how can I trust what my lord is saying? Dot. At that moment, Li Chiran felt that all the blood in her body was rushing backwards, and felt that her head was about to explode from anger. Chiran was originally a nice, kind individual, and if she was this mad at Sledge, you could tell that his attitude towards her was absolutely terrible. Huo! She exhaled loudly. Secretary. Yes? Do I not have the right to even meet my friends? Of course not. But because my lord is uncooperative in taking back Nadevler, who knows whether you'll bring in an outside force to fight and kill us. It was as if he thought of her as not their lord, but an enemy. Do you know how to count to one, but not to two it's a Korean idiom to express idiocy? She tried to be as patient as possible, and not pull out a knife and just stab him in the head. Sigh. Are you trying to educate me or something? I'm not trying to educate you or anything. Excuse me, secretary, without me, you can't use or access the shop for the lords. Will you be able to take back Nadevler then? Dot. If you don't let him in, I won't supply us with soldiers anymore. This was the final, trump card that Lee Chiran could play. Although they were disrespectful to her, she was still a lord, and owned the rights to the territory, with her sole core. The golden necklace she was wearing right now was the sole core for the territory. Even the secretary couldn't take it away from her. Ha ha ha, using underhanded methods now, are we? Sledge laughed as if she was saying something ridiculous. My lord, if you do that, I have another method. Well, if you aren't going to use that method right now, let the man in. Before I take the sole core and head back home. Her her. She was able to win in this discussion. But. Sledge's final words before departing made her heart clench. Yes, yes. I will listen to our great leader's orders. After all, what can you even do with one person? Ha ha, we'll let him in any time of the day. Dot. Just one person. This phrase made her heart clench. 
when he said that he had no thoughts of bringing reinforcements, he had truly come alone. Mr. Chow In, what are you thinking of? After making the deal with her, she truly had no idea what he would do by himself. She just wanted to meet him as soon as possible. Then. Someone stepped into the hall. I missed you. There was a man with chains on his belt standing there, smiling at her. It wasn't Kang Jolin. Dot. As the man saw her eyes widening, he hurriedly sent her some inconspicuous signals. It was then that Chiron realized that this was a man, Podolsky, was someone that Kang Jolin had sent. Ah, Chiron to think that we would meet in somewhere that isn't our hometown. How lovely. Since we didn't meet in a long time, will you allow me a kiss? A kiss? Ha ha, I see you're still embarrassed and shy as ever. Podolsky gave her a happy smile and walked towards her in long strides. Then. He kissed her on both of her cheeks. This was the social kiss, one that many did in western areas. From Lord Kang Jolin. Greater than, Podolsky told Lee Chiron without moving his lips, a truly hard skill to master. He's already inside your territory. Greater than, she was very surprised. Don't make it obvious, he sent me here in order to keep you safe. Greater than, after telling her King Jolin's words rapidly, he put both his arms on her shoulders and spoke while laughing. Ha ha ha. As always, you smell very nice. I can't stop myself from wanting to kiss you, what should I do? And as he said that, he leaned in again to kiss her cheeks and spoke. Tonight, he will come and meet you personally. Greater than, with that, Lee Chiron finally felt relief. Dash, about eight hours ago. Um, adventurers? Near the Dorado territory were thirty adventurers doing a sort of customs check. Yes, sir. The man who spoke was 190 centimeters, and had a huge beard, with a bald head. He looked imposingly at the surveyors with his massive, muscular body. This was none other than Billy, who had joined in the hunt for the Peacock Dragon in Team Slayers. How did you get here? The Dwarven Surveyor looked at them with an uncomfortable expression. I saw the recruitment poster. It seems like the Lord here wants to recruit adventurers to fight for her in the battle. Oh, so you're mercenaries then? I guess. Then it's two gold per day, and you'll have to stay in an area that's marked for you guys. Is that clear? Why just that place? I also want to take a look at the lord who hired us. That's not going to work. Shouted the dwarf. Our lord has no plans on meeting with you guys. If you want to work here, then follow the rules. If not, then get out. After receiving the slightly harsh treatment from him, the adventurers felt a bit uncomfortable, but didn't say anything. There's no reason to be so mad over that said Billy to the adverb, scratching his bald head. Well, I guess not. The only thing that really matters to us is the money. Fine, we'll stay in that area then. Good. That dwarf surveyor nodded his head, and after warning them multiple more times, he let them in. Or you guys. Come over here. A dwarf warrior beckoned them over, and lead them to an isolated area. It was a very small place, with limited space. Leader. The one sitting next to Billy whispered to Kang Jolin. This, is really weird. This is completely different from your area, Leader. Those dwarven bastards are so unfriendly, and the way they look at us makes me uncomfortable. Doesn't this mean that Miss Chiron's authority over here is very poor? Billy's insight was spot on. You're right. This won't be easy then. Then we'll make it work. Of course. What can't we do with leader here? The way that Billy looked at Kang Jol and was full of trust and admiration. After the hunt for the peacock dragon last time, Billy had truly been entranced by how strong Kang Jol and was. Okay, you guys be quiet for now. Let me think. Yes, sir. Billy signaled the others to be quiet, and everyone turned silent. Dorado itself was brilliant. But the situation couldn't be worse. The tension in the air could be felt. And even though they were mercenaries, the way they were treated was almost unacceptable. Although they took money for it, the role of a mercenary was to fight against the enemy. 
but the fact that the dwarves made sure that they couldn't meet with the person that had hired them was ridiculous. They're afraid that she would regain authority by allying with the adventurers against them. How utterly ridiculous. Kang Chol and now felt that all this wasn't really Chiron's fault, but everyone's collective responsibility. From the beginning, it was unlucky that there was a female ruler with the dwarves. And for a naive, nice person like Chiron, it was obvious that she wouldn't have fought back and intimidate the dwarves. Of course, if it was him, he would have long beaten up these disrespectful dwarves and shown them their place. But for someone like Chiron, this was obviously impossible. He could now see why she asked for his help. If I had come here with the army of my territory, they would have disrespected her even more. Wow, it really was a good idea bringing these group of adventurers here instead, he thought. A leader that tried to bring in an outer force or power normally didn't last very long. Their endings were very tragic. Even just for her image, they needed to dodge the nuance of bringing another army here. The fact that he wanted to save the army of Laputa and her situation fell together perfectly. Not only that, the deal with her stated that he was to help her get out of this situation, and not create the leadership ruled by an outer force. Right now, the cleansing of the inner forces are more important. We need authority. As expected of an experienced veteran, Kang Chol and could see what he needed to do first. He needed to calm the unrest in their forces, before they could even think about fighting the other forces. There was no way that the war would go well if there was an internal dispute. Kang Chol and slowly waited for the night to come, where he could finally converse with Chiron. He could almost smell the stench of blood on his two short swords on his belt. The Overlord of Blood and Iron Chapter 49 Spy, Traitor, and Kang Chol-en Badolsky's act continued long into the night. The reason being that he wanted Lee Chiron's guards to relax their guard around him. Sire, please forgive my insolence. In order to make these guys relax their guards, I need to resort to these kind of methods. Greater than, after that, Badolsky and Chiron started laughing crazily, like two idiots. Gaha ha ha. Kunyuk, I'm getting drunk. After drinking the ground grape, grape that grows in the ground, I didn't know that this even existed. Wine, Podolsky's face turned red, as he started throwing a fit. Koo, this wine, it's really good. We don't seem to have this kind of wine in home, do we? The home that Podolsky referred to was obviously Earth. Ho ho. This is only found in our territory. It's really strong wine. Want another one? Chiron followed Podolsky's act perfectly. Her will to become a strong lord like Kang Chol and allowed her to get through the humiliation she felt. Who you you you? Hey, Chiron. After drinking even more wine, Badolsky started staring at Chiron with one eye. Don't you think it's been quite a time since we've shared our love? I think the last time we did was at that place. For a second, Chiron's body froze from the strong words that Badolsky spouted. Who you? Laughed Badolsky as he started hugging Chiron. There's a spy here. Greater than, of course, it was an act. Pretend that we are plenty drunk. Only like this will we be able to make them relax their guards. Greater than, who, not right now. Huh? Why not? Need more wine. Ha ha ha, of course, of course. Podolsky nodded his head. You always needed wine to make you go hot. Then later today after you're plenty drunk? Ho oh, oh. Well, I guess we'll see when I really get the drunk, won't we? Unexpectedly, their acts were almost perfect. This was because Chiron tried her absolute hardest in order to match his act. But. Who are those bastards over there? I looked earlier, but your underlings seemed plenty disrespectful to you. Like you said, they deserve to be beaten. As Podolsky let out his feelings, Chiron seemed like she didn't want to miss this chance and spoke. Yes, they truly are arrogant and disrespectful. And she ground her teeth. Arrogant and disrespectful? Instead of listening to their lord's orders, they treat her like a scarecrow, and ignore her instead. What a bunch of stoneheads, a way of saying idiot in Korean, stoneheads, huh? Who, well, I don't think there are any underlings as ridiculous and unfaithful as mine. W what? 
HMPH, I guess they need to get educated then. As he said that, Podolsky flexed his muscles. Dwarves are idiots. They only think of retaking their territory, and don't know how to use their brains. Oh, did I mention that we were in a war right now? Oh, you mentioned that last week. Oh, did I? Hee <laughs> hee, maybe you forgot after that passionate night with me. Humphrey. Oh you. Now, they had almost a perfect harmony when they acted. Anyway, the dwarves only focus on retaking that area. They almost spent 2,000 of their forces in retaking it. But do you know what happened? No way. Yes. Even after spending 2,000 of their soldiers, these stupid dwarves failed to take back the land. If we had spent that much of our men in striking another lord, the story would be different. But since they do these things, how can I say that they are anything but idiots? Ho oh, ho. Oh. oh, seems like this lord also has a sort of strategy too. Not bad. Podolsky listened to Chiron's talking, and was impressed. But he didn't show any reaction about it. Those stupid bastards. Why don't you do anything to them? Sigh, if only I could. There's no one on my side. They don't listen to my orders, so what am I supposed to do against them? HMPH, I guess I'll help you then. Tomorrow morning, I'll help you educate those short bastards. Then, won't you be able to your authority back? Can you do that for me? Of course I can. My friend has a territory 100 kilometers from here. With my skills and his army, we would easily get rid of your stupid dwarves and get your authority back for you. If only that worked. Ha ha, I would be able to spend blissful days with you if that worked. After that, their conversation continued for a couple of more hours until Chiron finally couldn't resist the effects of the wine and fell asleep. Did I make her drink too much? After Chiron fainted, Podolsky took her to her bedroom while wobbling the whole way. After leaving her there and walking away, he mumbled to himself, although it was just mutterings of a drunk. Dot until he fell down on the grass and fell asleep there, completely drunk. Dash, Secretary Sledge. The dwarf who was acting as a spy came to Sledge to report as soon as their drinking was over. They finally stopped drinking. How was it? It was utter chaos, sir. They couldn't stop talking about ridiculous plans on taking her authority back. Huh. The BTCH I knew would drink wine sometimes, but wouldn't engage in stupid conversations like this. They called her a BTCH in order to discriminate her and this was now commonly said by the dwarves whenever Lee Chiron wasn't present. As I saw it, her true personality began to surface when she got drink. According to her friend's words, she become passionate when she drinks too much. The one acting as a spy began talking enthusiastically. Sigh then she really is a BTCH, isn't she? As expected, human females who pretend to act weak and nice do bad things behind one's back huh? Yes. That's exactly it, sir. What do you mean that's it? Is there more? It seems like they had a plot in order to take back her authority. Plot? What kind of plot? That bastard that drank with her said that he'd help her retake her authority. Ha ha ha, it seems like that guy isn't very simple either? Yes, I'm very sure he isn't very simple too. Okay then, continue. He said that he has a friend who's a lord located around 100 kilometers away from here. He said that he could gather the help of that lord and help her retake her authority. What? Sledge stood up and shouted in shock. H how dare she think of bringing outside forces? S sir, please calm down. As if I could. That BTCH of a woman isn't thinking of helping us retake Nadevler, but rather thinking of getting outside help in order to wreck chaos and chase us out. Secretary? Please calm yourself. Calm myself my SS. Looking at how things are going, IT seems like SHE is about to regain her authority here. But I don't think you need to worry so much, sir. Huh? Why not? It seemed like her friend was a huge boaster. He kept on saying things on how great he was. To me, it seemed like he was just boasting, and seemed like a con man. Not only that, his drinking habits are so bad that he fell asleep in the garden, drunk. Oh, 
So that's how things were, huh? Sledge starting laughing sinisterly. Cuckoo, no matter what you do, you won't be able to escape from my fingertips. It seems like this BTCH has no luck either. But. I can't just leave her alone. He didn't completely relax his guard. Look carefully at how the adventurers behave. There's a chance that they will make a deal with them, or try to convince them to join their cause. Yes, sir. Not only that, if someone comes to try and meet her now, tell them that she's unable. Don't let her see anyone, got it? At this moment, Sledge stepped over the line that he never should have, which was betraying his own lord. W. Water. Lee Chiron's dry throat made her wake up from her sleep. Sigh, I drank too much. Although it seemed like she had slept for a long time, her head hurt a lot. Well, maybe it was to be expected after drinking seven bottles of wine with Podolsky. It was already impressive that she was able to keep up her part of the act. She stretched her hands towards the bottle of water. No, she tried to, but she couldn't. This was because she was startled by the presence of a man, sitting near her. The man had a pelt that seemed like a black leopard draped over his whole body, giving off a mysterious feeling, as the moon was covered by his silhouette. You finally woke up. I was going to, if you didn't. The cold voice was able to calm her startled heart. It was the voice of King Chalin. Ha ha, Mr. Chalin. B but. How did you get up here? Through the window. The window? She was surprised. Below the window was a cliff that stretched for over 30 meters, it was something that no human should be able to scale. It's not that difficult for me. Kang Chul and spoke indifferently. For him with overdrive on, it truly was nothing. Oh. Take this. Kang Chul and threw two scroll of parchment to her. What's this? She asked. One of them is for the contract, and the other one. Kang Chul and spoke. Is a death list. It was a book that would determine who died, and who lived, a death list. The Overlord of Blood and Iron. Chapter 50. Death List. Listening to the unexpected and unpleasant word, Lee Chiron's face stiffened. A death list. Like the word suggested, a death list was a list to write the names of the ones who would perish. It meant that they would see their blood, right now, we need to get rid of the internal enemies, before the external ones. Why? Are you hesitant? Kang Cholin asked. Yes. I haven't killed someone yet, I am afraid. Well, at least you're honest. Is there really use in acting tough with you? I'm sure you'll find out sooner or later anyway. Kang Cholin didn't say anything after hearing her honest response. At least it was better than forcefully lying. Well, that's not my problem. Was what he thought but he decided to let her face the reality. You decided to live as a lord. And that's why you called me. You're right. Then you need to kill. Is that the only way? Authority and power comes from blood. The blood of the enemies. This was something you couldn't argue against. If you didn't lose your control and authority here in the first place, this never would have happened. You mean it's already late? Yes, it's too late. Kang Chol and knew this was the only way. Humans and dwarves, dwarves and humans. These two races are like water and oil. They can't live together. If there was a powerful human lord that had the respect of the dwarves and acted as an intermediate between them the story could be changed, but as of now. Not only that, your total population is 60% dwarf. Almost the whole territory is in control of those disrespectful bastards. Dot you're right. I left where I was supposed to stay during noon, to see how things were here. Do you know what my thoughts were? Lee Chiron didn't respond. The Lord is clearly human, yet it seemed like the humans were the slaves of the dwarves. Out of the total population of 1,000, the 600 dwarves were living in good houses, drinking good wine and enjoying themselves. On the other hand, the 400 humans had to live in poverty-stricken conditions having almost nothing to eat and drink. Is it that bad? Did you not check your own territory? Yes, I'm almost trapped here. Even to go to Earth, I have to leave my soul core behind here. The working force of the dwarves are incredible. He said. 
but they are incredibly difficult to rule over, especially if it's someone of a different race. Since the conflict has come this far, there's no turning back now. Therefore. And he finished it off. You decide. Whether we see blood, or not. If you decide not to, then our deal from earlier is cancelled. There is no possible way for me to help you without drawing blood from our enemies. That's the ways of a saint, and trust me. I am no saint. If you're going to say no, then just leave the Pangaea continent forever. At least in Earth, there won't be these kind of horrors. After saying this much, Kang Chol enclosed his eyes. This meant he would give her some time to decide. Killing. Lee Chiron kept on thinking of such a foreign word to her. For someone like her, who had been working as a normal employee at a small company, killing was something that she wouldn't have even dreamed of. Especially if it was removing one's allies, and not the enemy. Even if the ally was scarier than the enemy. Of course, she could run away to Earth, and live a rich woman's life, selling goods from the Pangaea continent that no one would dare to hope for. But. Was there really a point in a life like that? Was it really honorable and good, running from her destined life and living a plain, an ordinary life? What would the 400 humans do after she left? If she left, there was no doubt that they would suffer even more from the dwarves, and be discriminated against even more. I am a lord. I have the authority, and the responsibility to take care of my own territory. It was as if there was a knife sharpening itself in her mind. I will not run. With her two fists clenched together, her mind suddenly recalled her secretary, Sledge. Less than and how can I trust what my lord is saying? Greater than, she recalled the contents of their discussion just this week. His attitude really made her incensed, and it didn't help that he tried to lock her in. Sledge, you've already crossed over the line you never should have she thought. The originally kind and compassionate eyes suddenly let out a bit of bloodlust. Seems like you've decided. Of course, Kang Jolin could tell from the change in her expression. Yes, I did. Although it might be difficult, you have to face it. A merciful lord? There are none. There are only those that look kind and compassionate, none that really are. I think I get what you mean. I need to get rid of the dwarves, and become the ruler of the humans instead. It's too late for them. You are right. Kang Chol and nodded his head in agreement. Although the best method was to let the humans and dwarves cooperate and compromise, as they had said before, it was already too late. So even if it was wasteful, they had to get rid of the rotten 60%, in order to save the 40% that was remaining. Although it would be a huge hit to their forces, they still had to do so in order to avoid total chaos. I'll do it she said, as she took a pen out to write on the death list then start writing. The ones who die, and the ones who live. You decide. Yes she nodded her head, and opened the parchment. The first. One. Her hand slowly wrote down the name of the person who would perish first. It's you, Sledge. It was none other than the secretary of Dorado, Sledge himself. After the death list was written, Kang Jolin immediately began to move. Apparently, the biggest hurdle was going to be a special group of dwarves, led by Secretary Sledge, called the Iron Hammer Group. These were the ones that they definitely had to remove. Other than them, written on the list was General Smith, another dwarf, along with him the spy, and the sage Majestic, who worshipped the god of the blacksmiths. Quickly, we'll move quick. Kang Chol and wanted to get rid of these guys as soon as possible. Tomorrow night, all at once. If this got delayed, there was a chance that all 600 of the dwarves would get pulled into this. First, they had to get rid of the Iron Hammer group. This elite group who should be guarding the Lord was instead sledgeified, meaning that they had all turned against their own Lord. But after they got rid of this group, they needed another group to protect Chiron. Well, this is her own responsibility. I'm not going to help out in this he thought. The next night. The high-ranking dwarves living in Dorato all got a message from Chiron, requesting an urgent meeting. Although they really didn't care in the beginning, the contents of the message made them come to the meeting. This is what it said. I'm planning on helping to take back Nadavler with you guys, 
so make sure that everyone is present in this meeting. If anyone is missing, everything that I said will be cancelled. Nadevlor was a holy, sacred place for the dwarves, as well as where their workplaces were. Comparing it to Earth's standards, it was similar to Mecca, or Jerusalem, if the cultural significance was multiplied by ten. So when the dwarves received the message, everyone had to come. Welcome. Li Chiren greeted her vassals. I've been waiting. At this moment, they felt that she had changed. The her right now was very different to the past her. Her depressed face wasn't here anymore, just calm eyes surveying everyone around her. She had changed overnight. There's only one reason that I called all of you guys here she spoke. Those who wish to live, those who serve me. Kneel right now. If you do, I will forgive you. However, her originally calm eyes suddenly showed killing intent. Those who do not. I will execute as a punishment for not obeying their lord. Now, you can decide. Chapter 51 The Purging Listening to the words of Li Chiren, the faces of the dwarves turned stiff. But that was only for a short while. The dwarves started staring at her like she was crazy, and some couldn't even contain their ridicule in their eyes. This was because her words sounded like nothing but an empty threat to them. Punishment for not obeying? Killing them? This was something that was only possible for powerful, influential lords, not someone like her. Ha ha ha. I don't know what you're on about, you stupid woman. Ha ha. Said Sage Majestic, while stroking his long, white beard. You said that you were going to help us take back Nadevler, but to think that you came here to spout some nonsense instead. It seemed like our lord has gone crazy dragging us out in the middle of the night for this. After saying that, Sage Majestic stared at Li Chiren as if she were a bug, one that he could step on and kill at any time. Hoo, don't tell me that it's because of that stupid drunkard that visited you a few days ago? Please. Sledge, whom she wanted to rip to shreds, spoke at this moment. Drunkard? I have no one around me that is a drunkard. I have no idea who you're referring to. Secretary. Ha ha, you can stop pretending now. Pretending? Are you not saying this right now because of that Badolsky that originates from your home? Sledge said this proudly. Even though Melora tries to escape from her fate, it seemed like she still doesn't know that she is stuck at the palm of my fingertips. Ha ha ha. It seems like you've overheard our conversation. How dare you? Spying on your own lord. Saying this. Li Chiren's countenance turned incomparably frosty, like the tundra in the north. Dare? Are you finished speaking now? If you spied on your own lord's private matters, even dare is not a word that expresses the reality of things. You disrespectful, disloyal secretary. Did you just call me disrespectful and disloyal? Yes, I did. Sledge, you're nothing but a traitor. No matter how much you beg. I have no plans on saving your life anyway. Save my life? Ha! Huh. Sledge laughed as if he heard the most ridiculous thing ever. Sigh. You stupid, uneducated bh. And he crossed the line. Excuse me, Secretary Sledge. A dwarf holding a pickaxe stood in the middle of the two. Even though the Lord may have used some excessive words, don't you think you've stepped over the boundary? Even though she didn't help us in trying to take back Nadevler, she is still our lord. It was the leader of all the workers based in Nadevler, the workforce leader, Yorad. I think you should beg for your forgiveness right now. To Yorad, he really didn't care about this fight for authority. All he wanted to do was go back to Nadevler and work. He was one of the only ones that had remained loyal to Lee Chiren. Tut tut. You can shut up. You uneducated dwarf who only knows how to work and mine. Sledge looked down on your ad. Excuse me? Dwarves had a lot of pride. Even though it was an indisputable fact that your ad had a lower rank than Sledge, he still didn't care and started staring daggers at him. Did you just call me stupid? Yes. I just called a stupid person a stupid person. Is there something wrong with that? You piece of st. Even after insulting our lord. You still dare to blabber on with that filthy mouth of yours? Ha! Huh. This stupid dwarf. Saying this, Sledge shook his head. It seemed like to you, 
that BH on the chair is our leader? Of course our Lord is our leader. Who else could be the leader then? Ha! Secretary Sledge. No. Sledge. It seems like you really are just a traitor. After saying this, Yorad took out his gigantic pickaxe that he had slung across his shoulders earlier. Even though I agreed with you that we should try and take back Nidavler, I can't take an insult to our own lord, you traitorous bastard. Yorad's face was totally red by now. It seemed like he wanted to just charge towards Sledge and beat him up. But Sledge still remained seated, calm. This is why I'm calling you a stupid dwarf. Yorad, do you know what that BH tried to plot against us? Plot? You see, she has a friend from her hometown named Podolsky. Those two seem to be discussing about taking over Dorado by bringing in another lord's force. The traitor here is not me, but her. Sledge shouted. W what? Bringing an outside force? Sigh. I knew she was fishy. To think she pretended to be all nice and quiet. The dwarves, who were dissatisfied with her from the beginning started to rant. Outside force? Even the righteous Sledge's brain grew chaotic from that word. Are you sure about this, Sledge? Stated General Smith, of the Dwarven Army. Of course, General. And how do you know this? I sent a man named Int to spy on her, because I thought she was suspicious. Who would have thought? Yes, I overheard them. I swear on my dwarf spirit that what secretary is true. Said Int compassionately. Sigh, this won't do. Was what General Smith said, before picking up his battle axe and started walking towards Lee Chirin. General Smith. Even though you're angry, you can't be thinking of harming our lord, can you? Urad still blocked his way. Out of the way. General, this isn't right. Think about it again. You shouldn't be hurting our own lord. This BH isn't my lord. Smith shouted. Sigh. If even the general says so, I guess I'll have treat you like a traitor too, then. You stupid worker. You traitor. They glared daggers at each other. But as they were about to face each other, Sledge smirked and brought them in. Iron Hammer Group, take down your ad. With a loud boom, the door that was made of the expensive and fabled Damascus steel was opened, to let in the elite force of the Dorado territory, the Iron Hammer Group. You disloyal bastards. And you still call yourself the elite force of Dorado? Although your ad shouted and tried to run towards them, it still wasn't enough. Your ad, who was a miner, had no way to fight against the elite battle-hardened veterans of the Iron Hammer Group. Let go. Let me go. My lord, please rue. Pow. The group punched Urad in the stomach, enough to make a human adult faint. Ha ha ha. Now, what will you do? Sledge and his Iron Hammer Group started walking towards Lee Chiron's seat leisurely, smirking. Your plot is over now. Or should I say, it was already over from when you started. What's that supposed to mean? answered Lee Chiron in a dry voice. That Podolsky is nothing but a con man. No way. Ha. You dumb BH. From the beginning, he wasn't going to help you anyway. He only came because of the vast amount of resources and gold you possessed. Not only that, he should be locked in the cells by now, getting tortured. After all, I locked him up already. I've endured enough until now. She thought not caring about the others. I have no need for mercy anymore. Instead, rage boiled inside her. Even though she tried to lead the dwarves and Dorado into a better future, she only got ignored, and it had gotten even worse when they had gotten invaded by the other lords. But the fact that she originally had a kind, benevolent nature proved to be a disaster to her, as she could do nothing but get dragged around. It's time for the cleansing to commence. She spoke. I can't take any more of this disrespectful and ridiculous farce anymore. If you want to live, Neil. This is your only chance. Ha! Sledge ignored her saying and laughed at her. You only know how to talk. Do you honestly think that we are going to believe you? Was what Sledge said until. You're worse than trash. A piercingly cold voice suddenly spoke. If your lord tells you to kneel, you kneel. Why do you talk so much and argue against her? It was. Him. 
kill all the ones that don't kneel. Of course, except him. Kang Chol and spoke, as he pointed at Sledge. And at the same time, black shadows filled the hall, coming down from the windows. The Overlord of Blood and Iron. Chapter 52 Disloyalty Leads to Death all the adventurers that came in from the windows were part of Team Slayers the group of adventurers that had helped him hunt the peacock dragon. You guys. The leader of the adventurers, Billy Hafford took out his fearsome mace, Evening Star, and spoke. Our leader says to kill all the ones that don't kneel. And as soon as he finished speaking. A-R-G-H. Gua. You could hear the sounds of screaming dwarves everywhere. She's grown. Kang Chol and stood in a corner leisurely, watching the adventurers fight. He couldn't care less of the scene of blood. He, had had once killed tens of thousands of men in one day wouldn't even blink at a slaughter of this level. Mr. Cholin. Lee Chiron called Kang Chol in in a nervous voice. Why? Are you afraid? He replied in a dry voice. It's. Terrible. Truly. She spoke with a trembling voice. It should be. Kang Cholin could sympathize with her feelings completely. Why? It was because there was also a time where he was like her. Ten years ago. But you still have to conquer your fear. If you cannot stand something of this level, you won't be able to survive here. Maybe if she was a lord in the main continent he wouldn't push her this far, but this was the pandemonium region. This was the haven of slaughter and death. There was no way to survive until Ragnarok until she faced her fears. It should be painful. He opened his mouth. It should be terrifying, disgusting, and terrible. I know what you feel too. But you have to be tough. To dot tuck? The second you show weakness, there are many who try to strike you. Just like these traitors. He said, and pointed towards the dwarves, that were now fighting against his group of adventurers. But you have to endure when it's sad. When it's painful. When you feel lonely. And even when you're afraid. If not, then at least try not to show it. Always try to cloak yourself in a veil of bravado. This was all he could really say from what he had experienced. That is a lord. Pretending to be resourceful even when not, pretending to know even if you don't. That's what a lord is. If you want to become a good lord, then you will need to learn how to become a good pretender first. Did you endure all of it? The fear and the loneliness? Alone? The words that you're speaking right now is only those spoken by the truly experienced. She really couldn't see through him. The only thing she knew about Kang Chol and was that he was the one that radiated overwhelming imposingness, as well as a tough strongness. One more thing. He continued. Although you shouldn't avoid and hate killing, you should never enjoy it. Although there's only a minuscule difference, that's what differentiates a lord and a murderer. Always remember this. The words of a lord can influence another one's life and death. She could somewhat understand what Kang Cholin meant. Endure, and be strong. Although deciding to do so or not is your choice, Li Chiren. He thought. He had no more advice. He had no more to say, or no more he wanted to say either. It's time to join in. While she was trying to calm herself down, Kang Chol and realized that it was finally time for him to join in the fight. At this moment, Billy shouted across the hall. Don't fight them directly. These guys, they have stupidly strong strength. It was true. If an average adult human male struggled with holding up 100 kilograms, an adult male dwarf would be able to hold up over 200 kilograms. This was the difference in muscle mass and genetics, the dwarves that averaged around only 150 centimeters, which is around 4 apostrophe 9, weighed 30 kilograms more than a healthy, tall human. Long story short, dwarves were 1. 5 2 times stronger than humans. What the fck? How come these damned dwarf bastards are so strong? Billy shouted and aimed for a member of the Iron Hammer group. Ding! The sound of metal hitting metal rang throughout the whole hall. Cuck! The Billy, who was over 190 centimeters, which is around 6 apostrophe 2, was knocked over. The hand that held the mace had blood splattering everywhere, though by some miracle he had managed to hold on to it. 
Seeing this scene, a few dwarves took this opportunity and ran towards Billy. O-S-H-T. He thought, and tried to move his body, but it wouldn't move. At this rate, there was no doubt that his head would split into two after the impact of the hammer. Get out. At that moment, Kang Chol in appeared and body slammed Billy away, and faced the two dwarves running towards Billy. Speed, precision over strength. Kang Chol in's eyes gleamed like those of a hawk. Puck. The rapier that Chiron bought for Kang Chol in showed its power, as it precisely drilled into the area where the dwarf's helmet had a gap. Q. Blood splattered out from the inside of the helmet. But even after the dwarf became fatally injured, he tried to move towards Kang Jolin. As expected of a dwarf, their mentality was something that deserved praise. But the opponent was too strong. Then take this. Kang Jolin, who held the rapier in his right hand dashed towards that dwarf in a lightning quick manner, and stabbed the dwarf multiple times, quickly ending his life. In a space of not even a second, four unbelievably fast strikes hit the dwarf on his mouth. Instead of just piercing the mouth though, it even went through his tough skull. Leader. Billy, whom Kang Chol in had saved, looked at him as if he were Billy's wife. This seems usable. Kang Chol in was pretty satisfied with the new rapier that he had received, Punto. This item was meant purely for stabbing and it also had an option to allow his attacking speed to rise by 20%, allowing him to aim for the weak spots of the dwarves easily. Of course, to use this item to its fullest potential, the user itself had to be skilled in the way of the sword, and had to stab absolutely precisely and perfectly, matching the timing as well as the area of where he stabbed. Although this didn't matter to Kang Chao In, who was proficient in sword bully. Billy. After instantly killing two of the Iron Hammer group, Kang Jolin spoke. Yes, leader. The Billy who had fallen down earlier stood back up. We need to end this quickly. We don't have time. And he dashed off. This wasn't the only problem. In an hour, he needed to use Lee Chiron's newly purchased units to purge absolutely all of the traitors and high-ranking members of her territory. Finish this within five minutes. After deciding on his goal. He used the mana that was stored inside of him to go into the state of overdrive. Pow, Kang Chol in alone wreaked havoc among the dwarves, injuring all the dwarves that seemed to have an advantage against the adventurers. But there were no instances where he personally finished them off. He just needed to help his allies to make it an advantageous fight for them. The reason was because his overdrive effect only lasted for a single minute. But that in itself was enough to lead his allies to victory. By the time the effect was over, the fight which was once even was now heavily in the favor of the adventurers. T that monster. Sledge could not believe the situation right now. The Iron Hammer Group. The elite force of Duradho began falling one by one. The Sledge that believed in his own military might felt like the sky was falling down on him, but there was no time for regrets. Dot because that was already the past. Cuck. After the final member of the Iron Hammer group fell to Billy's repeated attacks, Sledge felt dread and hopelessness inside of him. P please. Spare me. Sage Majestic had knelt down, and had given up on his dwarf's pride, wanting to survive. U-G-H dot cuck. Meanwhile General Smith already lost both of his arms and W-S throwing up blood. And the spy, in was already rolling on the floor, his corpse missing his head over. It was all over. It seems like I've found someone that is going to be usable in the future. Kang Chol in thought of the death list that Lee Chiron had wrote earlier and marveled. The death list was just to test her willingness to kill, and was nothing but a piece of tissue paper. But. The list that Lee Chiron wrote perfectly corresponded to the high-ranking members of the Dorado territory. Surprising. This was proof that his eye for talent was not faded and that Lee Chiron truly had hope in surviving in the Pandemonium region in the future. Not bad. She's someone that could be useful if I ally with. I'll make sure to keep tabs on her and check up on her after this. But while he was thinking of this, Sledge started moving. You disgusting BTCH. Holding his fearsome hammer, Sledge started running towards Lee Chiron in a fearsome speed. Ems. Chiron. 
be careful. Although Billy desperately tried to chase behind Sledge, he was too late. Sledge had almost arrived in front of her. It was dangerous. If Lee Chiron's small head took the brunt of that hammer, there was no doubt at all that she would perish instantly. However, how dare you? Suddenly, Badolsky appeared out of nowhere, and bound Sledge's right ankle up with a whip. A R G H. Bang. As if he had fallen into a hunting trap, Sledge's body did a 360 turn in the air, and fell to the ground. Is it over? Kang Chol and looked around the hall. There was no one alive that was written down on the list by now. Even the Iron Hammer group that Sledge had put so much faith in was all lying on the floor by now, dead. The only one that was alive now was Sledge. Billy. Yes, leader. Get rid of the corpses. And don't let anyone move a muscle or speak from the ones that are alive. Just leave it to me. The adventurers all started moving, following his orders. Traitor. Kang Chol and put his rapier on Sledge's forehead, making a drop of blood fall from his forehead down to his lips. And how should I kill you? Looking at Sledge, Kang Chol and gaze was frostier than a glacier. No, it was closer to rage than a cold expression. He was a man that never accepted betrayal. Especially if it was against one's own lord. Not only that, the one who should be taking care of the lord best, the secretary was the one that lead the charge against his lord. Before he had been reborn, it was not a rare sight to see some lords married with their secretaries. So seeing this, how could he not be angered? You. Dirty human. Sledge looked towards King Chol and wrathfully. To think that you plotted against me with that stupid BTCH. You will fall into the depths of hell. You will die unknown in a desert. Your parents next will die by the hands of your enemies, and your children will become slaves of your enemies and be humiliated. And he started cursing at King Jolin. If you're going to curse, at least try to make it more detestable. But King Jolin didn't even snort. Oi, traitor. King Jolin gave Sledge a terrifying smile. There are over hundreds and thousands of guys like you, who cursed me to death. Out of the past lords. If they made a ranking to see who had gotten the most hate, Kang Chol and would definitely be at the forefront. Because he was the greatest villain. After all, there was a reason that the fact that his name was synonymous with the strongest, and also the most evil. But do you know what happened to the ones that did curse me? Kang Chol and clenched his two fists. And. He started to violently beat up Sledge. The Overlord of Blood and Iron. Chapter 53 the fate of a traitor. Ugh. Even while getting beat up, Sledge endured. After all, his dwarven pride would not allow him to make any sounds after getting beaten up by a mere human. Pow. Papa. Kang Chol and fists flashed by like lightning and hit all over Sledge's body, like the full force of a waterfall. Gyu. Out of Sledge's sealed mouth came a small whimper. So you're saying that your bones are quite tough, eh? Kang Chol and smirked as if he was proud of Sledge. It was a gesture to admit that Sledge wasn't all that bad. Gyu. Do you think someone like you will truly be able to control me? Hoo oo, there's no way, there's no way. Ha ha ha. Sledge started laughing maniacally at Kang Chol in. Oh, is that so? replied Kang Chol in, as he started showcasing hits that couldn't be expressed in just words. To him. There existed methods to make these tough dwarves scream with every hit he landed. Cuck. Arg. A G H H. Cuck. With just this. You cannot dot diff dot hog. PP please. As soon as Kang Chalin started using some of his real force behind the hits, Sledge's mouth begged for mercy. A A G H H. Arg. And they were soon replaced by ear splitting screams. P please. A G H H. Just dot kill dot q. A R G H. S stop. Cug dot hitting dot stop dot please. Not even five minutes later, a crying sledge started to beg King Chol in. How the hell does he hit like that? Wow, I really shouldn't mess with our leader. Yep, definitely. The adventurers watching themselves started trembling with fear. That was how terrifying the hits were. He truly showed how killing someone quickly and cleanly was actually a type of mercy. 
as expected of a dwarf, it actually feels quite good. While in the middle of torturing Sledge, Kang Chol in muttered. If there was anyone that heard him at this moment, they would surely stare at him like a freak. And Mr. Chol in? Li Chiron cautiously spoke. After all, who wouldn't after seeing such a scene? If a normal person saw Kang Chol in beating up and torturing Sledge until the point where he couldn't even speak properly, they would surely be terrified. What do we do with him then? Will we kill him now? No. Kang Chol and shook his head. Then. We make an example out of him. Example? Tomorrow, I plan on publicly executing him, in front of all of your civilians. Then, they would probably what happens to the ones that rebel against you. They need to see with their own eyes what happened if they think about some things they shouldn't against their leader. Oh. Realizing Kang Chol-in's thought process, Li Chiron gasped in enlightenment. That's right. If I killed Sledge after losing control of my emotions, it would have been bad. I just needed to wait one more day. Then I would also be able to reinstate my authority. She nodded her head. You've improved. Kang Chol and had a rare smile on his mouth. He could finally communicate to Li Chiron like another lord. It was almost unknowingly teaching a disciple. The death won't be pretty. Dot it'll be a gruesome execution. Do you not want to do it? No. I also hate this man. Although I could maybe forgive the other dwarves, he is the only one I won't be able to. Well, the execution will be very bloody. Something that would instill the fears into the hearts of the ones watching. I only hope that I can withstand that then. Li Chiran's body unwittingly shook after Kang Chol and described the events that would take place. She couldn't imagine an execution that even Kang Chol and said was gruesome. Podolsky. Kang Chol and called Podolsky. Yes, my lord. Wrap him up and put him in the dungeons. You have to wrap him up very tightly, so that he isn't able to kill himself. Understood, my lord. Kang Chol and didn't know anyone as experienced and trustworthy as Podolsky when it came to the ways of tying someone up as Podolsky. After taking a glance at the unconscious Sledge, Podolsky began to work. And as expected of him, he tied up Sledge as if he was a piece of ham. Looking at it made one feel amazed, it seemed impossible for Sledge to even move his eyebrows. Mr. Cholin. What do we do? If the news is leaked to the dwarves, they will begin a protest. Li Chiron's worries were well founded. There's a method. But to Kang Chal In, it was no problem. Don't tell me. You plan on massacring the dwarves? As if. The working rate of the dwarves is insane. They are the number one among all the races in working. If we kill all of them, it'll be a loss to you. It'll also be a loss to me, since we are allied together. Then what are we? We use him. Kang Chol and pointed at the sage majestic that was trembling in fear right now. Him? When you wrote the death list, what was the reason that you wanted to spare him? That's because. He's the leader of the religious group. Although he did try and betray me, I was afraid of the rebellion and protests that the dwarves would do. Exactly. Excuse me? If we just use him, it won't be hard to get the respect and authority that you so needed from the dwarves. Oh. She sighed in enlightenment. And. That dwarf. Kang Chol and pointed at workforce leader Yurad. That man still has loyalty towards you. If you are able to control him well, you will be able to earn the hearts and respect of the dwarven miners. Kang Chol and had already calculated what to do after the purging. 60-70 people at max? We only need to kill around that much. The ones that had actively helped the rebellion. I understand. Well if you do, you should start moving. Li Chiran started moving towards Yurad. Workforce leader Yurad. Yes. My lord. I had no choice. If I didn't do this, my life would be severely endangered. I. Understand. I want you, Yurad. Although you did stand by their side, I know it was because of your wish to take back Nidavler. You mean? Yes. I have no intention on giving up Nidavler. Just that I was planning on taking it back after taking care of the invaders in our territory. Can you just wait until then? 
I promise, we will be able to take it back after just a month. Just a month? Yes, no matter what. Li Chiran showed her steely determination. My lord. And your ad kneeled down to Li Chiran, this year ad, I will definitely remain loyal to my lord until the day I die. Please forgive my disloyalty of before. And thanks to this, your ad as well as his 150 miners that followed him were now under Li Chiran's control. You're a sage? Kang Chulin asked. Sage Majestic was Kang Chulin's task. Why yes. Will you make a speech debasing and vilifying Sledge tomorrow or not? He wanted to make Sledge the biggest son of a BTCH after the speech. Do it. I'll do it. Of course I'll do it. I will also tell the civilians on how much I support our Lord Li Chiran. Just leave it to me. The sage even promised that he would support Li Chiran from now. It seemed like he definitely wanted to live. And if you speak nonsense? No, no. Never. Please, just spare my life. I'll watch and see how things play out then. Yes sir, just leave it to me. Oh, my lord. Would you please forgive this unloyalty and of a sage? He emotionally said, before running and kneeling before Li Chiran. It seems like all the high ranked people are cleaned up for now. After just a few more, the authority of this territory will be completely by hers. Now it was time to get rid some of the rotten parts. Your ad. Can you take some of your underlings to get rid of the trash of this territory? Chi the thing is. Your ad hesitated as he still had no idea who Kang Chol'un was. Kang Chol'un had popped up and single-handedly turned the tables against the Iron Hammer group, so he was cautious of him. Your ad. Li Chiran spoke. This is another lord from a different territory that allied us. Is. Is that so? And he is also the one who will act as the commander of the army until the day we conquer and take back Nidavler. You should think of his orders as mine. Only then did the suspicion and caution on Yurad's face disappear. Then of course I will, Commander. Yurad took Kang Chulin's orders. Good. If you do well on this, I will spare you and your miners, as well the good dwarves that did not participate in the rebellion. I'm not telling you to kill them all. Just think of it as getting rid of the trash. I will leave it to you on who should and should not be killed. Okay. Go now. Prove your loyalty to your lord. But don't make it too obvious. You have to get rid of them slowly, and quietly. Yes, sir. Billy, take twenty adventurers and assist your ad. Yes, leader. Your ad and Billy as well as the twenty adventurers left the lord's hall soon after. With this, all of the bad guys of the Dorado territory had been taken care of. It's finally. Over. The only thing that's left now is the execution of Sledge tomorrow, and how I use that as an opportunity to get the civilians respect and loyalty. Well, that guy's role will be important. Kang Chol and glanced at the sage. But I believe in him. He has a lot of fear after all. Because he's afraid, he won't be able to think of anything else. Li Chiren. Yes? You have a knife for people. What? Do you mean? It's just as I said. It's a good talent so make sure you hone it even more. It's something that I don't possess. After saying it this far, Kang Chol and made Li Chiran follow him. Let's go. Where? We need to make you a personal guard. He meant for her to use the Lord's shop. After the purging she was left without guards, and so he wanted her to have a new group that protected her. She needed a steady grip on her control of this territory and the guards would play a big role in that. Dash, in the deepest area of Dorado was a dome-shaped gym. It was ironic that Kang Chol and Broadly Chiran here, as the lord of this territory had not been here before. I don't know what sort of units you've used before, nor do I want to know. Kang Chol and spoke. You need to differentiate the units that will be used as guards, and those that will be used in a war. Units that are good at fighting in groups normally shouldn't be used as guards. Li Chiran carefully listened to Kang Chalin's words, afraid that she would miss a single word. The most useful unit to you is one that you can control even with your lacking charisma. They need to be easy to control. You're right. I can't control the units whenever I summon them. 
Well, there's a good unit on sale right now. Open the Lord's shop. Yes. Listening to Kang Chowling's words, she held her soul core in her hands and opened the, unit, menu of the Lord's shop. Unit shop, D, E, F rank units are purchasable. The rank of the units sold will change depending on the Lord's level. Land unit, mobile unit, water unit, air unit, special unit, named unit, locked. Only available for overlords. Items related to units, unit purchases require gold, jewelry or lord points etc. Units from the S rank and above cannot be purchased in the shop. It's open. Lee Chiron spoke. Click on the submenu of the land units to demi humans. Yes. Then purchase the dogman half dog, half human as the name suggests, of the ones in the D rank. Dogman. Dogman guards. It's quite expensive. 80 gold. But they're definitely worth it. Long story short, they're the best choice for the current you. I'll buy it. If you say so, then I definitely will. She nodded her head and then moved her fingers to click the purchase button. PGZT. PGZZZTTT. As soon as she hit the purchase button, a gigantic magical formation appeared, and many of the dogmen appeared. Surprisingly enough, they looked quite majestic and imposing. Wearing black tuxedos and hats that made them seem like English policemen, and they were armed with a one. One meter long staff each. Not only that, each of these guards had different heads, that were of different dog breeds. Money. Staring at this scene, Kang Chol and shook as he thought of the price of his Laputa territory. Because he had no money, he couldn't even think of expanding his own territory, let alone buying 30 units that costed 80 gold each. So watching this scene, his stomach felt bitter. But he wasn't jealous. After the deal with Lee Chiran, he knew that he himself would become rich over time. While Kang Chol and was thinking of the future, the leader of the dogmen walked in front of Lee Chiran. This specific dogman had the head of a Doberman, and had a muscular build. Then the leader greeted her, doing a salute that only the dogman did. It's an honor to meet you, sire. This one's name is Anubis, and I will use my heart and soul to serve you from now. As expected of a dogman, Anubis seemed reliable, and loyal. Nice to meet you, Anubis. She nodded her head. I will now appoint you and your squad as the elite group and force of the Storado territory. Yes sir. I will give you your first mission now. Please guard the place while me and Commander Kang Chol and talk. We will do so immediately, sir. And as soon as her orders were given, the dogmen all started rushing towards the ends of the gym, guarding the place perfectly. My orders. Are working. Dogmen started with a max loyalty of 100 but whether you are able to keep it that way is up to you. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Chalin. No need to thank me. It's in the contract. Oh, but. What's this random unit in the middle of the special units? What costs 500 gold? That. Abruptly, Kang Chalin's face stiffened. That. I advise that you just leave it alone. Huh? That's a rigged gamble. Rigged? And that's a very low quality gamble. As it suggests, the units are completely random. You don't know what unit comes out but. In my experience. 100 times out of a 100. Something like a goblin scout comes out. Kang Chol and brain thought of a past memory that he didn't want to remember. The Overlord of Blood and Iron. Chapter 54. Successfully obtaining a SS rank unit. Everyone had at least one memory they didn't want to recall. Even the mighty overlord of blood and iron, Kang Chol In was the same. If he thought of it, Kang Chol In's one was when his head was chopped off by his eternal rival, the Damdroth's child, but it wasn't something that he couldn't tell anyone. He would maybe tell Lucia, or maybe his future wife later on. But the bad memories he had about this random unit was one that he truly didn't want to tell anyone. That was the first as well as last time that he had gotten teased by someone. This event occurred seven years before he had gone back in time, three months before Ragnarok had started. This was when he and Dorian had gone into a dungeon as a duo. Look at him, him. Dorian pointed at a dog that was inside the dungeon. 
This was a dog that Dorian had brought with him this time, saying that he was the ace of this dungeon exploration. What do you plan on doing with that small, puny dog? Kang Chol and didn't like small dogs like poodles, Yorkshire terriers, and Shih Tzus. It was because he didn't like the fact that they kept on barking as if were ignorant on how big and scary the world was, compared to them. HMPH, you would be surprised if you knew the true value and abilities of this guy. The Dorian who had always been on the receiving end of the teasing said proudly. His expression almost bordered on being annoying. No matter how he looks, he is still an S-rank unit after all. Do you really expect me to trust you on that? Sigh to think that even the great Lord Hunter came to all and can't see the true worth of our lucky. Hey. Lucky. Dorian called his dog. Rough, rough. The dog named Lucky came towards Dorian and greeted him with bright and cheerful barks. Lucky then performed a flip, and then suddenly dashed towards a deep part of the dungeon. Do you call a well-trained dog an S rank unit now, Dorian? Kang Chol and laughed. What are you going to do with that dog that doesn't radiate the slightest bit of mana? As expected of a battle maniac. Not all units are used for fighting, you know? Think about utility. The utility. If that dog has good utility, then are you telling all the units famous for their utility to kill themselves of shame? HMPH. Seems like you don't believe me. Then look for yourself. You will see how amazing our lucky is soon. Dorian was confident and lucky, and lucky truly did not let him down. What the? Kang Chol and was very surprised. You see, our lucky is amazing. Dorian happily chimed in. How does this? Make sense? Kang Chol and was truly startled right now. After all, the results that lucky brought were truly amazing. Lucky found a secret pathway inside the obscure dungeon ruins, and single-handedly found and activated a hidden lever that led to a chamber. And inside was a huge amount of gold and other jewels, as well as a terrifying amount of unique rank items. Ha ha ha, now do you see how amazing our Lucky truly is? He's a seeker. Seeker? Treasure seeker, hunting for treasures. He reacts and senses items or gold that is at least of the unique rank. With this guy, I wouldn't be lying if I said I would be able to take the items of all the dungeons and ruins in the Pankiha continent. Dot that's why it's an S rank unit? Of course. It's kind of like the victory of utility. But where the hell did you find a dog like this? Kang Chol and was very curious to see where the dog was from. He had no idea where Dorian had found something like this. Oh. That. I'll tell you. It's not something that amazing anyway. You'll tell me? Of course. I pick Lucky by purchasing the random units. I used around 1,500 gold to kill time on that. Dot I didn't know that good units could even come out in that. Well, that depends on the individual's luck. I'm lucky, a lucky guy after all. Ha <laughs> ha. That sounds like a lie to me. Kang Chol and didn't believe Dorian's words. He too had spent 2,000 gold on random units too, but the result was him obtaining the lowest rank units like goblins, gnolls, skeletons. Of course, it was not just him. Other lord had also talked trash about buying this, as they had only lost money. In fact, there were some lords who tried to spend all their money buying this, and went broke. But to think that there was actually an S rank unit like Lucky from the random unit purchase, who would believe it? Ha ha ha. For someone as kind and nice as me, there is luck. Of course, that's different from a villain like you, Kang Jln. This taunt lead to the start of the nightmarish memory. You're saying that I'm not lucky because I'm a villain? Because it was so ridiculous that Dorian had gotten lucky, Kang Jln fell for Dorian's taunt. Like they say, Santa Claus doesn't give presents to the naughty. Unless you're a kind person like me, there's no way to obtain an S rank unit. Sigh, I think you're ridiculous to spend money on that sort of gambling. Why don't you just go and gamble in Las Vegas instead? Oh, that place. I got on the blacklist of the casinos there because my luck was too good. I can't enter. Do you really expect me to believe that? What? Have you been lied to for all your life? The next time I go to Earth, I'll prove it to you. 
and after arguing and bickering for a long time, they decided to have a bet to see who would get the better unit using the random unit option. The two of them went back to their territories and connected to each other using the node network, a network that allowed the two of them to communicate, and started a video call, and began to buy the random units. The result? Kang Chulin was absolutely destroyed. Ha ha ha. Even though you show off all the time, you have absolutely terrible luck. Although Dorian had spent 2,500 gold in obtaining a knee rank unit called the Illusionist. It seemed like a goblin field over there, eh? Even after Kang Cholin spent 8,500 gold, he had to later watch the scene of Albert bleeding blood and tears from his eyes, goblin scout, goblin assassin, goblin archer. It was as if he was collecting the goblin series. It almost seemed like Dorian was right when he said that villains couldn't pick good things from the random unit selection, and the kind ones had good luck on it. See, good units come out too. Oh, since I won this bet, the next time we party, you're going to have to pay for it, okay? Well, see ya then. Have fun with those goblins you earned, you unlucky bastard. Ha ha ha. And that stupid bet ended up with King Ellen's loss. Although he didn't want to admit it, he had truly lost. That was the only battle in which Dorian had beaten Kang Chal in, and it was still a sore spot for Kang Chal in. Not only that, it was the day that Dorian had teased Kang Chal in to no end. Dorian, you motherfucker. Kang Chal in thought of Dorian, who would be receiving verbal abuse from his secretary soon for not coming back for so long. Thinking of that, he involuntarily smiled. Mister. Chalin? Lee Chiron called him. What is it? Were you thinking of some bad memories? No, it's nothing. Although he tried to deny it, it was the truth when she said that he remembered some bad memories. Anyway, just leave that button alone. There are some lords I know that went bankrupt after using that button too much. Just think of it like a menu or option that doesn't exist. What he said was true. The only one he knew that had truly benefited from using that option was Dorian. He didn't realize this until later, but Dorian's luck was ridiculously good. After asking and researching for a bit, he found out that out of the 200 lords, there was no one who had benefited from using that menu. Don't try to lean on your luck. There's no kind of system or gamble that's as rigged as that stupid thing. Doing it once costs 500 gold equivalent to 200 million KRW, which is around $200,000. Of course, it's your choice if you want to pick a goblin that's worth 200 million KRW. Kang Chol and thought that the stupidest thing he had done between his present and past life was gambling like that. Everyone had a secret that they wanted to hide, and for Kang Chol in, it was this. Whatever, I'll just do it for fun then. Surprisingly, Kang Chol and heard the nonchalant voice of Lee Chiron. Is one time okay? Is this stress? He thought that it might be from watching the bloody scenes of watching dwarves die. Well, I guess once is okay. Kang Chol and didn't stop Lee Chiron from doing so, as he wanted her to experience firsthand why you shouldn't do it. If things went overboard, he would stop her. Yes, once would be okay, right? PGZT. PGZT. After Lee Chiron clicked the button that shouldn't be pressed, a magic circle descended. And inside was. Kick? Dot the most primitive type of wild goblin. It was the worst unit of all. It's a goblin? Lee Chiron laughed as if she didn't care. It definitely was stress, laughing after losing that much money. Hmm. Should I try some more? Maybe a unit worthy of being my new secretary might come out. Lee Chiron full of her false fantasies tried three more times to pick a random unit. But the result was like Kang Chol unexpected. The sight of a goblin assassin, orc, and a goblin laborer greeted Lee Chiron. This. I shouldn't do this again. What a waste. Why did I even make this? Thinking about it, I don't even know why I decided to do it. Even when Mr. Cholin warned me. Lee Chiron's face looked painful now. It seemed like her stress had been relieved. That was fast. Maybe it's because her special ability is related to money. If it was another lord, 
it was highly probable that they would have spent at least 5,000 gold before stopping. Yep. I'm definitely not doing this again. As long as you understand. But that's me. Mr. Chillin, want to give it a go? Now is not that the time to be gambling like this. King Chillin's cold voice replied. Yes. Since they had already gotten their hands on an elite force, they should be getting ready for executing Sledge, not relaxing like this. At this moment, the adventurers and Urad was also working. But it doesn't even take that long. I have no plan in using my precious resources and money in that sort of rigged gambling. Well then I'll just pick it for you then. I went to test it out. Test what? Mr. Chillin's luck. And before he could even reply to her, she gifted him a random unit. PGZT, PGZT. Another magic circle descended and you could see that inside it was a small silhouette, though it disappeared soon after. Another goblin, I don't even want to look at it. Looking at the small silhouette, King Jelin obviously thought it was another goblin, and looked away, his interest dimmed. Since he knew that it was a type of goblin, he didn't have any hope or curiosity towards it. To him, the random unit menu was a sort of sore spot, that he would never be able to forget. At least. Until today. M.M. Mr. Chalin? Lee Chiron called King Chalin with a trembling voice. What, is it a goblin sorcerer? King Chalin asked with a calm voice. Goblin sorcerers were the most expensive and usable out of the goblins. Although it was worth three gold, compared to the five hundred spent. And no. It's not a goblin. Then is it ill? No. It's a boy, a boy came out. Dot. Thinking that something was odd, King Chol and finally turned his head. Congratulations. You have successfully obtained the SS rank named unit, Archmage Nihilus. The Overlord of Blood and Iron. Chapter 55. SS Rank Mage, Nihilus Slots Chart. In front of King Jolens was an explanation of the SS rank unit, Nihilus. Name, Nihilus Lodzgart, title, the Archmage, yes it literally says Archmage in the O. G, not Archmage, age, 12 years old, rank, C rank, potential SS rank, job, magician, war mage, specialty, magic barrage, detailed info, grand mage of the royal family of the great ancient empire is proficient with all types of magic, but is most suited for wide area spells that barrage the enemy with magic. As he gets older, his potential awakens, allowing him to become stronger. Grows until age, 87 sleeps a lot, over 16 hours a day, expert of magic engineering what kind of bullshit tea is this? Kang Chol and couldn't believe the situation right now. Although currently a C rank, he had earned a unit with the potential of an SS rank. And not only that, it was a name unit. Dot this was more ridiculous than when he met the person he assumed to be Kwakung coincidentally in Park Du Six's office. Not only that, he should have bad luck according to Dorian, because of his status as the biggest villain in Pangaea. Your Majesty. The Archmage Nihilus walked before King Chol and M kneeled. Majesty. Am I an emperor now? Though King Chol and was used to people calling him a lord, he wasn't used to being called your majesty. This was even after he had become an overlord. According to Akin, the right-hand man of God, you needed to become the sole ruler of Pangaea and become emperor, in order to be called your majesty. But this SS rank unit was calling King Chol and your majesty. It was as if they had known each other before. Again. To meet you again. This servant is so happy. The tears are blocking my sight. Nihilus spoke as if he were a 12 year old. And he started crying tears of joy too. Your Majesty. The leader of this old man forever. The only emperor in all of this continent. Although he definitely got an SS rank, it seemed like the one King Chol and had received was a bit odd. Although he looked like a smart boy, he talked like an old man. Not only that, talking to Kang Chalin as if they knew each other. Although he had the potential of an SS rank, it was odd. Something's weird. That's also what I think. Mr. Chalin, are you actually an emperor? As if. Although he had been an overlord, he had not been emperor. 
Nihilus, was it? Kang Chol and spoke. I am no emperor. No. Nihilus spoke back loudly and denied it. No matter what you say, your majesty is the one and only emperor of blood and iron. Stop saying that nonsense. I am not speaking nonsense. Although you might not recognize me after reincarnating, this old man recognizes you perfectly well. Not only that, even your majesty's face is exactly the same, how could I ever forget you? Dot is he a broken good or something? Kang Chol and thought that the mighty SS rank Nihilus was junk. After all, he had been told that he was an emperor who had reincarnated, as well as some other nonsense. I don't want to hear it. Stop calling me your majesty. Not being able to call your majesty your majesty, not a mistake. Then what does your majesty wish this one to call you? My name is Kang Chol N. Just call me as my lord. Q. How can a great man like you use such an insignificant title like Lord? I'm saying this for the second time now. I am no emperor. Your majesty definitely is. The 27th emperor of the ancient empire, the emperor of blood and iron, Emperor Elis Berlinet upon Auring Jeb. Yuli. What? Elis, Emperor Elis Berlinet upon Auring Jeb. Dot I have no idea what you're saying. I can understand that you're confused. Your Majesty. It's obvious that you don't have the memories of your past life after you reincarnated. Reincarnation? PFT. Although he could believe that he had gone back in time using the soul backup, he truly couldn't believe in reincarnation. He thought that life was only precious if you lived once, not tens, or hundreds of times. He believed that if he went through the process of life and death over and over, there was no point in life. I don't believe you and I don't want to listen to your story. So don't say anything about being reincarnated. Yes, your majesty. Also, stop calling me that. Although this servant can carry out any kind of order or mission, that is the only exception. I cannot stop calling you your majesty. Kang Chol and shook his head and looked away from Nihilus. He thought he would have to listen to another weird story if he kept on talking with him. It doesn't matter to me. It happens sometimes. If it was a named unit and not a normal one, there was a chance that they had memories of their past. It was before they had fallen asleep, and when the Pangaea continent was still bustling and prospering. He somewhat understood it. Nearly 97% of Pangaea's items and relics are from thousands of years ago. Although it was impossible to know what occurred back then, humans and civilization was wiped out from the world a thousand years ago and it had turned into the ownerless Pangaea that it was now. Although this honestly didn't make sense, almost nothing did. After all, the great summoning from the first place didn't make sense. Kang Chol and, and the other dimension travelers just knew that there was a big event a thousand years ago in the continent. The truth was known to only God, and his right-hand man, Akin. It seemed like his emperor looks similar to me then. That was what Kang Chol and figured out. After sleeping for a long time, there was a chance of mistaking someone else for another. Especially as an SS rank unit, it wasn't really unusual that he had some special behavior after reawakening. Your Majesty. Nihilus wiped his tears and looked at King Chol in with his red, bloodshot eyes. Being able to serve Your Majesty is an honor, a great honor. Said Nihilus, and kneeled down towards King Chol in. Pew-u. Kang Chol and let out a deep breath as if he was tired. Mr. Cholin. Li Chiron spoke. I think this boy knows about the past of Pangaea? No, he doesn't. Huh? If you ask what happened and why he was sealed and asleep for so long, he wouldn't know. That is the answer for every unit, no matter who they're facing. Is that so? It's better if you don't know about the pasts of your units. Anyway. It seems like you have very good luck, Mr. Cholin. Good. Luck? Listening to the words of Lee Chiran, Kang Chol and face turned into a startled expression. Of course. Didn't you say that the random unit selection is absolutely rigged? Well yes, I did. But you obtained an SS rank unit on your first try, so your luck must be very good. Is that so? Of course. I predictions were right. Dot. 
kind people have good luck. Because Mr. Joel and helped me in taking back authority, isn't a sign of karma? That was true. In Kang Jolin's mind, the memory of Dorian talking surfaced. Santa Claus doesn't give bad children presents. Picking an S rank unit is impossible, unless you're kind like me. But Dorian's argument that his luck was bad because he was a villain was proven to be wrong. Lucky was an S rank seeker unit, while Nihilus was an SS rank. In the end, Kang Chol and had won. Although the argument that Dorian made on how the random unit selection could be beneficial was also proven to be true. Congratulations, Mr. Cholin. Li Chiron congratulated him from the depths of her heart. Even though it wasn't her who had picked the SS rank unit with 500 coins, she was truly happy for Kang Jolin. Dot then thank you. Since his territory had no gone from having no magician to getting an SS rank 1, he was truly lucky. Especially when Nihilus reached his full potential and finally became SS rank, it would truly be a sight to see. Nihilus. Yes, you called, your majesty. Although it may be temporary, I name you the magician of Arlaputa territory. It's an honor, sir. This, Nihilus, will truly use his full potential and use in order to help your majesty in his conquest. Conquest? Yes. After all, your majesty is the reincarnation of my emperor, the former owner of this continent. Since you've reincarnated, the continent should rightfully belong to you. Somehow, they fit together. It seemed like the past emperor he served was like Kang Chao In, and strived to unite and conquer the continent. Good. Although he didn't like being called your majesty, he agreed when Nihilus had said they would rule the continent. After all, his final goal was to boss over all of the overlords, and take total control over the whole of Pangaea. We're finished here today then. Go rest. Kang Chol and persuaded her to rest. No. Kang Chol and knew how tiring today was to her. But. Do you plan on letting the civilians see the best of you, or you when you're tired, and about to fall asleep? T that is. Fine then. She finally nodded her head. After Kang Chol and said goodbye to Li Chiran, he helped Yurad and the others get rid of the traitors. We finished quickly. After taking care of the final dwarf, Kang Chol and stared at the rising sun and sighed. Take the ones that truly deserve to be killed, and hang their heads upon the walls tomorrow. As for the rest, put them in the dungeon. I will bring them back to Laputa. Kang Chol and hurriedly accepted forty dwarf laborers. We didn't know what to do with them anyway, but thankfully that's solved now. Archmage Nihilus and forty dwarf laborers. To think that I would earn so many unexpected benefits. As King Chol and Aaron two unexpected prophets, he was very satisfied. Who knew, maybe Li Chiran was his lucky charm. Is it going to be war now? We'll solve it quickly again though. King Chol and was very confident. Why? Because he was planning on using the magic satellites against the enemy during this war. Chapter 56 Bloody Execution Kang Chol and didn't participate in Sledge's execution. Executing him was not his, but Li Chiren's responsibility, and so he didn't want to meddle with it too much. But he did so for the method of execution. Tie Sledge up inside a glass container, and prepare 500 bloody wirearms. Don't tell me. My lord plans on doing that as his punishment. Badolsky's face turned pale after hearing Kang Chol's orders. It's because of his betrayal as the secretary. Hearing this, Badolsky nodded as if it makes sense. Since that truly is a terribly crime, I guess it's not too far-fetched to give a punishment like this. If an example is done wrong, and it's sloppy, it's sure to have side effects. When we need to instill fear on the people, we'll have to do it properly. Cuckoo. As expected of your highness, you truly speak words like an emperor. Nihilus. Yes. Your Majesty? Can't you do anything about your way of speaking? That. Although the servant's body might only be 12 years old, my mind is that of an 80 year old man. I will try to fix it, Your Majesty. Okay. Well, I'm going to go sleep. Wake me up during the evening. Saying this, King Cholin walked to a bed and fell asleep. 
since he hadn't slept for 48 hours straight, he definitely had the right to sleep. And while Kang Jelin was sleeping, the execution continued as planned. All of those living in the Dorado territory, meet up at the Central Plaza at 11.30 a.m. Unless you're on guard duty on another part of the territory, it is necessary to come. If there are those that do not follow my orders, they will be locked up in prison for five years. Thanks to this cruel order, all of the civilians in the Dorado Territory came to the Central Plaza by 11.30. And the sight that greeted them was. I it's the secretary. The secretary is locked up in a glass box. Was a sledge that was twisted and tied up like a pretzel. What the? What are you doing? My lord? What are you doing to your own underling? And a large number of dwarves started showing their discontent. Quiet, quiet. Said Anubis imposingly showing off his mighty physique. Since Lord Lee Chiron has not come out yet, be quiet. If you take another step forward, I will crush that mouth of yours. And behind Anubis, 29 different dogmen started growling, intimidating the crowd. And while the crowd was filled with chaos. Her her. Can our brothers bother to listen to this old man for a bit? The sage spoke. Secretary Sledge, no. Sledge was an absolute bastard. After all, he tried to rebel against our own lord. And with this, his rent against Sledge began. Oop! Oh oof! The Sledge who was tied up tried to speak up and against his former ally, but couldn't, due to the ropes that tied him up. Let his workforce leader speak as well. And Urad also came up. And the two of them successfully appealed to the civilians of their lord, as well as Sledge's mistakes. And with that, all of the discontent that the dwarves had towards Lee Chiron vanished like smoke. Instead, they turned their disgust and discontent towards Sledge. Hey, you dirty bastard. Disgusting. Cock, twa. Some dwarves even spit on him. You're a scumbag, and deserve to die. The angry dwarves seemed like they were about to kill Sledge. And at this moment, Lee Chiron showed herself. When accompanied with Billy and the other adventurers, she seemed like an imposing lord. I'm sure you've heard your ad, and the sage speaking. And that's all true. Sledge, as well as the dead and, and General Smith all tried to humiliate me, and force us into losing Nidavler. But today, as I, Lee Chiron execute Sledge, we will fight against those dirty invaders who took Nidavler, and take it back. We can do it. They say that being honest worked. By showing her confidence and determination to take back their holy land, the crowd erupted in cheers for her. And you humans in the crowd. You have worked so hard until now. I don't know how much suffering you've been through with a weak leader like me in power. I have no words to say as a lord, even if I had ten mouths. And she pointed at Sledge, who was tied up, and shouted. But this was because I had fallen into that sinister one's trap. The dwarves have no fault in this. Although humans and dwarves should unite, it was all because of that stupid sledge that we couldn't. So we will, today, execute him in front of the public. Then, you guys can wave goodbye to the suffering and mistreatment you had received until now. As the lord of this territory, I guarantee the rights of our humans civilians too. And when she was finished, an ear-splitting applause came from the crowd. woo woo Long live Lord Lee Chiron. We believe in you. Please take care of U.S. humans. And as they spoke, Lee Chiron sighed to herself. Mr. Chalin. How did you predict all of this was going to happen? Sigh, I can't even imagine how great of a person you are. Lee Chiron marveled once again at Kang Chalin's ability. If not for him, what would have happened to her by now? Okay then, execute this traitor, Anubis. Yes, my lord. Although Sledge struggled, he couldn't escape from the ropes that bound him. And as soon as she gave her word to start the execution, the dogmen poured in the bloody wires, that were now inside of a sealed steel bag. Sledge screamed. Puke. Is. Is that a bloody wire? Is. He going to get eaten alive? The residents of Dorado screamed as well. The punishment they had for Sledge was much worse than what most people did as execution, such as beheading, or hanging. Chomp. 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 
the red worm slowly gouged out Sludge's flesh. No matter whether he struggled or screamed, there was no effect on the merciless bloody wyrms. They instinctively went for the flesh of the dwarf hanging there. Endure, I have to endure. If I fail to endure here, then everything that Mr. Chell and did for me would go to waste. Although Lee Chiran wanted to look away, she still held on toughly, her eyes glued to the sight that wasn't meant to be seen. Because her civilians were watching, she needed to be strong, and composed. I'll do it, Mr. Chalin. It didn't take very long for Sledge to become a skeleton. And the civilians of Dorado were now truly impressed and entranced by their lord's charisma. How could a woman like her resist the sight of a dwarf being eaten? Most likely, not even the elite soldiers of the dwarven army would be able to resist turning away. Rebellion means death, a gruesome death. If you have a plot against me, I strongly advise that you give up right now. After all, I never forgive traitors. But since we have gotten rid of one of the traitors, our future is bright. In a month, we will take back Nidavler, and get rid of the invaders that took the place. Lee Chiron promised the residents of Dorado. And not only that, we allied with another lord at the northwest of our territory. We now have a strong, trustworthy ally. Hearing that they had an alliance with another lord gave the residents a glimmer of hope. Thankfully for us, the lord of Laputa, Lord King Chol and said that he would be the commander of our army for this war. He is definitely a strategist that is incomparably better than General Smith. As Lee Chiron said this, the crowd started mumbling amongst themselves. New commander? How great of a person is he for our lord to speak of him like that? Do you know who he is? Conversations about Kang Chol and popped up everywhere. Since she had called him an incomparable strategist, the civilians' hopes for him were great. Because he has traveled so far and gotten rid of the rebels here, he's taking a short rest right now. So it seems appropriate that I introduce him to Dorado later instead. As Lee Chiron said this, the crowd sighed. They definitely wanted to see the face of their new, awe inspiring commander. I will promise everyone here. We will take back Nidavlar in a month and take revenge against the invaders. I will definitely not allow those bastards to take control of our territory for much longer. Well, that's it for today. Pew. After her speech was finished, Lee Chiron walked into the strategy room, exhausted. Although she wanted nothing more than to go sleep in her bed, she didn't feel like it would be appropriate, before she thanked Kang Chalin. Mr. Chalin? In the empty room was nothing but Kang Chalin asleep. What a terrifying person. Looking at the sleeping Kang Chalin, she shook her head, as if it were ridiculous. Terrifyingly enough, Kang Chalin had a very detailed map of all the areas around Dorado in front of him, and that map was open, while he was asleep on his chair. It was obvious that he had taken a short break while thinking of strategies and tactics all night long. The sight was similar to looking at an energetic, passionate workaholic that had a short nap after doing some extra work. How truly! Lee Chiran started walking towards Kang Chal In, mumbling. Pound. Pound. Lee Chiran's heart forgot the stress and exhaustion at that moment, and beat very hard at that moment. Ah! At that moment, deep inside Lee Chiran's heart, a certain emotion towards Kang Chal In started appearing. Kang Chol and had a special charm that entranced her. As a lord, he had pride that bordered on being too arrogant, and a cold personality, terrifying insight, as well as almost unrivaled military prowess. She wondered whether there would even be a drop of blood that came out if she stabbed him with a pike. It was like he had no weak spots. Of course, if you looked at only those points it wouldn't feel like he was even human at all, but looking at his sleeping face right now, that was not the case. When she realized that the terrifying Kang Chol and also had a human side to him, it took away Ali Chiron's heart instantly. Mr. Cholin. If he was good to me, how good would it be if he only looked at me? And she unknowingly greeted for him. Although it was unimaginable, thinking of a scene where Kang Chol and was hugging and being warm to another woman made her incomparably furious. Funnily enough, she was jealous and angry at a person that didn't even exist. I. Want him. At that moment, 
Li Charin moved her face right in front of King Jelin's, as if she were entranced. The Overlord of Blood and Iron. Chapter 57 Magically Engineered Satellite Li Charin was conflicted. What would happen if she kissed the sleeping King Jelin right now? Would he dislike it? Or would he like it? What feeling would it be, kissing with a man? Due to all of this imagination and curiosity, her mind state was already half crazy by now. That was how much charm Kang Jolin had towards her. It was as if she had been infected by the bad boy syndrome, where she wanted to be loved by a man who didn't show interest or attraction towards her, but didn't care at all. It wasn't normal. Nowadays, what kind of woman would try to take the lips of a sleeping man? Maybe Lee Chiron's eccentric behavior right now was because of all of the stress stacked up between the past few days. Dot Mr. Chalin. Whatever. I don't care anymore. I'll just do it. But the temptation was too great. Lee Chiron leaned her face towards Kang Chalin like she didn't care anymore, moving towards Kang Chalin's lips. And she closed her eyes. No, she tried to. If Kang Chol and didn't open his eyes abruptly and look at her. Ugh! The two people stared at each other, their faces so close that their noses almost touched. Uh. Can I ask what you're doing right now? Kang Chol and's face turned cold. Am Mr. Cholin. That. Stay back. I I'm sorry. Li Chiran apologized and hurriedly stepped back. Because of this. Her attempting and stealing his lips ended in a failure. Li Chiren. Kang Jolin asked her with an uncomfortable expression. Yes? What did you try to do to me just now? You are dot I. I was trying to. Get something off your face, because something was on it. Is that so? Oh of course. Well, your intentions were good, but don't do something like that ever again. W-Y? Or you'll get hurt. Kang Jolin's face again turned cold. Li Chiron didn't know, but she was lucky that a knife didn't go flying at her right now. Battle maniacs like Kang Jolin hated people going near them while they were vulnerable, after all. To think that I would show weakness at this kind of time. I would have truly died if that was an assassin there. Mr. Cholin. What, is there a problem? You really? Dot? Pew-u. Never mind. Li Chiren looked as if she was going to say something, but stopped midway, and sighed. The execution is also over. So it seemed like you've overcome it then. Yes, I just followed what you told me to do. Well, let's rest for the rest today, and talk again tomorrow. I think you need a day at least to take in what just happened after all. Oh, and. Yes? Don't lean too heavily on alcohol because you're tired and feeling down. Alcohol? It's like advertising that you drank alcohol, especially what that red face of yours. Although you don't smell of alcohol, it is a negative in itself that a lord seems drunk. Stop. Li Chiran stopped his words midway. I'm leaving. Dot? You shouldn't sleep in a place like this, Mr. Chalin. Now, goodbye. And as she said bye to him, she disappeared from the room as if she was never there. I guess it could be very tiring. Looking at her, Kang Chol and thought that the work could be too stressful for the current her to handle, making her angry right now. The next day, the higher ranked members of the Dorado Laputa allies discussed about how to approach the war. First of all, our problem is our lack of information. Kang Chol and spoke. How much they have what they are doing, how their army is formatted. Do we have answers to any of these questions? No one raised their hand. As expected. It was hard for them to even send out a scout, so obviously they had no information about their opponents. Mr. Cholin. Li Chiron spoke. Should we try using some scouting hogs? I think that we should send about five into their territory. No. He shook his head. The range is too short. Our operations will cover around 80 kilometers. What will we do with a unit that has a maximum range of 20? Then shall we send soldiers? No, that's pointless too. By sending them, it would just be just killing them off. Oh, I forgot to ask. 
What is the special ability of this territory? Oh, that. PFT. Li Chiren laughed like she hadn't for a long time. M, M. The thing is, the special ability of Dorado is linked to me. With you? Uh. So. Dot? The special ability of this territory is called Embarrassed Moon. I have no idea what you are saying though. Uh. Well, it's hard for me to explain. Urad, will you tell him for me? Li Chiren asked help from Urad. Yes, my lord. Dot I will take your orders. Although looked awkward, he still didn't disobey Li Chiren's orders. Um, my lord Kang Chalin? Speak. The thing is. Our Dorado territory gets a special buff twice a year. And when is this? When it's a full moon. As expected of the name, Embarrassed Moon. And the effects? Um. Well. Just say it quickly. The meeting is more important. Oh, well. I'll just speak. When the effect is on. It's 100%. Don't avoid it. When a man and a woman makes love at a full moon. The male becomes a father, and the female a mother. At that moment, Kang Chalin's countenance stiffened. God damn it, I shouldn't have asked. But it was at that moment. Pew-oo. To think that there was a great buff like that. The old Nihilus nodded his head and expressed his joy. Your Majesty, I guess we don't need to worry about your descendants then. And made Kang Chalin feel awkward. Descendants? Later when you take Inner Empress, I think that we should use the first night here, during the special buff. Dot. Does your majesty not think this would be the best place to take in our empress? Keeping the royal bloodline alive is the most important after all. The nihilist that looked like he would go to primary school was speaking like this, and the atmosphere soon turned weird because of him. And because Kang Jalin couldn't tell him to just get older, he made Kang Jalin feel awkward too. Dot Nihilus. Yes, your majesty. Stop saying things that an old man would say. But I am an old man though. Go outside and kneel there, while raising your hands up. Why your majesty? How could you do this to an old man like me? Quickly, 